Speaking of excellent, I showed uh, Rags a couple Simpsons episodes. Which ones did you show him? Um, Lisa on Ice and the two who shot Mr. Burns. Uh, Lisa, oh, Lisa on Ice, man. That every time the ending gets me. Yeah, it's quite wholesome. Yeah. It's like, um. Oh. It also just reminds me of like I feel kind of sorry for like twenty minute animated shows where they have to tell complete stories so quickly. Like, but yeah, they the do stress. it so well. It's they do tough, it pretty well. Yeah. yeah, they're pretty jam packed with stuff. As well, I mean, you're they're just moving along. You don't well, have that much time to waste. It's funny to think about because remember the whole point of BoJack Horseman was <laughs> things don't get neatly wrapped up in twenty minutes, <laughs> but yet yet it still has less substance than like. The Who Shot Mr. Burns two parter, which is like better than that whole show. Ripper. Yeah, that was a, that was fun to watch. We paid for it because I never really watched uh, Simpsons. Never was a thing that I see now. Because to me, that's like foreign. Because when I was growing up, everybody watched The Simpsons. Yeah. we all watched The Simpsons. Um, I didn't. Parents even have wouldn't friends. let me watch Simpsons. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. happens. Obviously, we all had like. There's some weird restrictions that can come up for different parents who just have different worries about different things and. Um, yeah, yeah. The Simpsons was designed to subvert like standard family sitcoms, so it's easily understandable that a a normal family might be like, "Well, this is just a bit. This is almost toxic. This show. It's just like, oh, because Simpsons at times can be like everybody sucks there, but then also they um they come through in lots of ways, and it always felt to me anyway like a lot more authentic, like. Um, mm -hmm. In brief interactions, it can come across that a lot of people are very ego-driven or, or self-driven. Um, but when the chips are down and the choices come in, they usually make the right decision. That's you basically gotta... who Homer is. Yeah, because uh, at least Rod Ice, if you only watched that episode and had to judge Homer as a character, he's kind of a complete asshole. <laughs> yeah, he's <laughs> talking about how they're both losers. <laughs> <laughs> losers! Losers! Let's burn this place down! <laughs> <laughs> Let's tear this place apart. I fucking love yeah. the Chief Wiggum. Oh, it? the joke. Oh, the joke with the the pie. All right, pie. Listen, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna walk forward and do this. Dum dum dum. And if you get eaten, it's your own fault. Um, um and smashes his head on the fucking oven lights. The 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 favorite part for me about that joke was him going, oh, oh, oh the hell. my, oh the hell with it, just eats the pie. Yeah, like, but he's just not seeing it. He's more invested in the pie than he is about complaining about the pain. He's just like, oh, fuck, let's just move on. I think that's the The Simpsons is like so genius in ways that as a kid you never really appreciated. Like the show was really funny, but then when you rewatch it as an adult, it's just like. Because I, I know we've talked about that clip, that clip when um it's the Bart, Bart's, is it Bart's Comet? I think it's, like, that episode is That's another insane great one. in which, terms um, of the number of jokes. Which season is Bart's Comet? I think that's season five, I want to say. Season six, holy shit. Season oh, six, it is so six. many good yeah. episodes in it. Well, that's the thing for me, is season six was the only one that I ever had on DVD, so I watched that one over and over and over again. I remember there was, like, that was the one where Homer goes to clown college. Um, I think that was the one where Marge becomes a cop was in that episode, too. Forget about the badge! When do we get the freaking gun? <laughs> hey, I told you, you don't get your gun until you tell me your name. <laughs> I've had it up to here with you, Rowells! Do you remember? Uh, it's funny too, which was which is kind of nice to see a comedy show that's actually funny. Oh yeah, because when I rewatch Family Guy, I just don't laugh. Yeah. Oh well. Yeah, Family, Family Guy's hits for me are fewer, far fewer than Simpsons. Mm -hmm. At least Simpsons again, classic it, era, right? Uh, and if it was like cheating with Family Guy, because most of the funny jokes are cutaways, and cutaways are really yeah, they don't easy make any sense. Do. Yeah, we, just, yeah, we just... just want a joke here, so we're just going to have this joke be here for whatever. It doesn't have anything to do with anything, but, you know. Um, yeah, it's 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 gag writing, which is what uh, Trey Parker and Matt Stone said. Like, they don't respect it because it's just it's just gags, like, where you have... The, the whole joke in that episode is that a bunch of manatees just pick up balls from a tank that have words written on them, and then just put them in a row, and then it's a Family Guy joke. Like a name, an adjective, yeah, yeah. a verb. <laughs> like, I watched, that's um, all it is. I watched Lemon of Troy as well. That one's, I think, season six, too. Uh, do you remember how it ends with... Uh, well, 
there's, there's a lemon tree in Springfield, and Shelbyville steal it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, uh, yeah. After they have their little, like, first initial fight with the kids from either town, uh, Grandpa Simpson in the background just goes, Some things never change. And then Millhouse goes, Look, everyone, an old man is talking. And they all just walk up <laughs> and sit down. <laughs> The part of that episode where the, the other guy's dad, like the the faux Homer from Shelbyville, where he's like, "Sorry, Springfield, you lose." Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm feeling a little hungry. And he just takes a bite out of a lemon. <laughs> his, his face the just expression contract. is incredible. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah, he, he's trying. They try to like make it a win by the end that the lemon tree was lost to Shelbyville, and so they're like, "We cast out the evil lemon tree. Now let's have a cold glass of turnip juice." <laughs> <laughs> so turn of juice. Juice. <laughs> oh, yeah so many funnies you ever had prune juice um, no i feel like i would no. at okay. some point maybe but no memory of it it's warrior's drink mm. uh yeah so simpsons is neat simpsons is neat i really enjoyed up. watching it it was fun and I feel like it doesn't require like a, a a big commitment, you know, to watch. Simpsons. Oh yeah, yeah, real quick. Mm -hmm. Remember the um, I'll I'll stop remembering jokes. Okay, it's just it's it, it, we're in the intro, right? Everyone's pouring in. You guys can listen to us talk about, about our favorite moments from Simpsons. Uh, in Who Shot Mr. Burns when they're exonerating Smithers, and he goes, "So instead of shooting an evil old man, I shot an innocent old man." It's much worse. <laughs> yeah, that was really funny. I remember laughing at that. I remember, it was just a lot of good stuff. It's just, and it's the delivery too. The voice actors are really yeah. good, so the mm. deliveries are quite good. All those voice actors super talented, considering that there are only three male voice actors like in the show who basically play all of the male characters. It's, it's yeah, kind of yeah. it's unreal, actually, the versatility of like Dan Castellaneta, Hank Azaria, and um. And you can find oh, yourself being like, Ooh, it, yeah. I'm not even sure which one of them that is. You're like, you're listening, you're like, that Sometimes. could be, yeah. I think, um, I for some reason, I used to think that Chief Wiggum was Dan and not Hank Azaria. Mm -hmm. And then it's like, oh, wait, no, it is Hank Azaria. And then, of course, like, you can figure out some of them, but some of them get really difficult to, to figure out. Like, it's obvious that Abe, well, not obvious. I don't want to say obvious because they, they still have different voices, like Krusty... Yeah. Abe and Homer, all voiced by the same person, but then you start like pushing it further well, and further. Because uh, they're all they all have interesting origins, right? Because Abe is supposed to just be yeah. really, really old Homer, and then Krusty was originally going to be Krusty Homer as well. Be... That's right. Yeah, um, I'm I'm so happy that he was like his own character because Krusty Krusty's is like great. hilarious. Yeah, and again, they're all stereotypes. <laughs> Krusty is the washed up celebrity. Like it's the. The person, like, he just arrives when Mr. Burns blocks out the sun and everyone hates him, and he's just like, I've been in Reno for six <laughs> weeks. And, uh, I, uh. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I feel like the favorite joke with Krusty was the, the one where he does the ads for a Krusty burger. And yeah. He's like, you know, if you win, you get a free Krusty burger. Takes a bite, mm -mm, and cut. <laughs> oh, I almost swallowed some of the juice. God. <laughs> 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 I think that uh, I think Bethesda was probably a really big fan of The Simpsons because they too think that they can get away with only using three voice actors for their games. Oh, oh, oh shit! I, so it's fine, but that's, oh that's probably God. more true of their old games, right? Less so now. Now they have like um, the money to get whoever they want. So Skyrim is a game that really comes to mind when I talk about when if you say, um, "What's one of the flaws of Skyrim?" If I ever end up making a Skyrim wasn't ever that good video, because it's true. <laughs> um, and uh, well, I feel like our our golden honeymoon for Skyrim lasted way too fucking long, and it was always okay, but everyone mm -hmm. just I don't know got attached to it. But I noticed it in Skyrim a lot, um, where you just you clearly, obviously, the same voice actors Holy and a shit. lot of stuff. Yeah, I I look them up on uh, yeah? IMDb. On IMDb, there's like seven or eight people who play like twenty or thirty. This is unreal. In what Skyrim? Yeah, like look at look at the cast for Skyrim. Like there are a decent number of people in it, but there are some people who are playing like thirty characters. Well, yeah, and you feel it because I don't want to say they're not talented, but there's a lot of play. They do not hide it well at all. 
Well, I think um, there's only so much you can do. Like Stephen Russell, he's a really good voice actor who played Garrett in uh, in uh, Thief, and he's playing like 40 characters. I, I feel like even the best voice actors, you're going to really struggle once you get to that point, you know? Yeah. Well, that's why it's so um, impressive with Simpsons. It's just like, you have these people doing like mm-hmm. 50 voices, and it's like, how the fuck? How is that even possible? Yeah. I don't know how bad it is in Fallout 4. Um, it's probably the same. They probably, I, I, I bet it's the same. I don't, maybe it's a little better, mm. maybe not, but you would, I guess, you'd think that with, if you have Bethesda money, then you could hire more than four people to voice your 100 plus characters oh, yeah, yeah. and your sprawling, I say sprawling, your big open world <laughs> RPG, you know, with all of the characters and stuff. Mm. Um, but like I guess all that work went towards, um, Wow. Something so else, anyway. but all that work went towards something else so whatever that I is uh, Fallout 4 is better but still Steven Russell is playing like 15 characters <laughs> so yeah that's weird that you wouldn't do it like Rockstar where you just get one person per character because you have that much money that you can afford to do it and I think with Rockstar it'd be easier because a lot of the NPCs and stuff they're supposed to be like parody people Mm. And um, so it, Simpsons works in the same way where Simpson is a cartoon and it's a comedy and stuff. So you can get away with reusing voices in a way. But with Skyrim mm-hmm. and Fallout, when it's trying to be much more serious, um, it, it doesn't funny. seem like it, it could work. As well. I, I do think it's noticeable in Simpsons when they have a guest star voice because they are so starkly different from the Simpsons world voices. Like, you know, Sideshow yeah. Bob, his voice is like <laughs> glorious. <laughs> No, oh, there were so many. Oh, sideshow Bob, like it's too good. You awful man, stay away from my son. Oh, I'll stay away, Marge. Stay away forever. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> Wait, that's not right. Go on. I'll Runs stay back. away Wait. forever. <laughs> Wait, Marge, I've got it. Say, stay away from my son. No. <laughs> <laughs> like, this That's the thing about the Simpsons. So many of the jokes you don't even like. They're just fucking funny. How else do you explain it, right? They just lots of weird play. They're just people making mistakes that are very much mm-hmm. character driven or playing on tropes. There's loads of shit they did, and really the references cool. are so on point. Because again, that reference was that was Cape Fear. Like that was that oh, was just basically um, a big parody of Cape Fear. When I was watching it with Rags, I think like three different times I was like, "Oh, that was a reference to thing." By the way, if you haven't seen it, oh, that was a reference to the, 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 you know, like um when Lisa is trying to give Chief Twin Wiggum Peaks? the clues. Yeah, yeah. It's yeah, like a re- I, you told me that, but I'd never seen Twin Peaks, so you, I didn't know. Because they do the thing. To me, it was just weird. Yeah, because the, the the joke is, of course, I think the way that they do it is that uh, you see like a, a word, you hear it, and you try and pronounce it backwards, and then they flip it in post, so it makes it sound really like creepy. Um, so she's speaking words all the way like that, and I think she says, um, uh, "Suit burns look better." I think she says something like that the 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 mysterious sort of element of it, like in Twin Peaks, to figure out is she's talking about inspecting Burns' suit. Like, Chief Wiggum just doesn't get it. He's like, I don't understand. She's like, Burns' suit. And she's holding, like, a card that's the suit is burning, Burns' suit. And, she, and he's just like, huh? <laughs> she goes, look at Burns' suit. And he goes, oh. <laughs> it's, uh, I, I actually, fun. I think the joke that came right after that was actually funnier. Where the other cop comes up to him and he asks him, it, it, did, he, did he have, did you also... Have the super weird dream with the burning card magic trick, and he's like, "I'm driving." <laughs> and that made me really. That was just really funny to me. It's just I. It, it's just well paced, and comedy mm-hmm. is you know a big part of its timing, and it's very. It, it just it works really well. It's like it rolls it off was, the tongue. Which one really it? does, doesn't it? Oh, the Hank Scorpio episode of season eight. Shit. Oh, Hank Scorpio, so it's just crazy that he's so likable when he's a Everyone super loves villain. Because <laughs> he's so <laughs> nice to Homer. Um, I, I think that's kind of interesting though, isn't it? It almost <clears throat> sort of tells you something about how how our priorities can be, that you've got this dude throwing like grenades at a bunch of people trying to get him for his doomsday device, but he's talking to Homer and like, oh, you know, like, stick around, we'll go bowling. And then a guy runs around in the background on the fire. Yeah. 
This thing is really the hard chick. to dislike. Yeah, he's such a nice guy, except when he's talking dental to the... Plan. The... The... Uh, Monorail. Dental plan, yeah. You guys gotta stop referencing, we'll never stop. Alright, moving on. So, hello everyone, welcome. EFAP136, I think? That's um, what it says. I think so. Three that might be true. being the key detail in that, because there's three of us, and uh, I've called it the EFAP triple threat versus quad damage, because I can't come up with anything smarter than that. We're going to be covering triple potentially threat. four videos, quadrural videos. Yeah, that's not, I, yeah, that's... Uh, hey, Rax, come up with something better on the spot and I will change it. For the title of the, um, the stream that we're doing? Go for a it. A better title? You know what, I opened this to chat too, because I, I couldn't think of anything. I think the EFAP triple threat um, part is okay, but the quad damage part is just kind of like, huh? Yeah, triple threat's okay, but I guess threat sort of implies... Because it's for our audience, and our, I don't know if our audience would consider us threats. But we're against very, the like, thing. Like, I'm not threatening. I'm we're very, a threat to the I'm thing we're against. It's in the title, rag. Right? Versus. It's not a threat to the audience. They'll be fine. I feel like hmm. it's still kind of, like, in general, like a threat. Like, I don't want people to see me as a threat. I want people to see me as, um, I don't know, what's a good example? Like, um, do you want it to call it the EFAP three way? Someone just suggested. <laughs> I, 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 no, I feel like a three way wouldn't, it doesn't convey the, you know, I guess the message. Oh, you reckon? No, oh, yeah, I, I don't think so because a, a three way implies that the three people are in a contained, semi organized kind of. Thing amongst themselves will say and we are on one team going mm -hmm. against another team like if there were two different threesomes that were being ranked and scored based on a wide variety of different attributes and move sets and executions and things of that nature sure but i don't know i just i don't know about trip i don't know about threesome i like triple threat more because threat you you could say you know it's a threat to them you brought up, which I think makes more sense than a threesome. Um, but I don't know. I'd have to give it um, give it some well, thought. You, know I, I don't you think, think on that, at and all. I I will literally just just alter it during the stream because we have the technology. And uh, it's all in caps too. Oh yeah, it's a it's a bold title. It's, it's like it's yelling at me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you come with any about replacement, the, the quad right damage, because that's, I think people are getting confused by that. Like, what is the quad damage referring to? Well, it's four people dealing damage to our brains. How about that? Ah, uh, okay. I see. <laughs> yeah, that <laughs> Maybe work. If we had a, something we could do with the, well, the show we're talking about is going to be the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which mm -hmm. already, I'm really starting to hate that name. Because it's so uh, long and clunky. To fat twist, yeah, it, it doesn't. <laughs> it's it's very clunky and long, and it doesn't have a fun acronym. Mm. Uh, Remember, it's, it's fat twist. That that isn't a fun acronym. Fat twist. Fat twist. Well, yeah, it would be to fat yeah, twist because yeah, we don't want to declare <laughs> fat was here on this show. I don't know if I have the ability to do that. To fat twist. Mm. Um. I've, yeah, because even with like The Last Jedi, TLJ, it's like, okay, that's nice and easy. Three syllables, TLJ, nice and simple. Mm -hmm. uh, the Rise of Skywalker, Tross, one syllable, little, makes a little word there, right? Mm -hmm. Um, mm -hmm. But The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, uh, I hate it. Because especially when you have to type it out, it's bad enough Why when you're saying it. Why couldn't it be like Loki, just... where it's just Loki? It's really easy. Yeah, and you know, WandaVision, I think that works. Which is yeah. funny because people thought it was a shit name at first, um, hmm. but Did they? then it all kind of yeah, they were like, "That's it, stupid." Why it works on the level of that. like it's Wanda's vision as well, you know, as in like we yeah, see, I think it works yeah. on several levels. It's a shame that the show doesn't. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, what we're opening up with today for some funsies is there was a thread talking about how we're the worst people ever, as per usual. Um, Part of it really amused me, right? So they were talking about how, um, how like almost pathetic it is that we watched uh, Taxi Driver King of Comedy and Falling Down before doing like a take on how they relate to Joker and so they... the other Walking Phoenix one. Oh, yes, you were yeah, never really, you were here, never really here. 
Yeah, I think it, I think that's it. I always feel like I'm gonna get the name wrong. Um, I I want to so, confuse it with I'm thinking of ending things. <clears throat> Nobody would want to be confused with that movie. Uh, they don't so, feel like names. They just feel like statements that might slip out well, in any <laughs> random conversation. It's very autistic, though, isn't it? Or what they go in for? It's like uh, you're never really here. So thinking of ending things. They were they were trying to point out how terrible it is that we watched them before doing that, and I was really confused. I was like, isn't that like, isn't that a, a thing that we should do? If we want to talk, like compare them, should we refresh our... Really weird, I've never been called out for watching the things before I talk about them, right? And, and of who course, did that? Uh, so there was just a thread, and there was a really upvoted comment saying like, oh my god, this such sort of losers, they, they watched those movies beforehand. And someone responded with this, which uh, I happen to think was relatively reasonable. Because right, I'm like, who you... the fuck has a problem with that? Do you want to give that a read? Yeah, let's see here. Um, comment. What? They watched it to see if there was a one-to-one -one comparison between them and Joker, because every film snob who hated on Joker claimed it was an inferior version of Taxi Driver slash King of Comedy slash Falling Down. Of course, they had an obligation to otherwise... Oh, of course they had an obligation to otherwise, you'd claim... What an interesting sentence. Mm. Of course, <laughs> they had an obligation to... Otherwise, you'd claim they didn't watch those movies to see the comparison. See, this is where I like commas. Yes. Commas are great. Yeah. Um, uh, you've essentially made it so Mahler and crew can't win in your eyes. So. Which is true. Yeah, if we hadn't watched them, they'd be like, they didn't even watch them beforehand. How can they really comment on this? And by the way, if the implication was like, I've never, it's like embarrassing you've never seen these before. So I had seen Taxi Driver, I can't remember if I had seen King of Comedy before, and I definitely watched Falling Down when I was super young. Um... But that's irrelevant, like, entirely. I had not seen any of them before we'd watched them for the Joker video. That which, was the first time I'd seen them. Which I honestly think is a major benefit to have someone who hasn't been influenced by not only having seen them when they were much younger, or as they were getting older, but being surrounded by people saying they're amazing. You instead watch them in an isolated sort of uh, environment, you're just like, this is what I thought I saw, you know, that sort of thing. Very useful. Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. So, you, you yeah. think, like, well, what can be the response to this, right? What could they possibly say? Um, <laughs> I, was, I was impressed with the response, let's just put it that way. Alright, here we go. The response to that is, that's right, they can't, because they fucking suck. Well, that's perfectly reasonable. <laughs> this is like, oh. Alright, well, well, they can't... It, if someone's bad, if if you have a dichotomous proposition like, will EFAP watch the material or will they not watch the material? And it's bad either way, you might not be a reasonable person. Maybe. Now, Maybe. that's it for Reddit, because we all know Reddit sucks. Uh, but you know what else sucks? It might even suck more with a classic, Twitter wonderful Ooh. social media space. I think Twitter does suck more. It's, you know, it's always a tough competition between the lot. Uh, I don't know if you knew this already, I, I'm pretty sure Fringy does, but someone found the Jenny Nicholson stream again and posted oh about boy. it, basically just the, the two images next to each other and just be like, you know, like, oof. And then all yep. the comments came in. Wonderful. Wonderful oh, comments. I can't believe that they did that thing that whatever the thing is that they did. I can't believe they did it. Those... Oh, uh, one of the first ones. This is wonderful. Uh, here we go. Uh, this guy says... Um, his name is No Lives Matter Till Black Lives Do. All right. Uh, so they spent almost half an excessively long podcast on her because a woman had an opinion mm, on a, a movie they didn't like. Sound totally normal to me. I guess That's rolling eye emoji. A woman. A woman. woman. Which woman. is always a woman. Women. Oh, I, I gave this person the benefit of the doubt. I shouldn't after reading their name, but. Um, always super interesting to hear that one because we cover 98% male, I think. If not 99. It might be even more. Yeah. Because we're over. Because wow. we've only covered Cause... women twice, right? Uh, Three EFAPs, I believe. We covered Jenny twice and Sarah Z once. I think that is it. For well, women. yeah. And Sarah Z was probably the video that to this day remains the most unscathed. Yeah. Ones that we've covered. Not counting like a, a tonal or like when we showed um, uh, Ahoy, a video that we go in like very much prepared yeah, yeah. to check out the arguments and address them. It's like that one came out. So, Probably one of the most positively out of all the ones we've covered. So we're at 136, right? Um, yeah. We're going to assume that we do... Let's say we do just two videos today. Because we never get to as many as we hope we do. 
uh, because these videos we cover are very bad and men mostly make them. Mm -hmm. So 136. uh, So what percentage? How would you find the percentage? I think we have we cover an average of two videos probably per episode, right? You could say that if you times. Um, We've 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 had ones where we've covered like. So that'd be 266 men or 266 videos by men. I mean, we've definitely covered one per video. I would assume there's a couple of ones where we have really long videos, I guess, that we cover half and half. True. Um, mm. Well, so that means that in two percent of podcasts, we even cover a woman, <laughs> right? So in in just two percent of podcasts, we've covered a woman. Which However, is- if you think about videos, if we do one thirty six times two, so let's say we cover two hundred and seventy two videos, um. And we've covered three by women. I'm not going to count Zero Z, actually, because that... Well, let's go ahead and do it. Let's say three... That'd be three divided by 272, right? Mm. So, 1%. Well, it would obviously, it wouldn't really matter anyway, but I find it amusing because it's like, hmm, that does seem kind of sexist, actually, if you think about it. But it's actually explained by the fact that the majority of video essay stuff is done by males rather than females on the internet. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, 99% of videos covered are um, men. But you know what? Like... It's not enough. 99% male coverage is not enough because Twitter is full of very reasonable people who don't just talk when they have something to say regardless well, of how I guess informed they are. I just feel like it's Freudian almost. It's like... They didn't like it because a woman had an opinion on a movie. It's like, oh, that wasn't like super relevant. So nope. that that isn't relevant to me. Uh, speaking, yeah, of... women are just as capable as men at being fucking retarded. So <laughs> yeah. we don't really mind at all. We're very equal opportunity uh, critics. Give, give a go at this one, right? This is a all right. Uh, <laughs> the Joker movie was good, and the straight white boys didn't understand the message of the movie at all. But that's not the movie's fault. It was interesting, too, because she hypothesized, uh, Jenna, Jenny, Jebby, hypothesized that perhaps the theme of the film was that you shouldn't take your medication. <laughs> She's very good at her job. Um, the, this guy said, it was a refreshing take on comic book movies, but I kind of understand some criticisms of it, but making an 11-hour video is petty as shit. Uh, I don't think this person is friends. Uh, I know the whole video isn't about that, but you must have spent a good chunk of time responding to the girl. So again, like wh- first off, the random capitalization of time. Interesting. Strange. Strange. It, it is because you couldn't accidentally have done that. You have to specifically type in shift well, time without anything else, right? When you're writing a sentence and you feel like you're about to, the, this word's important because this is the the qualifier in a way. You're like, this one should be capitalized, and your brain's like, no, it doesn't. That's not how it works, though. Just, um, do and then we have responding to the girl again with the specifications. Um, do they ever say to the to the man or the men? And, and this is one of the things I, well, I they call the straight white. Like, oh yeah, they called you straight. Get fucked. They call the, straight, straight, white they call the fucked. straight white boys, which only applies to one of the three of yeah. us. <laughs> so statistically, that's worse than guessing. <laughs> <laughs> Right, actually. <laughs> but that's okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, also, I'd be curious if this person ever told us what the message of the movie is, because I don't think it's a per- it's not a difficult movie to understand, right? I don't, I don't yeah, think I it's intended so. to well, be. Well, so, we watched a lot of people. Well, try it to might understand be difficult it, so. if you're Jenna Jenny Nicholson or Movie Bob. It might be or the Young Turks. Yeah. It might, yeah. It? If yeah, you'd expect Joker the opposite if this is their you know job, women. but. Yeah. Yeah. Um, um, very. Yeah, uh, Eleven hours is petty. I didn't know that. Oh, I didn't know I'm either because I remember having a really good time and enjoying mm-hmm. myself uh, talking with my I've, friendos. We've shown comments well, before, but there's but, people uh, who are like, I checked it out because I was like basically blown away. But the, like the idea of eleven hours of incels ranting about women, and then I was like, oh, it's actually just a chill, fun time. It's like, yeah, that's. Yeah. How about that? If we didn't well, enjoy this, we probably wouldn't be doing it. I guess what I find interesting is that it's like, oh, one one day a week they do a, a long show. Meanwhile, it's not uncommon for people who stream to regularly stream for like six hours a day, several days in the week, but that's fine. 
They also often... Well, it's okay to go to your fucking miserable ass job that you hate for eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. But hanging out with your friends and enjoying yourself for 11 hours, <laughs> that's insane. That's unfathomable. I, can't, I, can't I, I don't hang out with it. my friends and have fun for 11 hours. But these oh, are the same people. And I'm sorry if you can't. If you can't, maybe you're just boring or your friends are boring. I don't know. You should have put more points into charisma. And they, these are the same people that will also, also like celebrate on Twitter being like, Oh my god, I watched like two seasons of Community today. You're like, huh. Just all in a row? And it's like, yeah. And you're like, hmm. Oh. You're like... By yourself? Mm. Yep. So, uh, this one, uh, I, I just tweeted out as like, this is just the whole thing in a nutshell. I quite love this interaction. Oh boy, here we go. Uh, let's see. Um, listening to a... What is, well, okay, I guess Quad's on my is there is there a functional difference between a parasol and an umbrella? Uh, functional? I mean, parasols are usually much bigger, right? I don't, I don't know, actually. Um... Uh, here, sure let, me, that... let me actually look at it. Well, because their name is a is a is an umbrella that's being rained on, and I didn't know if I wanted to mention it. And then I was like, "Is that an umbrella or a parasol?" Oh, it's definitely I don't an know. umbrella. Yeah, parasols uh, are like for beaches and stuff, and you stick them in like the they they're more sun protection than rain protection. Uh, let me see. Uh, generally, an umbrella has a curved handle to allow for easy grip and storage. A parasol, however, in Latin, para for shelter or shield, and sol for sun. Mm. Uh, is typically constructed from more delicate fabric, such as lace, cotton, silk, linen, canvas, and plastic. Which oh, is odd because, umbrella. well, no, what's what a strange thing to say because that doesn't really tell me anything at all about the difference. Huh. One is about Arch. one is about the shape and construction. Uh, well, one is about um, the shape, like a curved handle, easy grip and storage, and the other is eh, it's typically made out of lace, cotton, silk, linen, canvas, Presumably. and plastic. <laughs> and so, like, I that doesn't help me at all. I th well, I, I think that I think they're telling you that to imply like so the parasol's goal isn't to block out the sun, but to reduce its effect on you as it comes in. While the the umbrella is meant to protect you fully from water, so like it's stronger um, materials. I think I think this is the difference. I, I I'm not an expert on umbrellas and parasols. It says that a a straight shaft and handle are standard characteristics of parasol formation. Let me look up. A so does it seem to be? Does it seem to be just the the handle? Well, is the difference between the two, which is. I mean, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but I've always known parasols are much larger, and you don't like hold them; you put them into something. Like put them in stands them. and yeah. stuff. Like at the oh, hole in the middle of the table outside. Oh, here I found I found a picture. I think you're right. Um, let me let me show this. Here we go. This is handy. Uh, let's let's read. Let's Ooh. explore. Um, so. It looks like a parasol is a parasol thick fabric. Parasol has no handle. That's the big ah, thing. Yeah. <laughs> so it does seem to be one is for mobility, and the other is like uh, it's not as portable. It's not. It's not. It's not portable. It's to, Yeah. It's like you said. You stick it in things like stands or over tables. Yeah. Um, what's really strange is that look at the last one in design. Umbrellas are modern and innovative. Um, what? Whereas parasols are classic and standard, I was on board with this until that last one. Yeah, I don't, I don't see what that seems almost a bit, you know, judgmental. Like you're letting your opinion yeah, slip I, in there. I, I fully disagree. Triconville.com. My, I, I was on board with this. I can no longer recommend this. I, I said it was very helpful. I will but... no longer display that bottom portion to protect the integrity. Yeah, this is 80% helpful. The last is con <laughs> last one's confusing. And it doesn't help that they led me to that conclusion, because look at the pictures of a parasol and the umbrella. The umbrella is red on top, black and white stripes on the bottom. That's bold, right? And it's, it's like everyone else will see the red. But you get to enjoy the black and white. Oh my god! So it's kind of mm, they got thick fabric, a little bit exclusive. Sunbrella. Do they, does anyone ever call it a sunbrella? I, li I like this. Well, very... that's the fabric, right? Is that what is called sunbrella? Let me look up sunbrella. So, sunbrella leader in performance fabric. Oh my god! Is oh, is it like a brand? I think sunbrella is a brand. Oh, okay, that makes more sense. Oh, so they're giving us examples of brands sunbrella. And Sunproof, which All I guess right. could probably, probably the name of a company. But yeah, I guess Sun, yeah, like uh, those are brands. Do they give brands for Opanji and Nylon? That's fair enough. Hmm. I assume Ponji is a company. I don't. 
As do I. Anyway. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, uh, so uh, Umbrella says, because now I know it's an umbrella, because you could tell, because mm. it has the, the, the curved hooks. Even have the end. rain on there, too. Yeah, it's also uh, stylish and innovative. Um, <laughs> uh, they say, uh, listening to, it should be Anne, 11 hour podcast is probably the lowest of the low. You're hitting wow. it first, everyone. Chat. Lowest, of, lowest the low. of the low. I mean, in the gloom here, thank you for not having a picture. I, I don't know if I could take another exploration session. Uh, he says, I mean, I'll listen while it works. So like four hours one day, four the next day, and so on until it's done. And then they say that's reasonable enough. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that was a nice little, that was like a little mini Simpsons episode. The we got lowest a nice short, of the low. Full story, yeah. The lowest that of was the a, low. That yeah. was a quick turnaround, like the end of an umbrella handle. Yeah, they they kind of just they sort of they under, they saw the argument. They were like, Gave I will up. accept it. Yeah, that was a good argument. Yeah. I have been enlightened. Well, I guess that's good, right? That's well, probably it better is. than if they were getting super defensive. But it's simultaneously yeah. a little bit disheartening that people out there can't figure this out for themselves. They're like, why would you ever watch yeah. a longer podcast? What scenario are you able to listen things to things to an extended amount of time? And someone goes, oh, while at work, and they go, whoa. And like, to and from right work, and so you wonder, like, are they aware of work and stuff like that? Do they know about it? I don't know. And it's like, well, it's lounging around because generally, when I listen to stuff, I very rarely will sit down and fully oh, yeah, give my attention else. to a YouTube video. I will be multitasking. I'll be mm -hmm. listening, and it'll be up on my side monitor, and I'll peer over once in a while. Um, what a shame. most people do. What a shame. Yeah. Um, Glad they came around though. And now, what you may no. call the coup de grace for these Twitter people. The, uh, the, the peak, peak. Grace. the intellect, intellectual piece, peak words of intelligence. All right, here we go. You ready? Here we, here go. we go. Jack says, I will never watch 12 hours of shit just to see if three morons actually talk about a very specific kind of shit. I don't care if I make false assumptions. It's 12 fucking hours. Man, just bold face <laughs> saying I don't care if I'm potentially very wrong. <laughs> like, yeah. That is a weird long. one. Like, That's it, a way to go through life, and you know what? I mean... They're usually pretty stupid, but this one I was like, oh, you just straight up was... said, like, I'm going to belittle you because because of time. Fuck you. That yeah. was uh, fascinating. And so when people are like, I mean, oh my god, you don't want to criticize Molly, you'll just get a bunch of people saying long man bad. I, I'm like, but you're all saying long man bad. Like, what? I'll never understand yeah, this I, logic. That's why we say it. You're why we say it. If no one ever made those statements anymore, we wouldn't, we wouldn't ever say it. You know? It's funny because it's true. That is the only that. argument. It's long, that's bad. Like, oh shit. How you spend your time should conform to my standards, which is funny considering that, like, one of the main things that gets talked about now lately is just the idea that, like, the things that you assume are standard is worth reconsidering that. Yes. Um, as well as these often come from the people who are like, you know, every position is valid, every approach is valid, and you shouldn't be trying to discriminate, and then simultaneously they'll Except be like, for that one. Yeah, except for the ones that yeah. upset me, and you're like, wow, you've just reset back to fucking square one, good job. Not <laughs> all content is appropriate for you. Oh, well, uh, that that's actually going to come so, up in more ways than one. Um, oh my god. Later, oh actually. no. So that'll no. be interesting. A little pin in that one. Uh, before we oh, get started with today's blooms, I want to, because I was, I was looking at the comments on the uh, the stream we did last night, and so I want to show the EFAP people just one of the highlights, okay? Just one of the things, because they were quite amusing. You guys remember what game we played, right? No? Okay. Wait, when? Wait, what? <laughs> yeah, what? <laughs> Neither of you listening. <laughs> I, I'm, I, I... I'm sorry, I didn't I, understand I just, what you meant. I went you a, didn't understand what I meant when I said we streamed a game last night. I, I do admit oh, that was quite complicated. Oh, I know what game we're talking about. Yeah, 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 we absolutely. Yeah. It, it, it worked out. I don't know what All she right. said before, but it must have been different. <laughs> okay, dokie. Well, I was gonna, I'm, I'm gonna throw up just, just one highlight, alright? And then uh, it'll be on them to go and yeah, find but... this stream and watch it for themselves. Okay, because uh, we we all fully recommend it, uh, I think. So, one, two, one, four, four. Here we are. 
Now, context for those in chat who have no idea what I'm about to show you. The idea is it works like telephone. It's called Gothic Phone. The this game's amazing. It is kind of amazing. Yep. The way it works is everybody has to create a prompt that starts a story, and then the, the, that story is like shifted around probably clockwise. It doesn't really matter. And so now I have to draw the picture that represents the story that, like, maybe Fringy just wrote. And then it gets swapped again, and Rags has to draw, well, write down a sentence that represents the drawing I just made. And by the end, it creates a little story. And so, I think, uh, this is just one of my favorites from the night, so I'll show you an example. As you can see on the screen here, this is where you're gonna be seeing uh, the stuff happen. Oh, no. oh. <laughs> a young prostitute tries meth for the first time. <laughs> Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. Love it, Brainy burned the tape on again. What? <laughs> so I just want to pause. <laughs> Meme repository is probably trying to say, is Brainy the name of the prostitute? Is that the idea there? Maybe he meant Brittany? Brittany, maybe, yeah. And so if but you I don't look... know how he gets an A to a Y from I and a T. Yeah. He wanted to say she burned the tampon again, but he spelled it so floompy that it came out burned <coughs> the tape on a geed. <laughs> so Fringy drew that. So Fringy just so it's Fringy will only see the sentence Brainy burned the tape on a geen. That's all he gets. Yeah. And it's about how the image changes over time based on people's descriptions of it. So, yes. so, so yeah, I thought works. a geen was a pink box. And so now, let's see how it progresses. Gambino keeps eating his pink box. Pagano? Dinosaur said about how pink is so pissed. Dinosaur is rather sad because he's so pissed. The progress of that is was phenomenal. <laughs> These, if you guys haven't seen that, this is what you're missing when you don't watch EFAP gaming, mm -hmm. right? This game is so much. You will definitely have us playing this again. This oh, is yes. th yeah. we played Champed Up a lot. This is better. This is way better. It I is think. Better. It's like if so if it were possible to be way better, it would have to be that it improves like loads of the mechanics, which it does. The game is like just it's faster, like it's more efficient at getting to laughs. And there's loads of modes, and it's all customizable. It's like, holy shit, you just improved completely. Um, and yeah. you said that game's free, right? It is free. Yes, yeah, it's, yeah, it's a browser game. It's unreal. I I'd yeah. pay for this. I would totally pay for yeah. it, the amount of laughs we got. This is really great. I, I'm, I'm very much looking forward to playing this again. Um, I guess I'll show one more example from the other ki kind of game that happens. Um, <laughs> Which was also good. I don't know if I like it better, maybe just a little bit less, but it's still good. Yeah, yeah, there's mm. loads of really funny things that can come out of it, like different kinds of jokes. In terms of uh, how things work. So for chat, right, the way this one works is that um, someone draws an image, and the next person sees it and has to replicate it based on... They, you can take as from much memory. time as you want to look at it, but as soon as you choose to stop looking at it, you have to go from memory. And so, it gets tougher and tougher to maintain, especially with the, the clock running out, like it gets faster and faster. So this is just an example of how it deteriorates. <laughs> I tried to start off super easy, so hopefully this one made it to the end. No. Uh, <laughs> no. This, oh, <laughs> yeah, I remember this one. I, I feel like, like this one has guys. to survive, why wouldn't it? No, one. you're not. No. <laughs> um, I, draw, I draw something like this pretty late in the game, I feel like. <laughs> I think I'm smaller for a round with the time. Alright, I think we can do it. Grading. No, it's not happening! <laughs> 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 oh my god, it's evolving and sensing! <laughs> <laughs> it became Satan. Oh, watching yeah. this again makes me smile. Well, yeah, we're probably gonna want to try and set up to play this again, like sooner rather than later, because it's just, you know, That's I'm curious. Great. Absolutely. If this one will even run out of steam, especially with with trading out like loads of different people to play it. Uh, oh, it was a fun one. Yeah. Um, 
because as some people are better than others, we'll say it. Wow. Uh, we won't be specific. I, I, yeah. how we're doing it. Yeah. But the people at meme repository is really bad at this game. <laughs> it's hilarious though. Yeah, you'll often just you'll just completely deviate everything. It's like, oh, it was going one way, but now it's going this way. But part of why that's so entertaining is to see people interpret his images and then how they move on. Yes, yeah. Um, he is you know the what? he is the the speed bump on the way to progress. Yeah, makes games called... very interesting. Yeah, and I recommend uh, if you have if you have friends, check it out with them. Gothic phone. Yeah. Um, so I'll... this wouldn't work for all the people on Twitter that we've been showing. No, no, it wouldn't. And yeah. of course, the uh, link is at the top of this video now. I just, I just saved it. So it'll be on Moolah eventually. Like all the uh, EFAB gamings are rolling out there. Um, eventually. And so that, that's about that for the intro because we kind of need to jump right in. Um, we have four Falcon Winter Soldier takes. We'll probably get through like two, and then we'll be like, oh no, we've hit thirteen hours. Damn. Oh Who knows? God. We will try. Yeah. As you can see, there are three of us. That is designed Hello. to help these, I'm Rags. the speed in which we can approach this because we'll have, like, a, there's four people's perspectives that we no longer have to spend time listening to and bouncing off, obviously, so we can go faster. That is the logic here. Four videos. This isn't because I never want to cover Falcon and the Winter Soldier again. That's not it. <laughs> I don't have a replacement yeah, reason, so, yeah. Well, because I mean, <laughs> I I would I would love to not have to think about that show again. Uh, not until that show made us I angry. Guess. Yeah, just so we're clear. Yeah, like, it wasn't like oh, ha, ha. Yeah. oh, that show was so funny what? with how bad it. No, the show upset us. Mm -hmm. well, yeah, because one division was for man This was frustrating. And you know what? Not nice to have frustration after we've just had such a fun gaming stream. You know, that's just not nice. Yeah, that's right. Life is filled with highs yeah, and lows, I guess. Face is still sore, and that doesn't happen often. Mm. <laughs> my um, back, I think. It, it your back? Flared up the, it flared up the pain in my back because I was laughing so much. For me, it was like <laughs> my, I think my lungs or my throat. I was just like so, like muscle was just was, like being stressed. My throat and my cheeks. My mm. cheeks get very sore when I laugh too much because you're like, you know, you, you, because of how your face works. Well, my face will, it works. I guess it coincidentally works the same as you guys. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, I feel like it's common for everyone. We have, of the four, um, I guess we'll reveal them as we go. But first, it's a person who has been covered once before, and the video was like, okay? It was like a 50-50, if I remember correctly, and it's someone who um, is welcome to come on if ever they want to. But I had a lot of people requesting us cover this video. It's seven minutes long. It's by Shefrilis Productions. Uh, he, he has okay. a take on this show. Uh, let's check it out, see what happens, see how it goes. Funding oh, for Shaperillus is provided by Squarespace, the sponsor Shape of today's Rillis. video. From websites and online stores yeah, to marketing Shape tools Rillis. and analytics, Squarespace is the all-in-one platform to build a beautiful- That is a very low-res- Yeah, I was about to say, is that me? Or is that watched together? It, it is, is it the video? No, that's right, gotta me... be- No, the videos are way clear, this is him. Sometimes my watch together is a bit blurry, but I- Let me see. No, it's it's in the video. It's 1080p, but the image is like not Why <laughs> clearly. Do that? How lazy are you? Fucking hell! They're paying you money, and you I can't even provide... just have the logo be not blurry. I thought Jesus they provide uh, materials. I like thought that. they did provide art for people. They yeah. did for me when I did one uh, hmm. promotion. Not for them, but you know. Maybe he only does yeah. 480p wow. videos. You don't know. Yeah. Hmm. hmm. It'll render quicker. I know that. So, yeah, yeah definitely. You'll save like. You say like two whole seconds in the render. Yes. A beautiful online presence and run your business. Mm -hmm. Hey yo. It's, I guess it's doubly ironic because he's talking about how Squarespace will give you a, be a beautiful online presence <laughs> and he's using a blurry ass JPEG. And it's, I don't know. That's, Maybe it could have been better oh, if he was time. like, could turn this into this and it gets like 4K image. And you're like, oh. Ah, oof, yeah. Love it. Hmm. All right. The review Captain Falcon show. I still can't believe they name dropped Captain Falcon in the finale. Like, hot damn. Good thing Nintendo doesn't ever use him or Marvel. Again, with these low quality. Marvel would get so somewhere. sued. So, anyway, I thought the show was. Ooh. What's... I don't even get the oh, reference. Oh, no. Look what did at he that. do? Squeeze... Squeezed it in. Wait, did he. Did he unwidescreen it? Did he stretch it up and down? Ew. Because oh. I don't touch movies when I. No, I, I, to. I, I don't touch them. <laughs> they were made that way on purpose. Like, like Zack Snyder's Justice League. 
Don't. Yeah. So, this, so this is the thing. I don't even know if we've really talked about it, but like aspect ratio is a thing. And there's a couple of choices you can make when you're uh, creating your videos. For example, if you're dealing with, let's say you're cutting up Zack Snyder's Justice League, Justice League, as well as a TV show that maybe is full screen. So you're dealing with three different aspect ratios. You can make the choice to essentially falsify the others to be four by three, but then you can have to be very careful, which is not what High Top and Brown Table did with um, approaching the videos in terms of like how you cut uh, the things that weren't 4x3, right? For example, if you're going to cut this by 4x3, you probably start around just to the left of Falcon and you end on uh, cutting out the other side. You, you try and capture the what is hopefully the part of the screen. But at the same time, uh, this is something that High Top and Brown Table should respect more than even we would. Uh, <laughs> there's a reason they shot it like this. They want all this in yeah, the frame. Yeah, preservation of the, you the, know, vision. The, the, the source material, you know? Yeah. Which, by the way... I, it's fine. I know we, we hate him. It's, it's fine. But uh, Joss Whedon has said that Buffy and Angel, uh, well, Buffy not Angel, but Buffy should only be watched in 4x3 because that's how it was like they filmed it with the intention of only what it was in the 4x3 to be seen, not the stuff on the sides. Mm -hmm. Creates lots of problems when you add it back in. Um, so yeah, you know, it, the, the, they know, right? Like I think when they're filming, they have little like they can have like a little square on the screen they have so that they know what is going to be in it, what is going to be out, all that stuff. So when you're making this decision, you're like, gosh, and I know that Phil Mento said this, is like, can my fans handle the 4x3? Like, I don't know. Which is very... <laughs> I don't know what to say about that. I'm just like, wow. All you have to say is, I'm gonna, I'm gonna show this in 4x3 because that's what the original da, -da, -da was. Or I'm gonna show it in this aspect ratio. And it takes two seconds to say that, and boom, it's covered. Yeah, for me, um... 4x3 is just like, well, it's different enough that I'm not gonna attempt to try and change it, like, zooming in. I will... Uh, consider it when um, putting like clips from you know like when Aquaman points. If I want that in future videos, I might zoom into him to make it match like widescreen or full screen. Yeah, because it's just him pointing that you care about in that image. And I think if you don't know what the Snyder Cut is and you see Jason Momoa pointing like that in a square, you're like, why did you make that a square? And it's like it's well, it wasn't okay. Well, <laughs> um, so there's an immersion factor. It's kind of where I'm going with this. If you yeah. wanted to make everything full screen, you could have zoomed in. Right, that's probably where I would have gone first, not stretching it. What I find strange is that he's already had, uh, like, 4 by 3 images. So why does he... why does he want to stretch this? I don't think this is for copyright. I don't, I don't it. think it'll make a difference. I don't, yeah, I don't know why just, this yeah. is happening. Yeah. So yeah, I guess, in conclusion, I would probably uh, say that maintaining the native aspect ratio of everything is totally fine. I wouldn't blame anybody for making that choice. If you want to try and fiddle with it to make it match better, for example, all of it's full screen except a few clips that are in... Um, uh, is it letterbox when they have the bars above and below? It's a, a shorthand. I can't quite remember. Uh, but I think so. If you decided yeah, to zoom is. in on that to make it look full screen when it's not, which I've done before, um, I think it can honestly help <laughs> in terms of that one guy out there who watches and goes, ooh, those sun black bars, now they're gone. That seems a little incongruent, even though it would be native, uh, presumably. <laughs> I think that's totally fine as a choice to make. But man, don't stretch it so that people start looking really weird at the sort of the locations. <laughs> it's distracting. I just don't, I'm not quite sure, sure why he did it, that's all. And I have a feeling we might be getting this for the whole video now, if this one is already like this. Oh. Oh. Look, just Damn. just acclimate. Well, nothing's we'll be been fine. right so far. It's all been bad. I mean, granted, we're 25 seconds in, but it's either been blurry say, right? or. Jesus. <clears throat> I mean, I'm mostly yeah. I'm mostly for giving us stuff like this if the script is all right. Yeah, it's just yeah. weird to see. For you, Tim. Mm -hmm. This video, it it looks dirty. It really like if you told me this was a 480p video, I'd have believed you. If you told me this video was from 2004, I would have believed you. Was YouTube started in 2005 or 4? Was it 2005. Five. Oh. Well. Oh man, <laughs> that, that even that <laughs> makes your point that, that even, even accents yeah. my joke further. Yes, it does. Or <laughs> Marvel would get so sued. So anyway, I thought what the show was pretty good Avengers with a few too. fatal flaws that keep it back from being pretty great. Before right. this show, I always found mm. Bucky to be one of the most boring MCU characters. Oh, what? Wow, wow, what an in what a what an interesting <clears throat> opinion. Uh, well. <laughs> What can you do when someone says something is boring? We'll wait for him, of course, to make his qualifications, yeah. but beforehand, I would argue he's possibly one of the most interesting in terms of Definitely. a normal man signs up to fight in World War One, is almost killed and saved by his best friend, who then joins a, like, what, what are, are they just, like, off the books, sort of the Howling Commandos, or are they, are they, um, they're just a really special I don't know, they're... 
They're like special Some, forces. Yeah. Special forces, yeah. So he joins that, and during one of the missions against a, a sect of the Nazis that specialize in like sci-fi technology is thrown from a train and before death is experimented on by the Nazis who found him to be given a mechanical arm because he lost it in the accident and uh, experimented on to the point of having super soldier abilities and then his mind is wiped and brainwashed into becoming a soldier for like all i feel like already we've gone way into how interesting he is i'm just like oh i haven't even finished the story yet we've like a third in mm. yeah i think oh sorry we'll watch yeah little dynamic so um yeah there's no need to keep going i just i just uh i know several people who yeah. are like very invested in the show because of bucky they were like i can't wait to finally have a sh something that focuses on bucky instead of him being like a secondary character Immense so, amounts which... of potentials that you can have with this character. There's a lot of stuff you could go with him. He could become fully heroic. He could become tragic. There's yeah. all kinds of things you could do. He's uh, very open-ended with how you want to resolve him. And they basically did nothing. <laughs> well, all. yeah. And it's such a shame. This show hurt him. Because the first thing you see is, like, he's reliving a, a Winter Soldier assassination, and he wakes up at night with PTSD having, you know, haunting him, and you're like, this is a fantastic start, good, this is, we're good, we're good, and then that's about it. <laughs> the rest of it's, like, really overt, or really thin, or he is ignored. It's like, and it almost yeah. seems to be, it's just like, they got the one bit that I think everybody would have gotten right, right, so that's, alright, you did that. Um, oh boy. So yeah, um, let's see why, why he thinks that. Like, yeah, he's suffering and all that, but they never really took the time to explore <laughs> his suffering. Yeah, he's just... suffering and all that, yeah. They yeah, did take the time to he's explore He's suffering, it but they never bit. explored it? Wouldn't that what be this this show would be? Like, we've got... You would the... think. I mean, he's he is the titular Winter Soldier. Suffering, you would think but that they, they would... explore it. That's amazing. Or something. I mean, I would even go just as far as saying Civil War, um... And Winter Soldier have lots of pieces that you get to uh, yep. appreciate. Absolutely. Yeah, like the idea that we haven't gone into it with more depth, and I should be like, I've been coming. I'm the one who doesn't like this show, and presumably he thinks it's good, if not great. This was the show to do it, right? Wouldn't you feel that way? Like finally, the I mean, show that can flesh yeah. him out. Strange, but all right. But they never really took the time to explore his suffering. They just thrust him into action where he doesn't have any personality, and we only care about him. Why would he have Steve personality in what? his missions? Wow. Also, he does have personality. He does. Yes. Uh, We've got so much. <laughs> he, just, how did he, he just said we we only care about him because Steve does. He doesn't have any personality. This is oh, this is intensely wrong. I care wrong. a lot about him. <sighs> oh, where to begin? So, yeah, where to begin? Uh, so, so I, yeah, I, think, the... I think there's an implication in what he said that, like, he just gets thrown in because they need action, but, like, that's not that's not what's happening. Like, it's he's critical to the plot of both films. Yeah. Like, he, um, he, it's also, he he is... he's a... Well, it, it makes sense to have him in action sequences. Yeah, of course. If you want action sequences, he's... it makes sense to use characters who would be in action sequences. Yeah. Naturally. Now, from my limited memory, okay, just, the, the yeah, first um, thing he's like, Bucky? And then he's like, who's Bucky? As a, as a sort of like, oh shit, so he's not just a soulless assassin, he actually even is like curious, he's got elements to him. Um, I can't remember correctly, but you know when uh, Robert Redford shoots the, the maid? Does he seem a little bit mm -hmm. unsettled by that at all? I can't remember, or is he just like, what? that's chill. I don't think so. Because he's obviously very much Is he in the point. shot? Um, he is. Oh, I think he is. Well, I, uh, I, going off memory of that particular, I remember the scene. I can't recall. Obviously, what I'm highlighting is like really small things, and then we crank it up to like mediums. Where, um, specifically, th this is like the big payoff in Winter Soldier, where Cap is like, "I'm gonna let you kill me." That's how much I believe in you, and obviously, mm -hmm. it gets through to him right when uh, he might think That's all right. is lost. Yeah, uh, saves him. Yeah, because because of course that's proof. That's Cap living his uh, full principle there. He's willing to die for it. Um, and then Civil War, we get lots of lines from Bucky that give you a strong insight to how he's feeling about everything. One of the ones I think that would be all of our favorites, or at least one of the many, is uh, when he says, "I remember all of them." A very all of them. strong mm -hmm. indication of the existence yeah. he has. And then, of course, talking to Steve about whether or not he believes he's even worth this. And then if you know Bucky from First Avenger, 
plus they're like bantering about the lives they had in the past. You've got a very, very normal, friendly person who's trapped underneath all of this the horror of his years, and we want him back. Yes. But he's got to deal with all the repercussions of having lived that life. Like I, I don't get it. Um, what's funny? That's a I think, really interesting arc. Is that like I know several people who's were, were like the most excited they were about characters in the MCU. Bucky was like at the top. Understandably so, because yeah. he's got Who a lot knows of what he'll do. potential. Yeah. And they blow I mean, it. he's, he's <laughs> yeah. surface level cool as well. People want to see more That's of true. him doing cool stuff. Yeah. And underneath it, you're like, oh, as well as he's got this interesting character that they can do a bunch of stuff with. Especially with how he ties into the MCU and the other characters. He's not just out there on his own. Oh, someone said, uh, he says, I'm with you till the end of the line. It's like, don't remind me, because... Cap was clearly not with him till the end of the line. <laughs> like, unfortunately. No, that's right. He abandoned him. <laughs> um, but yeah, of course, this is just considering everything up to. I mean, you know, Winter Soldier wasn't ruined by Endgame. Cap was damaged, of course. Uh, Winter Soldier was ruined by lots of portions of this very show. But apparently, he wasn't that interesting mm -hmm. to begin with. Which, honestly, I I don't even know that I've heard that take before. The new one. I haven't. Hmm. And Falcon was okay. He was pretty cool in Winter Soldier, but I stopped caring about him pretty quickly after that. Well, what, what do y'all? This sh what? Dude, guys, this is like this is what they call concise. It's like, oh, okay, all right. <laughs> I guess so then. Like, uh, moving on. Don't make me care about these guys. Probably because there's plenty of time to flesh them out and see them living life, coping with their insecurities and struggles and baggage. And insert that one line from Shrek that James uses in all his videos here. So, I mean, like, the idea of those things happening is, can, it exists. Yeah, I can see why someone would have said that's what they saw, but it's not yeah, really what was in but there. But that's not what happened. But you knew enough to know that that's what they were trying to do, but you just accepted that it was pulled off. But it wasn't. Not really. So, like, I'm getting, like, hardcore cosmonaut vibes from this, this video like in terms of just the argumentation style of just sort of throwing out thoughts without saying anything about why you think it and people just accepting it that's, that's... kind of like the vibe i'm getting from this well yeah it's not very persuasive so far it's just sort of no yes. okay. well this reminds me of like conversations i've had with people about media where they just say something like oh yeah i kind of stopped caring about it and then it's just like what the f what the fuck are you saying like what like well, what enough. is this i just stopped caring about it that's just my opinion. You know, well, yeah. These are just maybe. Like, that's how you would respond. He would say, "Uh, he would say, I'm just, I'm just sharing my thoughts." On it. So I'm sharing yeah, my thoughts because because oh. what I do. These are his uh, thoughts, uh, and he's sharing let's, them. Yeah. Let's yeah. see if they get. Better. I got really in both of them for the first time, but it's Falcon who really steals the show here. True, uh, he like no. destroys everything. Uh, he was the most boring. I mean, he was uh, uninteresting. His character was destroyed. He was insanely frustrating. That's and they focused on him way more than Bucky. That's kind of why I would say, like, maybe you're right, he kind of did steal the show. He kind of uh, took all of my attention in terms of just, like, I couldn't believe how horrible he'd become. Um, mm. He kind of, because he overshadows Bucky a lot of the time, where I try to remind myself, like, no, Bucky was a complete piece of shit in this, too. And I'm like, yeah, but Falcon was so much worse. Like, if you consider everything, it's like, yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's weird, because um, I actually, there was a post on the subreddit that was like, oh, this is kind of relevant to the whole um, Falcon Winter Soldier discussion. It was a video that goes over uh, Kitchen Nightmares, like reality shows, Big Brother, um, Britain's Got Talent, all those like sort of ones. And he basically like, categorizes how they use music to manipulate you, which is not oh, new yeah. for anybody um, here. Well, um, Kitchen Nightmares is really... Well, Kitchen it's on the, uh, on the American version. Yeah, well... Because uh, so, there's the two versions, yeah. Yeah, the he, British one's a lot better in terms Yeah, he of compares... The British one and the American one is, is a big part of the video, which is obviously one of the... I think most people are already aware of this, but we'll go over it anyway. So, in the British one, the example he has is um, Gordon Ramsay's like walking into the, the restaurant, and um, there's like a sort of standard beat, just, just background music where he's walking in, and mm -hmm. it just slowly fades out as he introduces himself to the woman and talks to her, and then she finally starts admitting that it's doing terrible, and that they could very well have to close. And then it cuts to like a wide, and he's like... This is the unfortunate reality for a lot of restaurants in Britain, and it's silent, right? He's just talking. Also, yeah, before you go further, um, I'll notice, I don't know if it'll be get, get brought up, I haven't seen this video, but Gordon Ramsay is the narrator for the British version. In the yes. American version, they have their own 
narrator narrating in third person what Gordon Ramsay's doing. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Uh, They didn't bring that up. I I couldn't even remember that myself, but yeah. Uh, So the American one, he talks about how they, um, they would have started with, like, that probably would have been their template, and then they were like, well, when you have moments that are, like, really shocking in the episodes that have almost been edited to, to be payoffs at particular points, musical cues come in with them. And then they, they keep doing it, and they, they, they're so, they're getting chunked up everywhere to the point where they start to have scenes that don't have music in them, and they're like, uh-oh, we better put music in them to make sure, because otherwise it's going to come across as strange now that there's even a portion without it. And there's this one scene they show... Where, like, it bounces in a matter of about 10 seconds to four different, like, musical crescendos to represent completely different emotional states. Like, uh, dramatic, horrible tension, to super uplifting, to sacrificial, yeah, this, to comedic. And you're just like, whoa, the this music is like whiplash. and the sound effects. They have the horror music, the strings, they have yeah. the mm-hmm. kind of, you know, And intense... they have, like, a very intense orchestral sort of music as well. Well, yes. kind of, where it's, like, lots of violins and, like, really quick... And and they use it in like Hell's Kitchen and stuff as well, um, but it feels more out of place in Kitchen Nightmares. I feel like there's, it just um, feels really another co- sad piano. Yeah, uh, there was another really cool example where he said uh, there was a, the the Britain's Got Talent one. There was this guy coming on stage, and his, his whole thing was a dog that you show what you've written on a card to, but not the guy, and then he'll talk to the dog, and the dog will tell him what you've written on it. That's the trick. And uh, sad music is already playing, and some of the people there are like sad. And he was like, "This is so confusing because this isn't sad at all. Like, what's what's happening?" And then once the trick's over, he explains the history of the dog, and it involves how the dog uh, jumped in front of someone going to stab him because he's a police officer, and it actually took the stab for him, which is like insane. Wow. And like everybody's wow. welling up while watching this video explain what the dog did, and it's just like, yeah. The music and the editing would try to prepare you for this because it doesn't quite come in natural. Well, you know, as naturally as it can, but at the same time, like it's, it's almost like a fuck up. They're just like, well, you got to get you sad because this is about to get very sad. Like the music is directing you because it can't have you think for yourself. Another comparison he does is, um, I think it's like a David Attenborough narrated nature show where he describes a crocodile, what it is. And what it does, and it's just moving through, and I don't think there's a soundtrack. And then he compares it to another, like, shittier nature program, where they have this, like, monster music, and it's just, like, this horrifying creature is going to hunt down. And, um, he's like, imagine they did this for when, like, a pigeon eats a worm, and he just does, creates that himself, and it's, like, hilarious, because it's, it's just making sure you have the emotion they want you to feel. Now, where do you think I'm going with this? Well, Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, mm. I think I. Hmm, I wonder if this there's show? a show. If there's a show that does this that we recently watched, yeah. show that's manipulated the fuck out of everybody. It really wants you to feel things, and it is very confident and very insistent that you feel certain ways with this show, regardless of context and regardless of what's actually happening. You need to feel this way at this scene. When you're looking at this guy, feel this way. When this happens, feel this way. Very, very obnoxious, I'd call it. And I feel, um, of course, you know, we just need. Uh, so, so just a quick example. You remember the one we were showing in the last uh, Ifa, where we, he tosses the shield at someone in neck, and they're like stunned, and then he kicks them across. Um, yeah. If we were able to just get an extra shot in here and then change the music, so he hits him with uh, the shield, it hits him in the neck. You make like a sharp, like shock sound, maybe even horror. And then a scream from the guy he did it to, and then he kicks him, a back-breaking sound, and then back breaks into the wall, and then it cuts to the extra shot we have is it shows Cap's face, and he looks down at himself, he looks back up, and he's like scared or shocked at what he's done, and we play the right musical cue, and then the scene carries on. Now that would be, that would be quite manipulative now, wouldn't it, compared to what they had in place, and it's just like, hmm. Well, they have those videos on YouTube where they take uh, shows... And movies and stuff, and they re-edit them to be like you know, such and such movie, but it's a horror film, and they just re-edit yeah. it and they change the music and some of the cuts, and it looks like a horror film, even though it's like a comedy or a kids movie. Well, man, you can it, was a, people are very was, easy to manipulate, and it's it's kind of it's awkward because people would say like, well, isn't that the point of music? And it'd be like, well, I think music probably ought to accentuate the emotions that you already have rather than like trying to warp what is a reasonable interpretation. Yeah, we want them to be congruent with the events. That's going to be the key factor. It's the sauce, not the meal. 
you know? Which, funnily yeah. enough, like it'd be... I was just mm -hmm. going to say, like, Kitchen Nightmares will often, at least at some points, have the correct emotion, quote-unquote, but they've, like, blown it up, and it's almost cartoonish, and it's uh, breakneck yeah. as well in terms of how it will change. And the, That's the issue, kitchen nightmares. Yeah, yeah. The the issue <laughs> there, a lot of people will claim, is just like it's not letting you experience it for yourself. You, you're almost being told with each part of the music exactly how to feel at all times. So it's like, yeah, there's also a level of subtlety you need as well. It's it's complex. Music is very complex. Yeah, music is like uh, it, good music is like a super soldier serum. It just makes you more of what you really are. Yeah. Right. But, well, yeah, exactly. It's because you think about appropriate tracks and like. Like when you watch, you know, Return of the Jedi, and then you have your epic space battle music for when the space battle is happening. But when you have your intense one-on-one, -on -one, you know, duel with Luke and Vader, it's appropriately somber. Well, somber kind of mixed with that one's hard to describe because it's so good. But it'd be really awkward, like if you watch Civil War and when when Steve is fighting Tony, if they were playing really happy, upbeat music, that would be really weird. Like, if they played the Avengers theme really optimistically as he stabbed the shield into his arc reactor, that would kind of take you out of it. To, um, jump this one ahead, because I just think it's very relevant, uh, Super Chat says, can't the same argument be made for the lack of music to manipulate an audience? No music can also warp your emotions? I really feel like I would argue the opposite. It's uh, giving you free reign to only react to the events that you're seeing on screen. And so if, if the, the point of seeing a, like a child murdered or something, you go, well, that's manipulating me to be sad. I'd be like, oh, well, now we're getting into a... <laughs> like, I don't even know what well, to say anymore. No, no music is... Uh, like, the application of no music is more like real life. So, and in... Yeah, I'm not sure what to... Because, like, music isn't depending on what the story is, is like a non-diegetic element. It's like an extra thing that's getting added on. So if you're watching like Saving Private Ryan, the, the whole point of there being no music is like, oh, this is the experience at this particular moment and you just need to take it in. If they had yeah. music, and, and it was, I think we mentioned it on the stream, like that movie Fury, which has a lot of music that always is insisting like how you're meant to feel about what's happening. Like this is a tank battle, it's really intense. This part's really sad. We need to play this music, and it's like, mm, you, let, you let people like figure yeah, it out I mean, for themselves. If you had like a fight scene between maybe Cap and Iron Man, and it's uh, nobody's really getting hurt, and it's bouncing forward, and it's got epic music, but then um, the music would suddenly cut. I think it would put us all in a position of like, you know, and the Ooh, punches are really yeah. sounding really hard. The dream is over. Yeah, the, yeah, we're the like the fantasy's uh -oh. over. This is what could really happen. It's real, and in the real world, there is no soundtrack. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> yeah, this this show oh, manipulates yeah. the shit out of people, and it really annoyed us. That is that is a conclusion. It used music and camera work for the majority of uh, how it manipulates you. Um, yes, I think the idea that Falcon and Bucky ditched Lamar and Cap isn't something that basically anybody who likes the shows even thought was a thing that happened. I don't think they even considered it. And it's because the, the the direction and like the 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 attitude of the show is just not actually acknowledging it. It's just like, nah, it's fine. It was not a thing. Shut up. So no, it, it reminds me of the Wonder Woman shit, yeah. where it's like, well, you know, you guys are interpreting that that happened. It's like, no, we're not. That's just what happened. Yeah. That James uses in all his videos here. I got really invested in both of them for the first time, but it's Falcon who really steals the show here. Sam trying to come to terms with what Steve wanted for him, compared to his own hesitation about being a black man holding the shield, is really oh, powerful off. stuff. I love everything with. I but remember, it's incongruous because yeah, it we never got sense. that in in Endgame. That was not the impression that that scene leaves you with. That he doesn't think that he could be Captain America. Yeah, this, uh, again, unfortunately, because, the, world, because of, yeah. the world as built wasn't ready for any of this. You needed to uh, let everybody know who was writing all those other stories that this is where you were going so they could actually have these issues rise up instead of just being plonked on. Because mm -hmm. some other creator will probably come along at some point and not address any of this stuff because they're doing their story. So we're just going to have to... It, it, like, it, to me, it's just like the fucking... almost like shallowest form of just telling stories in a in a world. I don't care. I just want to tell my own. Isaiah Bradley and how tragic his story is. I like that scene in the second <sighs> episode where the pig. Well, here's the thing. I never felt like just it was a tragic story. Wait, did he call them pigs? Did he? What? Wait. Hold on. Can we? The thing with can Isaiah Bradley and how tragic his story is. I like that scene in the second episode where the pigs harass Sam. Before 
pigs. Yeah, he, he called them pigs. Yeah. He called the cops pigs. Oh, that's great. Wow. <laughs> uh, okay. I'm sure. Wow. All right. <sighs> Y'all need to just put your money where your mouth is and put yourself on a list so that whenever there is an issue, whenever you have a car accident or if anyone ever mugs you, robs you, assaults you, whenever anything happens, you're just on a do not help list for the, the pigs because you don't you don't want the pigs helping you out. Wait. So whenever you need something and you call 911, they're like, oh, sorry. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we're You're on the list where we don't. You know, you didn't. Act, you don't actually like us or respect us or want us, so we're not going to help you out at all. I like how as well it's Oof. um. Wow. It's even worse than you might imagine too, because to call the one that made the mistake a pig, because you think that they're like, I don't know, hyper prejudiced and a bad person. What about the ones that just turn up to do their job? What about the one that corrects the police officer that made the mistake? Are they all pigs? Like, oh, okay. Yeah, um, it's a great attitude. Wow. <laughs> like, um, they're right. just because remember profiling and uh, profiling a huge group of people based on the actions of a small minority. That's very very bad to do. Mm -hmm. All right, we shouldn't ever do that. That's mm -hmm. definitely not something that's cool. However, Pigs. if that group is police officers, then it's okay for you to take that and apply that to the entire group as a whole unfairly. But these are very principled people who are very intelligent. And yeah, just to, to back up what you said, it's just like, um, believe me, like, I hope you never get into a situation where you really need the cops then, like, because you'll just be like, ugh, look at them helping me, those pigs. <laughs> oh, I can't believe okay. it. Ugh. So are the black cops, are they pigs too? Presumably. Or... Yeah, I, I imagine guess. that they would say that, yeah. It's like, because they can, right? Yeah, all yeah, cops they, are I, baguettes, as all, Alex All Davis cops, yeah, All cops all are baguettes. Like... <laughs> I, I kind of like that the a cab thing exists because it's so it's so nice when you're when someone has that in like their profile you know that just instantly you don't have to care about anything that they say that's pretty you can just dumb. move on to another per you, you just move on to another person because this is not a reasonable individual that you should take seriously so it's it's really a time saver uh yeah so you can do the isaiah thing um his story it's a it's a tragic story that they made up for this uh i don't feel like it's mm. real well yeah in so the sense that a story taller. can be real so yeah for it us, feels artificial there's no difference between what the writers told me about isaiah's story as there is with someone going i want to make my story about how hot it was for a black guy You're like okay um you didn't really get past that did you because integrating him just like damaged everything but no oh well <laughs> this is like i don't care because they had this story that they wanted to tell and they don't care that it's part of a big universe where there are implications for this <laughs> and then falcon is like you're telling me there's a black superhero this whole time well super soldiers like that wasn't and that clearly wasn't the fucking issue with what we just heard it was a human being has been yeah, yeah okay uh <sighs> yeah i i th they they this it gets into the aspect of with marvel now the world doesn't have that continuity that it no. used to no. because we know but... that in a show they are more than willing to make up something on the spot retroactively that they wanted to happen but didn't actually happen so that they could say the thing that they want to say you don't get a sense of permanence of anything happening I mean, it's, it, it's, especially now with bringing people back to life and retconning things. They're going full comic book in terms of what they're doing with this, which is fascinating when you see them talk about how apparently they have 10 to 15 people whose responsibility is to make sure that everything is like consistent in the universe. Uh, I mean, you hear that for a lot of these franchises, like Star Wars has that person too. But like, I don't understand what's happening because like <laughs> this can't work. You can't just drop Isaiah in say that he's been around since like the 50s as a super soldier and that there were other super soldiers and have it never come up ever in any other stories also, except he, for now also he beat the shit out of winter soldier winter soldier never told steve this during civil war when mm. all the super soldier shit came up he's just like ah I, and if you would ask them on set you'd have been like what do you mean you're making all this up and i'd be like yeah because <laughs> it's not a part of the story oh mm. well 
of everything with yeah. Isaiah Bradley and how tragic his story is. I like that You're scene in the fool. second episode where the pigs harass Sam before realizing he's an Avenger and being like, Oh, sorry, I didn't recognize you. Because it's unfortunately pretty realistic. This is the no, first MCU. No, it isn't. Yeah, it's not. really real. Yeah, this is. Pretty realistic. So how, many times, how many times does something have to happen? Like, percentage-wise of the times it happens, right? Until it becomes realistic or not is it just one time does just it have like, to happen once i feel like most what? i feel like a lot of people just recognize anthony mackie if they saw him let yeah. alone like in this universe falcon one of the avengers yeah. everybody knows who he is they're not gonna that's one of the issues with the show is. super selective recognition of these two people of who we, yeah and, and i would everybody, argue everybody knows who these people are we're closer yeah. to highlighting a different kind of issue where celebrity status will often get you out of trouble um versus mm -hmm. non which is I guess a class issue. Uh, yeah. But oh well. Um, you, you know, like like the idea that this is the thing, it's just so awkwardly done too, because we just had this whole speech about how this black person was horribly treated and he's like a mirror of Captain America. And then like seconds later they're like, is this black person bothering you, Bucky? I'm like, oh my god, alright. Are you talking to this Avenger? <laughs> property in a long time that feels like it takes place in the real world it no it feels no. like a cartoon world you're such an idiot jesus christ how would you even say that none of the like, laws work properly nobody goes to jail for anything yeah it's nonsense none of this can work none of this could work in the real world you could believe that in civil war even i don't want to say winter soldier but yeah, I'm not gonna nah. say Winter Soldier, but at least <laughs> right. in Civil War, right? Like, this could exist in the world. Like, I could believe that, you know, with all the allowances we're giving for these people and events and superpowers, this could happen in the real world. These would be what the actual consequences of these things would be. This show is allergic to consequences. They not just don't exist. The, they disappear between scenes. They're the, referenced, but never executed. The blip and unblip, too. Like, to include that, and then be like, yep, this is very realistic. Like, the world wouldn't even be close to the same. It would, it would it's, uh, but yeah, you know, it's realistic. It's great. Nice and grounded. I was so invested. Itself with real and also, life the person issues. calling cops pigs is like, yeah, this is a realistic world. <laughs> okay, all right, okay. It concerns itself with awesome. real-life issues, and the fact that it's a TV show means that it actually takes the time to focus on these issues. No, no it doesn't. It doesn't. No, it it doesn't. skips over Bucky's PTSD. It's actually fucking annoying. Yeah. They spent so much fucking time with the America is bad and evil and racist part, and we lost... We, we didn't get anything for Buck. They spent, like, this scene here... With this fucking horseshit retroactive nonsense about America evil, America hates black people story. They did this, and it took all that time. And they spent how much on the flashback for Bucky losing his mind control? That's like a minute and a half, that scene, at most. Like, talk about fucking priorities. And to be honest with you, I didn't really... Like, like, all I've learned about Falcon is how much I don't like this person. Like, he frustrates me. And when he turns up as part of a team in some ensemble movie, I'm gonna be like, oh, there he is. Great. Which is a shame. <laughs> like, yeah. Meanwhile, damn. if the Thunderbolts are uh, put together and a uh, <laughs> US agent is leading them, I would be like, man, I hope you guys manage to achieve some stuff, I guess. Someone said MC Wait. never had Obama. They did. He only got one no. term, though. Because they replaced his second term with a different president for the MCU. So well, because they had that other term. guy. Well, I, I I guess it would be safer to assume that Obama is not canon in the DC in the MCU. Like he, it's someone else. Well, I think his first so, term is. Is it? Does he uh, show yeah, up I think in Iron Man one or two? If Iron Man three, Iron Man one was two thousand eight, and then Iron Man three yeah. is after two thousand twelve. So that means his first term would have been right. Yeah. It had to have been an Iron Man 2 that he was mentioned then. Oh, I don't know mm. if he's mentioned by name. I haven't got a reference for that. Um, I guess, let's hmm. see. So I guess uh, MCU president timeline. <laughs> is there uh, a timeline like on the internet? Somebody actually thought this. Obama is in the out. MCU. Well, is there a simple Google reference for this? Obama know, MCU. Me... Barack Obama. Looks like Obama. So we had apparently right. Luke Cage mentioned him, but I don't know if that if that counts. Oh, he's in. Hmm. It says Captain America: Winter Soldier, and then book in quote in, in quote. What does that mean? 
I think somebody in chat said that he, there was a book about Obama on, on the bookshelf. Oh, that'll be enough. That's enough then. All right. Yeah, apparently he is mentioned in the in Winter Soldier, so. Oh. Okay. Well, mention right. it could be a name on a book, you know, uh would count as a I mention, think that I guess. counts. I think that definitely counts cuz I mean, it was another it was a different Obama. <laughs> it was a white Obama. <laughs> it was it was his brother. Steve. Uh, but that doesn't even include the I Am Patriot stuff, which is completely yeah, ignored. Yeah, which is the important part. Yeah, which we can't talk about. We're not going to mention that. If rather than brushing past them, the dialogue bits are the best part of the show. Because I was like, what? rather than brushing... Ugh. <laughs> show by far. With the no, action being fine, there's some standout fight scenes, but nothing no, too crazy. It was no, they're on. No, like, I mean, standoff in the sense of which one is worse. I like how he just he totally... I like how he t totally breezed past. The dialogue's really good. No, oh, the action scenes are all right, but there are a few standout ones. Like, what the? What is no, this? No, they're all. It's all terrible. It's actually, just, it's all horrific. The thing is, the dialogue it's is written, awful. This it's is shit. this stuff is written in like a half hour. This this script. It's just thoughts. It's absolutely. Out. This is this is like Cosmo one hundred and one in terms of just the are way the that the arguments are presented. It's just like you had a thought and you wrote it down and then you moved on to the next one and you're just going and you're not substantiating anything. It's so disappointing because people <coughs> who who people will look up to this and try to emulate it, but there's like mm. nothing to emulate that isn't just. It, it's the whole um, what Thought Theater originally did, right, with his Mando video. It's you see it all the time. You just do it because that's <coughs> what you do. That's what you do. It's like, oh yeah, it's black and white. We have piano music. I just assert things and say them and just move on. You have to pause randomly. And there's nothing to it. It's empty. There's no work or like passion that goes into it. Um, and yeah, the, the the dialogue was horrible. It really annoyed me. Not just when yeah, it has characters fucking bad. assassinating themselves, but also when it was My just incredibly overt and people talk. They say what they, the, the classic problem. They say what they mean. They don't say what they would say. And you know, John Walker saying "I'm Captain America" while spitting on <laughs> Sam as he's like losing his mind. That's some good dialogue. Best part of the show. By far. With the action being fine, by far. there's... So, by was there an far, action yeah. scene we thought was Maybe any good? Maybe he'll ref... No. Mm, no. Nah. What about the one where Lamar died? That, that was the one where they weren't killing each other for some reason. They were just throwing knives at each other uh, and, and skirmishing Oh yeah, each Bucky other, spears so. them. He's not killing them. Yeah. For some reason. Uh, Which is so frustrating and, because they're trying to kill again, you! Well, it's just funny because there's that clip, Civil War R rated, where where Cap flies and crushes a dude to death with his with his shield, to, like hits a guy with a with the the shield that knocks his head off, kicks the guy to the wall. There's blood everywhere, and they're screaming. And it's like, oh, those guys can die. That's perfectly fine. But these guys, nah. Well, it, it, it's so incompetent because you know that they're like, hey, he's not the Winter Soldier. Okay, he's not just gonna kill people. And it's like, what are you? No, <laughs> like, that was never how it worked. These. But again, the fight scene that he's showing here, Sam kills all these guys, yep. and they're not super soldiers, they're just normal guys, which is fine, because they're trying to kill him. It's like, and ironically, it's like, a sort of incompetent cartoon logic, where it's like, kills matter when I say they do, and you're like, oh. Yeah. Well, it's, it's the whole thing of, kill the goons, but not the main head honcho who was actually mostly the most evilest and of them all, yeah. Yeah. The most the awful Marvel. of them all, the person you should be going for the most. Well, yeah, because like, Captain Marvel kills all those other people, but then when it's Jude Law, she just puts him in a spaceship and is like, oh, oh I, I see you. It's funny you say that. I was referring to Rodan. She kills all the, the, the big ship. Remember when oh, she doesn't kill his when he was, yeah. like, the leader of this whole thing? That's right. She just postures in front of him. And then she's like, don't you do it again, Ronan. I can't kill you, you see, because you're in Guardians of the Galaxy. It's yeah, like, yeah. oh. Some standout uh, fight scenes, yeah. but nothing too crazy. It was better than... Which, which all the, uh, w in, in all the fight scenes are one of those things that I would put against the whole it's realistic thing. Because it's, the, the fight scenes are insanely God, so unrealistic. Bad. Where how guns just aren't yeah. present unless they are for one shot and then they get knocked away instantly. As if they want to just remind you that the gun was there actually, but it's not going to be brought up anymore because it got... And this, mm. I like how he's comparing it to WandaVision. It's like, don't. WandaVision's don't, yeah, WandaVision's action was, shit. Oh, yeah, well, was really dog shit. It was nonsense. Find a better example. That's the thing. It's being like, it's better than WandaVision. You're like, okay. <laughs> like, that's yeah. good for it. Of course it is. But nothing too crazy. It was better than WandaVision's action scenes, that's for sure. Zemo was a really fun addition, and he stole every scene he was in. Sharon it's a fun was addition. I thought you said Falcon stole the show. Yeah. yeah. I thought... 
Well, Falcon it's, stole the show, except for when no, Zemo stole the Zemo show. Zemo stole all the scenes that he was. Zemo stole this, the show. Yeah. Please, please redraft. Please, hey, I'm begging you. It makes sense. <laughs> control F stole. Oh wait. For every mm, moment yeah. Falcon was on screen, we shouldn't even have to control F. It's Zemo. been two minutes. I know. <laughs> you could probably <laughs> zoom out enough and put it on the. You same think screen. that? So like, yeah, because brains have like memory. Yeah, so you shouldn't you have to. That you said this. That's, that Falcon's well, it's funny because I've like... definitely made these mistakes in prior drafts. I'll be like, oh, I've described something as amazing like three times in a row. I need to fucking fix that shit. Yeah. But, oh. Oh. It's kind of dumb considering they kind of reinvented her entire character without any hint. She was kind of dumb considering they kind of reinvented. Do you see what? <sighs> he did this before. He said the show was pretty good, but a few flaws keep it from being pretty great. This is like, you need to do better. How Sorry. We didn't even cite her uh, character change as a flaw because we don't have the context of it yet. Yeah. You can't actually, we'll like, being like, oh, you like, know, having to do things that are out of character is without explanation is bad. It's like, well, not yet. Um, uh. Considering they kind of reinvented her entire character without any hint as to how she became this new person. The reveal yeah, that she was like the power broker is but, like, seriously the What's with the these zooms? The sh well, I, I don't really... Is it I got copyright? Feeling that. I think... But I think this is in the show. Well, is no, it? because he's obviously... Well, I guess it's um, hard to tell because it's so blurry. I was going to say, he's already uh, fucked with the aspect ratio. Uh, but this could just be a standard zoom, yeah. Not sure, because she doesn't look that stretched. But she might be. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I think the show is very much aware that Sharon is not Sharon, you know? And it's like, mm -hmm. mystery! Yeah, mystery like, box. Like, I wouldn't call this Watch a flaw. You know, show. like, TLJ was never like... Wait, Luke isn't Luke. He was like, no, this is Luke. <laughs> and he's this way because of this flashback that explains it all. It's like, no. Became this new person. The reveal that she was the power broker is seriously the lamest, most predictable shit ever. I, I don't think any of us cared who the no, power broker even it was. was. Falcon getting the shield. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I don't who be the power broker meant nothing to me. I was like, alright then. Yeah. I guess they just they won the actress back or um, Something? I, I don't guess. know, maybe she knew somebody? They want her for new stuff coming up. Maybe More she surprises. genuinely, uh, I guess. owned the right to the Because they really show. tried to make her the super badass agent in this, and it was just so forced, and the fight scenes were so fucking dumb. Oh, when she, like, kills all the bounty hunters all in a row? That must be really annoying if you're playing one of them, right? If you're the actor who's playing this big, buff bounty hunter guy, and you have to act like this scrawny woman is just flat out beating you up and overpowering you. Yeah, like a whole That holding... must be just annoying as you're laying there pretending to be in pain or whatever. That's got to get on your nerves. But maybe they're good actors so it doesn't show on their faces, which is yeah, it's fair enough. <laughs> and it amounts to the theme by the end. I don't know why they bothered. Don Cheadle showed up for five minutes Carly. and that was pretty epic. Carly, why is that your epic? analysis? Why, why is, is it that? your epic? It, it's weird that he never showed up again. Yes, like for the resolution. I was you know? kind of yeah. hoping that he was going to be in the show. Like, uh, yeah, because so I, I feel like yeah. he has some input to give us, given his character in this universe. Cause, yeah, because people talk about how like Tom Falcon Chino is sidelined. His connection with Tony. Yeah, uh, people talk about how he sidelined, you know, Falcon, and that this is finally giving him something. It's just like, what about fucking? What about War Machine? He's barely in any what? of it. I Man Two is Which probably is... the most War Machine we've ever gotten from one movie, right? Um. Yeah. Because he's more of a focus, and ever since, I guess he is getting a show later on, Armor Wars. Well, let's um, hope that and, one you know, does him justice uh, and doesn't well, make him a psychopath. Yeah, that would be nice if we got a, a good War Machine. War Machine's cool. Like I, I really like War Machine on a it's on a very surface level. I just need more. Yeah, uh, like he's just an Iron Man variant where he's just over like produced with all kinds of weaponry. It's just like that's. I that's think neat. I just like it's super ballistic focused you know yeah and, just, yeah. and there's plenty to do with him as a character look how much he's been through he's been here since iron man 2 yeah. like this oh sorry iron man 1 actually um god he's one of the most lo like longest running characters and there's, he is? we barely have anything yeah. for him it's crazy it's it's kind of unreal that he never got a movie as well why didn't they make a war machine movie like with black widow how she didn't get her own movie until she's dead <laughs> Maybe if so they kill him, he'll get a movie. Someone messaged me saying that this guy thinks that Luke's arc in TLJ was good and he liked it, so... If that's the case, then he's you never know what to expect. <laughs> Did he? I thought he, I, I, I wouldn't that's be 100%. That's what I'm told, but... 
I could have sworn that he wasn't. He was like 50 50 on it at most, but maybe. I don't know. Honestly, I don't know. I'm not going to be too shocked by anything at this point. It was okay. I like how she feels like a real revolutionary and not a mustache twirling villain. Oh my god, <laughs> are you insane? I don't get these people. I don't understand them. Wait, was, what? They're just like, this is what we're supposed to think or what we're supposed to feel. He said, he said she There's felt like a real that, revolutionary and not a mustache. Like a real I, I didn't play for me. I didn't hear that part. Oh. Uh, well, I can play it again. Yeah. Hey, I like how she feels like a real revolutionary and not oh. a mustache twirling villain. But it, what? Oh. She's totally a mustache yeah. twirler. It's kind of funny. Oh. That you're supposed to feel sad for. Her. <laughs> Dude, even her she own team like... were like, okay, you're getting a bit mustachey twirly right now. <laughs> <laughs> this is getting a little yeah, even her own team thinks that she's, like, too evil. Is he saying real revolutionaries are too evil? Well, he doesn't think that she's too evil, but the show... It's very confusing <sighs> to read Hopefully into exactly we'll get something from him. Yeah. Um... Hang what on. What the... Are you, is this a Goodell quote? <laughs> I mean, I... We're probably gonna get a few out of this if this the is the kind of quality we're getting. Goodell quote. So I said, yeah, maybe they're, maybe it's commentary on how today's revolutionaries are fucking batshit, so I guess she's like a real revolution. I don't know, but I don't, but he thinks that cops are pigs, so who, so he probably has a good opinion on modern day revolutionaries or something. I mean, if he likes Carly the, the and hates Antifa types. The, uh, the, the cops so far, it's like, oof, what a side to pick, but all right, he thinks she's a, she's, well, let's see what else he says about it. But at the same time, she's not really that compelling of a threat. Especially not compared to John Walker. Yeah, oh, no. Um, oh, no. What? Oh, <laughs> oh tell no. me about... Oh, the... no. Where are we yeah, going? Tell me about the fucking greatest of all time, John Walker. Oh, God. Where are we going? I'm not happy with that setup. Oh, boy. oh I'm worried yeah. now. Not compared to John Walker, who this show really fucking drops the ball with. Throughout the first five what episodes, I loved hating this guy. I can... Why? Why? <laughs> Why? Why? Why did you hate him? But he was an unironically amazing <sighs> person. He's one of those people. He's, he's one of the ones Yeah, well, that... yeah, he's not a bright boy. It's pretty clear. Oh, God. This is gonna be fun to listen to. I can't remember the last <sighs> time I got this invested in hating a fictional character. Why? why? What was there to hate? Please tell us why. He's such an asshole. That being said... No, he isn't! To... So now he I need was, references. He was... Yeah, you, you better come up with references, because for the first three and a half episodes... He's basically doing amazing. Didn't he's showing the scene of Walker and uh, I almost called him Starburst, um, <laughs> Battlestar, ba Battlestar. Starburst. After after uh, they get Bucky out of prison, mm -hmm. Bucky's been arrested, and so Captain America pays his bail and gets him out of prison. What a fucking asshole, am I right? Well, Chef and then they're, they're like, hey, how about we work together? And, and Sam's like, oh, we're free agents. We're more flexible, so it wouldn't make sense for us to work together. Which, by and the way- And then he's finally like, oh, fuck you, yeah. That's not even like- So, if, for example, I was somehow able to be like an Iron Man type and just roll around everywhere I want and do whatever I want, and you two were government agents, I'd be like, and if you said, let's work together, I'd go, nah, I'm a free agent. I would expect one of you to be like, um, that doesn't mean we can't work together. That just means that we have yeah. different rules for where we can go at what times than yeah, you do. Yeah, we want, we want the same thing. We and if still we pool agree our to work together, but it never pans out, we haven't lost anything? Like, it's unreal. Because when we were watching it, again, we've talked about this before, but we knew he was going to be quote-unquote evil. Um, but we were getting very confused, because we were paying very close attention. And everything he had done up to this point was not only, like, awesome of him, but like it was showing him to be a very, very good person, and it was very confusing that like, uh, Bucky and Falcon hate him. And like I said, I cannot mm -hmm. understate, because because Rags just mentioned, he got him out of prison, and he got him off the therapist, and he's approved him for active duty, like, these are things that are just amazing. It's like, Bucky should be incredibly thankful. But maybe, those things kind of get dwarfed by the fact that Bucky's life was saved by him? Yeah, they'd be dead if not for him. Yeah, uh, and the, they don't even, they're not even like, you should thank us for saving your life. I, they're rolling their side. eyes when he saves their lives. I'm picturing that Shafrilis, Sh however you pronounce it, um, I'm picturing when he was watching it, he saw Walker save them and went, oh god, look oh, who it is. I can't believe that this asshole just saved the two protagonists. <laughs> Ugh. What an idiot. I, oh, I can't believe this guy. The nerve. The fucking nerve.
And you, and then, like, I was honestly, like, impressed with Walker's patience. It's only here that he finally is like, all right then, guys, stay out of my way then. Like, like fuck you, basically, yeah. with all the shit you yeah, said to me. It, it's insane. Like, of all the things that I've done for you, of all of the olive branches that I've offered and all the help and the fact I save your lives and you don't seem to care about it. Yeah, I'd be like, yeah, fuck you, you guys too. Y'all suck. It's like y'all are purposefully ruining things. For mm. And it's all insane. I've got left is, well, I mean... But like, if you look at how the main characters look and feel, if you if you listen to the music, if you watch the camera angles, Walker's kind of a bad guy. Oh, <laughs> yeah. all right. I wonder if he's going to reference think, I anything guess outside of. is really he's really easy to manipulate. Well, like, I'm sure he's, he's not, about to tell us. He doesn't have much of a doesn't have focus. He doesn't. He's not critical of media, which is odd considering his job, I guess. I'm sure he's going to tell he just, us this psychopath murdered an innocent person or something. That's probably what he's going to tell us. That being said, if you're one of those fucking moron degenerates who decided to harass the actor that plays him because you didn't like the fictional character, then fuck you. Go touch some grass. Um, go yeah. Go touch I, some grass? That's like the equivalent of go outside, I guess. Um. Well, he thinks all cops are pigs, though. Well, yeah, the response to that would just be like, go and meet and discuss things with some cops. Maybe even... A, what if you had a family member? Never mind. Whatever. That's like just exactly the amount of ignorance that I would expect at this point. But... Uh, it's, it is interesting to me, like, we never really cover that whole, like, people sending messages to actors as a result of their mm. performance. I'm just like, I'd never even think, like, what what is wrong with you? Why would you ever do that? Just stop. Like, it doesn't even, I don't even think to have it come up. Yeah, it's, it's, it's insane that you would do that. That's unreal. They're playing a character. It's their job. As the season continued on, I started seeing Walker more and more as the main antagonist compared to Carly. <laughs> What? <laughs> because the show Compared told to Carly, him the, to. the person who's blowing up buildings full of people? Oh my like, god, dude. Like, why are you real? You're showing her next to the van she's about to set on fire. Like, what are you doing? Do you guys remember oh. when they beat him to, to a pulp and broke his arm and stole his shield? When all yeah. he did was say, you guys should see a medic? Yeah. <laughs> Good they finally God. show up, and he's he's emotionally traumatized. And they show up, and his first thought is, y'all should make sure that you guys are okay. What an awesome. What a fucking Chad. <laughs> John Walker is a Chad. He is a fucking hero. Well, he's the, the best character in this show. The only Easy. thing stopping me from, like, being excited for more John Walker is how much I worry that they're gonna mm. make him a bad guy again in future. Yeah. Yeah. But what insanity. Yeah, I, I want him to explain what he hated about Walker for the first, what, Let's five see. episodes? I just, I, I, well, even just the first three. Like, what is, like, le legitimately, one, what did you hate about him? I the, the locker room chat? The interview? The, the well, what? Yeah, those what did are you all hate about examples him? of him being evil, so, yeah. Um, but, like, it's, it's, it's one thing to say that you don't like him and you think he's a bad guy. It's quite another to say he's worse and more antagonistic or should have been the antagonist compared to Carly. Like, what are you Carly on? who incinerated three people to death and, like, another 11 people. Who wanted to do more, except the good who, guys yeah. stopped her. Like, she, if the good guys weren't there, quote-unquote, good guys weren't there to stop her murderous awfulness, so many more people would have died horribly. Like, look at her body count compared to Walker's, and the circumstances, too. Yeah, Walker killed one enemy combatant. In the midst of battle. In the midst of, of battle, kind of, yes. You know, but Carly whereas is... sound mine, Carly premeditated to blow up a, a building filled with people. She yeah. planned that. She thought it through. Setting vehicles on fire with people trapped inside. All sorts of stuff. She's, yep, um, and killed she's nuts. She was hoping to kill all the board members as well. Yes, that's right. Yeah, and, and, and she of did course, kill them her way, justification. Yeah. I don't mean to kill people that don't matter. Oh wow, <laughs> <laughs> like you're just the worst. She's doing. I a... feel like someone trying to stop you matters. Yeah. Uh, well, no, he doesn't. Not matter. to the cause, rags. Not to the. Which is kind yeah. of, I think, stupid. It would matter. You killed uh, Captain America's black wingman that represents like a, uh, the GRC's police force in a way. Like, surely it would matter. You killed Battlestar. Like, people would care about Battlestar, you know what I mean? Yeah, because yeah, he's... As people are saying, idiot. Lamar was a bro. He was a bro. Lamar was, Lamar awesome. was amazing. There's literally yeah, nothing wrong with him the whole series. Like a... Yeah, I would have been cool great. with a, a show that was, you know... These two. John Walker and Lamar teaming up, going on adventures. <laughs> I want to see that.
Like I said, man, it was really endearing to just see them smiling at each other as they were like saving people's mm -hmm. lives. Like these guys, yeah, they, they're way better than guys. our protagonists. Oh yeah, way better. Yeah, like and Lamar was even like trying to um, even you know provide at least some understanding for where Walker was getting frustrated. Like he would have conversations yeah. and they'd have little bits of banter. He they have their history, and then he died saving him. Like there was yeah. <laughs> What can you? What there else can no you say? Reason, there is no reason to dislike Lamar at all. Like, there's nothing. Lamar is just great. He's he's a yeah. really cool dude who keeps his friend on the straight and narrow. Yeah, who? Yeah, he does. He gives him good advice. He's mm -hmm. there. He saves his life. And as um, has been established, he is like 100 percent correct. And in, in the heat of battle, Walker makes the right decision to save the people as he would. Yeah, because that's yeah. that's who he is. But instead, we got I, the. I figured that's where the season was going. He would kill her why. and have to be taken down because he's gone insane. What? Next to the... what? what? Wait, what? <laughs> you'd, have, you'd have to be taken down because. Wait, of what? He'd be insane he... if he took down Kali. That's what he just said. No, that. That. What? Because I was. I we thought that's what he was we saying. Can, we can indeed yeah, replay that. It compared to Carly. And I figured that's where the season was going. He would kill her and have to be taken down because he's gone insane thanks to the super so serum making him- Wait, why would the super serum- the <laughs> I, I actually have to be now. Oh my god, I think, Jesus Christ. I think people unironically think that what um, Erskine was saying to Steve is like, that is the scientific way that the serum works, as opposed to a more metaphorical saying about the nature of power. The serum doesn't make you insane, no. and it doesn't make you a better or worse person. It's the idea of how do you respond to being imbued with that much power. That's what it's about with the serum. It's not like the serum makes you insane. And how come Kali isn't... How come How come she's totally fine, even though she took the serum? Well, I guess that's what he's arguing, bodies. right? Is that Herrick's insanity is blowing people up. Their insanity is being in the flags. I don't think he like, is. The, the, I don't think he is. I don't even know that he appreciates that I, she's I didn't, a super soldier. Well, I didn't get the impression from the show whatsoever that the serum makes you insane. I'm pretty no, sure the doctor was explicit. Think... He was like, there was no like repercussions. There was no side effects. It was pure. No, but the problem is that people refer to the Erskine quote about good, it makes good better and bad worse, where, but again, they're just reading it as if that's like the scientific method for how the serum works Rather than and like actually make, a, yeah, basically, which is what the whole point of that is. Um, she's clearly insane for me. Yeah, I know that, but what I'm saying is it's like, not, I don't know that the, the show serum. is acknowledging it. Yeah, yeah not the if... serum. She was insane before the serum, clearly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's nuts. <sighs> um, and if you remember, her team, when she blows people up, are like, whoa. Meaning, yeah. they think, even though they have the serum, that what she's doing is too much. As if it's, it's, it's more part of yeah. her than it is the serum. It's not the serum at all. They make it clear it's not the serum that makes you nuts. <sighs> it's not the serum. All right. The serum just makes you more of what you are already. The, the show is explicit with that. With two different characters, mm -hmm. one of them being the creator of the fucking serum. So let's, yeah, let's drop that one. That's what... being a character who was never wrong. <laughs> <laughs> That's what kind of holds Zemo back from being, like, a good guy. You know, it's obviously his methods, but the, his view on them is, it is well established and why he thinks that. But his ability to, I guess... Well, it, it it's going on its own tangent, but well, we we'll probably just... get there. I, I don't know if he's got extra probably. on Zemo. Someone will have something on Zemo before we end tonight. I figured yeah. that's where the season was going. He would kill her and have to be taken down because he's gone insane thanks to the super serum making him worse. I mean, the end. It does. Of that's not how it four, works. Holy what, what? shit! All he said oh, so far so... is holy shit. Yeah, he's uh, like, holy shit! He killed an enemy combatant <laughs> with his weapon. <sighs> God damn it! <laughs> Why is everyone so weird about this? <laughs> like, that? what do you think? Like, what was he supposed to do? It's, well, I've seen so many conversations like, about mission? this. But, like, he was supposed to arrest him. And it's like, how? Like, like he doesn't yeah. have, like, the, you need special cuffs for super soldiers. Do you just hope that he stops attacking, stops being a threat? This guy kept running away, and he threw shit at him when he was yeah, chasing Yeah, just moments him. before this, escape. he threw a stone, like, I don't know, a yeah, stone something, a like a pillar or, or something a, at him. Yeah, yeah it feels like, really like something that would kill you if you were normal. Well, without the shield, he might have been fucked up. I'm yeah, sure. it might have, yeah. Um, the, yeah. The thing that really, like, like puzzles me, I guess, about this is that, uh, well, we've already been over how much other characters have done things that are very, very similar. So it's like, mm -hmm. again, the whole manipulation thing. But at the same time, 
if it, I guess it's like down to a we, we talked about it. if it was seen in real life if it was seen seen on like a live leak video it's like judge him morally uh you know thumb up thumb down or thumb in the middle and I, I guess like even just just at the core just be like uh looks like he, he kind of did what he felt he had to do and it's a really stressful environment is it the most optimal Someone it's like said he threw a plastic chair at him he did not oh, throw a plastic chair. Saying, I got what you're saying. Oh, right. Ah. As we know, that's a lethal fucking weapon. Yeah. It's no joke. Yeah. It's enough to stop the fucking vibranium shield. So, uh, if if someone was to be like, ah, so you think he should have done something different if you said it wasn't morally optimal or something like that, I'd be like, well, I, I think I, I can't necessarily judge it because I'm trying to imagine, like, the guy goes, it wasn't me, and then Walker puts the shield down and goes, okay. Well, you're still coming with me. And then the guy gets up and then runs away. <laughs> it's like, oh, well. Or the guy gets up and then fucking tackles Walker and tries to punch his face like until it becomes a puddle of blood. There's, there's a lot of different uh, ways this could go. And um, in a split-second decision, Walker is like, I'm ending your life. Which uh, I think is more than reasonable and it's done in many, many scenarios. And it's a really tough scenario to make decisions like that in. There is... I, I forget where the quote's from, but... It's something along the lines of it's really easy for us to judge in our uh, in our idleness and relaxation the decisions that other men have had to make during extreme stress. Yeah, yeah. Um, and this would be an example of that as we sit here in our comfortable homes, safely, quietly, staring at computer screens, talking about you know a tv show it's really easy for us to condemn the things that these characters will do in their situations um, my understanding I, is that the thing that makes it gray was that it wasn't an instant death it was repeatedly beating with the equivalent of a dull blade um but cap throws this shield at people all the time in their throat and their neck and their jugular you think that's a nice way to die having yeah. your throat crushed so if you're gonna say i've got x amount of vibranium we're gonna make a weapon for you what do you want so it's like, well, if, if it's a weapon, is a shield technically what is him? Shield is not ideal for a weapon. It's always been silly. We've just sort of well, yeah, it's, it's symbolically okay, cool, it's the, right? That yeah, it's, it's, it's Captain mm. America has a shield. That's his weapon because he's like defensive almost on a yeah. In, in a but sense, he go but along like, with it. He throws it. It bounces off. It comes back. He catches it. it comes oh, back. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. So whatever. So, so. But so, yeah, I, someone said that wasn't a split second. You have no fucking clue how long it took him to make the decision that I am going to kill this man. Like it, it, from the especially scene, after that guy just tried to kill him moments, and ago. has killed his best friend, a, a, a fellow soldier. Friend, yeah. So like, and has tried, it has killed civilians, and is attempting to run away instead of surrendering. Bullshit! Yes. Like, oh, you know what? Yeah. If it were like maybe one second, I'd allow, I'd allow it. But three, nah. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. <laughs> Someone said in the chat that it's morally gray at worst. It's like, yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. At worst, it's morally gray, yeah. Again, this is this was and, hard uh, for someone to have to do, and if I was able to speak to him after it, I just want to get his, his account for why he made the decisions he made, and then I don't see much more happening post that. Yeah, they, mm. they, do, they do Walker dirty in this show. Totally. Um, I was talking to Blame, the, uh, the the lad we had on for the, the boys breakdown, and yeah, he was saying yeah. that um, with uh, Walker, with a situation like this, nine times out of ten, he wouldn't have been like given any kind of punishment close to what we see in the show. Uh, the only way it would happen, if it was like hyper-politically motivated, and that they needed to make some kind of a, a statement or whatever about certain things, certain different... And I was like, so could, could you see what happens in this apply? And he's like, the, the way they do it in this doesn't even make sense. Apparently the... the sort of uh, punishments he gets would never be given without also having a prison sentence. Like, the, that's how harsh they are. Um, right. And that it's almost like, what do, you ex what do you expect him, Walker to do? Why did you send him there? Or why, why would well, he they be didn't. there at all? That's the yeah, thing. Yeah, that's, that's why I changed it. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, it, they... But, but that doesn't make any sense either. But going by the insane logic of this shockingly poorly written show, like, what? Aren't Bucky and Falcon there to do the same thing? Like, what are they there to do? Stop them, but not hurt them? And like, were they well, it's a, tracking? It, you're right, it is Captain absolutely America. bizarre. Like, the fight they're having prior to this moment, I don't know what the end goal is, because nobody wants to kill each other, apparently. Yeah. 
but like you don't have enough handcuffs to arrest them all. And they don't it's even three against like six. What's not only do they plan? not have handcuffs, normal handcuffs don't work. They have to get special ones. Yeah, what are your means for transporting these people back to yeah. prison? Is they hoping to knock them out? What's the plan? God forbid that thing that most people have in situations like this. They don't have any because it's a it's a show where you're not supposed to think about fucking anything. We're going to put yeah. CGI blood on the shield. That's all you need to know. It's written by a 12 year old who wants to give a message. And then there's the aspect of people say that you shouldn't do that to someone who surrendered, which uh, I don't know that in every case that would be considered surrender. Uh, Funnily enough, Blame said that uh, he wouldn't consider what the guy did here a surrender. Um, more so, he's, he's uh, preparing for uh, what would be incoming combat, while also yeah. exclaiming that he's not the one who ended the life of Lamar, probably as a way to try Even and... Though he... Well, yeah, like, it, this is what I mean, that, that distinction is fucking irrelevant. So, uh, this is the thing, it's very complicated. I would like to know how it would work in a real court with, with everybody's testimony. It's really fucking strange that he says he'd like to give his testimony and they deny him. Um, yeah, like, that's... Ugh. I'm pretty sure you have a right to defend yourself. <laughs> that's, like, one of the fundamental rights of our criminal justice system, is that you have a right to defend yourself. And I've seen people be like, Maybe oh, well, he must have done it. Maybe it's because it's a military court of some kind? Yeah, but military courts... We're rules? Mm, I feel like in military courts, because I don't know as much about military courts, but, like, I imagine that you would have a, a right to actually present your case. Surely. Yeah, think. Sounds very American, you know? Yeah. <laughs> it would be weird if yeah. you couldn't. Um, and yeah, the most I see people say is like, he probably gave his testimony before, they would just say, you can't repeat it. It's like, well then why would he be so obsessed with giving it if it's already been given? That would be weird. It's insane, yeah. And it's just not it quite how the dialogue's sense. written. None of this works. And like, you would think that the, an insane amount of people would be super supportive of him because he killed the terrorist, a murderous terrorist in a combat zone? Like, I... Like, I, it's I, it's literally just that there's blood on the shield and the music is like like I mean, high we, pitched. We could have done this yeah. with a lot of Falcon and Cap's kills. You could, oh yeah, imagine doing it with Cap when he goes into Lagos and crushes those dudes and and hits them so hard with the shield that they yeah would all come the off. time. Lots of people all who are, the time. Yeah. literally people who are not even engaged in combat who are human. He's a super soldier and he decides, well, you're out because you're on the enemy team, which seems to be mm -hmm. okay with everybody else, but not anymore. No, yeah, well, um, it's, it feels really weird what's happened in the MCU. They used to just be like, yeah, no, they'd kill those guys, it's alright. And now it's like this weird transition. It's like, no, Agatha, we're not going to kill her, we're just going to imprison her mind. <laughs> oh, God, yeah, we're going to imprison her in a um, torture chamber until I want to yeah. make use of her again. We're not going to kill terrorists who blow up innocent people. No, that's not. And what's it going to be in the no. next thing? And if they who, do who die, they they're gonna... really kind of heroes. It's so weird how, like... It's not. Uh, it's not that. Uh, <laughs> it is so. It is so right. morally <laughs> nonsensical. It is. It really is. Yeah. They didn't do it out um, of anger. Is, is that it? What? So <laughs> what does that change, really? Oh, so when Iron Man flew in to kill those terrorists, and he punched one of the dudes so hard that he flew into that wall, was he not angry? Nope. Whether or not I he was like angry, in... they're terrorists. How would you not be angry? I was about like, to say, I'm trying like, to kill you. I'm not sure how you disconnect friends. your emotions from uh, your, like, like why is Steve doing what he's doing? It's like, what is the opening of Winter Soldier? It's like French, they say that they're, they're, they're French mercenaries and they're taking a, a boat. They've got hostages, yeah, from yeah, S.H.I.E.L.D. Of course you'll be emotionally invested in that. You're like, these people have take ho mm -hmm. taken hostages. They need to be stopped, fuck them. Yeah, like, this person is trying to kill you. If you're not angry, I'm like, is something wrong with you? <laughs> is Hulk angry? Do you angry? have some emotional problem with your brain if people are trying to kill you and your friends and you don't feel angry at that? Well, and so, and this is where it gets really interesting, right? Because if Shafrillis, if for example, was here and he said this is why he thinks Walk is a horrible person and he hates him, I'd be like, man, who do you like in the MCU? And I would love him to mention any of them, right? But the one that I think yeah. I really wanted to mention is like, oh, well, Steve, he's one of my favorites. And I'd be like, oof, Steve's much worse Let's than talk Walker. Talk about Steve. Well, yeah, not even close. Yeah. Remember that was... time when Steve dragged that dude on the ground for 10 seconds? <laughs> Why do you always reference both? that one? Go for Trace Yeah, Gilliam. that's not even like... bad at all, yeah. Oh, Trace Gilliam is the know, killer man, argument. Oh, yeah, true, yeah. 
And I've seen people say, like, well, no, because the goal with the Triskelium was to prevent people from being killed with the, th <laughs> the Helicarion. Hey, the Triskelion <laughs> can't kill them if they're already dead, okay? <laughs> yeah, Triskelion, you're right, yeah. And that's, so that is like... One. Wait, so now we're shifting to intention, not, like, the damage they've dealt, which is, like, all what Civil War's about. It's like, sometimes your intention's not gonna matter if you're killing people, okay? Like, yeah. uh, And we don't want to talk about Civil War, because this show completely fucking doesn't give a shit that Civil mm -hmm. War happened, the, both thematically and in-universe. It doesn't give a shit. Civil War gets in the way of the story that this loser writer wants to tell, so we're just not going to talk about that entire movie that we made. Uh, feels unreal to, to, to take in, and, and if they wanted to make Walker evil, someone just suggested in chat, it's like, what if the guy was captured and then Walker kills him while he's in prison through using his, like, authority to get in and out? It's just like, yeah, you could have done that if you really wanted That'd to. Be different, yeah. Like a vengeance kill on the prisoner? It's like, yeah, I, I would be much more on board. But this one is, um, as, as someone said, at worst, morally gray was wild and i didn't know how they could top that well they didn't john walker just decides in the final episode that he's gonna be a good guy he was, he was good... never a bad guy <laughs> <laughs> fuck you he was never a bad guy you how see do you... a person doing wonderful amazing things how do you being explain... literally heroic for multiple episodes over and over and over every time and you say you hate him how does he so reconcile what... this with episode two with all the good things he did i don't understand i don't get it we were I, so I proud of the show for making Walker do this, because this is who Walker is. Yeah. yeah, he's only done the right thing. He's just, he's, he's constantly, over and over, doing the correct decision. He's a morally upstanding guy who is looking out for other people, who seeks the advice of others, who is not overly proud. I, who, he, he seems like such a great dude. Yeah, and he's. He, and this is the thing. The even the parts that I don't this like. This clown can walk away and think he's evil. Like the, that's who he really is. The is parts where he's like, "I'm Captain America." Like I, I can attribute that like headcan wise to the amount of stress he's under, and he's like fucking upset. It's just dialogue. I don't like that they give him. I just yeah. don't think it matches his character at all. But hey, um, even that being the worst thing that he does, like, well, that's not so bad. <laughs> like, it's just not so bad at all. Um, someone mentioned it earlier in chat. Someone said, uh, the Shafferless guy, he's like the girl in the, the new guy meme. The new guy meme? Yeah, remember that? Oh, shit, yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, like, the first meme of 2020, right? Yeah, it was something like that, yeah. Uh, yeah, the, um... Uh, she, she, she's, <laughs> isn't it like, he's, like, a really friendly worker and she's just shitting yeah. all over him? Yeah. Walker That's is new yeah. It's this one here, let me show you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this one <laughs> is a very interesting self own. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, that's not it. Well, that's it's new not... guy. No, that's not that it. Is... That is new yes, guy. Yes, it is. That's not. It no, is. it is. is not. It, I will. I will. It literally says new guy, one. Rags. <laughs> no, that's someone changed the dialogue in the last panel. Oh, go. here's, you're right. Here's you're no, right. no, well, yeah. no. Okay, so, here's... yeah, but this is making fun of her, is, is the point, right? Yes. Sorry, but, yeah. yeah. Well, the original, we were, we the were aware of the prior context. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, this was the original. Like, Is this the original before I fucking fuck that up? <laughs> this is the original, yeah. Millionaire gamer bro douchebag. Got oh, fuck, I forgot about this. This is about PewDiePie, wasn't it? Because PewDiePie got robbed, and people were like, yeah. well, who cares? He's rich. It's like, wow. Hey, would you like it if you were robbed? Oh wow, I can tell we're gonna be the kind of co-workers we become friends. Well, really? Hell no. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> the one with the dog. <laughs> <laughs> What's so great about this meme is that it there it spawned even any even more memes. Yeah. This is such such an incredible odd self owned by this psycho artist. Everyone deserves empathy. <laughs> just <I> mean, screeching. <laughs> well, well, that's the. It, well, I, I see why the person in chat. I forget your name. I'm sorry. Um, made this suggest. Ma you know, made this comparison. Like mm -hmm. rich people don't deserve empathy. If you're a cop, you're just a pig. You're a bad person. Walker is a bad person. Like their their view of the world is so skewed and unreal that you, you wonder what planet they're on. 
Oh no, okay. A spider just crawled into my fan and killed itself. Really? What? I was watching it, That's... like, curiously, and I, I, I was just watching it as you were speaking, and I didn't realize it was climbing onto the fan, I was just looking at it, and then it went in, and it would... I was like, oh. <laughs> wait, how does... Wait, what kind of... F it climbed into, the, like, the blades? So if you think of, like, a... Well, uh, it's not like a ceiling fan, like a... You know, like a, a fan fan. Like, it's, it has plastic blades, but they go really fast. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, but you think they're, like, did it... Did it fall in from the top on a web? It went in from behind. Oh, so well, maybe the, splattered. Maybe the spider brain just didn't fucking well, know how to deal with the. Uh, lucky for me, it didn't like splash onto me or anywhere I can see. I just heard something that, and I can't see it anymore. You heard it? Damn! How big was this spider? If you well, heard no, it, it didn't scream. I meant like the sound of it hitting no, a blade. I didn't <laughs> mean it screamed. I meant like the physical sound of a a spider body hitting these rapidly spinning blades. Where the spider was large enough to... I was like, damn. It, well, well, yeah, I don't think it was small. That's why I was distracted by it while you were talking. I was like, oh, oh man. Look at this Buddha. Wow, that's... I rip Spidey, bro. Yeah, sorry, yeah, man. Spider. See, that's... It represents man's effect on society, having this artificial <laughs> wind, and it kills nature. <gasps> the uh... F is like... It's kind of... F, F is one of the most... That is a long, enduring meme. It's crazy, and yeah. Advanced Warfare, what a dumb, stupid game. Like, F has evolved game's... so far past COD, it's like, no, F just means pay respects. And you'd, you'd be like, yeah, why? <laughs> why would yeah. that mean that? So in 2014, there was a game called Call of Duty <laughs> Advanced Warfare, where your buddy is dead, and at the funeral you press F to put your fucking hand on the... On the... Why was so this a cutscene? Why would you have it be press F to pay res... Advanced Warfare so, is such a stupid game. Hot, I guess I guess this is a hot take. I don't know, but I really enjoyed that game's multiplayer because it was so silly. Oh, man. Like, I, I heard a I, lot of people really hated it, but I really enjoyed I that game's like it multiplayer. At all. I Everybody liked zipping going... around and jumping into the air. and ver I, I probably liked it so not. much because it wasn't anything like a Call of Duty game. So that's why there I is... kind of liked it. That's true, but the problem that I have with that is that it becomes very difficult to know where to look. Like, it becomes totally unpredictable where you're going to get shot from, which means that the maps kind of don't even matter anymore. Anyone can be yeah, anywhere at any yeah. time. And so it was very can... much a... I wouldn't call it balanced at all. It definitely it's not. Balanced, not no. Because they did the whole... Where we Maybe they did this before, I don't know. But a weapon will have a... Like, like there is a base weapon... And then there will be special versions of it with different stats. And you would very clearly see obvious, correct gun decisions that everybody would make over and over all the time. So, uh, um, like, they, the SMG where it has slightly less this, but it just has better damage or something like that. And it's just clearly the better option and everybody would use it. Yeah, but that tends so. to be the case in every Call of Duty. There's, like, one weapon that's just insanely good mm -hmm. I'm, I, I'm I liked it but time. it was definitely a guilty pleasure where i think i put like a hundred hours into it which is a lot for a cod game for me i think i put um, some like 20 hours into it which is pretty low compared to what i put into the ones before it yeah uh i'm like it definitely wasn't good but i enjoyed it it had this just silly arcadey kind of quality to it that's true but i mean I, I feel like titanfall is a better example because like it oh, has advanced yeah. ability but it's, it's is bound better. Yeah, Titanfall yeah, was sort of like one of the best first-person yeah. shooters of like the last Undoubtedly, decade. Undoubtedly, yeah. yes. Oh, by the way, um, Titanfall Two is currently free on Steam. Everybody, go um, get it, guys. Seriously, you go won't get it. it. Go play it. Go get, get it. it. I didn't actually um, check if that was true. I'm assuming it's true. They wouldn't have said it otherwise, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, let me. That's that's the. It had like sixteen thousand people playing. Uh, I yesterday. heard about that. God damn! I need to boot it up and play it again because I haven't been able to play. Uh, Titanfall 2 is just not enough people. But if there and, are that and, many people playing, god damn. So, just so that we're um, clear, even if you don't have any interest in the multiplayer, the single player is insanely good. You should buy it mm -hmm. even if you just want to play the single player. There you go. But the multiplayer is awesome. Well, the multiplayer so. is really great too, yes. Uh, it's very fun, very fast-paced, very exciting, very engaging. It's, um, it's too good super for this fun. world, evidently. It's better than yeah. Apex Legends, as far as I'm concerned. I uh, I yes. want Titanfall three. I would happily I, have Apex Legends disappear. Yeah, I like Apex a lot. Different. I have like sixteen hundred hours in Apex Legends. 
No, but yeah, you I do wish like we got. A lot. I, I would have preferred Titanfall three. Yes, Apex mm. is a nice, nice thing over there. It's good, but, uh, yeah, Titanfall two, uh, Titanfall two, and Titanfall. Hopefully, we'll get a Titanfall three. Hopefully, I hope so. Um, but, oh man, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Um, but mm. I don't know if you guys have the same thing on your phone where you get like random articles on your like push notifications. Yeah, I, I'm not sure yeah, exactly probably. where they come from, but I find them mostly chill. They're fine. Some of them are like I'm just like oh I'm not really interested in that, but they, I, it probably learns what I'm interested in, and so most of it's media related. But today I just like turned on my phone for a second because I heard a noise. And it was like Gal Gadot has turned 36. What? Okay. Right. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm proud of her, I guess. Right. I All right. Know. Yeah. Why Good did you her. tell me that? I was like, thank you so much. God, the world is weird. Anyway, back to how Walker anyway. is a horrible person, I guess. Yeah, Gotta be a good guy. Right. Literally, he drops his shield and starts helping people, and he doesn't seem mad in yeah. the slightest that Sam is the new Captain America. Why would he be? Why? Like, oh, he's just well, happy that people were saved. He's, yeah, he seems to be a really stand-up guy. That's why we were so worried when the decision was, you know, being made in the show, and we were all tensed up, and our assholes were clenched, and we mm -hmm. were super worried and gripping the desk. Like yeah, but... this show's written so bad that we that it could feasibly be in this show it was written that he went after Carly, even though that would not at all match his character. It's it's bizarre because like I was almost picturing when we were watching it, it as like oh he's gonna go fight her then the car will fall off and then Falcon can save it right that's 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 the other show mm -hmm. they could have made, and then he would have realized like I was wrong you're the true Captain America or something like that but no he got to be a hero and he got to be humble. Because of course he was. The show yeah. feels like it feels like somebody was trying to rescue the show. You know, Wait, like it, they. Yeah, yeah. Um, dude, I think it's fucking awesome. Symbolically, they threw the shield down to get both arms on the yep. on the truck. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. Cause, yeah, because he was a hero. Remember, Walker was a fucking hero before he became Captain America. Mm -hmm. Right. Captain America was just another thing that he was doing and that he got. He was still him, and he was a hero before that. Happens. The weird thing is, they redeemed him in the exact same way I wanted Prince Charming to be redeemed in Shrek the Third. <laughs> um, um, uh, um, okay. Um, uh, sorry that didn't happen. I guess. <laughs> I'm sorry that John Walker was treated like Prince Charming from Shrek the Third. Coincidence, Jimbo. I, okay. <laughs> what? Uh, um, Please put, the, yeah, you put the in, get out. Yep. How could I not? <laughs> All right, Jesus so, Christ. Chat. So, chat. If any of you have any aspirations of becoming a big YouTuber that covers media, I don't care who you are. You can do it. You can do it's it. It's feasible that you can do it. Because look at the people who are big YouTubers talking about media. It's It doesn't have anything to do with talent. It doesn't have anything to do with actual skill. I thought what John an incredible, would be insightful thing. In the same way as <laughs> Prince Charming from Shrek the Third. I, when you hear that line in 11 months from now, you're going to be like, oh my god, I remember someone said that. That's a thing somebody said. <laughs> Wow, what? I don't- I'm- Oh my god. We're already halfway through. I'm blown away. Ugh. Quack and crazy coincidence, Jimbo. See, I wouldn't How mind John Walker wait, wait, being wait. I don't know. How is that a it's coincidence? It's not a coincidence. I don't know what he means. How is that a Those are two unrelated things. In the most- in the way two things can- That's not a coincidence. They're unrelated. And you- Two completely well, unrelated things. Is he suggesting that the relation is the fact that he watched them and felt this way? So, for example, he watches Shrek and goes, I want X to happen. Then he sees another show where X happens. And he's like, what a coincidence. That's not a coincidence, though. Well, I mean, it's he not a meaningful know, coincidence. Yeah, but he's an idiot. <laughs> Just, uh, what a strange thing to say. I wouldn't mind <sighs> John Walker being redeemed so much if they actually didn't need to be redeemed, but alright. Jay yeah. didn't need to be redeemed. He needs to be sa he needs to be rescued from this show. He's too good <laughs> yeah. for this show.
He's a fucking paratrooper to get him out of here before they fucking ruin him even more. Really showed his redemption taking place. Episode um, five was just an hour of Sam and Bucky vibing, and honestly, it was a really good episode. But if no, that episode no, that one was shit. It was a waste of time. It was filler <laughs> and the shitty dialogue. I'm sorry. And then we had a montage. <laughs> <laughs> learning yeah, how to use montage, the shield he already learned to use. The shield, but now worse the than before. I'm yeah. jogging and I'm getting tired, but now I'm jogging and I'm not. Montage. I'm throwing the shield and it's kind of wobbling, even though it wasn't wobbling the first time. <laughs> oh my god, you yeah. <laughs> I mean, you know, art imitates life, I don't know what to say. Art imitates Holy art. shit, apparently the 24-hour peak... Titanfall 2 is the most popular that it's ever been. It's got 27 and a half thousand people playing. Hey, maybe, maybe they'll actually manage to revitalize it to a degree then. I, be, I hope so. Oh, please, Titanfall please. 2's lack yeah. of success is one of the greatest gaming injustices that has ever occurred. We yep. never got you, you never got Half Life 3. Fuck Half Life. <laughs> All right. Titanfall 2 not having Titanfall 3. That's the tragedy. That's a John Walker level tragedy. Yeah, oh, there's yeah. so many people playing. Oh, man. I'm so I know what I'm playing tonight. <laughs> I mean, you can't promise someone like that and then not stream it. They're all going to be upset. Oh, you know, that's a good idea. <laughs> you know what? I'll, I'll put that down in my notes. There you go. I'm all busy right. over there. A couple of days. Fuck. But yeah, yeah. <laughs> all right, let's, let's press on. Busy playing Titanfall oh. 2. Let's, 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 let's press on Titanfall 2 of Skull. Did John Walker come into terms with the fact that he didn't deserve to be Captain America? No, he did. No, he did! <laughs> he literally he did. He did! If, right, Three medals of honor. Three tax, medals of honor. There is nobody on Earth that earned it more than him. Uh, sorry. And this isn't my opinion. This is literally like what they've done in the show. They made him a triple winner. They made him one of the peak physical, like, and intellectual human beings on Earth. He, he proved that even though he wants to take revenge for like one of his friends, or even you could argue it's avenging the friend who died to save his life and instead he chose to save some innocent people, and then also he executed a, a terrorist in, in battle. Like, I don't... He, yeah, he's Captain America. I'm sorry. He's he, This is the thing. I don't care if someone gives him the title or not. He's earned it. Especially when he tossed the shield away. That shit was like, that's it. You've done it. The fact that you 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 are getting you're taking it away in favor of other people's lives, like oh, you've done it, boy. Yeah, yeah, that it's <clears throat> it. It was one of the tiny good. It was one of the few little isolated good things in this show. Was this the sim, the symbolism of dropping the shield, representing Captain America, so that he could be better, so that he could. It's 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 you know he in in rejecting being captain america he has become more worthy to become it pretty pretty clear stuff um clearly lost on this guy i suppose like a lot of things probably are as people uh, have, just cuz you have opinions doesn't mean you should make them public but oh well as people put it out he was almost pretty much as good as cap without the serum like yeah uh yeah and someone said he jumped on four grenades and none of them were duds <laughs> it's, 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 I don't know. It's, like, it's, it's it was silly to make him hate three Medal of Honor winner because it's like essentially almost impossible uh, in terms of what you would have to have done as a human being to have gotten that. However, that's what he has, which means that tells us a lot about who he is and what he's done. Yeah, he's pretty legendary. And if there was someone to be Captain America, that'd be who it is. Yeah. He didn't I don't deserve think a better to be choice Captain be America. Made. Then this yes, sudden shift in character would be fine. They honestly made he ripped him off too his wings. unlikable. And he could have beat the shit out of him, but he didn't. <laughs> he just said they made him too unlikable. What are you talking about? These are trying to No, fucking... no, that's you. You decided that he was unlikable regardless of what you saw. And also, they're, they're you, attacking see, the fuck out of him in this scene. So, like, I, yeah. I, don't, I don't really have a problem with him fighting back. Like, if this is a claim of, like, see how unlikable he is attacking our protagonists, I'd be like, are you five? Like, seriously. Yeah, but he's the protagonist. It's like, oh, yeah, you, you really are five, yeah. Yeah. Huh. As far as we want to go with that one. They honestly made him too unlikable for his own good if the plan was to redeem him. It would have made so much more narrative and thematic sense if he was the one to kill Carly. Um, yeah, I can I agree mean, with that. I, agree, <laughs> I mean, yeah, reasons. it would. He yeah. deserves it. Yeah, he, he deserves the kill. He deserves to be the one that stops the horrible terrorists from killing more and more people. Yes. It, it makes sense that the hero gets to do heroic things. Yes, yep. that would be, yeah. Oh, I'm I, glad I'm we've agreed with, with him, finally. Not f***ing Sharon. 
But, like, he would view that as bad, remember? He thought the show was going to have him killing her and that it would show that he's a psycho who needs oh, to be stopped. Yeah. Well, he, he did add the qualifier crazy. that what makes him insane, the important part, is the serum. The serum would be what makes Morker insane, not the act of killing her, just for clarification. At least that's what I got from him, from being as best faith as possible. So, uh, theoretically, we Maybe. could ha I think, from his perspective, we could have had Walker kill her and not be insane. I think he's suggesting that would be a redemption form, but again, doesn't need redemption. And I think yeah. him saving all of the people in the, in the armored truck, I don't know, that was pretty legendary as a move, just saying. Yeah, um, he came there to get <clears throat> Carly, but he chose to say, yeah, pretty, pretty clear. But I, I think the point he's trying to make is that this would be like villainous for him almost, but it's hard I mean, hard to nail it down because hard to tell with this, this is crazy such guy. scattered thoughts. It's no repercussions from Sam for this, despite how big of a deal he makes out of Carly's death. They really botched both Walker and Sharon's characters, and it. They no, they botched um, everybody except for Walker yeah, and uh, Lamar. Yeah, what an Zemo unreal fucking position to take. Like, they're the Zemo, two yeah. people that I have the most confidence to say outside of Zemo, and he's like, they're the two people he ruined. It's like, well, no, Sharon's acting completely consistent from what we can tell with what's happened to her or who she may be. Uh, there are a couple of questions that we'll have as soon as we find out exactly what her goals are. Um, I think there's some in the season already, but then Walker. The only thing I don't like is how the show treats him, not who he is. Yeah, yeah, he is an incredible guy that the show is trying to treat like a bad person, and that shit's all over. Oh, wow. Like, we don't get any closure between these three. Like, that's bizarre. <clears throat> don't you guys think his outfit's really awkward in terms of, like, you know how you can it's take his- It's shit! If you- so, utility-wise, right, if you want to take the goggles off, you still got this weird, like, thing. Like, With I don't even know if you can take side. it off. You're like, what it? And if so, bef I swear to God, EFAP chat, I will hit you with a newspaper if you say it's comic accurate. So, it's very weird, and I don't know why anyone would- And talk about tactical, like, it's so fucking bright. Yeah, it's, it's really bright, and it's such a bad looking suit. It looks- It looks really dumb. Who commits very to practical? No, no, who commits to a third mask? Like, yeah. <laughs> like, what, what? And also, shouldn't you have like, if you're Falcon, right? You're a character who flies around and stuff. You should probably have a full mask on yep. so that if you're flying through the air, you don't want to have anything hitting your face. You don't want to have because you can't speak if you're flying through the air. It, it shows that, but that's not how the universe works you'd have to be yelling and screaming and they probably wouldn't hear it you, so you need to have a mask on um certainly you have to have a mask on if you go too high as uh, you uh, talk about pressurization and mm -hmm. stuff yeah but this is just so like so the rocketeer had a better outfit yeah uh i'd say a lot of a lot of people have better outfits than I, i'll go as far as saying this one was shit and uh i was a little embarrassed when i this saw is it shit. I was just I saw a lot of people saying, oh, so comic accurate, and I was like, alrighty, I don't know. Alright, that's a condemnation of the comics, but okay. Yeah, just have fun in that suit, uh, I guess. Baffling decisions in terms of uh, design and application, but you know what? That's not important, because I'll tell you one thing, guys. We're gonna see him probably shoot and beat the shit out of all kinds of bad guys, and there won't be a drop of blood on that white suit. Not ever. Because mm. he's a good guy. So that's when you're a good clean, guy, the no blood. blood. Yeah, the blood doesn't exist. <laughs> Wonderful. It drags down what's otherwise a decent enough finale. I actually no. like Sam's oh, speech to not. the senators, and I like how it still felt applicable to the real world, despite the fact. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Talk about a detached. This. It's still Shackerless is the kind of guy who could put a jock strap on backwards. <laughs> how do you say any of this? <laughs> He's like a broken crayon. Like, how did you get to this point? You're supposed to be really simplistic like and. It's actually like a it's it's like a kindergartner is is talking. That's what this speech is. It's like an idiot like they even make a point about how he doesn't know anything and that's supposed to be a positive. Oh man. I don't know. Maybe that means I'm right. <laughs> I can't believe that's the dialogue. It's actually terrible. It's so awful. It's so and not even going into how like preachy it is and insulting it is to anyone who has a brain, which is why Shefferless likes it. But just talking about the context of it within the show, 
And everyone's like, why are we all here? Oh, yeah, because crazy evil terrorists wanted to burn a bunch of people alive so that they could get something they want that doesn't make any sense and that we, we should be immensely against. Uh, but... <sighs> It's it's it, like the the foundation of the argument from him is so I don't know how any of this works and that's you know what that's a that's a plus because I just don't get it <laughs> like, and the guy's left there baffled like none of what you said is useful <laughs> I don't know if you knew this but I can't use anything. Chaparral is going to comment on that pig in the background. Oh, hopefully. Or would that not be? Dude, imagine the kind of name he has for politicians because they're the worst or senators and and uh, anybody of any pol political ranking is like ugh. Disgusting. Dink in chat is right. The speech was the writer putting his character on a soapbox with a megaphone just to tell the audience the message. Yes, it was fucking cringe as shit. What's so funny is the message is pathetic. It's do better. Yeah. It's useless. Thanks. We'll all do better now. Just do better, guys. I don't know anything, but do better. Ugh. The so, catalyst. so when did... So when Wakanda made him the suit, did Wakanda make the suit knowing he'd be Captain America? Um, I guess so. I can't remember if we discussed it, but yeah, that's fucking hilarious, because Wakanda do not like, like, any authority other than their own. They don't share their technology, at least not to this degree, right? I'm willing to believe that T'Challa's made efforts to try and, like, have Wakanda help the world, but the idea that they make this fucking super suit for a person is like, do they trust Falcon? It's like, I guess they do. I guess so. And they Even spent all his money on him. Basically, kill him earlier. But, and then it, okay. You have to believe as well that either Falcon or the Wakandans designed this. It wasn't. It wasn't. Sorry, either either Bucky or uh, the Wakandans did. Falcon didn't have any, you know, say. Yeah. Like, uh, the, what do you think he needs? Like, this is. You, it's like, imagine being Bucky and you get to turn in this one favor and you're like, man, he's going to love this. It's going to be the greatest flying suit ever. And then he, he shows up in it and you're like, oh, fuck. Fuck. Yeah. Oh, no. Either they designed it and Bucky's like, oh my god, this is so embarrassing. Or Bucky designed this and then Falcon's like, oh man, I love uh, it. Do you mind if I yeah. make a few changes though? <laughs> like, can I just. I uh, just wanna... Yeah, he opens it up and like, oh, thanks. You shouldn't have. Yeah, you wow. have to wonder. You'd be like, is this like, are you fucking with me? I was like, haha, wear the stupid clown suit. <laughs> it's like, no, 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 it's a real thing. He's like, oh. That's great, man. I love it. Um, and yeah, I find it utterly bizarre that Shuri and a bunch of the other, other sciencey people are all working their asses off to create a suit for America. Like, they fucking hate America in their own movie. They're like, colonizers, fuck you all. And it's like, yeah, but it's meant for a black guy, so it's okay. It's like, I need to see that uh, scene. Yes, because all black people are on the same side. I mean, well, to be fair, I think that this show is really like it actually thinks that and the people who write this and like it, they think that if you're of a certain skin color, you've already been genetically sorted into the team that you need to be on. So well, that's, that's, that's how you rationalize it, right? The Wakandans were like, make a suit. No, we hate you colonizers. And then they go, no, this is for a black man. They go, oh, the one who All sold right. our ancestors into slavery. I don't think so. We don't like that. We don't talk about that! Well, Wakanda's specifically funny about that because they didn't help anybody. They just watched it. Yeah. yeah. The During fuckers. all the slave trading and the tribal wars and the, yeah, they didn't in, in case there was any confusion. All the starving. Black Panther's terrible, by the way. I don't, I don't know if it needed to be mentioned, but that, that yep. Turns Girl. out, hey, it's it does the same thing that this show does, where retroactively creating things that clearly didn't exist before he decided they did, Maybe it's not the best it's idea. It's hard. It's really hard. Maybe if you had told me to write idea. it, I'd have been like, Jesus fucking Christ, you want me to create a, a whole civilization that's more advanced than anybody else, and they decided to stay to themselves for their entire existence. At on least Earth. Atlantis is on the bottom of the ocean? So you're like, yeah, mate, eh. Yeah, yeah man, you can... Aquaman, better world building then. <laughs> oh my well, god. I was gonna say, the benefit you have is they can spread out, but then they can also have devices to keep secretive because they want to leave the surface dwellers to themselves sort of thing. Yeah, yeah, Wakandans, I got nothing. It's like, they stopped expanding after the five tribes were taken over. It's like, why? It's like, well, the land wasn't there. It's like, what do you mean? It would have been so much empty land. They would have expanded. Anybody would expand. It's like, no, that's colonizer talk. Remember, I got called a British, like, uh, my Britishness is getting to me when I was saying that. <laughs> like, this, it would be British of you to want to, like, put another house next to your current house. You're like, okay, alright. <laughs> You British. It's not like human beings who originated from Africa expanded across the entire planet. <laughs> like, was it Africa or the Middle just... East? 
Uh, I'm pretty sure, isn't the general assumption that East Africa is where human beings originated from? Like, the Middle East what is where c- civilization originated from, like, once, you know, the the uh, the Neolithic. Yes, it looks like humans first evolved in Africa, and much of human yeah. evolution occurred in that I th- Oh, I thought yeah. that was just known. I thought everybody knew oh. that. Well, I, I didn't know if it was there or, like, the Middle East area. I just didn't know. The Middle East was. is where mainly, um, where, like, the, the, the agricultural revolution happened. That was, like, where the first yeah, kind of civilizations popped up. Um, yeah, that's the Mediterranean, I was thinking super that. important area. Someone said, by the way, why is so much of his head exposed? It's like, I think the Wakandans want him dead. <laughs> so we can stab him. <laughs> we will leave weak the, point. the weakest point, his brain, right on offer. They just gotta shoot him right. <laughs> Seriously, that would be my first question if I was given this suit. I'd be like, oh, dude, is there like a, a headpiece that comes with it that I have to attach or something? He's like, nope. Oh. That <laughs> seems a bit odd. Uh, Feels like you want me to die. <laughs> But it's fine. It's fine. Don't Why don't worry. they give him like a crazy Black Panther nanotech mask that can just un- <laughs> yeah. pop on and off? You'd think. Because they give him the cheap stuff. If I'm flying through the air, I want some. I want a helmet, you know? Yeah. I feel yeah. like a helmet would be good. Oh, well. Like this is a really yeah. bad suit. You sounded like a colonizer, I'm not going to lie. I, What's happening? We, with should, we should see the Rocketeer. I oh can't help but just think about the Rocketeer and how it's just. Fun. Let me pull up the suit from that and how it's just it looks it looks really goofy, but it's just better. I mean, uh, let me get a good picture of it. I'm sure we'll get um, around to it. The list for yeah. all this happening was the big purple man collecting magic rocks. It's cool to see the MCU taking an insane cosmic event like half the universe dying and coming back and showing they do us not what its repercussions. Well. <laughs> no, they oh my god. Um Man. Oh fuck! <laughs> Showing so, us the repercussions by having basically barely addressing it at all, and then the end is oh, the borders are staying as they are, and everybody's cool with that. Like that's the end of to, this arc. <laughs> yeah, they do not want to commit to that. To at give you, all. Um, there is, they're not an idea of how we like take this sort of stuff. When in Wandavision, they had one scene showing the chaos of people coming back in a hospital. I was like, oh my god, could it be? We're finally going to address it? The scene ends and you're like, I cannot wait for them to finally- never again. Mm-hmm. Yep, that was it. It was <laughs> like, just for that one oh, scene. Just like the Bucky flashback. It's like, oh, we, well, we, we, you know, we've covered it now. And now it's up to the audience to invent a whole bunch of shit that we never actually did. It's like, they actually go in depth to Bucky's deep-seated PTSD and brainwashing, and they explore it in detail. In Wakanda, by the way. They show what happened in Wakanda in the time we haven't seen him. The connection he makes with the, um, I forget her name, Crazy Wakanda number one or two, I guess. Uh, Ayo? Wasn't that the, what's the first? No idea. So, uh, they, they will describe it as really, and you finally see it, and you're like, oh, that was like 30 seconds. Hmm. So. Someone says in the comics, Wakanda found out how to cure cancer and they didn't give it to the world. Yeah, oh. because Wanda suck. Wakanda sucks and they're fucking evil. Oh god, that would have been so much have... worse. Does that mean that Wakanda is basically those people from Batwoman with the Desert Rose? <laughs> <clears throat> also, I yeah. feel like there were. Yeah, I mean, there. I because it extends past medicine with Wakanda. Uh, the Rocketeer looks cool. I reckon. Yeah, yeah it, does. Does. it, it, it looks kind of steampunk. Really. It, it's, yeah, it, yeah, it's because it takes place in the late 30s, so? I think, is, is what it, it takes place. Is that place? steampunk or diesel punk? Uh, I think it's diesel punk. I think I that's think what it this is. is. Yeah. With like a lot of art deco influence. It's it's neat. I really like it. That looks cool. Mm. I uh, I remember really liking it. Um, It takes place in 1938. Yeah, so late 30s. I, can't, I don't want to watch this movie. It's good, yeah. I we, well, we I don't do know that. if it's good, but it's very enjoyable. I but I think there's definitely good stuff in it. But yeah, I'd love to see the Rocketeer again. So anyway, <laughs> yeah, like half the universe dying and coming back, and showing us what its repercussions would be for ordinary people when Sam. No, no, the, it only uses it so that a black woman can't get a loan. Well. Accurately, it's he can't get it right, Falcon, because um. If you oh remember, yeah, they wouldn't give it to Falcon either. Yeah, because yeah, well, Falcon could just get the loan and give her the money. Oh god, it's so stupid. Right? It's so fucking. Because if you watch it again, like he says to Falcon, "You've had no income for five years," and so like they can't draw any kind of reliable thing from that. You know how it works, right? With it, like your credit history and stuff. And then she's like, 
well, he's not been existing for five years. It's like, yeah, this is a really fucking stupid thing to say. I don't even know why the banker said that at all, because he would obviously know that Falcon would have been one of the people... Um, not to mention how, just, just systems in place, how it works. But the point is that Falcon is trying to get this loan. Meaning Falcon is trying to use his money to support it. Meaning there shouldn't be a problem because he has loads of fucking money. So, quick side note. Um, it, it Odd that, we, that I brought up the Rocketeer. Because uh -huh. um, he was the executive producer of Captain America, the first Avenger. And director as well. The guy who played the Rocketeer. The guy who did was the Rocketeer. Guy. Yeah. Oh, the guy who Joe did the Johnston. Yeah. Oh. Joseph Eggleston Johnston II, which is his full name. But yeah, that that's him. Neat. He did them both. Wait, when you so, say he didn't. Uh, oh, he did them both. So I guess he didn't. Yeah, because the Russos would have taken over after him then, I guess. Yes. Oh, so. Oh, he also made Jurassic Park 3, apparently. Well. <laughs> ah. Oh, uh, well. You know, you he can't made, win them all, guys. Uh, well, he we can't all be though. John Walker. Yes. Huh. That's an interesting coincidence. Yes. Um, so yeah, saying this was a, a great way to look into the effects of the blip. Nope. Just, just. No, this makes it seem not. silly. This makes it seem like the the blip is not being treated realistically at all. If they were doing that, they'd say, "All right, so it shows you don't have any income for X years." And like, "Oh yeah, I was part of the blip." And like, "Okay, can you show me the card that you know just proves that you were blipped, so that we know how to you know da da da." Mm -hmm. Oh, okay, so you were blipped. All right, so. Don't oh, worry about that. Get counted, yeah. And then he'd talk and then she'd talk about her fucking failing ass business. <laughs> and then he'd be like, whoa, 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 you want how much money? But you're not like you have a failing business, you can't pay for things. And then they'd say it's because she's black. So no. Yeah, they would be like, Wow, look at you. No money for you. And then so someone's like, like, Well, so yeah, I'm gonna start a YouTube channel. I guess a lot of people think that banks are just charities who just give out money. Well, you just they, go to a bank, they just give you money? This is None of this is handled properly. It's all very confusing, because uh, obviously the, the bank wouldn't have operated this way. It shows like a really weird lack of knowledge on their part. But then also that Falcon shouldn't be in this position in the first place. And then um, the world itself, like, like banks don't just... Well, you kind of just... Yeah, you went into it. Like, they don't just give you money. It's a lot more complicated than that. You actually have to prove a lot of different things, because if it did just give it to everybody, they'd be fucking bankrupt. Like there's no reason they shouldn't. Are you insane? No reason banks shouldn't give people money? What? Um. <laughs> are you, are I, you I taking the piss, what, I hope I, I don't know. Someone said that in chat. I don't know if they're referring to the bank thing. Hopefully not. There's a lot of reasons banks A lot banks of people think people that money. money is just a magical thing that people who have a lot of it can just give away to people who don't have it. The funny thing so, is we, we really need it to mean mm. something. Otherwise... Things will get real no, bad. Uh, yeah. There's a couple of uh, events in history that involve making money meaningless. Get the... Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. So that's why it's called a loan and not just a gift. This is what I mean. All but, of it's non-functional, yeah. and it's it's like a really shitty right of being like, look, banks are stressed, and now that's causing stress for other people. Mm. I can imagine. Yeah, if you're a big bank, it, like imagine what the good because pretty much all banks will be under FDIC, and if you have half the people that so. As far as I'm aware, after the this happened after the 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 Black Plague, where you lost a lot of people, but the amount of money in the world stayed the same. So that does a lot with like value of money and stuff like that. Mm. So take that and exploderate it to level nine thousand, where the same amount yeah. of money exists. Half the people in the world disappear. Yeah, um, that's right. Bring half of them back. Yeah, and how to govern? How to how to there's, uh, I can believe that the world would still remain functional, but you got to show that to me. You got to show it because there's a lot of work that you got to do. But they just don't. They, they, it's almost like they bring it up whenever it just might be convenient. You know. And um, then they say, "See, we didn't forget about it." And then idiots like this guy are like, "See, they they didn't forget about it." Slightly tangential uh, thing to think about in relation to how things get affected, but like I'm assuming this might be. I can't remember if we've discussed this before, if it's in Fringy's uh, script as well. But if the Avengers had gone to whatever governments were in place uh, before they unsnapped and said, We're going to do this, the government would probably be like, Yeah, so we're going to need months to prepare for this, if not more. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I would. I wouldn't be surprised if. After the blip, governments pretty much, yeah, local governments would probably take control 
at least temporarily, like there would be a lot more focus on local governments instead of federal ones. Mm -hmm. Um, I think there would probably be big shakeups in terms of it's too much to even really get into. Like the, the amount of implications is insane. And then to have all that happen. And then five years later, maybe you're starting to get back to, you know, some level of decent workability. And then they all just reappear again. And you're like, are you fucking kidding me? We just did all that work. And ugh. they, they are not ready to deal with the implications. What they're ready to do is every once in a while mention that it happened. It's just, it's, it, imagine being told, like, say you'd lost half your family in your house, and like, they're gonna snap back in a sec, you'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa where, <laughs> how, what, what's good, do they, yeah. what state are they gonna be in? Like, imagine I, you start, like, hugging the wall, like, ah, don't teleport them into me, please. <laughs> I mean, you, I live. you might have that worry, you might even, like, you'd be yeah. like, where were they when they disappeared? Fuck, I can't, like, quite remember. Someone said in chat there'd be less globalism, not more. Absolutely. If half the people disappeared, there would very much be a, okay, y'all need to take care of yourselves because we've got our own shit to deal with. Yeah, um, I, I think We can't be likely. just, yeah, we, we can't be focusing on the other side of the planet when we've got all these issues at home, yeah. ...applies for a bank loan and you can't get it because you didn't have any activity over the past five years. Which is stupid. Which doesn't not make stupid. any fucking it didn't sense. Exist. If you came back, if, if you're like... If you're a rich person and you come back after being blipped for five years and you have like a lot of solid investments and things like that, they're not going to say, oh, you were blipped for five years, so we're not going to give you any money. They'd be like, OK, what was your history before the blip? And then they would probably measure like the change in the economy. So, yeah, you did well before the blip. But now, you know, that's that's duh, what's looking at that's that's duh. So they'd measure that up. It, it's probably a complicated process that they'd use but because there's a lot of money on the line and they can't just give money away for free, especially now. So, well, And that's the super interesting thing about the blip. If someone, let's say a full family was blipped out of their house and someone then uh, lives in it and makes a family over four years and then at the fourth year says to the bank, like, can we now officially own this? Like, no one's coming back. They're like, yeah, okay. And then the people come back. It's like, what happens now? I'd, I'd like to explore that. But this show... Odley yeah. says, do better. <laughs> it's like, oh, okay. It's like at the end of uh, Kong Skull Island when the guy goes back after being trapped on the island and his wife has a husband. Do better. <laughs> yeah. That's what he should have said. Better. When he was dead? Yeah, that feels like something that would happen in the real world. Nope. Overall, no. I thought this series no, was neat, it does. Are it you an idiot? Series, Jesus right? Christ. Do you want the answer to that question? God, this guy's dumb. How how would you po you'd have to work me through the logic of that is how it would work in the real world. So surely the banks like the awareness The banks of the want well. to give people money in loans that they know they will get back or they are confident they'll get back. Yeah, that's how banks make money. Yes, you get the money that you need at the time you need it, and the bank in exchange gets a little bit more than what they loaned you, all right? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so then the bank exists to continue giving loans to people. So it's kind of, so banks are kind of great. Banks are fucking tits, all right? And this demonization of them, well, it's, it's like pigs, right? Just like, they're just, just pigs. There's banks only are evil, cops are evil. I mean, pan ba banks, banks are, uh, are <laughs> banks. Used. Yeah, panks. Let's start calling them panks. I think banks are yeah useful uh, as a as a like thing that there is. They're such a great bad guy though. Oh, the banks. Well, banks. The problem. Well, well, well. A lot of banks do unethical things. Sure, That's kind absolutely. Of the problem. Like as in, uh, banks fundamentally are a pretty useful institution, but the problem is that there are a lot of banks who do. You know, like using your money to fund fossil fuels. Like that's that's not such a fun one. But like the utility of banks and loans and stuff is super useful. But um, this show is just banks are bad. Well, it's, it's very reductive, simplistic takes on uh on really complex things. Well, and and he's celebrating that. Like he's like, nice. You you said yeah. that the bank was a dick to the black people. It's like, but <laughs> that's it. Like, it What's bad it about fossil fuels, Friggy? Uh, all right, <laughs> let's. We gotta be moving out of fossil fuels eventually, otherwise we're gonna be in trouble. Yeah, we have to. I don't... Banks is better than piggy banks. <laughs> banks. 
for a bank loan and he can't get it because he didn't have any activity over the past five years when he was dead. Yeah, that feels like something that would happen in the real world. No, it doesn't Overall, make any fucking sense. I thought this series sense. was neat and it warranted being a series rather than a movie by taking the time to humanize its protagonists. Oh, it didn't do that. God it unhumanized it. people. Like, you think Walker's Walker, like, like an evil person and you talk about how the show humanizes characters. Like, you're dehumanizing characters. You've dehumanized all the cops by calling them pigs. God damn it, man. Like, he talks about how much of a, like, a demon Walker was, and simultaneously, like, well, at least we've got, like, it's, it's taken the time to make humans out of Bucky and Falcon, where Bucky wasn't interesting in the films we've seen up to now. I have, like, the reverse take on all of that. Like, I genuinely, like, not, not even evidence, trying to be contradictive. He just says it. Jesus Christ, I concluded all of the reverse takes. How did this happen? Someone said, do they mention why they don't just go to another bank? They just say that it's all the same everywhere. Yeah, she, he says, like, we'll try every bank, and she's like, why are you so obsessed with trying to make this work or some shit, because she's a horrible person, too. <sighs> yeah, she's shit. Fuck her. Um, but yeah, I, I feel it for your bank, and then half of your customer base just reappears from nowhere. <laughs> yeah, like, I don't know, man. Might not be that bad. And give them some deserved endings. I wouldn't mind a season two, since I'd love to see more of Sam and Bucky working together. Though working No, together. fuck that. I want to, I want them to... It, fuck bringing back Vision, bring back Lamar with a magic bullshit, <laughs> and then have him go on adventures with Walker. Because I don't, because they don't fucking care, care. I don't so care I don't care any- Yeah, they don't give a shit, I don't care either. Lamar comes back as a fucking hero, and him and John Walker go out and they save the world together. We see, I, I, I saw the deleted scene, and they've left it out to leave it up in the air, but I know this will be true, okay? So when Walker picked up the one vial, it was actually two, we just didn't quite see the other one, he popped together. And when he was oh, with Lamar, oh yeah, they're both super soldiers. He, he stabbed Lamar with with the syringe. That's why it's a delayed reaction because he was kind of dead, but it's working its way through his body. And he's he's on he's yep. in the morgue right now, but he's about to go. <gasps> he's gonna be alive and well. And those two are gonna be leading the Thunderbolts. Lamar Yes. Yeah, the he's coming back, everybody. Kid. I don't care that it's from DC. Put him in it. Just make a portal that takes you to the DC universe. Put it's him in guarded it. Guarded by an old <laughs> Confederate general. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the fuck it was, like Armstrong Custer or whatever. Oh, shit. It was. Yeah, you're right. It was. It was yeah. They oh. told us it was supposed to be Joe Hex. That's supposed to be who it was. <laughs> Joe Hex. Oh my that. goodness. Is he a witch like um, Wanda? No, he's probably a wizard. He has hexes. Or maybe a or warlock. Or a sorcerer. Yeah. Or a warlock. Or a, sorcerer. Or a mage. Yeah. They're all different. Remember. Yep. Necromancer. Necromancer. Anyway. Yeah. Oh, it makes that makes more sense because Lazarus Pit, necromancy. Mm. Mm. Yeah. He's like, get away from my necromancy sense. pool. My juice of zombiness. Yeah. Be working together. Though honestly, who the fuck wants to see John Walker return to I do. <laughs> I do. I do. Yeah, he's me. a hero. He's a fucking hero. He's a good person. He deserves better from this world. I guess he's amazing. I want more John Walker. So this is something I find interesting about the process of making a review. I've been over it before, um, and I know that there's like the two modes. I think there's there's obviously space in between, but it like, seems to me there's two modes. A lot of people will say, I want to write mine without influence from like other people's perspectives to get mine solid, and then I, I wouldn't mind checking out other people's opinions to see what, see what happened. I, I'm the reverse mode, where I'm like, I want to write mine, and then I want to check out what everyone else was thinking, see what uh, I maybe didn't pick up, or see how people have interpreted this like beyond my own POV. And... Um, Thing is, I find that the, the, the mode I go with typically leads you to a script that's a little bit more aware of, of the meta rather than simply your own perspective, and it can also lead you to get a bit more on your own perspective. Because, say for example, I look at reviews I've seen in the show, and all of them say this. All of them say, like, how the fuck would anyone like Walker? Who the fuck, like, wh why would you even want to see anything more with him? I'd be like, well, I'm going to add to my script now that I think it's really odd that everybody hates this guy when... And then I'd have a sequence explaining exactly what I think he did that makes him an upstanding citizen. And I'd just be like, yeah, so I think people are a little bit biased on this one. They're not really looking at the events as, as how they happen. And maybe that wouldn't be in there. And I simply would have said, yeah, I really like Walker. Can't see, wait to see what happens next. And I know the people listening would be like, are you insane? You should have qualified that way more. Because, you know, I would know what people... Have issues with i don't think he uh he had any idea how much people like walker uh when making this i guess or maybe maybe i'm are we a minority <laughs> like i don't know i don't know i don't the more i hear twitter talk about media the more depressed i feel so i just don't do it 
but yeah, you know, if Plus, you watch... I'm pretty, pretty darn confident that I'm correct. So not a, not a huge push for me to, you know, uh, uh, and so, and so if, what yeah, a... you, you know, you're making your breakdown, sometimes worthwhile to see what other people are saying, because you might be shocked in terms of like, holy shit, people had a problem with this. I guess I'll talk about why it's not actually a problem. Because, uh, yeah, I, I, he thinks like, ugh, seeing more of Walker, ugh, and we're like, nah, I'm on board with that. <laughs> together yeah. though honestly who the fuck wants to see john walker return as a good guy is there Me. a single person Me. that wants th what do you mean wait what do you mean mm -hmm. return as a good guy <laughs> he was always a good guy he never wasn't an amazing person no so. you're wrong because the music went it was all like oh no uh, sinister CGI music blood, yeah. What's well, great is because when you have when when you put cgi blood on the weapon of the person that means they're bad in, yeah. in the Marvel MCU movie line. Obviously. But when you have Wonder Woman punching people into walls and their head, <sighs> blood, yeah. brains goes against the wall, that's good. Yeah. So what I what an interesting just what an interesting world. What a planet. Mm -hmm. What a what a species. Homo sapiens, man. They're 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 a what a bunch. Yep. What a bunch. That does anyone want to root for this man? Like, yes, mm -hmm. I already do. Yeah, so. yeah, he's amazing. Not really about what I want to root for him. I just do because I feel it's the right thing to do. He's a good yeah. person. I'm just person naturally attracted to good people. Yeah. yeah. Ever, it's a good show. Could have been great if certain elements of the finale <laughs> weren't entirely botched, which sounds a lot <sighs> like Wandavision, huh? I mean, this show's finale was better than Wandavision's finale, and so was the show. I guess so. I yeah, guess? but that's not that's <laughs> yeah. not a hard bar to clear. WandaVision's finale is like the worst yeah, thing like, ever. This finale was better than Nightmare finale Piss, I guess. Yeah. This made sense, sort of, kind of. Like, in a logic uh, kind of way. Yeah, in the sense that A connects to B connects to C, even if it was poorly. Whereas WandaVision, it's like A, now we're on F, and now we're back to B, and then Z, and then we're on 3. Well, this and then symbols we don't recognize. Magic. Yeah, and he is. Yeah, he did kick the chair. Someone mentioned that was pretty cool. That's true. That's way That's better. That's true. Yeah. yeah. The show as a whole, I'd say I'll give it a seven out of ten. It had its great moments, but it didn't quite oh, stick the landing. My God. I did like the part where Bucky tricked the Flag Smashers by hacking into their app and getting them to come to the wrong location. It was really fucking dumb that she gave him her, the Flag Smasher phone that allowed them to do yeah. that. That's what that we didn't bring dumb. up in our coverage, I completely forgot. They were all like blown yeah. away by Bucky having one of their phones and having access to the information. They fucking gave him it. Gave it to him. <laughs> oh stupid. Didn't are tell you. Them, I suppose. All you had to do was give him a phone that wasn't connected to them, other than being rung, if you know what I mean. Yeah, just give him, like, Don't give a him an actual flag smash phone. phone. Yeah, yeah give just give him phone. a random phone and call that phone's number. Also, Carly not telling anybody is even more hilarious. It's like she was sabotaging them. Like, I'm gonna get out of this, <laughs> but you guys won't. But not you guys. Okay, what a thing to praise. It's like, yeah, it was really stupid. Location. They mm. probably shouldn't have trusted that app and should have used their own website in order to communicate with each other. But they should have used their own website. That... No, no, they should have used like just phones, burner phones. I'm confused. Yeah, now I'm yeah. like, wait, there was a Flag Smasher app that you could download. Is that what you're suggesting right now? Twitter. Oh, how fucking stupid would that be? Like, we're gonna have a Flag Smasher app that has all the information about where we collect and what operations we do. It's like, are you for real? Could have made a website? Why, yes indeed there is, and that service is called Squarespace. No, you, no we're not watching your ad. This was so awful. That's I not feel so, so impressed. I will say, it feels so like this- So that's kind of a condemnation of Squarespace. I feel like he really hasn't earned this. It's like we've already had yeah. like five minutes and it's been really wonky and it's like it's now been, time it's for just ad. Claim, claim, such, assertion, claim, claim. No such evidence. A bad first impression. Like what a man. worthless video. Everything's yeah. wrong, and he's not even trying to like convince you of it. He's just saying that's the case. Man, I, that was I really hated that one actually. Like that was that not was fun a, at all. That was painful. Yeah. Is it? Yeah, I guess because I'm just scanning through. It's like the rest looks like it's just ad. Like, yeah, I think that's it because we got like two a minutes. It's like fourth of left, your video. So... <sighs> I know it's it's unreal that you would have More an than ad if... for a five yeah. minute video. Because you had one a little one in the beginning, and now the last two minutes are an ad. 
Like, people can just crap out these shitty videos, and they don't give a fuck. Oh, and then people who work really, really hard. Me, yeah. Yeah, and then people who people, work really, really oh. hard and get all their information correct, and they edit their visuals, and their fucking sponsor doesn't have a blurry JPEG that you pulled off of Google Images. Like, this guy doesn't give a shit. That was like five, yeah, five minutes. You probably wrote that in an afternoon. Pop, put, no, he wrote it in half it an out, hour. And you got an ad. <laughs> I'm like, man. This video oh. from conception as an idea to finished and posted on YouTube was like 90 minutes. All right, well. Oh. But this feels so funny to say. It's like, at least now, our next lad is going to be good old high top. Um, oh, boy. at least yeah, you'll you. have good death. <laughs> like, yeah. genuinely production values are going to be way higher way you better. will actually yeah. have a point to make and it's going to be <laughs> from, it, I do believe it comes from his heart, you know, instead of it just being like, better do a video on Falcon Winter Soldier because that's the thing people are talking about, I guess so, you know what and it's called The Falcon and the Winter Soldier my well, favorite hold up. Um, before we move on someone told me about this so, yeah, I guess this happened while we were doing our EFAP thingy. <laughs> um, uh, do you want to read it out? <laughs> sure. So, Spark the Light Bulb commented, Dude, revise your script. Every point is a vague assertion or stating your opinion with no supporting evidence to back them up or explain why you feel like that. Two minutes, 19 seconds, a real revolutionary? Elaborate. Give examples from the show. You're just stating something. It feels like this through all seven minutes. It's really five. five. <laughs> so, Shafrilis Productions responded. He said, What are you, my English teacher? I appreciate the constructive criticism, but try phrasing it a little less condescendingly next time. Revise your comment. Otherwise known as <laughs> do better. <laughs> <laughs> and then a different person, Trevor Coyle, said, or you could, you know, take the constructive criticism instead of calling him condescending so you can ignore it. I love when people say, like, who are you? X, don't give me criticism. Well, don't fucking post things on the internet then. You posted it, and you will happily accept when people suck you off and tell you how awesome your stuff is. But then it's you get like... really pissed off anytime anybody has anything negative to say. I didn't ask for your opinion. It's like, yeah, you did. You put this on the internet. You have a yeah, comment your section comment where section people is are allowed open. to express their thoughts. Yeah. If you don't see people doing that, why do you think that people aren't going to give you their opinions anyway? Like, what what is it? Go touch yeah. grass. <laughs> you know people the, are going to. Is that the phrase? No, go, yeah, go touch the grass. That's go right. and touch yeah. grass. So, um, when the director said that the goal was to get people to like John Walker by the end of the season, which for us is like, well, obviously we liked him before that anyway. He, in, re in response to this, said, I am lowering my score to 6 out of 10. <laughs> God, this guy's a fucking moron. I don't even know anybody He's who's so allowed... so bad at analyzing the, content. The reader response theory. No, it, like, death reader of the response author. Theory. Death of the author. So I always mix up. Death of the author. He applies that to make it worse. Because, because said someone said something. something outside of the show. He is now lowering the score. It's like, it's, no, okay. It's almost... It's like the thing I said about the A cab thing. It's like it's true. Here we are, dude. This is unreal. Like, <laughs> this is insane. He does all of the bad tropes of like <laughs> dumb YouTubers. He he gets angry when people criticize him. He doesn't make any points at all. And like, doesn't edit Twitter, his video and, hardly. Everything's like blurry and he shitty. He doesn't have any references. Yeah. Yeah, it's he just he falls for what the show's trying to get him to feel instead of actually thinking with his own brain. He does all the things, yeah. This God. really is one of those quick like examples of point to a horrible video that is like the inspiration for why we do what we do. Like what are we fighting against? And this is mm -hmm. such an easy example because it's short, a third of it's a fucking ad <laughs> and it's all wrong. It's, and as the comment said, effort. She's like a real revolutionary. That is such a statement. You're like, what are you referring to specifically? I would actually like to know. It's like, nah. You can probably nah, what are you, my English teacher? <laughs> Do better. <laughs> I feel sorry for your English teacher. Yeah. Yeah. Like, clearly she failed. 
I like the idea now of a YouTuber just called the English teacher who goes around criticizing people's word choices in YouTube videos. Hey, and some people but are saying, oh man, I used to really enjoy him. Oh, I'm sure he's got some good videos. So, much like Filmento, of which we have covered three times now, it's like, I'm more than willing ah, to believe that Shafrilis may have some good videos. Uh, maybe. That wasn't... Maybe. That, that one that really... Wasn't one of them, if, yeah, though, that, that one felt like horrible. he fucking walked that in. Like, he did not care. He was just like... Eh. Well, he, like, tripped in. Like, he... He fell in. <laughs> limped in, sort of. He fell down the stairs in. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, he so fell he got to the stairs. end, yeah. he's face down on the ground, but he's holding up a thumbs up. I made it! <laughs> so next up we have The Falcon and the Winter Soldier, my favorite MCU movie in years. Man. Oh my god. That's quite the oh. praise, and uh, the wow. thumbnail has favorite with, with Falcon on it. So High Top, what have you got for us, buddy? Excited. Please, give me something. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. Hey, how you doing? You doing good? I really hope so. Listen, I didn't doing well. Well, well, doing well. Doing well. Yeah. Now we now you could say, "Are you doing good?" And the answer should be yes, because you know, hopefully you're not a bad person. However, doing well. Yes. Oh, I see. What not you mean. finish one. Call me a punk. Call me an idiot. Call me a hack. But it wasn't your for lighting, me. What are you dudes, doing please. with your lighting what, what in your if, face? Yeah. I was about to say. Are you what? just trying to get your money's worth out of the lights? I've Why seen them. Um, yourself. I've seen enough high top to know this is unusual. He doesn't usually. No, the lighting isn't unusual. That's totally high top. But the the no, choice it's to have. Yeah, like like he's describing. Um, he's talking about something in a particular tone, and then he's got his face to represent. Like, and do we get? That's a that's a new addition. Let's see how it goes. I guess. I did yeah. not finish WandaVision. Call me a punk, call me an idiot, call me a hack, but it wasn't for me. It started out for me, then went in a direction that wasn't for me, and I started rewatching. What are you doing? What is this? What is this? What is this attempted style? I'm not God gonna call it style, this is an attempted style. What is this? Who did you kill? Can't go fucking five seconds. Jesus, this why would you make this decision? What is this? What are you trying to tell me? Like from a creative Mr. standpoint, I can, what I can are explain you trying to tell me? He's crying blood from how bad WandaVision was. But then why is the blood coming from like not his eyes? It's well, I was gonna say <laughs> it looks like someone smeared something on you. Not that you cried it. Just FYI, I don't know what he's going know. for. Then. Is that what he's going for though? Because like, <laughs> yeah, um, if you would do the crying thing, you would have just dropped it on the corner of your eyes and let it fall where it may. But that yeah. wouldn't have been. This almost looks like war paint. Enough? <laughs> like a really war paint, shit war yeah. paint. What is this? He's going to battle. He's gonna battle with his lights. Oh god, he's such a little... he's a little trooper. You do you, buddy. Alright, let's see what else we got. Gotham and I did not love Far From Home. Broke me. I did not love Endgame, <laughs> yeah. I did not love Infinity War, and I did not love Thor Ragnarok, and I don't remember- Oh my Jacob. god! Alright, it's funny, as he started, I'm like, Far From Home, shut up. And it's like, Endgame, <laughs> yep, I'm on board with that. Infinity War, uh, Ragnarok, oh, okay. Alright, you lose so, me now. <laughs> there is a lot so. to like in Infinity War. For how broken yeah. the plot is, there is a lot to like in Infinity War. I and know. Ragnarok, lot. A good stuff going yeah. on. There. I, I mean, so he just doesn't like. What more. do you want? I'm not even sure that I believe him. I know it's a strange thing to say, but I could have sworn that he liked that. Like at least I know he didn't like Endgame, but I don't know. But, I but of Ragnarok is everything things. he likes. It's a director focused, zany, different from what it's not cookie cuttered from the studio, right? So Very he should like yeah. it. I'd be curious to know what. Yeah, why was it? But I want to know what Captain Marvel position is as well. I love Thor Ragnarok, and I don't remember dick about Captain Marvel or Ant-Man the Wasp. Quan, Quan, well, well, honestly, you know what? It's fair enough. Yeah, I don't remember. Ant I know I've seen Ant-Man and the Wasp, but I know <laughs> basically nothing about it. Fringy, Far From Home isn't good. So the most important thing is that it's better than uh, Winter Soldier. That's the <laughs> oh, most important part. Yeah, duh. Of course it is. And it is. Winter Soldier is yeah. like bad. That's the yeah. only thing that matters. I don't need to prove that that movie's good. I just need to prove that it's better than Winter Soldier, which isn't going to yeah, be Yeah, Winter Soldier is fucking filled with issues, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, for, for people who are going to be upset when you say that, the point he's making is that he doesn't believe that the MCU is being treated fairly, all of the iterations. Well, uh, no, I don't think so at all. So he's gonna... He, he's more than happy to concede on whatever flaws are gonna be in Far From Home, but that it will rise Of which there are the flaws, yeah. But again, for every Edith, there's like six of those in in Winter Soldier. So you have chosen death. 
<laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, well, all right. Yes, yeah, yeah. Reference if Edith thinks it's the biggest problem in Far From Home, oh, yeah, Winter Soldier's, yeah, it's worse. Like, now's not the time. <laughs> I'm just going to keep throwing it out until we get to when Something we actually talk about it. We'll eventually. get there one day. Yeah. Don't worry, guys. No, this will, be, this, this will be the thing to break our perfect streak. No. Um. Yeah, chat, you may not be aware of this, but just the three of us, not including all of the people across the EFAB universe, there are hot takes everywhere that haven't even been shared There yet. are so many hot takes. Oh You're not God. ready for some of these hot takes, They're guys. They're like a tidal like, wave. They're going to hit you. You need be to like, have your blanket. You have to wrap yourself in your blanket <laughs> and rock yourself to sleep when you hear some of these takes. They're so scorching. They're so, they're so toxic. Yeah, Pure. there's all yeah. kinds of things about... Uh, yeah. They are sulfuric acid takes. They are supernova takes. They, they haven't are even told us... Yeah. Neutron it's star takes. <laughs> I mean, that was nothing. We still have, you know, shadowy cavaliers to talk about, and we haven't even Guys, begun we thought, to discuss those things. So. We thought Aquaman was bad, okay? Are you ready? That should, if that's a hot take, fucking kill me. Well, uh, I know that the, it I was. The, it was when it came out. I think loads of people were like, "Aquaman's awesome." It was just. Like, I think. I okay. think the take is it's really stupid, but it's fun. Like, but yeah, but yeah. I think I think that's still like the hot take is no, you don't understand how stupid it is. Like, it's mm -hmm. not it's not stupid in the way you think. Like, you think it's stupid with the bongo drum playing octopus. It's stupid <laughs> in that, like, nothing makes sense at all. Dude, that octopus is, like, the best part of the movie, okay? It's a fucking legend. Yeah, Someone it is. Said, I want to watch the movie Jimmy Neutron. Uh, perfection. Film perfection. Um, God, I haven't watched it that may be the, It might be the, the objective perfect movie, Jimmy yes. Neutron. I would uh, say it's my favorite movie. MCU movie in years, Jimmy Neutron. <laughs> I love the Jimmy yeah. Neutron cinematic universe. I, I love. I John Walker is like Ultra Lord. <laughs> yes, yes. Anyway, take it away, High Top. Go for it. The MCU and I have not been on the same wavelength since my dead, decrepit soul was blessed by Guardians of the Galaxy. He did the thing, and it was flashing this time. He was looking up with the blood paint on, and the light was flashing on and off. Don't you get what yeah. it means? What? Somebody was. I like the idea that somebody was standing by the light switch doing that. One oh yeah, that's recording. totally what it was. This is gonna and look artistic. I guarantee you, when he was writing, he was like, "So I want to evoke a sense of like me almost being lost in the in the horrors of like mediocre superhero movies." But then Volume Two, like Guardians of the Galaxy, comes out and it's like a little ray of sunshine that kind of flickers on me. How could I represent? Oh, I got it. Oh, flickering lights. Barry, come over here. <laughs> He's like, "Oh, dude, what do I gotta do?" It's like, flick the light, do it. Oh, jeez, okay. Okay, All buddy. you did not expect to vibe with, to love, or to feel much of anything when it came to the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. The trailer made it look like more of the same. You know what I mean? The trailer. I made... wish it were more. No, actually, no. Not anymore. Yeah. <laughs> it Unfortunately, as as... it is the same now. I mean, now it's the same. This yeah. is what the same is now. After Marvel. Endgame, WandaVision, Endgame, Winter Soldier. They all sit in this. WandaVision, yeah. Winter Soldier. Yeah. That's like four really bad ones in a row. Not gonna like count a dumb, goofy, one, fun buddy cop show with two pre-established supporting characters being stuck together for our comedic enjoyment. In the great words of Spike Lee, reason, it very much did not look like my cup of tea. tea. But yeah. I ain't gonna lie and say that I wasn't curious about it. Wasn't intrigued from. What are you doing? What are you doing? What is, what is this? What is this? I wanna, I wanna ask him. So like, from creator to creator, what do you want my brain to be thinking or be thinking of when you put this in? God damn like, it! Why? What's this? What's this for? What it, What do you want me Why to do? Why can't it just be art rags? rags? Why can't it just be an artistic choice? I like that this is just his life. <laughs> in a room with but bunch like, of weird even he would be around. like arts. He, he'd say like art's supposed to invoke an emotion or a purpose or something. And I just want to know what he wants that to be. Not um, even if it pulls it off or not, because it unless he's trying to be confusing, then I'm like spot on, man. You know, I, I think we're supposed to be like. Almost this is what he wants the MC to be. A little bit Nonsense. high strung and sort of like going with the flow. That's the attitude because he's describing how like he saw the trailer and he's like, eh, it doesn't seem like there's much reason to care about it. And this is his, the camera's sort of like, look at High Top as he doesn't necessarily care about it just yet. I'm sure it's going to change as time goes on. And the light will turn from what, blue to red like, or something. Why was the blood on his face? Yeah, that's the thing. With what ridiculous glasses. But I'm with Falcon and Winter Soldier. I know what they're trying to make me feel. With this, I don't know what you're trying to make me feel. Mm. You know? Yeah. Likely, it very much a cup of tea. tea. But yeah. I ain't gonna lie and say that I wasn't curious about it. Wasn't intrigued from afar. Oh, I guess this is 
he, when he said curious, it, he, he, he turns his head like, like, oh, what's this? It's, it's curiosity. Oh my God. Is that my, is that my blue light? Oh, yeah, it is. See, that's, it's right where I set it up for the shot. He's doing it oh, curious. It that's like, oh it, my goodness yeah. gracious. There you go. It totally lines up now. Object with it. Because this show had a hard task. Maybe the trickiest one that Marvel Studios has undertaken in a while. The Fal no, that, that would be the, the trickiest thing that they've ever done was probably going from the end of Infinity War to Endgame. And yeah, they didn't and they manage it. to land, and it. they <laughs> fucking blew it. They they just said five years later. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, all right. Well, hmm. fat boy yelling oh. at people on Fortnite. That was art. Yeah. Falcon and the Winter Soldier had to make the Falcon and the Winter Soldier real characters. Already, no, already, Bucky oh. was already a real character. They just and had to so keep him going. So was Sam. He also, just didn't have yeah. much going for yeah, him. Yeah, to a lesser degree, yes. But yeah, fuck the weird real. I'm getting a little tired of it. Go away, yeah. real revolutionary. Real? Have y'all not been paying attention? Well, real as opposed to what? What were they before? Were they fake? Like, what? They're all well, it, fake. It they feels don't like, exist. Um, uh, it feels like almost clickbait, the same vibe. So, like, if you'd said uh, more detailed characters, that just doesn't sound as enticing as real characters. Yeah, but it's more accurate. No, of course. That's he doesn't not good give enough. A shit. <laughs> that's true. He's, he got, he's got he's got paint to put on his face. He doesn't fucking care. <laughs> he doesn't have time to write his script when he's putting Yeah, he's got important things to do. Also the fact he that set that's, up his blue light. The fact that it's uh, right red up. is real is red and character is blue. I'm almost certain his light is turning red as this video goes forward. Do you wonder oh. if he ran out into the forest and killed a deer and gutted it to get the blood? Like, no, he's, he's not that man. He goes that he goes that far for his videos. <laughs> it's, it's to the I bet, <laughs> Mahler, you had <laughs> you made your light prediction. I'm gonna make a different prediction. All right, somewhat similar though. When he talks about John Walker, he's gonna bust out the red light. Oh. Okay, mm. I was thinking yeah. then, would he want to try and have both lights on at the end for the last episode? Oh. Are you talking about a blue light on one side and a red light on the other oh side? Oh my god. Could yeah, it be? I bet you will. It the duality be? of America. I don't, I don't know if I'm mad. I don't know if I'm gonna change my prediction to that or keep my original one. Um, I you could will, do both. I will take that prediction. I think he'll do red and and blue on different oh. sides. Yeah. Ooh, I don't know. Um <laughs> Should we do a can we do a poll? I think so. Well, the problem is a lot of people will be able to check. We haven't checked, so it's like, oh, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll right. just leave it between um, us. Oh, I think he uh, will, he's so obsessed with fucking lighting everywhere, I'm pretty sure red and blue will be on his face at some point. Yes, he has red and blue I, here I on the that. text, so yeah, maybe yeah. he's gonna try and recreate, like, the colors, blue and I red. I think it's gonna be multiple things. I think the interpretation will be, <sighs> see, this is the duality of, like, America. On America, on the surface, it's, like, blue, but underneath, it's red. <laughs> like red with the blood of all the people that they exploited. Yes, all the black like people that. they killed. But you see yeah. how Falcon's kind of red and Bucky's kind of blue with the, what they're wearing? Maybe it's oh, just that simple. And, yeah. Um, oh, maybe it is. Maybe we're reading into it too much. <laughs> he's an or too. We can read in as much as we want. It's all intentional. Yeah, it's true. Um, he's probably pr happy that we're doing this. Oh, yeah. Um, this yeah, is what, so. yeah. yeah. Um, I'm going to go with the red light comes on when he talks about John Walker. I'm going to stick with that, though it's. Ooh, okay. they both I mean, are I very think, plausible. I think you're on point with it. I just, I almost think, I think that so. he wants to have blue, then red, and then combo him up, maybe. Uh, for, who knows? Guys, we might get a green. I don't even know. We're going oh, on an adventure but, with this but one. what would green, like, represent? What would it be for? Jealousy. It, maybe that's to represent the grass touching. Ah. Well, if, if you're merging red and blue, then it would need to become purple, right? So his face oh. needs well, to go purple. Both of his like sides. Seen. Yeah, his face, yeah, but, like... If you merge them together, is all I'm saying. That's what they mix into purple. Maybe he'll yeah. argue that Walker is like a mix, mix of Cap and evilness. I don't think we're going to get a purple light, though. I think the blue will be on one side, and the red will be on one side, and that's what we're going to get. I don't think he's going to make them purple. Well, I can't wait to find out, so let's do it. I'm excited. The Falcon soldier had to make Sam Wilson and Bucky Barnes real human beings. Oh, Why God. is human in red? Real was red before, but now real no, is blue. No, human is. Yeah, human, sorry, human's red, yeah. That is funny, because if, if he said what I meant by real was, like, human, like, so why'd you say real human beings? Like, what? <laughs> now you just make it one of those fakey humans. God one damn it, they already fakey, had characters, fakey, but all right. Certainly Bucky, by the way. It's really weird that people are like, oh, this show finally yeah, gave Bucky characters. Like, where the I fuck like were the you guys? Of, like, 
I'm not a real human being and they rip off a mask and they're robots. It's like, <laughs> see, we're one of the big three. <laughs> That's who one we of are. The big th yeah, the android. Fuck yeah. And joyously tweeted out as soon as I watched the first episode. Holy fuck. Falcon and the Winter Soldier is my favorite MCU thing in years. Vulnerable and human. Vulnerable, and human. Vulnerable, Vulnerable and human. human. Yeah, not oh like in Far God. From Home when Spider-Man is struggling to deal with the death of his mentor, just wants to go on a holiday and keeps getting yeah, drawn back into conflict and has Iron a breakdown when he when he feels like he's not enough of a hero to save his you know save his friends. He can't live up to that legacy, and then he realizes he's just got to do his own thing. That was that's Iron not Man. vulnerable or human. That was Iron Man. It doesn't really count, does it? Yeah, that's right. That was uh, that was MCU product, not like the product that was made to lo to help Disney Plus get more subscribers. Hmm. Yeah, this is much cooler. Mm. Loved it. So, yeah, Falcon and the Winter Soldier is my favorite MCU thing in years. It's vulnerable and human, and I loved it. But before we dive into Birdman and depressed oh, no. Bucky the Snowman, I'd like to... Oh. Oh. <laughs> All right. Give a big old thanks to Babel for sponsoring. Oh no, not another thing. No. What's Babel? <laughs> well, hey, at least yeah. his logo is like clear, and it's he's even got a little zoom in going. Oh yeah, I mean he he knows how to edit. I think so. You know, yeah, you get he that. knows how to edit. Um, it's what he's editing that's so the issue. Is going just from the name. I don't know if you guys know what this app is, but I, my guess is it's more of a social media talking app. That's a plus, though. I what think does that plus mean. Well, I think. Yeah that it is a language learning uh software oh, could be could be because talic like, tower of babel oh all right that's a good right. that's a good point actually yeah maybe that's how you learn different languages yeah all right let's see that's a how, guess yeah yeah let's see how we did answering this for those of you who don't know about hey. yes yeah yeah, yeah. Ah, muy bien. Yes. the number one language learning app in the world with more than 10 million subscriptions wouldn't it be fun if you said more than 10 subscriptions more than 10 <laughs> subscriptions. <laughs> what sets Babbel Dozens apart from their signing up every year learning language platforms is that their lessons are actually built by 150 plus real life language teachers. Are they so real human beings? I so I would expect anything that teaches me how to learn a language would be made by people who know how to speak that fucking language, but you know. That seems like a, a like a if you were like oh an algorithm came up with all of it, I'd be like, "Oh, it's probably a bit broken." So, yeah. Someone says, stop reading the comments, Rags. No, like, I think that's just really intuitive. Stop reading I think, it. yeah, Tower of Babel. And plus, that's we, a great like, babbling. Name, yeah. yeah, babbling. Like, oh, he's babbling on and on. From, from the Tower of Babel is where we get it. I hear the word babble, I think about the Tower of Babel. That's just the story. There you go. There's other creepy machine learning AI technology. But the machines. I was shocked, flabbergasted to learn that you only need about 10 to 15 minutes of lessons per day to see results within three weeks. It's so easy uh, to I, wait. See results oh. within three weeks. Uh, uh, I feel I so, I feel like I I job, learned the you? Cyrillic alphabet. So I, I started learning Russian a while ago and I got sidetracked, but I still know how to pronounce the, the Russian alphabet like I could and it. it Took me more than three weeks, and I was just like, "Oh, okay, I'll just do a couple letters. Oh, I'll add a little couple letters. Oh, a couple letters. Oh, three. Oof. I'm Ooh. lost on oh, both, hey. both aspects. I both agree and disagree. I agree that you would see yeah. some form of a result. Obviously, you would have to if you've been doing it for three weeks. You have to have something. But at the same time, it's like probably not going to be a significant result if all you're doing is comparing words ten times per day, and then I think you need to spend a lot more time than fifteen minutes a day. To, to like actually make real progress on any particular creative or skill or anything that you want to learn. If mm -hmm. it makes me wonder how much do you really want to learn it if you're only going to spend 15 I minutes? Think, I don't think you, you're trying to learn at all if you're doing it like that. I feel like if you actually want to learn how to speak a language, you need to either move to that country and make a really concerted effort or make a really concerted effort where you are to like take classes that are like an hour or two hours and then do practice when you go home and read textbooks and stuff like that. I, I, I don't know how you learn languages, but like, I imagine that's what you do. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't know, that might be a, and, I know people who learn all kinds of languages much quicker than uh, having to move to any country or anything, but the... Oh, I'm saying that that's like a really quick way because you kind of have to, you know? Yeah, it's almost like forces you to learn. But um, in app form, it seems really like... Uh, like, almost, you know, it's like, this word is this. All right, you've done your, your app requested language learning for the day. It's just like, that seems so weird. Yeah. Hmm. If I only have 15 minutes a day to spare to something, 
I don't know if learning a new language is going to be that thing, you know. I mean, no, not if you, yeah, I mean, if you do, you know, then you do. But uh, I feel like that requires more of a commitment. I I would absolutely imagine that if you want to learn another language, you need to make a really concerted effort to do it. You um, need to be using it, like. Uh yeah, I think that's the big part. thing is you have to use it regularly. Otherwise, you forget because i mean I'm, I'm pretty sure that that's what happens right even if it's your native language if you're just speaking english all the time and you're french and you speak english like nothing but english for 10 years it becomes harder to speak french and vice yeah, poor, versa. poor metal he's he's i think i think he thinks well, in both german and english these days i wonder that's see that's really foreign to me i don't know what it feels like to be able to think in a different language i am uh I don't either. Um, it's a it's I, a blessing it, and a curse to be an English speaker. One, everybody everybody like has to speak your language, kind of, because it's English. But it means that everybody else learns a second language. We are less cultured. Yeah, kind of, probably. Yeah, I imagine there is something there. Like Europeans know how to speak English, but British people don't tend to know how to speak whatever language, like French or German. We just don't have the we just don't have the pressure to. Yeah, yeah, we don't need to. Everybody else has to conform to us because we're the the uh, the Uber yeah, boy. But anyway, see to fit into any busy schedule. They even have a feature called Babbel Live, where you can join a live class online for an I'm additional. Sure, people aren't fee. sick so of that right now. Take a break from watching my shitty videos, and I'll take a break from making them, please. And we can both improve our minds. Our God, what a uh, brain pasta! Stop it memories our souls and grow and be productive by learning a new language j'adore sam raimi say to le jean oh god uh, <laughs> i you know should, you adore you sam raimi hey are there Jermaine any people did. in the chat who why are you have a clown mask french? on what is that is that like is french is that the thing just french people are known for clowns he hates like, himself well, clowns people hate are themselves. clowns that's offensive that's all right. Test, still they play, I say, Babbel. And right now, Babbel is a very special promotion for you. If you buy a six month subscription, you'll get- I feel like <sighs> if you were gonna speak, like if you were learning French and you wanted to speak French, do better. I feel like uh, if you're trying to learn French, don't you have to do like the pronunciations and everything? It sounds like he's doing it, you, you know, in the same way, like if you're just almost reading like a different language and you're not doing any of the, uh, any of like the components of the proper pronunciation do you know what i mean like you're kind of speaking it almost in the way that an english speaker would yeah there's like when i was uh learning the russian stuff there would be notes about pronunciation and they would mm -hmm. oh no it was an old um i have an old french learn french book from like the 40s or 50s it's super old and there were notes in there about when you're pronouncing french that you need to make these certain pronunciations and if you don't they will understand you, but you will have a distinct foreign accent. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's more like a no. It, they weren't even saying, like, definitely don't do it. They're just saying, if you do this, you will sound like you have a foreign accent. So, yeah, like not rolling your R's in Spanish. Yeah, that would be one, yeah. like an example. Or like, but that's you guys just like, uh, I hate rolling R's. That's pronouncing weird. this word really hard. I can't. I, I Lo Llewellyn. Llewellyn. Llewellyn, yeah. Yeah, that Llewellyn. would be the that would be the standard way to do it, but there's like it would, it would betray a sense of like, wait a minute, you're not Welsh, are you? Llewellyn. No. Llewellyn. It's a really Llewellyn. weird double L means. Llewellyn. That sounds like Swedish. Llewellyn. <laughs> it's just, it's, honestly yeah. it sounds like a nightmare to try and teach to people Llewellyn. Llewellyn. Like it's it's just like what what how are you what are you doing there? Just like Oh, oh. it's like like a like Llewellyn. Yeah, like a I guess Llewellyn? almost a C H Llewellyn. 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 So like where your the air is going out the side of your tongue? Kinda, yeah, yeah, yeah. Llewellyn. Yeah, like Llewellyn. 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 <laughs> I feel like we're making progress here. Hell yeah! We we'll get everybody speaking Welsh by the end of the day. Red wine coffee. Llewellyn. Llewellyn. Anyway, I like this part so, of the yeah, ad where they tell you you well, gotta buy I, it I, now I, because this is the time to buy it well, because I, you're gonna get more stuff. I think we gotta go back just a little bit because <laughs> if you're doing an ad for the language speaking thing and you're doing French and you want to say something in French that you've been practicing, first off. Don't be wearing a fucking mask that covers your mouth. 
in a in a video about speaking languages that require pronunciation because that makes it more difficult to understand you. Also, don't clearly be looking down at your phone for notes and stuff. I, I feel oh, like you to, could to, to give off the sense if of this like is how really good the something app is, that you're into. What you're saying, like so that you give off a sense of how good the app is, not to make it look like yeah. shit as you go. Uh, yeah, it looks like he just. It looks like he's faking it, and the mask is there so that he can edit the sound in post because he didn't actually learn it. And he's even, if not, he's reading off of something else instead of looking at the camera. Mm. Like, if this was really something that you were into, you'd confidently well, well, speak in a different language and then have the right. subtitles, not right. do he this was, weird... Like, it's like he's hiding it. He was emailed. He looked into the app for a day, and then he made the ad, okay? Leave him alone. He was. He doesn't actually give... I don't think he actually gives a shit. I don't think he cares to learn French. I just like, like the particularly... fact that it's like, you gotta buy it now! And you gotta buy yeah. six months, because you'll get another month free, or whatever the fuck. Man, six months? How Edition? much does it cost? Because I couldn't, I couldn't vouch for this. I, if right, I got an email, on. I'd be like, I can't vouch for a language learning software. I don't have the time or that much of an interest in learning a whole other language right now. I can't cost. vouch for it. What if it's got re so, good reviews? So you get six months three, but six months it's twelve ninety nine in Australia in a month. So that's seventy seven. Like I oh Matt, mm -hmm. and I bet it auto renews months. at the end of that year too. Probably. But like I guess what things, I'm getting yeah. confused at is you can you can get 12 months for 9.99 Australian a month, and that's half price. Like you get it gets cut in half of what the actual price is. So is this promotion like literally just the same as the promotion that they have on their website anyway? Well, maybe the, like what's you got to put in. This? You have to put in code blue light, and then you get maybe. like 10 percent <laughs> off, or he gets a small oh, probably, percentage yeah. of that. You know, kickbacks or something. That's some. Um, Two elements to these ads that I always find is like if there is a constant special offer, so you know it's just yeah. always a time to buy. But also that let's say they start out and they go for our widget we're going to charge ten dollars. You go no 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 charge twenty and put it on a special offer of half off. Like oh, okay, that's like mm. the smarter thing to do, or whatever. But yeah, check it out, chat. You can learn French. You can you can learn yeah. yeah. Allegedly. I Allegedly. mean, we don't, we, we wouldn't be able to tell by him. He's not, he's not what we, what we call selling the product. He's not mm. doing that. Mm. But Sing is always free. So if you want to get a head start on learning a new language, or if you just want to brush up on a language you already know, click on my link in the description. You'll be supporting the channel and learning a fantastic skill. Thanks, guys. Let's be uh, real here. You hopefully know me well enough by now. If not, what, what are you <laughs> doing? Are you lost? <laughs> That's. <laughs> what are you doing? Looking he's around, like, like, looking he's, around. Like he's, he's like lost. that dude in Rick and oh Morty. Oh my! Like, How did I get here? Oh my god! Look at the description of episode one of his podcast. It's, oh, the struggles of being creative. Oh, <laughs> god. oh. oh. Why is it all capitalized? Oh. Why is each word capitalized? Oh. It's a sentence. You don't meant to do it's, that. It's also there's also bad grammar. John Graves, John Bullock, oh, sorry, John Graves, Josh Bullock, Franz, Francesco, De Mayo, and High Top comma? Alex discuss no, many no things comma. in this podcast reboot. Period. No space. Is art a product? <laughs> KFC gaming machine. And there's no and gap between that dot. You see that? There's a period. Or in the next no sentence gap. too. KFC gaming machine. Period. Yeah. Directly then, into the W. And then after stash. Yeah. But he does it after the question marks. Is it? What? What? Is it bad is that his logo is Converse? A shoe? Like specifically Converse though, right? I, I, like, like an actual, like not a custom shoe at the very least, well, like your own. It's, he's got, he doesn't have the logo on the shoe, so I think it's safe, but it is odd. I just, I just yeah, I'm not like really being critical beyond just like wouldn't you not want to do that wouldn't you want to do something else mm. oh. all right the struggles of being creative that's such struggles a fucking being, it's, meme yeah, description it's, uh, <laughs> how to how to how to substitute lights and head motions for creativity that is creativity you ass jesus now on Spotify, that as soon as they showed Sam Wilson getting denied alone in Bucky Barnes having PTSD, having so much.
Oh, when he was saying that, I thought that was like his editing because it was blurry and I couldn't tell what was going on. <laughs> I thought that was High Top's video, not a not scene a from the. Yeah. Uh, and the, and the, oh, right, right, it's from the show. Represents PTSD. And yeah, uh, this doing the thing we talked about, they did it like once, and now it's the thing that they did. They did it, you know? Like, not really, but okay. They didn't, but they wanted to, and they tricked you into thinking that they did because you're a simpleton. So, mission accomplished. Thanks mm. for the subscription. So much self tortures himself by having his only real world human connection be the father of no, someone brutally murdered. No, that's not. That's just no, the no, next that's... person on his list. He's also got that backwards. That's He went to him because of that, not that that turned yeah, out to be yeah. that way. That's supposed to give him catharsis. It's not supposed to... He's not torturing himself. That's also not as... Did he... <sighs> How I, I, we're, I we're already again. off to Hang such on. a horrible start. So much self hatred that he tortures himself by having his it's only real world human connection be the father of someone he brew. So he's saying he's torturing himself by having it be that his connection is the one person whose son is also killed as well. That I feel like you you're all over the place. Like yeah. he's here specifically to eventually reveal that he's just trying to muster up that courage. At least that's the impression I got. Because he's doing it with all kinds of different people on the list. This is just the next one. And by the end yes. of the season, he does. Yeah. Which was a shame, because we were thinking this is a actual friend of his that we might see later on, and that might get developed, and maybe they have a history, and... Uh, or we were thinking this might be, what if this was the guy from, you know, the Asian guy from the first Avengers? He's looking kind of young, but, you know, maybe, who knows, whether they get maybe... Uh, no, yeah, we it could have been nondescript war buddy. These, it's a good question, chat. Does he even watch the show? Do these people watch the show? I don't. So you know how there's a difference between hearing and listening. Yes. What's the is 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 the visual version of that like looking and watching? Like they don't watch the show; they look at the show. Presumably, I mean. Is there anything that directly contradicts his idea that Bucky's doing this to torture himself? It's like, I, I, I guess there's nothing I can specifically this reference, but him, like I... This is supposed to give him catharsis. He's trying to He's amend. trying to make up to do, yeah, he's trying to do good things for other people. I don't think he consciously is like, I'll make friends with the father of the guy I killed because I, I need to be punished. Not quite what I think that they were going for, but... All right. Self hatred that he tortures himself by having his only real world human connection be the father of someone he brutally murdered as the Winter Soldier. That I was gonna fuck with this show. Okay, I think uh, uh, shooting someone thread. in the face, yeah. shooting someone in the face is the opposite of brutally murdering them. It's very quick and instantaneous, and you mm -hmm. don't even know it fucking happened. I guess. Um, I was more secondly, the what the fuck am I looking at? <laughs> it's red now. We were all wrong. Damn, Damn it! Yeah, he just brought oh, red I in. I bringing the red with John Walker, but he's oh, just oh. fucking bringing up the red out of nowhere. Blue is like you can't. Yeah. Blue is apathetic. Red is excited. I think. Yeah. That. Think so, so, that's how creative he is. Yes. You never know what he's gonna do. I well, I love to interpret. You know, that's that's me. Yeah. I mean, I can make this entire video about how cool it is that the MCU is finally giving us a relatable hero who has financial. Tr what? What? Oh, that's that easy. Oh, wow. That easy. Yeah. We have. We to... haven't had a relatable hero with financial. I gotta sit wow. you down there, high top. We gotta have a conversation. So. Holy shit. This is the thing about storytelling, okay? For all of, and this is for you as well, chat. Spider-Man having money problems. That is how Spider-Man is done. You have to have him have money problems. But he's, like, besties with a billionaire. It's like, yeah, well, he has to have money problems. It's like, hmm. Okay. Maybe we could do other issues for Spider-Man, because that's really not an option. I don't care. Spider-Man has to have money problems. It's like, <sighs> fine. Uh, that's not happening. And so everybody's very upset about that, okay? They're like, nah, bad, bad, bad. All right, moving on. Falcon. Let's give him money problems. We wanted them in Spider-Man, but now we've got them in Falcon. It's like, well, that doesn't really make sense. He's besties with yeah, a billionaire and a whole team, and he and we went through like seven billion reasons why you should have loads of money. It's like you can't do that because it wouldn't make any sense. It's like we're doing it anyway. And yeah, what do you we're doing get? It anyway, because you we get have a celebrated. You get people saying nice. That's a real problem. It's down to earth. That's very honest. I love it. And it's like didn't make sense. The whole fucking reason you can't have Spider-Man have money problems right now is because it doesn't make sense. Neither does it make sense for Falcon. But you celebrate it, because you consider that to just be the way that they should do it. It's fucking shallow as hell, and I love the fact yeah. 
fucking shows Spider-Man as an example of someone who's just not understandable or relatable with everything he goes through at home coming far from home. Fascinating. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. If you Very want more information on that, check out Jay Axie's response to High Top's video on Far From Home. Fucking obliterates him. It's great. And even High Top was like, hey man, it's my opinion, and Jay covers that wonderfully in his video. With this show. I mean, I could make this entire video about how cool it is that the MCU is finally giving us a relatable hero who has financial trouble. Too relate. So, if we wanted to edit this, then wouldn't we just show Falcon, like, shooting machine guns and dodging missiles, flying through helicopters? Because if we can do that with our Spider-Man editing of him running up a wall and jumping over an explosion, pretty sure well, we can do that with Falcon. And his now I'm wondering if the edit is supposed to mean Spider-Man is relatable, but he doesn't have money problems, while Falcon is relatable and he has money problems, or is he saying, I want relatable characters, and he shows Spider-Man as an example of a non-relatable character, and then he shows Falcon. Which is insane to me. Yeah, now I'm, I'm not sure, but the reason why I thought he was saying he was unrelatable, because I know he fucking hates Far From Home. Like, he actually hates that film, so... Yeah. Now I'm confused. I'm not actually. He has bad taste. Yeah. But remember, he's not. He, you know, he learned that hating is wrong with uh, what? What's that stupid Snyder cut? Um, oh right, yeah. But yeah, but but he's still well, allowed to hate the Spider-Man one because he person. You know, if you personally don't like seeing really shit Batman and Superman, just get over it. But if you don't I, like um... seeing actual legitimately good Spider-Man that's just different from what you like, then uh, you know, it's okay to hate. I was made aware that something happens in this video that's uh, very possibly directed directly at us. Oh, um, really? And it's, it's, right. uh, he flashes text on the screen at some point. I'm obviously, I'm keeping a lie out for it. I don't know when it comes up, but uh, uh, someone shared it on the Discord. And I was like, why is it so blurry? And it's because it's very small. And uh, we, will, we will try and account for that when we get to it. But um, okay. uh, I've, I've, I've read through it. It's, uh, I would argue it's definitely a direct message to us. It's going to be really funny to get to it, to read it out, and then... To show you one oh. tweet he made the following few days, because High Top, not quite consistent on what he believes in. He likes to claim that he has principles, doesn't really follow him, and it doesn't come across to me as manipulative. It's more so just he's he's still growing up. <laughs> he hasn't quite grasped what it means to actually follow through yet. He'll get there. He even admits in the video like he flip flops on stuff. He's changed. If you remember, we made memes before about him and Brown Table being like, "Ugh, my work like three years ago." Ugh. It's yeah. like, okay. now. It's odd, and it's odd that the re, being poor is what is re, that's relatable. If someone's poor, you can relate to that. But I can't relate to being poor. Like not like actually poor. Well, yeah, I was about to say it really depends what we're referring to. So like you could go as far as saying like a homeless person trying to exist without dying from starvation or something versus somebody who maybe at Christmas doesn't get the new console. Instead, they get monopoly or something you're like that's yeah that's uh, that I don't, that's almost like um like because when i was growing up my parents were very like they weren't i wouldn't say frugal but they were very clear about we don't waste money you know money's something you don't want to just throw away mm -hmm. don't just spend on anything you want you know i'd be a responsible spender think about it um yeah exactly um but i is he saying that black people have to be portrayed as poor I think he's saying, Falcon like, has no business general, being poor. No, he just wants someone who's be. who's poor. He, he wants just... somebody who has money problems because yeah. I don't know. That's that makes it good somehow, even but though High it doesn't Top... make sense. That does, is are, is he really like successful in terms of views and stuff? Because I don't keep track. Well, of Well, both he and Brown Table so. would. Uh, we saw Brown Table do it in the last video. It was like I've been poor. I'm sure they both say like I have actually. I've been very poor. Um, so they just want someone who's poor. I guess I don't I don't know that like your material circumstances are the most significant way in which you're relatable to somebody. In fact, I feel like not at all, right? The human well, condition is a much more relatable thing in general. If all he's doing is saying, I liked it because this character is poor and we haven't had that before in the MCU as a superhero and I relate to it, it's like all right then. I just think that the execution um, was piss poor. Well we have. Cap Captain America was kind of poor before he became Captain America. Um, I mean, maybe he, he, you know, all he has well to do to is do. just say, like, I want more of that, I guess. Oh, yeah, but it, this ain't the first time for sure. Yeah, um, I, th I think the issue is if someone is a superhero, especially a public figure in a superhero, I can't believe that they are poor. 
No, and the reason why Spider-Man generally gets away with being poor is the idea that his identity is secret and he doesn't yeah. like work for anybody. He's a he's a lone operative. He's not really part of the Avengers, so he never gets paid. Yeah, he wouldn't he do any of the things that we mentioned. He wouldn't make a YouTube channel. He wouldn't go on like no. tours. He wouldn't go on talk shows. He wouldn't take contracts like Falcon could do for all no. of these and does do. But Falcon would. Yeah. That, that's the that's why it doesn't universe. work. Tony's created a fund. He has created a fund that is going to pay for them for the rest of their lives. That's something he did. Relatable people is, who have real is Wings world. of Redemption poor? Uh, he might be. Might he be, might yeah. actually be because um, I think he spends a lot of money on stupid things and and also like has to pay money for treatment and surgeries and stuff. And his, his you know, his his career ain't gone so great lately. Yeah. Um, Doesn't and by lately, I mean like several years. Doesn't Spider-Man have a YouTube channel in uh, Homecoming? I think that's people catching him on their phones, uploading it to YouTube. Yeah, yeah he yeah. doesn't have it. Yeah. yeah. I don't think it's his, no. Struggle with their mental health, who struggle to do the right thing for the world, who struggle to do what's right for themselves. Well, struggle to do the right <laughs> thing really for the world. Marvel. Marvel. Yeah, they, they keep doing everything wrong, so I don't know. <laughs> Which is yeah, interesting, because again, that's what Homecoming is about. It's about figuring out what it means to like do the right thing. What does that actually mean? Why am I doing Meanwhile, this? Meanwhile, in this, our protagonists watch their friends die while giggling. Oh, Guardians yeah, that's right. pretty broke yeah, in the first did. film. I don't recall the them being broke. Not, they well, weren't not, broke. They're criminals. That's the main thing. They're not yeah, super they, well to do. Yeah, they had money. They had, like, ships and guns and stuff like <laughs> that, and they could go to places and do stuff. I think it's, it's that... the idea that they're not on top of the world is the important part. Like, they're not, yeah. they are not the highest rollers in this society. Yeah, they want this huge payout so that they can retire and live in luxury forever yeah. which even uh, you don't have to be poor to want that or the mask, already learned it in homecoming that's what <laughs> i said yeah in homecoming yeah. that's what it's about this move but he also hates homecoming because high top hates all of it like spider-man why does MCU. i can't remember why does he have creator <laughs> and in blue and showrunner in red <laughs> Don't the showrunner know. means uh, that's weird because usually the creator is the showrunner, like it's synonymous. The person who has the created credit is the showrunner generally. Well, I mean the the what's blue and what's yeah, red. you saw about the blue. Oh one. yeah, 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 yeah. That's that's even more confusing. <laughs> Funny because that scene and that moment ended up triggering every. Sorry, Peter being broke yeah. is more important for leading to the person he becomes than anything else. Wrong. What? Fucking no. Hilariously yeah. wrong. What? Peter being broke is like the most quintessential part of Spider-Man's personality? No. Absolutely How much not. How money he has? Ugh. <sighs> I'm not gonna get sidetracked, but ugh. <laughs> Who struggle to do what's right for themselves. <laughs> I can't really thank Marvel or the mouse for that, though. What? Why did he show... So why did he show Falcon when he was saying that? So I think Falcon accepting that what's right for himself is that he should be Captain America, I guess? Is that what he's But he implying? said thank you for it, and he'll do his best in Endgame. Well, the, I, and I like that scene, actually. I like it a lot. It's nice. And yeah, humble, I like that. But, um, um, but then this show but this is show like, forgets nah, that. actually, yeah. He was really had misgivings because he's black. Like, I don't, I don't I didn't get that from the first scene. Someone mentions, wait, Ant Man, Ant Man ain't got money and is in a in oh, an odd true. scenario with his ex-wife. Right. Ant Man does have money problems. He needs to break into a bank because he can't get a job because because of his criminal record. He can't get a job. Wow, good job, High Tom. How many movies is that now? Like four. The nice <laughs> that one, Chad. Very good. Very true. Yeah. Yeah. Because like, I don't. Good call. I, for, I keep forgetting Ant Man like is exists. I keep forgetting too, despite the fact that I really like Paul Rudd as Ant Man. Yeah, I yeah. like him as Ant Man. Movies. I just yeah. his movies are just this weird. They exist in this memory well, limbo. That's probably what he would say. He'd be like, "I just don't remember Ant Man." So yeah, he'd be like, "Oh, he, well, that's your fault." Well, you of course. Well, when I think about him, I think about him from Civil War, not from the yeah, two Ant Man <laughs> movies. <laughs> True. Um, I would also want to say as well, right? If he did say, "Well, they didn't characterize it very well," because I don't remember it or whatever, I just be like, "Well, consider this." You can make this video, everything he's said so far, about both Ant-Man films. If we were to watch it, we can drum up all the, the references we need to be like, Absolutely. this is so meaningful. This character who's just trying to do right by his daughter. You just have to do the emotional delivery. Talk about it. Mm -hmm. Stressful it is. Oh, and he's just like, yeah, can you please get on point? Like, it's never about the actual things that happen. It's just the thing that you decided was better. 
Because you know, you might be like, well, well, yeah. Just like, well, no. I just mean his metrics are always they're never interesting. He's always just like, oh, I don't know. This happened, and I liked it. You're like, yeah. You know. Oh, someone made a meme that's relevant. Um, Doctor Strange did lose all of his money, but it doesn't really present in the story outside of the initial portions yeah, of uh, his he training. Didn't, he didn't need it because he was in the Kuala Lumpur or whatever mm -hmm. Shangri La. Oh, and Incredible Hulk. You're right. That's that's yeah. another one. Um, that is part of the MCU. He ain't. He has money problems. God, it's all. It's like half of them have money problems. <laughs> like I guess. Yeah, I didn't really issues. consider it properly because, of course, I guess I just thought about Thor and Iron Man. Like, yeah, neither of them. Yeah, I was thinking about them too. And um, but no. Oh, that image. Yeah. Yeah. It's free real estate. All right. Good meme. Oh. It's funny because that scene and that moment ended up triggering everybody at Marvel. We were getting calls from Kevin, from Lou, from Victoria, from Nate. Like everyone at Marvel wanted input there. I could make an entire damn thing. Oh, for so you're, make any wait a minute. So that, that kind of exonerates Kevin Feige, the idea that he called like, wait a minute, why would he have money problems? Like, well, it, we don't know the context. What if they were calling to be like, what yeah, a great true. idea. I love it. I think I think when he said triggered though, he means that they weren't happy about that scene. You'd think. But surely they would have known about it, right? Unless it's a more classic definition of triggered, like it, it activated other people, you know what I mean? Hmm. Instead of well, either like way, you'd off. think that because it just it doesn't make any fucking sense. Yeah. No, of course. Well, you know what? Was. Maybe the original scene didn't have the line where it's like, doesn't Tony take care of this sort of stuff? And he just goes, nah, that's not how it works. And they added that in just because the writers were like, we just have someone say it doesn't work that way. There we go. Solved. Yeah, that takes care of it. That fixes it. Nice. I mean, yeah, it retroactively damages Tony, but, but fuck that cares? shit. He's yeah. he's dead and gone and a white male. So, eh, shit on him. Fuck it. It's part First of a machine, man. Just 40 minutes, we finally get to actually know and understand these two characters no, who have been on the big screen for over half a fucking decade. There's a reason. You say this like we didn't know that. I know more about Bucky from everything else than I do about this show, from this show. I kind of wish this yeah, show wasn't show canon. Was yeah. Well, we I, I don't kind of just do. Really. Yeah. God damn. Everyone's inventing the shit they did for Bucky. Way People, more in Civil War for Bucky. Yeah, than they're in inventing this. the shit that they did for Bucky and forgetting all the shit that they did for Bucky. Oh, you mean like all the bad shit they did for him? No, like oh, all sorry. the like the fact that they didn't invent him for this show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like we've seen him before. I thought you meant like they're ignoring the bad shit in the show that they've done to Bucky, but I was like, that's not even something. Oh, definitely. Considered. Well, yeah, that that goes without saying. These people, yeah. yeah. These people they they saw they, I don't always say saw, they they looked at the show. They didn't watch the show. They looked at so it. This, I I like that. This is how much faith I have left in humanity. I know if I was talking to him, like, don't you think it's bad when Bucky and Falcon were giggling as John was about to get killed by the uh the Wakandans, and he'd be like, well, John's an asshole. And I would just put my head down and be like, oh, oh. you're a bad person. <sighs> He's in don't meet up until the second episode because we need to understand Bucky. Don't and even try to just... Don't. They, fuck off. They rush it in the first episode. They may as well have had a little picture on the wall that said, like, Bucky's got PTSD and needs to make amends for his life as Winter Soldier. Falcon's got money problems at home while also balancing his responsibility with the shield. Gives up the shield, goes to Walker. All right, now we can start the show that you know those things. That's what episode one is. Wait. Bucky getting his mind control broken was it was like the intro sequence for an episode that is in no other way like even mentioned Ugh. or really talked about ever and it's in isolation it's just its own little thing it, it's very oddly placed they just they just had it in the same way that you'd have it for a checklist like okay show this okay it's done we've checked that off the list it's done it's over it's finished move on to next thing and then like episode two Remember, it's incredibly contrived. He's just like, hey, Falcon, why'd you give up the shield? Hey, I'm going on a mission, man. Okay, I'll come with. Oh. All right. Oh, you were he we're here right in front of the, the plane that you're about to leave on? Okay, let's go together. Oh, nice and simple. It's totally legal that I do this, by the way. Oh, okie dokie. And Sam try to understand each other. We need to finally know about Bucky's family. We need to see Sam's family. about Bucky's family? Bucky's family? Bucky doesn't have Bucky's any family. Bucky's family's dead. He doesn't have a family. What yeah. Is, what is he? What is he referring? Is he referring to like a more, uh, uh, like an emotional like family? Uh, uh, I still like so Steve, who's not in this show. I don't really know. Yeah, who but he's Steve referring abandoned to. him. That's the problem. They were yeah. probably family until he abandoned him. <laughs> Did you mean Falcon's family? 
I no, I no, he no, says them he both. Is, oh, he, he says, says but he says yeah. them both. Bucky's family, and we have to see Falcon's family. Uh, I don't know. Which is like super basic. Hey, this is a guy who cares about his family. Like, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you would think that. We yeah, need to like, finally know about Bucky's family. We need to see Sam's family. We need to know what these two do, what they did when they weren't serving Steve's no, narrative we don't. and the MCU. Serving Steve's narrative. So wait, 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 wait. What? The idea that they weren't like doing it for their own reasons? Maybe I'm reading into that statement. They weren't statement. actually good people. They were just serving Steve's narrative. Is it? Are I you don't, fucking with me? I, like, there's there's two ways to read this. One of them is a lot more insulting to the characters. So, if he's simply saying they were supporting characters, like definitionally serving his stories, oh, or if he's I saying hope they were like being used as puppets in that's his what world he means. or some yeah. shit. I'm. That's probably what they mean. What he means. Fucking yeah, hope so. Surely. Jesus. As if they were there yeah, for their own I reasons. Hope so. I th that's probably what he means. This is high top, so I, I, I think can't. So. Uh, I think so, but yeah. Oof. Good lord. Yeah, probably. What they what did when they weren't serving Steve's narrative and the MCU's ongoing story. And by the okay. end of that first yeah. story, we. I'm willing to believe he simply meant they were yes. supporting characters. Yeah, that's. Yeah. They were I, much I, better I when see. they were supporting characters, just FYI. Yeah, it is actually Unfortunately. true, yes. Who's ongoing story. And by the end of that first 40, we do understand. We do empathize. It's kind of- I already empathized with Bucky, so- I, I Yeah, know. I was about yeah. to say. Empathized a lot with Bucky. Before? I think he just forget fish... the other movies exist. He just forgot. They didn't make him feel stuff. This one did, so this was better. Oh, okay. Gently and naturally, the creators make us feel for them through something as simple as a battleship game or a fan. No, that was really bad. They didn't even use anything to their benefit. Oh, no, they just she was... had her suddenly go, "Man, isn't it awful when your kids die? That really <laughs> sucks." That's really. She wasn't even yeah, that was a bizarre. Like, why are you leaving? That was also, bizarre. Wait a minute. Why are they playing battleships with just two ships? Maybe the because... other ship. Oh, you're right. What shouldn't there be more ships there? Yeah, you get well, like six. Well, you right? can see them over there. You just didn't put them on. They only had two each, I guess. That's weird. And yeah, and and if they'd been blown up, then there'd be a bunch of misses everywhere. And wait a minute, <laughs> the, there are no misses anywhere. Yeah. Look How do you fuck this up? Look, he's like, got as, as look, 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 he's got three hits, but she's clearly got one hit in the corner. It's not there. In a corner. You see that? No, you know you don't put a piece in the corner. Do you see what his is nearer the corner, whatever. Like this. Wait, I oh, no, yeah. it's it's not frozen on that frame for me. Oh, I'll show you. I see. Yeah, I see. How do you? Come oh. on, guys. This is like easy. <laughs> <laughs> Just play a game of Battleship. What the fuck and is that? Set it up. So he's got he's got three hits on that side, but she's only got she's got one hit over she, here. She nailed yeah. the two hit ship but without she, any misses. She did. It seems that way. So she has five hits in a row. <laughs> I think they just tossed it together. They didn't give a shit. Like, I just find but it amusing. Like, if you're a director, just say you too. Just well, well, uh, well. As we said in our thing, this would be a, a, a really cool way to tell us about Bucky's mentality and how he takes a strategic game based on his how used he how used to being the Winter Soldier he is. I um, don't fuck up battleships. But I would have just said, you two, play Battleship, and yeah, then halfway through the just... game, I'm like, okay, now do the scene. And of course, what you what you were yeah. just suggesting, right, the, you could have the camera pan around them, focusing on the conversation, but you can see the Battleships game in the background, and her hits on him are all just standard random hits, and she hasn't hit anything, let's just say that, and all of his are just all strikes, uh, maybe with one miss yeah, or something, really just to imply strategic. that he's figured it out, or you, you, can, you can tell from yeah, how she's he's... been talking. Yeah, he's doing an efficient grid. How can I statistically get the most ships possible with the least amount of attempts? And so I'll do th this pattern that kind of covers all the bases, which will adjust based also, on you know what ships and how much space could possibly be left. Some people hide the like it's nitpicking. It's like yes, yes, this you're is allowed to do that because the person <laughs> who made this it. they they didn't they didn't utilize something that they could have to tell us more about the characters, and we desperately need to learn more about these characters for a, a show like this. When it's about them. Why? Like, is it that hard? They just don't give... I, I don't know. It's bizarre. I don't understand why this... Yeah. Oh. Battleship, beef up movies when? At some point. 
Oh yeah, that and we talk. That oh, that movie exists. Ther- yeah, I forgot. <laughs> an intense therapy session. Battleship game or a family talk or an intense therapy session. Intense. It's kind of inc- it wasn't intense. It was intense. fucking laughable. They explained in detail how much he should be in jail, and he's just not. Oh. Incredible just how focused on character Falcon and the Winter Soldier is. They could it's have not. Easily- Wait, so is they it pay lip not. service to character at the beginning, and then it basically and never comes up completely. except for when Falcon turns pro-terrorist. Um, someone said his his ships are all hits with no misses. The board doesn't make any sense. It's it's all like as much as they've sh- they've decided to put that on there. Like the rest of it doesn't line up. So it's just it's just fluid. yeah. So yeah, because the bottom that's. That represents where your ships are and where the enemy is hitting. Oh wait, yeah. The top is your yeah, way so of tracking. Yeah, he's losing. Yeah, he's, he's actually yeah. she's losing. nailed all of his shots for some reason. <laughs> yeah, she has made five moves, and they're well, actually more because he's lost his one, two, three, four other ships. So she has sunk four of his other ships without <laughs> missing, and then destroyed that little one, which he hasn't removed from the board for whatever reason, or maybe he keeps it there. I guess. Um, and then she's working her way down his aircraft carrier. Yeah, he, he has missed... Is that one, two, three, four, and hit three? Asian lady's a Mary Sue. Everyone loves her, <laughs> and she's insanely good at battleship for no reason against all odds. It just, what a disaster. Like, cause if someone was like, such a nitpick, I'd be like, well, but yeah, but like, how is this not indicative of what the fuck they would... What was the set designer doing? Like, I don't know, battleships, just put stuff on there. Do they not know how Battleship works? Like, I, I haven't played it in many years, but, like, I know what it is. God damn. Billy O. Show on Falcon flying around with his little open wings and a sweet little action sequence. Instead, we open on a man ironing a oh, shirt. Oh, he means ready literally to- the first scene. Oh. Like, the first. Oh. Okay, well, but, I guess that's more but, powerful than the massive action sequence. But in well, terms of meaningful plot, it opens on the action scene. He irons his shirts? I guess. It, is it that amazing to know that the, the, the people of the Avengers team eyed their own shirts? It's like, that was really... Yeah. It really tells us a lot about his character. Do you think Tony ironed his own shirts? No. Well, that was no, a robot. No, fuck that guy. Yeah. <sighs> what it's, a strange... It's so what meaningful. A, what a video. It's just so funny meaningful. as well, because he's, he's talking about like how, how amazing it is they open on hiding his shit. Uh, but then we cut into the huge action scene that's nonsensical and totally MCU at this point when like the praise he's giving makes it sound like the whole episode was was just him contemplating his position in the world while dealing with household sort of troubles and maybe talking to a friend like that would actually surprise me I'd be like wow a whole TV show episode for the MCU which doesn't have any action in it good job I guess like really focused on the characters that's neat they're not gonna do that fucking Loki's gonna knife fight people every episode of his show yeah Hawkeye's gonna have hard... action each episode. Oh, yes. They're all gonna do it. Choice. Facing the legacy of his friend and the responsibility that friend thrusted upon him. Oh, this... shut up. You, like, they don't give a shit note? that this scene happened. They don't thrusted fucking give a upon shit him. that this scene happened. Thrusted. This is Dude, a gift. He said, nah, give it to Bucky. <laughs> he can Absolutely. Do it. He can do it. He's, he's like, um, you know, it feels like it doesn't belong to me. Like, this scene. The emotions of this scene are totally, like, balked by the time yeah. you get to the TV show. This this was, like, it's an honorable, respectful position to have, and I've decided that you're the man that can that can fill those boots because of how good I think you are as a person. It's like, wow, thank you. Which he says, and he's like, I'm going to do says, the best I can. I'll do my best. Yeah. But, like, there was and no... That's why it is. I love this fucking, like, way that we've redone it. It's like, Cap, how could you? Dropping the shield on a black man. It's like, yeah. I'm sorry, <laughs> what? the, uh... Has he reduced the saturation on this image? I don't know. Can't quite tell. I've, this look this well because it's just because I've hold on. This, this looks grayer than it actually was. I I need to know. Hold on. While well, you're doing oh. that, I'm gonna go pee. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So like, oh man, yeah. It it, it ain't this. It ain't this gray <laughs> like in the original. The, uh, I don't think. Got a screenshot? I can't. Well, there's, you know, the problem is that this one copy is, like, very bright. Let me, let me, this might actually be oversaturated, but, uh, let me, let me pull up the copy that I have. Um, so there's this one. Justice is grey, Fringy. Don't forget it. That endgame is grey edition. Yeah, look at that. Oh, that is super duper bright compared. 
I will put it up as soon as I see it. Oh shit, yeah. Hello. Now let me again let me uh let me check my my copy to see if it's it's like I just I wonder if he did that on purpose. Uh what do you think would be the motive there? To like make it seem not as good as it was at the time, <laughs> you know? Ah. <sighs> Like it was, it was almost like you know, it was actually, it was actually not right. Yeah, well, water is good for you. Hmm. Why would it? Yeah. Again, I don't know why. I, like my only assumption would be, because uh, obviously the the more the more apt things probably that I don't know whatever copy he had just looks like that. Yeah, mm. maybe. yeah nah. You know what? My my copy actually is that one's oversaturated. Nah, you know what? All right, my bad, my bad. No, you were just it wondering. Actually... You were just asking. Yeah. No. The wrong friend. But see, yeah, I didn't my, I don't my... I just Yeah, it's yeah, it's decent enough. Because you never know with him. Mm. Well, I'm sure it meant maybe that this was the beginning, you know? He's not quite fulfilled himself, so the color comes later. I find that offensive when he it's becomes about black a people. person of color? Yes. This is the Having a six-hour movie compared to a two-hour movie. You can hold on a face- There was less in this than they can achieve in two hours, I'm sorry. There just is. Like, the, the and idea- And you can that... hold on faces in a movie. That doesn't- totally. That's not- It's not character is holding on a face? Hi, Top. Why do you like movies if you think that this is how TV shows just work? That they just functionally give you more? Just, wa just watch TV shows, then. Don't watch movies. No, I don't want to do that. No. I just find it amusing. I'm just like, it's so shallow as an analysis. Yeah. Upon him. This is the benefit of having a six hour movie compared to a two hour movie. You can hold on a face, you can hold on an emotion, you can see the vulnerabilities of someone who would be two dimensional with only two hours of. What? So if this were a movie, Walker would have been two dimensional. Uh, alright. Doesn't that just say but... more about the creator than the medium? I feel like it does. Yeah. I feel like we've had movies where we've had more than one character be developed. Oh, yeah, I know. He's like, fun. alrighty, you said it, buddy. Feeling past an eternity. The weight of their journey is not undermined by the need to cut to the next grand bit of spectacle. The fuck are you talking about? Oh, they, they generate what? fucking it's spectacle in this show all the time. There's action scenes in every episode. It's they like have the to have two big ones. Yeah, they shove yeah, them they in, need man. An action scene Gotta to make have sure it. That people come back for next episode. You're just wrong. And, and they don't see the formula repeated for all of the shows that they make after this. Yeah, and they're You're all right. crap It'll be too. A yeah, they're not good. That's the big yeah. problem. Dude, I am... Hawkeye, like, in all these shows, and the ones... They're all gonna... Or most of them are gonna do this format. Like, I'm, at I'm least almost, the six um, episode ones. I'm almost at the point of thinking that that's, like, the first fucking thing they think about when they're structuring each of the I episodes. It, I think mine. Like, with Loki... Very possibly, yeah. Back. I can believe it. With Loki, they're given bare bones every time, and, and the, the first one looks like... So, he is... Uh, he's doing his own thing after the events of Endgame. And then a bunch of people attack him. He has a huge action scene, and then he's captured and taken to this prison. That's your first one. Um, when he's put into the cell, he almost breaks out like one of his first tries, because he's just not the kind of person they've dealt with before. Another action scene, and then at the end we find out there's no way he's escaping this place. Overall, but he can get out of his cell or something like that. It's like, there you go, there are your two action scenes. Whatever dialogue you want, whatever beats you want, whatever characters you want, go nuts. But those are the two things you have to have, two big action scenes. I would not be surprised at all if that was like a mandate. I I imagine it might also be the fact that they release weekly has informed the format. They need to make sure that each episode is exciting so that people come back and people talk about it. Um <sighs> and the mystery box element too as well. That worked wonders for WandaVision in terms of getting God. people to watch. Yeah. Like people were speculating like fucking crazy about Mephisto and all this shit and none of it was real. Dude, the fucking writer was like, I don't know who Mephisto is. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> Whoops. Oh yeah. Sebastian, he finally get a chance to really dive deep into the truths of these characters. The Explore truths of these vague. characters. The truths Stop of these it. characters. There is only one truth. Yeah.
explore and showcase the beauty of these characters and we are given enough time to see that no no oh, no enough, no, no, enough time this was an unrelated prequel of like the an unrelated beginning segment of an episode that there is no other real reference to in any way that was super rushed and was not earned if this was if this, this is was like the payoff show. of its own show Yes. Well, yeah, this could be the power of its own show, or at the very least, it could be like episode eight, Bly Manor equivalent, where it's like, yeah, it is a self contained story about this particular thing. Yeah. And you know, it, it, the conclusion of this sort of little storyline is he eventually, like, he shores himself up, he's ready to fight, and then it, you know, it, it cuts in with he's doing whatever he's doing, and they go, like, it's time, and they bring him his new arm ready for uh, Infinity yeah. War, and you'd be like, ah, that's how it fits in. Nice. Yeah, that'd be neat. But this shit was but like rushed. I said, this is a, yeah, it's like the checklist. That's what it is. It's oh, we have to show uh, this one thing about Bucky. All right, we did it. It's out of the way. Done. We're finished. Move on to the next thing. We got it done. Disappointed. Ah beautifully honest truth. These MCU miniseries, these six hour movies have the potential to be more storyteller driven, more creative. <laughs> the potential oh! to be, but these are shit. Dude, more storyteller driven, what the fuck? I guess driven by the storyteller, like the storyteller I, yeah, gets he's, to he's focused create on the creator. The, yeah, like the director As and if the writer, this... that's the, yeah. But Instead like... of what's actually there. We've already had loads of that in the MCU. Yeah, like Thor Ragnarok is absolutely that. I just don't get it with you. <laughs> I just don't understand. Because it, it's good on paper, right? It's like, well, there's more time, so it'll be better. Depends yeah, how I spend that time. The, he can't honestly believe that, right? Like, I mean, that, that any movie could be better if it was a TV show because you get more time. <laughs> It sounds like he's saying it, but like, but like he can't. His high top films, not high top TV shows. Creative, more impactful than their theatrically released films. Okay, so that's just not even fucking fair, though. Like, oh, Falcon's yeah, more impactful here than he is here. It's just like, probably. Well, the funny thing is, that's like, an ensemble movie. It's not, and yeah, he is more impactful in Infinity War, <laughs> despite the fact that he doesn't have much to do with it. It's such a weird comparison to make. Because, like, this is just two things that are completely different, doing different things. And, and what's funny is, like, the emotional payoffs in Infinity War slaughter the ones in uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Easily. Yeah. Easily. Not even close. Dude, Thor talking to Rocket is, like, better than yeah. anything in both TV shows that just came out. No, we don't get to hang on reactions like we hang on his reaction in that scene. That doesn't happen in, uh... No, that's, you missed... That that's a straw man. He was saying it's, there's more, okay? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah, more. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We get to understand. We don't hang more. on Thanos' reaction to tossing Gamora down. Like, nope. we hang on that for a little while. No, we don't. So you oh, name, wait, you no, name we two. Don't. He showed like me. four in the show, so that's double. Despite the fact that they didn't even work. Like, whatever they were trying to achieve didn't work. Well, that's what I mean. He's, he's unironically doing like Lawn Man good. Like, that's it. He's not really yeah. talked about like how you use the time. Really? He's because he, he's implying that like this time is being used kind of the same way, but now that you have more of it, there's just more of the characters. Yeah. You know, we don't we don't get caught up in the MCU plot lines just crashing in, which is totally not what happens in Falcon and the Winter Soldier. We totally don't get one episode of a character and then plot, 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 and then resolve character. Because these not people don't know how to handle the, the fact that you can do both. Yeah, for by the way, chat like long man bad is retarded. Long man good is also retarded. Like it's good because long. Yeah. So, uh... Like when some of you guys were doing that for the Snyder cut, that was pretty stupid. <laughs> no, but none of the people in chat will agree with it. Like what? No, I would I would do that. And I'm sure none of you did. Okay. Yeah, if you didn't do it, then you got nothing to worry about. That's you're you're fine. Filmmaking and creative choices on display have the time to feel more thought out, more. All right, we're doing a lot of the back time of the question. to feel more thought out. <sighs> I guess feels before reels, especially when it comes to you. Which everything you but just sure said as hell requires. Ain't going by what's actually in the show. Everything you just said requires elaboration. He practically just like concluded the statements on their own from just we the don't do that using. here. Choices on display have the time to feel more thought out. More the creative choices on display have the time to feel more thought out. It's also like. I need you to qualify all of that. Mean? All of that was just. Bleh. I don't even understand what he means here. 
Like, with more time yeah. to see... Fucking coming from the jump-cutting guy, like, wibbly-wobbling on his camera, too, which is kind of funny. It was like... More time... Also, this is the same person will be like, out. Oh, I, I've not got the time to continue my video, gonna have to split it into two. That sort of shit comes from him. It's like you have complete control over the time. Yeah, YouTube doesn't impose restrictions on, like, time limit. Up Meanwhile, like movies hours, think, right? do get mandated, so... Just a weird position we're in there. It's like, yeah. You Why know, does he feel like, just because it's a TV show, that it doesn't have the same kind of just production process that a film does? Why does he think that? Because he's You know, in the sense of that there are no producers that are involved and have decisions, and that well, there's nobody from Disney Plus who's like, hey, you need to, like, do these things. It's interesting to me as well because, like, you know, like, T2, I think, is probably a solid example. If someone was like, needed a few more scenes, um, I don't know, for, for John and uh, the Terminator's relationship, I'd be like, I don't think so. Like, well, it wouldn't hurt, right, to have more? And I'd be like, no, I don't, I, I honestly, I, I don't know that, like, it feels like it's paced pretty well and that we got everything we needed. I don't know that we need more of anything. Like, the story's length is very suited to the amount they got out. Basically, what I'm trying to challenge here is the idea of, like, isn't more of it just going to be better? And it's like, I don't know. Uh, I feel I like it's a little, we... it's, yeah, it's more complicated than that. It's not just more is better. It's the same with, like, video games, right? When people say, oh, well, this game is, like, 10 hours and this game is 50 hours. It's like, yeah, but what is the what is the content in that 10 yeah. hours versus I have 50? 100 levels. Yeah, well, yeah, I have 100 different really, guns. Really good yeah. levels. Like, if we just had another scene with it, they just messing around playing chess, and there's something we learn about how the Terminator operates chess versus how John does, and they learn something. It's like, oh, that, I do like that scene a lot. Yeah, we, we keep that in. Then there's another one where the, he's showing him an arcade game, and the Terminator doesn't get it, but then when he does, he's, like, amazing at it, and you have that. It's like, yeah, I, I guess I, I like that scene, too. And then there's one where he's teaching John how to use, like, the motorbike instead of the bike he usually uses, or, like, the, the interesting parts of it. More stuff about guns, some stuff about hacking. It's like, how many of these can I add before you start going, like, okay, this is going to be a bit much now. Like, it's cool, but... There's like 7,000 scenes of them <laughs> doing stuff together. I just, I just feel like, what's the perfect amount there? Because he's, he's, he's implied there's more time than in a movie. So there is more time to appreciate the creativity. And you're like, that doesn't, doesn't sound like it follows. I don't know how, yeah, how far does that go until it starts to become counterproductive? Because I don't, it's, it's empty. It's one of these just things that you say, but if you tried to, like if they were here to interview, You'd poke him on it and ask him about it, and I just don't feel like there would be anything of substance that we'd get from it. But you could say it casually in, in an offhanded way in some random video essay, and people eat it up, and you don't have to think about it, and you don't oh, have yeah. to, you know, have any critical thought to it. It's one thing we don't allow here, okay? Casual thoughts? No. You have to be specific. How could I agree with a casual, broad statement that, you know, if there's more time, it's probably going to end up even better. It's like, I, uh, we thought that about Snyder Cut. That was one of the things we offered as a, yeah. as a, a potential. We were like, surely more means it could be more coherent, <laughs> when more better be less coherent. <laughs> it's <laughs> more opportunities to fuck up. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, uh, it's weird that right now the vibe I'm getting from the video is just the TV show is longer, therefore superior for character. It's like, that seems like... Pulled that out of your ass, but all right. Surely yeah, it's about execution. More chicken and Winter Soldier More takes genuine. the win. Oh, dude, he must have loved this shot. Look at the blue. Oh, yeah. It contrasted with the red of the lips. Yeah. Oh, he must have, oh. So style handheld grounded filmmaking vibe and instills it with color, dramatic lighting, and most importantly, purpose. <laughs> it's more than purpose. <laughs> it's now becoming what? very oh! clear. It's becoming very Not clear why. Not using a stand is like. Someone was holding the camera and it was wobbling a bit. Well, uh, all right. This is the thing: it's like it gives a sense of more being on the ground or watching it happen while you're in the seat. It's like I'm totally fine with that, but like the way you're saying it makes it sound like it's better than if it were steady, which is kind of like. Eh. But Civil War does this. Oh, I, I mean, like I Civil think I, as far as I know, he likes Civil War, so. Oh, okay. I guess you're saying because he said about films. It has purpose and everything, you know. Uh, well, so this is the problem with High Top in a shell nut, I guess. He uh, kind of says shell stuff nut. that if they do it, it is good, implying that if they did not do it, it would be bad, but never quite says that. And you're like, wait, but I'm trying to figure out your scale there, buddy. And he's like, no, 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 no. I feel again. like I have no idea what he would or would not like ever. I don't think he'd want to commit like it's too just hard. 
Yeah, like he's just flipping, you know, a coin on whether something is liked by him or not. Because I have no idea. I have no standard. I have no well, idea what he will and will not like. With the two shots that he showed with the lighting, I was like, oh, that's probably why he likes this show. Just because the lighting's a little bit unusual. But, yeah. Like, it's, this is the thing. I feel like I could easily make something oh, yeah, high top with love. Maybe, yeah. So the first thing I would do is make a hero who's really poor. And then I'd have him live in a house with loads of random holes in the ceiling, so light just you know comes through. But also there's loads of filters that come in with different colors. There's like a little kaleidoscope that they all go through and it just spreads everywhere. It's like a big disco. Um, then I would have it so they have an uncle who gives them all kinds of advice, and he gets shot. Um, and it's kind of partially this this character's fault. I feel like I've already nailed it. I feel like he'd be in love with it already. I've, I've kind of done most of it. Um, also, he, he, he's a photographer. He gains the powers of a scorpion because he gets stung by one radioactive. <laughs> Instills it with color, dramatic lighting, and most importantly, purpose. So, so. It's more than an aesthetic choice that semi syncs up with the look of Civil War and Winter Soldier. It's the best way to visually tell this story. Oh, careful. Careful. Yeah, you can't say that there's the best way. You're subjective, a, man. Oh, yeah. There uh, is no best way. You just ventured you into a different area. You guys can't be consistent at all when it comes to just having, like, sticking to what you say. You, gotta, you can't be using that word, right? What you mean, High Top, is I really like this. I like, like that. I really it makes, it like it. It feels so nice. It's, oh. When you it say it's feel good the best. in my feelings. Gives the best. Mm. There is a best way. MI syncs up with the look of Civil War and Winter Soldier. It's the best way to visually tell this story. Mm. Constant claustrophobic camera angles and shots are utilized to immediately reattach us to these characters. They're invasive. Um, no. I mean, I, I thought there was a bit much in the therapy scene. Yeah, yeah. cause I, it, yeah, it comes across as really strange. Because I don't want to be pressed that close up to some well, stranger's wrinkly face. This kind of scratches at what we do here. Uh, when you have, like, two things that are stated that are incongruous, which is like, well, that's a problem. When you have a shot that Rag says, eh, it kind of makes me uncomfortable, looks really weird. And the next guy goes, I thought it was intense, intimate, and it grabbed me. And then the third person goes, I didn't really care about it at all. That's yeah, the conversation I don't be over. intense and intimate and grabby with... Well, uh, what, know, I, what so I was trying to say there was, like, there's not much we can do with that. It's basically over. Like, if your emotional reaction is all we can even talk about, because informationally we're shown the character. It's a bit of an awkward zoom, but... Yeah, because I would think in a scene like this, because the psychiatrist is sort of, like, trying to get inside of his head, metaphorically, that there would be no zooms on her face, only on Bucky's, because she's trying to, like, analyze him and figure his headspace out. Oh, yeah. Not but, right. on the both of them, but... See, all someone has to do in response to is they're trying to get into each other's heads, Rex. He's trying to get into her head. I don't really see that represented yeah, in the I, dialogue, I but, you know, whatever. Yeah, that, I don't think there's any references for that. So, yeah, but I, I like my idea better that I casually had that was I mean, better than what was I in like this multi-million dollar production. <laughs> yeah. A therapy conversation feels too close, especially when you're lying. No! Making a no. It doesn't, it <laughs> what doesn't feel that? close. <laughs> it feels... It feels nonsense because, like, there's contradictions and none of it makes any sense in the, the story, universe, and yeah, that distracts me. It's all very... We, go watch our previous stream if you want to know why that therapy session sucks ass. Um, yeah. The I can't believe he threw himself in there. That was super bad. funny. I just... <laughs> I just makes me laugh. I'm, too I'm close, close too. especially when you're lying. Making a speech <laughs> in Washington <laughs> while Why? He, he zoomed into himself when he said, especially when you're lying. And so he had a zoomed in face, picture of him. Like, I don't know if that sends the right subconscious vibe. Yeah, because yeah, now we're thinking about, like, wait, what are you lying about? Like, Stop I don't think you're top. lying. I think you're accurately representing what you think is the truth. But the problem is, is that it's what you think is true. Lies. Lying. Making a speech in Washington while the whole world watches every blink, every step, every word and choice you make feels almost haunting. Throughout the entire- Shut the fuck up. Oh, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. <laughs> this pretentious ass fucking garbage. <laughs> fuck off. This is like his thing. This is what he does. He just- and it's unfortunate because sometimes he talks about films that like really have the references to support it, but he can't tell the difference. He just he, this is what I mean. You could do his format with everything. Anything. I could take this to all the Barbie movies. Yeah, absolutely. You should honestly release it for April Fools. It'd be great. 
Do do it wouldn't do be an a... April Fool. It'd be real. What do you mean? No, no. I mean why you... April Fools? So all kinds of reasons. First of all, being I don't want you to use your normal voice. I want you to use video essays voice, and then I want oh, you to have oh definitely yeah cuts yeah. to real life. Have to be with a like different character. Lights going doing all kinds of things, and and then you have to talk about the lighting of the Barbie films and how that's in, in integral in understanding the personal relationships between Barbie and insert character. You know, like it's I'm looking forward to it. I'll just say that series we feel that pressure we feel like we're watching two outsiders in their most private moments and maybe we shouldn't be maybe we're crossing a boundary that these characters don't want us to when bucky what is this background what are noise you? what is what this what are you talking about <laughs> every no single fucking mcu movie has us watching characters in their private personal moments it's the fucking point the character I... stories, okay? So that's out the window. Secondly, these character stories, what, are we crossing a line? What is that? It's like, are you... This film forgets Civil War exists, and he's like, Dude, is we crossing a line? How far do we go? But <laughs> However, I, I was honestly kind of distracted by the weird music noise in the back. It's contemplative. It's like almost... Yeah, wrecked you. Contemplative music. I was I was being contemplative, but maybe on the wrong thing. I was trying to figure out what the music was instead of. Uh... Oh, he's, he's such a treasure, Stay. Hightop. Want us to? When Bucky finally makes the choice to step through the glass, he's been frozen behind. <laughs> Steps through the glass, he's been frozen behind. Dude. Oh my goodness. Steps uh, through the glass he's been frozen the behind? How does one step through glass? Why don't you walk me through that it's one? It's a metaphor. Walk you through it's it? It's a shit metaphor. It... Uh, does he mean break the ice? Like when you break the ice I, with I, a I'm, woman? I'm going more fundamental. I actually think that because there was a fucking pane of glass he was looking at the girl through that he's gonna walk through a door, it's kind of like he's going through this glass between him and he had glass on him when he was frozen, so When he went around it, it, it but... Oh, God! <laughs> Why do you do this to me? Why? Finally uh, makes the choice to If you li Cause I'm trying to be fair. If you had someone in this fucking call with us who was watching the show with us, who's like, oh, guys, he was looking at her through the glass and he kind of steps through into the room. It's, it's kind of like that glass that was in front of him so long when he got frozen. All of us would be like, huh? What are you, what are you talking about? It's like, you know, like when he was frozen, he, there was like a pane of glass he could look through, kind of. Yeah. Well, it, this is kind of like him stepping through that and moving on in a way. Might be like, but and, right. but both metaphorically and realistically, he didn't do that. <laughs> he I went around it. I don't get it. People like listen to this and they're like, "Wow, that's so good!" And like, they're so dumb. <laughs> like they either I just call it grasping like, at if straws. If I said they didn't give a shit, that would be better. Grasping at straws, bad. Looking for just he wants to. I'm sure he was very proud of that when he wrote it. Step through. He's been frozen behind most of his life. Maybe we shouldn't follow him. Maybe, we, <laughs> maybe we shouldn't what? follow I him. Can't we don't have a choice. That's what the show's about. I got nothing. What, what is he saying? What do you mean? Maybe we shouldn't follow him. Is he's, he's the titular Winter Soldier? The show is about him through the glass. Oh I don't have God. a choice. I mean, I could just not watch the show. I guess, but I don't think that's how you mean it. Rags, have you, again, I don't have you know. considered it's his private life, and you shouldn't be following him through it? Good but God, I'm man. not the cameraman. I'm so confused. Oh my I... goodness. We should just him to have this moment of It's not a good moment. She talks to him about death. Yeah, it's weird. She's a fucking weird battleship expert. No wonder he doesn't fucking hook up with her again. She's and crazy. Plus, this is where they go. Like, where do you wanna What do you wanna do on our first date? Well, we could just go to where I work and play battleship. You know, that's. They should, and I mean, I guess if it's that. her suggestion and that's what she wants to do on the first date because it's a familiar place and you're a new person. So that's how she remains in a safe sort of place and when she's still on guard about you and she doesn't know how you are. So it's easier to accept you if it's in a place that she's familiar with and she feels safe in. Like, sure. But I don't know. I guess 
Fuck, man. Bucky, take that bitch to the zoo. Yes. To the zoo. Peace. And as the show progresses, as we grow closer to these people, the camera... The more I, I hate them? I did not grow closer to them across this season, I'm afraid. But... Falcon's an... Uh, he's a terrible person. Yes. Falcon's an idiot. The closer I get to him, the less I want to be I around do, um, him. I would genuinely like to see Hightop address like the two times that Falcon left Walker and Lamar to die. I would be curious to know what he thinks about that. I think he would do the Wonder Woman defense, where he's like, that's not what the intention of the scene was. Oh, I know. But it still <laughs> happened. Just and if we could just dismiss you. things like that... Ooh, mm -hmm. I don't know. That's, uh, that does a lot of damage to the craft, I feel. If we could just hand wave things away that explicitly appear on the screen. Camera warms up, just as the characters do. What oh. was an invasion... Did now he just say like the camera warm. warms up? Yeah, see, they're doing warmer colors when, when we met Bucky, he was all blue. Yeah, it's like the video. Remember, he was blue, and now he was, he was warmer. And now red. he's red. Ah, uh, see, Which yeah. means it must be good. Yeah, I was just gonna say, guys, if you're un unfamiliar, this is called art. Uh, what you've been watching in the MCU hasn't really been art. This, though, finally, we've got it. Yeah. So, be proud. Be happy. Warm intimacy. The shot composition, the camera movement, the visual language here is a huge step forward from the recent Marvel films, and it'd be ridiculous and entirely unfair of what? me not to point out how well and how purposeful the visuals are. In yeah, well, so visuals are just like writing, they can be tied down and talked about and referenced. Blood yeah, on the Shield is pathetic, things. actually yes. pathetic in yeah. terms of the goal. You, oh God, you're so easy. <laughs> like blood on the shield. You've done it. Such. Oh, we must be bad. I, I see blood. Blood's bad. It's bad. What did you think of the Snyder cut? Uh, he said he didn't love it. But that's okay. But that's okay. Yeah. Because remember, he, yeah. he he said um that's a video we still have to watch by the way. But I I know that from Twitter he said that uh like it's it's the creator's vision in full force or whatever, right? And that's great. Yeah, Zack Snyder's not a good creator. And, yeah. and we established that um, to have your vision is really awesome, and that kind of subverts or, or trumps anything in terms of like inaccuracies. At the same time, if a collection of people wanted their vision, or if someone he doesn't like wanted their vision, that doesn't count. Zack Snyder's okay, though. For a second there, I was like, did we cover his video? <laughs> I think we've already done Brown Table, right? Or did we do someone else, too? I've, no, we did his, right? I'm sure we did. I feel like we did. Oh well. <laughs> Chat will have the answer, probably. Tell story. You can also tell that getting a director like Kari Skoglund, who has worked in the comic book world, the prestige television world for over a decade- I don't oh, care no. if there's oh, no. prestige. Oh no, House of Cards and Walking Dead. Ugh. Handmaid's Tale. Also, Ron of Hood Punish is not very good either. Your Punisher, uh, yeah. I bet yeah. a lot of these just aren't good, just statistically. I, just, I hear Penny Dreadful right is move. good, but, hmm. yeah. Move. It feels like she knows exactly the vision she and showrunner Malcolm Spellman oh, want God. to achieve. Looks like it a feels clown. Like... <laughs> We've seen a lot of people with clown hair recently. Did Hightop even know who these people were before Fel Oh, fuck no. He's and just... yet he's talking about them as if he knows nope. who they Look, are. Look, I'm so cynical about this that he was like, I want to celebrate the people who actually made it. IMDB. Uh, there we go. Put the names in. Uh, what else do they work on? IMDB. Click name. Look at past stuff. List it. Put the logos up so it looks like I did actual work. There we go. All right, moving on. It's like she knows exactly how to get there and do it with style. This shows Madripoor. <laughs> Madripoor is a disaster. We went over this. So, uh, yeah, there were... 30 things wrong with it at least <laughs> at least in terms of characters and world building and plot Ugh. Madripoor is a disaster of storytelling it is a fucking disaster of storytelling but Ugh. it had pretty lights so fuck it it's art and it's beautiful Boo. <laughs> no yeah by the way Madripoor is the kind of place that I see and go oh I topple like this at least got lights everywhere oh, look at the green light Ooh. Has the most tactile crafted by hand down to earth tactile? and shot on location. Fe Fucking use the doom word. We don't like tactile because it's just an excuse to not say anything. 
I'm totally cool with you using it and then following up with more detail, but if you just say something is tactile, I'm always like, you want me to think that it was m more feelable? D yeah, give me more like than I that. I could reach out and touch it? I don't even know if that's what, yeah, I, I yeah, that's one of those words that I hear people say, and I'm like, oh, hold on, hold on. when you say that, what do you mean? Please don't go into more. What do you mean instead of just saying that? Yeah. Oh, crafted by hand, down to earth, and shot on location, feel since the first act shot of on Civil location. War. It's kind of amazing how effective a simple moment of a superhero just saving people in New York. You have to win the helicopter oh. bounced off it. Oh. Uh, fuck it. Don't talk about how it doesn't make any sense. Don't talk about how it's just. Oh. Don't talk about it. Don't talk about it. It's fine. No, no, don't, don't talk it's about dead. it. Don't, everyone oh. clap. I will get so broad that I'll describe it as hero save somebody. Oh, okay. But like, how do you not? So how do you not like every superhero movie? Well, that's kind of where I was going with that. How do you not that. like that's Far so, From Home? Did everything? Like, why, why would you? Uh... New York City can be so used to armies of gods, soldiers, and warriors charging. Okay, how many movies have you that, watched from the MCU that have an that? army that of one. gods? Like, what are you talking also, about? That you're happened talking once. about how fucking great the DCEU is because of its emphasis on that, and that that's cool. The fuck? I don't even... get it. This happened once. This is so unfair to Endgame. Yeah. I can't believe I'm saying it, but it's like Endgame is the culmination of all the different characters, all the different storylines coming together to fight yeah. Thanos' army. If Why would anything... you say like, "Oh, I'm tired of armies doing this"? You're like, what? That doesn't... Like, this was a decade in the making. If anything, like oh. they at least tried to earn this. Yeah. I like, regardless of if you like it or not, or think it's good or not, like they definitely put in the effort to get here. What the hell? <laughs> I just am so lost. How like, are you so you bad? This? How are people whose job is talking about movies so fucking bad at talking about movies? These of God, soldiers and warriors charging a swarm soldiers of Soldiers and warriors? Damn. Oh my god, soldiers and warriors. God wielding magic and fucking space rocks. Ugh, magic space rock wielding space alien. Space rocks. This happened in one film, Infinity War. This didn't, this didn't even happen in Endgame. There was no alien wielding space rocks against them. It's right at the end, oh, he gets killed. Right. God, you suck. It's amazing how fuzzy, how childlike I felt watching these two characters try to save human beings and not... Where? Why don't you like all of the other things then? I don't understand. Ugh, I don't get it. It's like flipping a coin. Who knows if he'll like it or not? <laughs> Who knows if his brain compartmentalizes something as being good or bad, regardless of all of the context surrounding it? Yes, he he's, he's running out of adjectives. <laughs> it's true. I think High Top's talking <sighs> about battling armies over and over, like in Avengers 1. It was Chitari, Avengers 2, it was Ultra. But that's. There's many movies between these movies. And those yeah. only happen in certain parts. They, and they represent all have completely the minority. different contexts and locations, and they're either contained in a way like the Wakanda fight in Infinity War was very contained. The Sokovia fight in Ultron was very contained. I don't. It, yeah, it's just they're unreal. all very like, specific. We, how many movies have there even been up? now? The I mean, fucking whatever. Not a universe. Oh, I guess when you scale it down, movie. when you. I was going to talk about all the examples, and I was like, there's no fucking point, is there, like, to, to list them all? You can't scale down a story and use that as an excuse for ignoring the world that you've created. There you can. <laughs> Beings uh, I and not clearly a can. universe. Yeah, yeah. I guess when you scale it down, when you boil it back to basics, I feel when you boil that it early back to MCU basics? magic that I... Boil that... it back to basics. I think... How, the, how does one boil something back to its basics? I, I think he's mixed up. What's that called? <laughs> Where you mix up things? I think sayings? he has. You go back to basics and you boil it down. He's he's fudged them together to boil it back to basics or whatever. <laughs> this, um... Please please make that a good job. Write boil it down. Boil it back to basics. That, so was that the to tone of the moment. Yeah. yeah. Boil it back to basics. I think he probably <laughs> felt like that's good enough. Uh, that's, that's I, yeah. Good job. Is that a... Well, Google it. See if it comes up. Well, that's what I'm looking Boiling for. Um, like maybe because you can you have it happen where like it's said enough. It a malafor. Yeah. It's when you it's it's an informal term for a mixture of two aphorisms, idioms, or cliches, such as "We'll burn that bridge when we come to it." <laughs> It'd be a malafor. Which see, like that's that that's could cool, be a though. funny joke. Well, they do it in the boys. It. They say it in the boys. Yeah. We'll burn that bridge when we get to it, which is like. Yeah, that's that's cool. It's very specific. Into boiling something down to its basics doesn't make sense. 
No, because how do you boil it to a basic? Does boiling make things more basic? No, you lose that. It, it's the separates. opposite because that makes yeah. the that removes the yeah. water from it in the form of, you know, the, the steam. So it, it, it. So like uh, one, I want to let you guys know about uh, um, it's a classic. Some some in chat may know about this if they watched Drunken Peasants back in the day. But good old Brett Keen, he uh, he would do these where he would just he would come up with his own suddenly, and you'd be like, "What in the fuck are you referencing?" So you guys are probably aware of firing on all cylinders, right? Yeah. yeah. Yes. So th this man, his brain did not quite function properly, and at one point he he said, uh, "This thing is working on all cinder blocks." <laughs> oh no. I do, oh. This is one of my favorite quotes. Like, working on all cinder blocks. Working on all cinder <laughs> I want to know what that looks like as an image. A bunch of cinder blocks <laughs> just working. Like, what, what do you imagine you're saying? Like, it works on all cinder blocks. Oh, it's, uh... It, it's... that That's funny, imagining, because the expression comes from, you know, internal combustion engines. Um, You want all your cylinders working, so... Like one of those, but it uses cinder blocks instead of <laughs> like the big pistons and stuff. That's and yeah. So someone's already <laughs> highlighted it. It kind of evokes like a car on cinder blocks, you know, without the wheels. You're like yeah. working on all cinder blocks. <laughs> that sounds like the car is in trouble. If I don't, I'm yeah, confused. like it's been gutted and it stole the wheels. Brett Keen's a national treasure. So true. Yeah, I like those. They 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 amuse me. Anyway. Back to basics, I feel that early MCU magic that I thought had faded away long. Oh, it's long gone, buddy. It's uh, gone now. These shows are the consequence it. of it being gone. Yeah, like, this is the shit that's making it lose its value. Yeah. This show is crap. Yes. But you don't know what that is because you're fucking shit at your job. I, you don't so have standards. You're not good at analyzing the craft. Just look at Thor 1. Does he look at Thor 1 and go, ah, this is the MCU magic right here. Thor Iron Man 3? or MCU magic. <laughs> like, Ugh. this is the real magic. Yeah. Thor the Dark World. Ooh, yeah. Winter Soldier. Ooh, Black MCU magic, magic and curses. Hexes. Forbidden yeah. necromancy. <laughs> So many times I got a little taste of the goosebumps, of the nostalgia, of the excitement just Henry Jackman's Captain America themes come back here, be remixed here, and recontextualized. So oh, many times I hate I was it. Yeah, I wasn't a fan. Uh, the th <laughs> it the problem is, me. it evokes something very specific for me in Civil War, and so when I see it attached to other things that uh, it just doesn't feel right, it's like, Nyeh. and that's the, I guess, it's the tightrope with music. Um, yeah. All he's gonna say is it suited it well, and I was like, all right then. Shock Did he say the taste of the goosebumps? What was that? The Wait. shock that oh! let's let's like, let's what? roll our back. I I confess oh, I confuzzled. Many times I got a little taste of the goosebumps oh. of the. Taste you're right. He did say goosebumps. taste of the goosebumps. That's... <laughs> oh God! If you're gen... if you're generous, <laughs> it's like he's saying a, a taste of the. I, I, that's a bit much, isn't it? It's leaping a bit there. Yeah, tasting goosebumps. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> Taste of the goosebumps. Maybe he's just like, you know what? I'm reinventing stuff because I'm an artist. Like, all right, taste of the goosebumps. Nostalgia of the excitement just from hearing Henry Jackman's Captain America themes come back here, be remixed here, and recontextualized. So many times I was shocked at how violent, raw, and done for real the action was. I was okay. No, this scene is the most silly, ridiculous thing imaginable. It makes no <clears throat> sense whatsoever. Well, uh, let me help you out. So, an arm was broken and someone was stabbed. That's real. Yeah. That's real, Rags, if oh. you didn't know that. That happens. See, when things that should happen based on cause and effect happen, that's kind of lame. Like, that's not what film is for. Film is for, like, having a guy get stabbed going, Recontextualizing ah! themes. I'd say so, yeah. You're on point now. Yeah, you're back on point. There you go. See, my action scenes, I'm a big fan of John Wick 2 and 3, where it's fucking bullshit. The John Wick <laughs> 1 was boring. Right? <laughs> Real action. Fucking calling it real. That's like the last word I would fucking throw in there. What do I do? Yeah. Great a nitpick. 
afraid to be like, it ain't Daredevil. And while it's still very much ain't Daredevil, it's a step in the right direction. You're right, it ain't Daredevil, because Daredevil's... No, it's not even <laughs> fucking close when it comes to the action. It, holy yeah, this action fuck. is shit. This action like, is like, it's like Mando, and it's it, it's just, it's nonsense. It's a bunch of cuts that are saving terrible acting in nonsensical direction, and nothing works. Nothing works. Constant continuity shifts. Uh, it relies on every be everybody being stupid and untrained. It, it none of it works. Yeah, there there is a lack of hallways. I agree. Yeah, the this dead of all hallways yeah. go hand in hand. But I mean, that's the thing is you put them in a setting that actually enables them to work properly. Put dead devil in a hallway, and it's like, well, this this is gonna work a lot better. Whereas here, it's just. A really big open space. There's actually a lot of space in this area to move around. It's not claustrophobic, which I thought the show was about. It's all about the claustrophobia. Not in the isn't action, it? Frankie. That's when it yeah. breathes and it's raw and real. I like how they didn't play evil music yeah. when Bucky threw a pipe through somebody's like arm. That's a pretty painful yeah, death, a very slow one. Watch our edit where he tosses it, they scream in agony, and blood shoots through the actual pipe into B Bucky's face, just splatters in, and, 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 and then he like grins because he knows he's defeated this. Yeah, he drinks it, and it gives him drinks the blood. Stronger. Yeah, he drinks it. <laughs> well, it's a step in the right direction. Well, it's a step in my kind of direction. Oh, there you go. He corrected it. It's not the right oh. direction. It's my kind of direction. <sighs> Fuck me, dude. Even when we do get the standard Marvel fare, it's done with a lot more flair and a lot what? more visual punch. Nah. I guess <sighs> Stop it. Stop the it, Marvel please. Flare. Don't say these things. It was really <sighs> stupid. What well, can you... Like, the whole... Remember the, um... The, the 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 highway seat. It took ages to get through us talking about it because it's just so much wrong with it. I'm sure you'd be like, well, you got to admit, it has some flair. It has some flair. Yeah. All right, it has flair. And this is what I mean. So for anybody who's confused, it's like, why are you so angry? He just likes it. I'd be like, well, no, it's not. not nothing about this is is meaningful in any shape, way, or form. He's, like, I could just say this about everything. Give me a scene from Marvel. I'll describe it that it has flair, and I'll be able to make an argument. Oh yeah, absolutely. Especially with something as broad as flair. Oh, flair can be all kinds of things. Yeah. Flair's flair can be it can be lighting, it could be acting, you could call and the choreography, lack of flare, flare. it could be buttons on overalls. Flair could be all kinds of different things. I'm like, I, yeah, this is what I mean. It's just like, so he's identified something that could just be in everything, and so now I'm just like, what the fuck was the point of this? Well, I liked it a lot. You're like, well, then why didn't you just say that? You haven't made any arguments. You got twenty minutes of nothing. Well, except some silly things, too. I guess I'm just happy to be enjoying something in this universe that I thought I was numb to. It's a great feeling to want to- Dude, I, I really- Like, if ever I was- If I was like, creating MCU content and Hightop was like, I'm numb to your content. I'd be like, I know how to stimulate you. It's not gonna be hard. Just get some fucking lights shining all over the place. And then, like I said earlier, just have a character who's hiding his shit, I guess. Or he's eating some pasta or some beans. Like, look, he's living a real life. Like, you, you, you eat beans. It just doesn't feel like I have to do it. I, think, I guess, like, a, the conflict I'm having right now is just like, oh my god, how lame and, and pathetic the show was in terms of the characterization it did. Not only assassinating them, but, like, the, the very quick work it gave to try and push them forward, be it PTSD yeah. or money problems. But look how much it's done for High Top. He's blown away. Like, wow. It was me thinking it would take a lot more work than that, but yeah, it's right in there again something that defined a large part of my childhood is go. it perfect nah but nothing is the plot the bits where our heroes aren't fixing up a damn boat or just you know talking but are actually facing the flag smashers feels kind of empty i knew what they wanted i knew and understood why they wanted it but i genuinely had no clue what their grandmaster plan was half of the time it <laughs> yeah but that's writing and you don't give a fucking shit about yeah, that you never you? cared about that high top you, you never gave a fuck, fuck. It's amazing to me, like, we could spend ages talking about all the Flag Smasher stuff and how incompetent it all is, and he's just like, didn't really understand what the fuck was happening, yeah, I didn't really but, you understand know, it. nothing's perfect. But I noticed perfect. the lighting in this one scene, so I guess the show's good. Nothing's perfect, guys, come on. Felt like, like, I don't, I, like, I don't really understand the motivation of the enemy faction, but, you know, it's my favorite MCU movie in years. Mm-hmm.
simple clue what their grandmaster plan was ha if only their if only their grandmaster plan was better lit then maybe yes I'd, I'd really take to it but or if it was more yeah. zoomed shots yeah 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 half the time it felt like it shifted episode to episode maybe something was cut out rewritten at the last second or maybe i really just am an idiot but with that lack of yeah. focus, I mean, I, I've got no commentary for that. I mean, yeah, I mean, you just just kind of nailed it there. Right, yeah. Yeah. On the physical conflict, we get more time for more character work, which makes me a very happy guy. The characters you don't know are what never character work is. They it's fucking assassinate Falcon. They hurt Bucky. Zemo squeaks away, mostly unharmed. Ugh. Our complaint was that the characters are like left by the wayside because the plot takes over. And unfortunately, the plot is so shit. It reminds me of Godzilla, where it's like, you see, I care about characters, not plot. So that's why it doesn't bother me. And I'm like, what do you mean? It's in all of it. There's so much plot. And it's so terrible. There's barely any character. Comparatively. Never in service to the plot, to the world building narrative. Those things are entirely. Wait, I'm sorry. What did he just say? I need to roll that back. A very happy guy. The characters are never in service to the plot, to the world building narrative. Those things what? are entirely in Wait. service of Sam and Bucky. So the characters, the character writing is only ever in service of the characters, never for the plot in the world. That's not a compliment. It's um, um it, it's a position that's we, like what? fine. It's like the the writing itself only ever benefits them. Like, would it not be more beneficial? A character writing to also benefit the plot and the world building, as in yeah, because that makes me think about oh, you're just here because you, the writers want this to benefit our protagonist to move the plot along, not because it's actually like in an act in a real world where they have their own stuff going on and their own things well, they want to do. And for example, if Falcon told us in a scene in a show that wasn't terrible that he's been taking on more and more government contracts that he doesn't even want to engage with. Uh, because of the stuff that's happened previously, but he has to because he needs to make ends meet with whatever fucking money problems he has that we could generate. So that tells you something about his character, tells you something about the state of the world, and it gives us a plot line. Like, I wonder if Hytop's even aware of this, like, how... I would like him to show me something from this show, or maybe five examples to give, make it a bit harder for him, that's uh, character writing that doesn't do anything for the plot or the world, because I'm not even sure that he knows the difference. Like, if I told you Falcon has decided to get a bank loan, he'd be like, there's no will building there. I'd be like, the fact that he can get a bank loan is going to tell you the something. The fact that he needs one? Yeah, that too. Like, I don't know that, I don't know that he knows the difference, yeah. That's very true. He might not. Bucky. Does Zemo really need to be here? Does he really add Thank any- Thank fuck he was. Like, I'm, I'm honestly surprised he wasn't ruined, but like, at least it was yeah. something I could enjoy. We were tense. That was the most, that's the most tension we had with his show in terms of drama. It was just, I hope they don't ruin this character. Thing to the story of the show. Irresistible. No. But what he does do what? is serve. Wait. But what he does. Did, did, did he just say that he didn't add anything to the story? Which makes me a very happy guy. The characters are never in service to the plot, to the world building narrative. Those things are entirely in service yeah, of Sam bad. and yeah. Bucky, developing That's Sam bad. and Bucky. Does Zemo really need to be here? Does he really add anything to the story of the show? Irresistible. No. But Doesn't add oh anything? Oh my god. You kidding? I, like... Well... I... What do you do? What do you do with this? I, d I don't understand. He, how? <sighs> hey, Fringy. Mm -hmm. He just said Zemo added nothing to the story. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> kidding me? I just. I don't understand. I don't get it. I. <sighs> Man. Like, this is a Man. successful YouTuber. So, uh, talking yeah. <laughs> about media, talking about shows. How how do you say this? Did you not watch the fucking TV show? My brain's melted a bit because it's like, wait, what do you mean we have to start collecting references to defend the show? And I'm like, I'm I've I I don't know what to tell you, brain. Like we've got to do it because the, we just, we got to do it. We got to be honest. So wait, this Zemo guy just said that Zemo add nothing to the story. <laughs> which... I I just don't get it. I don't understand. How can you be so fucking brain dead when this is your job? And you're just like, yeah, Zemo didn't do anything. So, I where to begin? This upsets me quite a bit. Yeah. The entire plotline post episode two is because of Zemo. So that's one thing. 
Two, Zemo gives quite the, uh, what you could call criticism of the Super Soldier Serum and what it does to a character and why he does what he does, and it's in stark opposition to what Falcon and Bucky believe, and it creates conversations between them. Uh, Zemo assassinates, or, or murders, whatever, uh, the, the creator of the serum. That has yeah. drastic uh, has, implications on yeah. the story. Who, as far as we know, is the only person who knows how to make it. And, uh, now, they can... They can invent someone on the spot. This show will absolutely do it. Turns out there was another secret person who was actually oh, somewhere oh over goodness. here and he was making the serum, so now we can have more super soldiers. They are absolutely willing to do that because f fuck it, keeping an established world. Zemo saved their lives twice. Once in Madripoor and then again in the uh, shipment area in Madripoor when he shot mm -hmm. and killed a bunch of the bounty hunters. He then got them to the next locations. He found out about the funeral. He got them there. Yep. How do you actually say this? Like, I just... He destroyed all the serums. He did that, too? Yes. Yeah. And he shot Kali. The absolute Best guy. fucking moment for his character, in the, <laughs> except the, the, the follow-through, but at least he shot her. I don't know. I just... I don't... The, I... Yeah, well, this so, is the thing. You, you hear it, you're just like, so I don't... Which universe are you from? You uh, have to... You have to pause and just sort of think about... How does someone, when he wrote all that, when he was, because the scene that he showed of him putting the candy out was him learning where the funeral was. And so how does his brain, oh, you, you wonder, you, you try to get into the, the mind of the creator. How did his brain compartmentalize all of that information into just, how, how do you make this video about the show after seeing this show? and say Zemo didn't do anything for the story. He also killed the remaining Flag Smashers. Yes, he did. How um, is he did that? that? as well, absolutely. Yeah, just, this is the thing, I feel like we've lined up how he's, he's integral to the plot, he's important to represent a new perspective on the ideas behind what Serum does to a character, he's also there for his own reasons, he actually manages to bring up and chastise them potentially for uh, the Sokovia Memorial. Um, and he manages to make decisions that are in line with his character, that progress him forward in ways that are quite interesting, I would argue. Um, so, wrong on all counts. I don't, I don't see how that you could Everyone, ever reach this position. I just, I it baffles me how somebody could do this. Like even, even if just a casual film goer, movie watcher, flick seer, if. You were just having a conversation with someone at Waffle House sitting next to you about, oh, you know, I watched the Winter Soldier. Shame about Zemo, he didn't really do anything. <laughs> you know, even then, even then, that would be stupid. And you'd explain to them that they were wrong. But just like coming from this, it, it's just demoralizing, honestly. Yeah. This is why EFAP's yeah. a thing, because people like High Top, <laughs> they fucking suck. They're just, they're bad at their jobs. What he does do is serve Bucky. What he does do is provide Bucky a chance. A he chance. doesn't serve the story, but he serves Bucky. But he serves Bucky, who was part of the story. In this story, he's like, nice. So, wait, so him des him destroying all the vials of Super Serum, that didn't serve the plot or the story or the world, Well, but it did serve Bucky. What he's accidentally done now, again, because he doesn't understand what he... When he makes claims, makes counter. No, no, no. Almost. That's just it. He just he doesn't understand. Yes. Um. It's like so he general. said, doesn't affect story, does affect character. So character and story, story doesn't encompass character. He's now separated those. So that means that we have to figure out how does Zemo affect the story without including anything to do with character. And it's like, well, the majority of my arguments were plot. So if plot isn't a part of story, <laughs> neither is character. It's like, what are we? So story is everything it's the that's big, what yes, i everything. thought that's what i yeah, thought and then the and, and then the characters is depending on the it, it could be a very tiny circle or a very big circle but it will never be bigger than the story circle <laughs> well it's part right? of the story circle that's kind of the yes, thing like, everything's in story everything's is, in the story again this is the reason why the writing advice of hey if it doesn't contribute to the story cut it out it's like this is not a meaningful thing to tell somebody because everything contributes in some way it's yeah if it's not a part of the out. story it doesn't exist yeah like basically but then somebody might be like well wait what about like in the snyder cut the filler it's like so the reason why the problem there is that it isn't adding anything additional that isn't already there yeah, yeah. that's it's the in the story because it's still a part of the story it. yeah but it doesn't yeah, I, do anything. 
so the question would be, do you need to add, is this contributing in a way that doesn't, is this not redundant is kind of the most important part, not whether or not it directly advances the main plot. I don't think that should affect what uh, you keep in or out of your film. Yeah, in, in the limited time economy of creating these, you know, these works, yeah. these movies and these things, There's there is a, there is a, there is a tactical view you have to take with, you know, what, what do we cut? What do we keep in? What do we use our time for? Absolutely. Um, that's, that's kind of the thing with stories. It's just a lot of decisions, decisions on what to keep and what to lose and, and, uh, you know, time. Yeah. Like you said, time constraints format constraints like is this mm -hmm. a tv show is it a movie there's only so long that a movie can be before people won't accept it well it, uh, i and think people, this, people it would almost say, change format right like if you yeah. go too long with a movie if a movie was 10 hours long i don't even know that we can c classify it as a movie anymore if, or it would be long like it would need another uh maybe that, like another thing to well, distinguish it yeah kind of Maybe in the same way that, like, there's distinctions between novels, like a novella. There's short stories usually up to, like, 10,000 words, and novella is 10 to 50,000, and then a novel is 50,000 to, like, 100. Yeah, yeah just 000, to, because these categories... Which isn't, like, a huge deal, it's just a categorization no. thing. No, yeah. it's helpful, though, because mm -hmm. it means... Yeah, it is helpful, absolutely. It's like genres. That's, that's, it's helpful. It's like but, genre, you know. yes. That's right, yeah. it doesn't oh. define your story. Look at this wavelength <laughs> right. we're all on. Wonderful. Yeah, it, it, it really, yeah. yes. It, it's not this way because it's a short story. It's a short story because it's that way. Yeah. See, EFAP is like poetry. It rhymes. <laughs> <laughs> Do is provide Bucky a chance. A chance to let go of vengeance. To show us how but far But this scene was bizarre. To show us I, don't, yeah. I don't know what they were going for with this scene. He was like, Lol, yeah. LMAO, I tricked you into thinking I might shoot you. It's like, Bucky, that's weird. <laughs> like, yeah, why would you... Why would... Why would Zemo think you would... And why would Bucky think that he needed to do it like this? Like, I'm not... Because I, I think when the scene was playing out, we were all just, just like, saying, huh? It's really weird. Like, you don't have to pretend to kill someone, but don't. To show people that you're... You wouldn't kill them? You could just not kill them. And then dropping all the bullets yeah, on the floor, you should just pick them all up back up. Them. He's gonna have to grab them all back yeah, up. Yeah, especially nowadays with the ammo shortage, like, you don't want to just drop those around, man. Like, those are... How else will Zebo know that he didn't shoot him? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking 762 by 39? Like, that's like 51 cents around. It, it, that, that's insane. Like, fucking hell. I can't wait for the... Ugh, Jesus. It used to be oh, like M20. Is that a lot? I don't, I don't know. Oh, shit fuck about yeah, that's a lot. Costs. So there's, the, there's, there's an ammo shortage going on because of the pandemic and a lot of new gun owners. And those things are oh, just hitting yeah. at the okay. same time. So mm. there's Probably, a big yeah. ammo shortage because they're just, they can't produce enough right now. I might so be everyone wants it. A little retarded here, but like 51 cents per bullet doesn't actually sound that expensive. Like it sounds like oh, a good for, deal. <laughs> I don't know. So for seven, six, two by thirty nine, that's really expensive. Generally, the the stuff that I get, I try to get between twenty and twenty five cents around. Mm -hmm. But the idea that a mag, an AK magazine, is going to cost me fifteen plus dollars, ugh, fuck that. Oh, okay. Nine that, millimeter yeah. rounds. Generally, right, I try okay, to get buckets yeah. and stuff of sixteen cents. A that shot, makes it more, yeah. Maybe twenty on the high end, but fuck me, it was. Ugh. Uh, so seeing him just drop bullets like that, it make, <laughs> he'll pick them back it, up. It but that's, my, that's the part they won't show yeah, us. Yeah, I, I, how awkward they come that in afterwards, be. and they're like, "I'll take those, thank you very much." I like the idea of him awkwardly picking them up. He accidentally kicks one away. Fuck! Yeah, <laughs> Scrambles uh, over and, and, and get it while the Wakandans are looking. Yeah, they haven't quite left yet. Zemo can see him out the yeah. window, and Bucky's like, "Ah, oh, fuck! <laughs> yeah, yeah, okay, <laughs> yeah, picking them back up. What?" So yeah, uh, someone said like he was. Yeah, like twenty two dollars is cheap as fuck, but except now, ugh. Uh, so he was he was messing with it. It's like that's like the whole thing that we're questioning. <laughs> what are you doing? It's such a weird scene. I uh, I also think it's just downright inappropriate. I feel like Bucky should have grasped exactly who Zemo is by now, and like it, there would be no need to bait killing him. Especially at the fucking Sokovian Memorial, it's such a- I just, it just feels odd. Everything feels off about yeah. this. Like, he's sort of- he's he's kind of an Avenger, and Sokovia's dead kind of because of the Avengers, so an Avenger not killing Se Zemo at the Sokovia Memorial 
but like, it, Bucky it's had really to do it's with really that. weird. Yeah, that's what. I but like, it's one of those metaphorical. So it's weird metaphorically. That's what it's I mean. Like, really yeah. bizarre. All the pieces in my head are just not matching up at all. I'm like, it's, it's so weird. And then he's like, "Lol," pours bullets on floor, and I'm like, "Why have you? Why? Uh, why would you do this? Just end the scene, <laughs> please. <laughs> it's so strange." A vengeance to show us how far he has come to show us him choose. oh did you see he's he's raised his pistol at someone before it's like symmetry even though it's not even the same fucking it's circumstances not, yeah at all. it's and bizarre think, that he does it i think high top would understand that surely you'd be like high top this he seems, understands, yeah. there's no mirror here at all this is literally just he wrote well, he doesn't need to understand because he could just because people just eat it up he, he has no there's no pressure on him to improve he doesn't want to mm -hmm. he likes the i think he likes the idea of improving but he doesn't know what that is he doesn't you know, know what getting better is you know something i um i noticed so th this is like an actual one instead of his bullshit ones uh, you guys have both seen the father something i noticed when uh whichever was the latest time i was watching it you know when he's first in the kitchen and it's right before he first meets the husband that shouldn't be there, or at least from his POV. Mm -hmm. um, and he's putting away his his stuff. For a moment, I was kind of just like, we we sit a lot of, for a while with that scene. I say a while; it's like a minute. Um, and I I wonder if it's simply just to put us in the in the shoes, like this is a normal day, which it does that great before everything starts to unravel. Um, but if you watch him in that scene, he's got the bag and he's considering what to do with it, and he swishes it from the left to the right, and then his foot does a little, little like, subtle little kick motion, and then he puts it in his pocket. I think that's supposed to mirror what he sees the kid doing outside of the window. About the, the smaller parts to life, the joys. There's an old man putting away his shopping, and he has the bag, and he's got a temptation to just have it wibbly wobble around and kick it around and stuff, because that's fun. Like, oh, that's nice. Really subtle, too. This is Bucky rose the gun against the person who killed him as a Winter Soldier. Here, he's raising it against Zemo and deciding not to shoot him when he... We never thought he would... It, I'm, I'm lost. i are already lost. Yeah. Oh, nothing. So, yeah. Uh... I guess we'll keep going. Losing yeah. oh, a violence. Honestly, let though, my biggest violence? issues stem not even No, from don't let... No, no. <laughs> so, if that's the message, that's a bad message. Let it's, go of violence. If you're violence. an Avenger... If you're an Avenger, you don't let go of violence. Violence is your job. That's what you do. No, 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 no. All violence, right. What I know. Because yeah, I know they're trying to make this like a weird. Like, it, it's this. It's what we get with like Carly killing um, Lamar and how Captain America is. Uh, Walker is not allowed to kill that one guy. Like they have this strange relationship with violence mm -hmm. that, it, like they they can't. They don't fully grasp it. Like it's a concept that they're not prepared to talk about or tackle, or that they just, they they can't grasp. You can't give up violence if you're the Avengers. No, and that's your they job. Don't. That's what you do. Fucking opening episode, Falcon like kills many people. Like I don't know why you would even pretend. Because like this is the thing. I don't think that's what the message in the film or the show was. I think he was just sort of like dropping the. I don't any in interpretation you have of it. I don't think is going to line up with other things in the show. That's just because of the incompetence. No. So at this point, I'm just like, it's just a neat visual they wanted. Bullets slowly falling. They do that in fucking everything. It's like a oh, slow motion bullets falling. Isn't it cool? Um, I feel like cool. it's a signifier that the violence has ended. It's like that's stupid. <laughs> that's just really stupid. I don't know why you would say that. Honestly, though, my biggest issues stem not even from Falcon and the Winter Soldier itself, really, but from how the previous film set up Falcon and Winter Soldier. Oh, Steven Ooh, wait, oh. careful. This is, would, oh. if, if we do it like they didn't do enough work to bring Falcon and Winter Soldier in, it's like you've got the, you got the wrong culprit at that point. Yeah, this isn't Endgame's fault. Endgame we'll, is we'll fault for many things, Falcon but not this show. Well, yeah. Let's, let's like, see what he says. I don't know. Winter Soldier. Steve and Bucky's goodbye in Endgame felt hollow to me. We missed a conversation. A True. final farewell between yes. two yep. best friends, two brothers. Should have been yeah. a farewell to begin with, but sure. It shouldn't have, yeah. Yeah, it's like, we're... Because he's just... We don't know where Steve is. I assume he's dead. Well, uh, interestingly, Chris Evans is apparently going to be reprising his role um, in some way, shape, or form. It's undisclosed yet. Huh. Oh. So, get your worry faces oh. back on, folks. <laughs> so, 
The second yeah, he turns so that up, leaves a lot of fucking questions. If he turns up in any capacity, in it's going to be a major hole for Falcon and Winter Soldier immediately that he yeah, wasn't like in any of Yeah, he's alive. Mm. Yeah. Um, but I, I heard this from uh, IGN with the, with the people I read. This so might be true. Might so that's be that's a, a little more reputable compared to yeah, like, like I some of the other don't sources. know that IGN typically lie about this sort of thing. But uh, so mm, don't know see. if true. But if he turns up in any capacity, we were like, uh, excuse me, where the fuck were you, buddy? Brothers that only implied the central physical conflict revolves around the real world implications of the snap. The five years were they the are not no. prepared to even begin to talk about the real world implications of the snap. They do There's it very badly. no fucking way. Very gotcha. embarrassing. Silly. Ugh, fundamentally changed. So many died. So many were left behind. That's some serious shit. And that's no, no. You're just saying what the show said, but you're not like you need more. So many died. So many were left behind. Like. What do you mean when you Maybe, say well, that so many were left behind? It almost sounds like he's setting up to say the show didn't do a very good job of fully representing it, and if he does, you know, points. Because he sounds like, he sounds like Carly. Oh, you mean in terms of, like, es establishing that there is someone to blame, like the GRC, when all they've done is try to help people? I don't even know. He just, it's just empty. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, meat to any of it. Well, I mean, that's some serious video, shit, so. and that serious shit is played seriously here, given real consequences and impact, which is fan-fucking-tastic, no, uh, but I couldn't mm. forget that less than five years ago, Broke Me From Home handled the five years, the snap, the blip, as if it were some kind of comedic gag. Well, in fairness, you can handle it with different tones, with different cir yeah. circumstances. You can do that. Um, mm -hmm, my because, issue is yeah. that the, it's more with... I'm not actually... I don't hate Far From Home that much for this. Like, they didn't, they avoid the shit out of addressing the blip. They're just like, ah, we don't really want to. Um, they have lots of little references for the world building about things trying to struggle to get back together. Uh, but they clearly wanted to tell their own story. They didn't want to have to deal with uh, explaining what the world is like post-blip. Um, the Falcon and Winter Soldier tried to do that, and it's miserable. Like, it's a pathetic attempt. Uh, WandaVision, yes. again, is just like, yeah, it was really bad. We're going to tell our own story. Um, having, so this is the thing, guys, uh, as much as we often talk about how horrible it would be to have everyone blip back in all different kinds of ways, there's gonna be funny ones. Like someone Absolutely. falls into a bath. I mean, the one on the basketball like, oh. court is a good example of if they just showed up and back doing their thing. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah that would be humorous. It's gonna, there's gonna be funny ones. And of course, depending on the tone of the movie you're doing at the time, like I know a lot of people, um, complained... If you're, do you remember how Far From Home opens? There's like a school-made clip art sort of shitty presentation for Remember the People Who Died from Endgame's events. And it's like, the joke is that it's the children trying to come up with this like respectful sort of funeral-like thing that they play for the school, but it's really badly done with like different aspect ratios and poor quality. Immediately trying to set the tone that Far From Home is going to be a lot more light-hearted than uh, the events of Endgame, if you will, especially like the ending, yeah. how somber it was. It's like, yeah, that's that's how you do, that's how you transition tones. You're gonna have to be like, right, so our film isn't gonna be like the one you just saw, but it's taking place in the same universe, so, you know, the things you've seen apply. Um, so yeah, him being like, it was treated like a joke in this film. It's like, so there is no film that's addressed the, the blip properly, the five you get. No one's done that. The Russo's fucked everyone over, I'm sorry. Nobody is going to tell a Spider-Man story while also trying to assess to you exactly how everything's happened in the world. Like, it's just not going to happen. It should be its own thing, and it would be It would have to be. But they just... Mm. They could even make a TV show, and it could be yeah. all about different civilian lives. Every episode could be a different scenario of people, things coming back. Like, mini epi almost like Twilight Zone episodes, where every little episode is like a different scenario. Anthology series, yeah. Kind of, yeah. But they're not going to do that. They won't do that because nope. it needs to be they about fight a scenes specific two who fights bad yeah. guys, yeah. yeah. Someone said Kevin Feige denied Chris Evans returning. So, again, oh, don't know okay. if true. Read it from IGN. Don't know if true. The blip. Sharon coming back and being rightfully pissed at the Avengers that Steve kind of forgot about her after she essentially sacrificed her. That's yeah, stupid though. That's just stupid. Yeah. That never would have happened. Sorry. Maria, her life feels like a direct response to the films forgetting about her. Her turn. Okay, I can agree with that. Films actually. forgetting about her. Yeah. yeah, the Russos didn't do anything for Sharon Carter, so <laughs> it's like even yeah, though they took her forward, so... wait, they created even her. Even though they created her, yeah. Oh, so stupid. How did you? Throw away line, Russo. That's all we needed. Throw away line.
Oh hell, have her in the film. It's really, you know, you've got enough people already, why not? It's such a yeah, what's one more thing. I kind of agree with him on that one. Um but at the same time it was yeah. it doesn't mean So like if we were writing it, we're like, you know what, the Russo's forgot about it, we're gonna make it so Steve did. It's like, whoa, chill out. You, that doesn't make any sense at all in terms of like some kind of vengeance plan on the writers. It's like, no. Turning out her broker feels like the only thing they thought they could do with her character. It's a complete 180 character. A kind woman who looked up to- Wait, are we- Okay, so we've covered, a, I think, more than one person now, more, possibly three, that believe that she's been assassinated instead of her being brainwashed or a scroll. We automatically assumed <clears throat> those things, but other people are treating this like it's an assassination. It's like, the show is aware that she's not Sharon Carter. At least I thought so. Or, or at least not the same type of person. The, the... <laughs> Because there are only a few angles. She's not a different person, or she, or she's like just radically changed as a person. In a, so in that's a kind of the issue way. that we have. Well, that, that's it's a result of bad writing. Like with the writing mm, in this show, yeah. I don't know if it's intentional or if they're just shit at writing. Well, the prop, yeah, the problem is like because it's Marvel, and we know that there's going to be more stuff coming in the future, and they like to do their little teasers of things to come. You never know anymore. Scrolls fuck everything up because now it's like, oh, they could just be not them. And that's always well, a possibility I, now. Yeah, it's always a backdoor. Well, Frank, you said, uh, I think it was you were coming for someone else, but she was brainwashed in the comics, correct? Uh, I think, yeah, I think Civil War ended with her getting brainwashed and then shooting Captain America, from what I remember. So like, that was what well, Civil War ended, and then like a story that was the follow up had her brainwashed by Hydra and then killed Cap. Like, what she's doing seems so wildly out of character to me that I was like, oh, we're gonna get a reveal about it. I didn't, I didn't, like, I, I just feel like I'm starting to become, like, a person on an island with this one. I was just like, I, I never thought that this was them saying that she's gone on some kind of journey that's made her evil. I was like, oh. Because in which case, yeah, they've, yeah. they've fucked her up completely if that's what they commit to. But maybe that's the whole point is, but... Uh, I don't know. I feel like uh, she's more likely to be a scroll. Yeah, I feel like scroll is really e just because we know that they're doing that show, and they need to start setting it up because that's how Marvel works. You got to have little things to. S well, no, you don't actually because this show didn't take anything that was actually set up for them. Yeah. So if it turns out that they actually argue, nah, she's just evil now because they left her. I'll be like, yes, yeah, so that's a thorough ex assassination. Good job. Yeah, she's done. Like, that's it. <laughs> Sorry, Sharon, you're, you're out. It's a complete 180 character change from the kind woman who looked up to her By fear. the way, High Top, you agree that there is such a thing as 180 in character. character. assassination? <laughs> I'd like to talk to you about oh, some boy. other characters. ...and endlessly sacrificing Ant to a cold, exploitative villain. And it's all kind of Steve's fault. It's kind of the previous film's fault for forgetting or just not knowing what to do with the character. So what I will say is just because she isn't... Oh, God. Just because she isn't mentioned yeah. doesn't mean that she's been forgotten, like, narrative... Like, you can easily fix that. You can be like, so this is what she was doing. She was working with, you know, blah, blah, yes. blah, about blah, blah, blah. That's all you had to do. You didn't a have to make her evil. Something... Get what I'm getting at, but can I really hold all uh, that? I don't get it. What was that? When... I don't get it's it. It's art. I'm tired of you guys not understanding how artistic this is. You get yes, what I'm getting. Artistic. No, it's artistic. Getting at, but can I really hold all Did that? Did he like hit the camera? Val yeah. Interpret it, okay? Getting so the Soldier. camera's shaking on him. He hits it, and then it falls away as he's in this blue light, looking bored. At... <sighs> <laughs> I don't get it. <laughs> Against what the storytellers are now trying to do? Hell no. And what they are trying to do is ask questions. Winter <laughs> oh, no, no. not. They're Dude, answering them. That's like a bingo thing. What they're trying to do is ask questions. Ask questions. Oh, I could have put that in every video about everything ever. In Civil War raised various political and social questions about our modern world, but then never really answered them and instead went boom, boom, stark, boom. And I was- Whoa! I can't hear oh. what you're saying. Did he- So I was about to agree with him. I was like, yeah, the MCU never followed through. But he's implying that Civil War <laughs> didn't do anything with it. What? 
Aww. What do you mean? No, Civil War was what this show forgot. That's so, why it might seem that way. Check this out. Because right? this show acts as if Civil War never happened. Check this out. Various political and social questions about our modern world, but then never really answered them and instead went boom, 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 stark, boom. And I was But they showed Civil War. So he, he, the explosion he's showing is when Tony shoots the missile, missile launch like covering thing to prevent Bucky from escaping. That's, so that he can kill him, yeah. He's referencing <laughs> that like, oh, boom, explosion. It's like, really, dude. Oh. How, that's nuts. It's like the most... The one film that really tries to do the most to make this feel like a, a world with realistic consequences. And he's like, no, it's just the explosions. Wow. And he likes this <laughs> crap. And he like, And this is my favorite MCU movie in years, this. Again, the thing that forgets Civil War happened. I like he says like it doesn't answer anything. So the end of Civil War has two two options. You basically work with the government for as long as you can until they have you do something or they don't let you do something that you decide is too much a part of you that you can't part with. Or on principle, you separate them immediately and you work on your own outside of the law. Like that, 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 that in relation to whether or not you should allow the government to have any regulation over the use of your power as an individual. Like, those are the answers, if you really want to go that far. And then there's lots of bits in between. There's lots of characters choosing between the two sides, or trying to reach some kind of conclusion. There's lots of arguments. Like, the idea that Civil War didn't do anything with it, except explosion, fight Tony, explosion. Like, what the hell? It uh, matches the trend of, he doesn't watch these movies. He doesn't remember them. He just... I yeah. I don't know how don't his brain really works. His brain doesn't work. I was worried this would be another case of that. I was worried they would have- Wait, he's saying the only good thing is Tony's story, everything else is flashy garbage. What? That explains a lot. I don't- I, I don't even know that you can pull that out necessarily, what he's saying, but that would also be retarded. Like, I can't take it, High Top, please. Uh, yeah, how do, all the stuff political with Bucky and, and social Steve questions about and our Scotia. modern world, but then never really answered them and instead went boom, boom, start boom. And I was worried this would be another case of that. I was worried they would half acidly resolve Isaiah Bradley struggling and ignore well, they the did. They did. They did. Uh, they I know, did. I know a lot they of people did. And, like. And it doesn't make sense how they did. A lot of people like the Isaiah Bradley like like ending, you know, scene yeah, because they're with dumb. The thing. But like it, it did for me. It was just like it was like a stolen payoff. It's just like oh, we're doing that now. That's just happened now. There's nothing to. Like, his history's been so thoroughly erased that nobody has any reference for it. He may as well literally have just been teleported into this universe, but because what? Which like, like Falcon appeals to the, the courts and the, the people who organize all that. It's just like, no, this guy definitely did exist and he did all of these things. Trust me, totally true. In a world where, like, so much shit gets falsified, it's like it would have taken so long and there would have been so many and so many investigations and thorough things to have to get done before that could possibly happen and that's what i would have preferred that it took a really long time and at first it's a small like it's like a footnote in the captain of america area and that alone is enough to make bradley like just be like like well up the fact that he's got any kind of recognition instead of like a full thing in in a matter of just instantly it's just there it's just like oh okay He's got yeah, a fucking statue. Yeah, the government's statue. fine with it, I guess. The government's totally cool with this all being a thing. And th that doesn't create any issues. That's what I mean. You and The problem with Isaiah's story was like, there must have been proof. It's like, nah, everything was thoroughly erased. Like, okay then, you can't have it be that he can suddenly have his own, you know, uh, display. Because there's no display, fucking proof. Yeah. And the government tried to keep that a secret anyway. And Falcon just goes and... Does it? How how did he do that? Was the government cool with this? So I think like a, the the payoffs poorly handled because it's it's just it's it's very. I want this is kind of unfair. I was about to say it's like childish, Super rushed. but I was like, yes, ah, children's stuff is usually better. <laughs> so I don't yeah. know. Very, it's a child's understanding of how it might work. I guess I should say. Yeah. Yep, I think that's serious and powerful. Of his story but the final episode solidifies oh, no. that falcon and winter soldier wants to actively question the system with as much authenticity as you could possibly get with a disney produced Fuck billion dollar off, superhero streaming service as property much authenticity as you could possibly get maybe he's you right now so he's you can never get more authentic like, than this so well, now i think he's trying to he's trying to cover for them being like oh well this is disney this is the most that disney would let you do I still think what? he's well. So he's implying like 
he wouldn't want to imply for a moment that Disney were capable of releasing something that's authentic because they're an evil, horrible corporation. So they they always do this. They have I mean, this trouble. That's true, but they can still. Well, but the no, people who make the stuff are different than the. Yeah, we we don't have any trouble yeah. saying that, but he's a part are, of like a yeah. group of people that were just like fuck corporations, right? So you have to throw this in every once in a while. It's similar with pigs, I guess. You know, it's amazing that High Top has managed to restrain himself on that front. Uh, what I was going to say is, maybe he's right, and he sees authenticity as basically being like, things should be better, you guys need to do better, okay? That's pretty authentic, you know? Because, like, I, he, he <laughs> recognizes yeah. good people want stuff to be better, bad people, that's not what they want. That's authenticity, okay? Might even say that's just glorious, masterful writing. A corporate machine. It's shockingly sincere in its execution. It's and not. Never they made it up on the spot. There's nothing sincere about it. Just you have an actor who's fooling you. Which I mean, credit to them, I suppose. He's a good actor. <laughs> but he's doing a good job. Like, yeah, yeah. Like, but there's nothing behind it. It's like the Bucky scene at the beginning of which episode was it? Um, four. four, I think. Episode. Yeah, four. whichever one that was. It's like the actor is doing a really great job. They're fooling you into thinking that it's I think deep that's or earned. Problem, like, lightly with most content is it's really just the writers who are failing everybody else like yeah, the actors yeah. the cinematographers and all them they're doing a great job and it's just the writing lets it all down because that is like the one part you can't fuck up you need to nail that bit yeah <laughs> otherwise we're in trouble yeah apologizes for it we'll never let a black man be captain america and you're gonna have a bunch of middle-aged Because Isaiah's a fucking idiot. Oh, no. Oh, oh, boy. Oh, hold on. Oh, 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 is this the text? All right, okay. So That is... Oh, that... I found this actually like Why a... Why would you do that? Hold Wait, on. don't read it. I can read it. Don't. Don't worry. No, no, don't read it. Yeah, I can't. So... I can't if I wanted to. <laughs> Hang on, I will... generate what needs to be done. Because I can, I can read this. No, 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 I don't want you to. Uh, uh, so, like, right. we'll, we'll, we'll I, I have an idea. All right, I just need to say. Oh, you sneaky little, like. <laughs> oh, Wait, you, you talk about him? Because I was about to say, we can talk about the fact that he, this message is quite loaded. Uh, it is very, it, it, this is the one that's directed at us. Um, oh, and, and that's why I'm saying like, you sneaky. Like, specifically EFAP or... I would Us almost certainly say it's almost specific. Well, you could make you could judge it when we get to it. So, right. um, the thing about this that it's just like he's like he wants it to be said, but he doesn't want to have to deal with someone responding to it. Okay, <laughs> it's like this weird world he lives in. Where he's like, because he's coward. He's a coward. Uh, I was gonna use that word, and then you used it, and now I'm gonna talk about how yeah, I was gonna use that word. Yeah, that's about right. Oh, okay. I was just well, saying, it wouldn't be the first time. It's sneaky. It's very sneaky, like doing this, having really thin, tiny texts to actually take a shot at somebody. So, but why even have it there? Like, what? Well, it'll all make like, sense. No in a one. Uh, in terms of like, he's at the point of he just laid out a whole bunch of what is so meaningful about the show. But I think by talking about Isaiah, there's there's a clear like, oh shit, none of that makes any sense though. And so now. He wants to address those who are like, ew, this doesn't make sense, though. This story is going to be directed at. So, I think this could be amusing. Okay. Uh, where are you? That's probably good enough. All right, so I'm going to I'm gonna read it all out in one big go for chat, and then we will go through it, okay? Um, okay. But I'm going to have background for it. I think it's suitable. And so I, I guess you guys should probably mute. And just watch the stream for the next. Um, well, it ends with with thank you for watching. So as soon as you hear that, you can jump back in. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Let me. All right. Let me go to thing. Press live. Okie dokie. All right. Here we go, chat. Do it. Get that background. I don't believe in bad. It didn't work for you. That's totally cool. But what it what what if it did work for somebody? What if a different audience member watched this and had a profound response to it? Is that still bad? Why do so many critics only focus on the script elements that don't work for them when film is a visual medium. Composition 
Lighting. Movement. Rhythm. Color. And a thousand more visual elements are used to give you a feeling, to elicit an emotion. When we don't feel that intended feeling, we too often consider it bad. I used to use bad a lot, and I am totally guilty of still using it too much. But when it comes to art, someone's form of expression, a wonderful collaboration of people who put their souls into their work. Can we stop acting like it's a piece of meat to be judged? I read too many comments. I see too many other artists on this platform that ridicule and mock those who passionately express their love for something. Why are we mocking those who share their love? There is nothing that comes from spewing hate and then hiding that hate behind critique. I'm still learning this lesson. It's fun being a dick and roasting something. But there are always people behind the writing you read, the videos you watch, the art you consume. And no artist has ever set out to make something that gets called bad by idiots like myself on YouTube. If somehow you read all of this, thank you. Thank you for watching. Mm. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs>、Anymore. Is that is that the end of that? That is it. Oh, okay.、So、um, wow, what a through, little bitch. I was, I was like, kind of okay. But then when he started doing the attacks, I was actually kind of getting a little bit annoyed. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, he's a, he's a coward. But I don't like tactically, I don't get why you would put this here so that. Well, why? I think I, I think it is just the thing of like, because if he was just to say it out loud, then it's like really easy to a, a, attack that. But because it's this really small thing of text, it's almost like you're attacking somebody, but not, you know, you can like, just kind of like it reduces the it. chances that someone will respond to it. Can I? I just, yeah, I, I think it's indirect. You know what I mean? First thing I want you guys to see after hearing all of that is this. This came after his video's release, by the way. Oh. Wow, you so, can't、um, be consistent on this. So you just shat on everything you just said, Alex. Like,、yeah. I don't know what to tell you there. Like, being immortal Hulk, and I'm now realizing just how bad Hulk fans have it when it comes to the flicks. What do you wow. mean? Wow. What do you mean bad? He's、like、saying that the film is. Yo, wait. What are you talking about? Endgame dab. That they didn't intend to make that and have it be bad. They were trying, and it was something. They were had. Yeah. Acting, visuals, framing, color. And they weren't trying to make something bad. There was a person behind that. There were a lot of people behind that high top. How dare you! It's yeah, how dare put, you! They put a lot of passion into、It's、their、insane. work. Yeah, guys, nobody,、like、nobody believes this. Nobody believes when they say this whole thing of like everything is whatever you want it to be. Nobody believes that. You can push everybody to a certain point where they will concede that there is some level of craft. To anything, you're never gonna find somebody who's doing that because if they do that, they basically don't even live in the world that we live in. They're just listing around. Everything is everything and can be anything, and there's no such thing as good or bad. There's yeah, nobody if, like that. They would be if people, if people,、um, if, if people were critical. I guess is what I'm trying to say because people are not critical of media. They're very easy to fool. If everyone was actually good at dissecting this stuff and looking at it. Then people like High Top, they'd be out of a fucking job. <laughs> yes, like they they would be they'd be doing something else. They'd be fucking supersizing your fries or doing something they're good at. I don't know. They they wouldn't be doing this. The only reason that these creators exist is because people are not critical in any way, and because people are super duper easy to fool. 
this so is just... they rely on it all being whatever. Mm -hmm. Because if, if, there's if a everything standard, is whatever, you don't need to make arguments. You can just say yeah, what you feel and it. nobody can criticize you. But like, yeah. what is the point of this? What do you do that is better than or worse than what anybody else does? When you look at any video that you make, how can you say that you've improved? If anything is anything, you can't improve. It's yeah. all as Why bad bother? or good as each other. Your videos from like four years ago were totally fine. There's no such thing as bad. You they said were, it They yourself. were perfect. What if somebody came up to you, Hyde Top, and was like, oh, you know, that video that you probably hate now? Oh, that really hit me in the feels, like emotionally. Oh, that got me. And then you said that it was bad. And they're like, oh, man, that really upsets me because, like, I extract value from that. That does something for me. And, like, now, if you, if you operate by the standard of there's your reaction to something, which can, can't really be invalidated ever. Which isn't like, even you can't a standard. Invalidate well, yeah, it's not a standard. It's just how you felt, which can't be invalidated because you felt it. Like, I I feel like you don't even need to explain this. What you feel can't be invalidated because you felt it. The fact that like, you had that feeling, that's just something that happened. Yeah, it maybe your away. emotions aren't something concrete enough or reliable enough to put that much reliance in. Maybe mm -hmm. some kids need to be told when they're growing up that just because you feel something doesn't mean that it's good or accurate or deserving yep. of your emotion. Um, maybe just, just because you cried it. at something, maybe whatever it was didn't really deserve that tear from you. I feel like it comes back to the whole thing we were talking way earlier where it's like, you felt stuff, figure out why, and then they do, and they make a video like this, and it's like, Okay, so you fucked up many times. <laughs> You've not identified why you felt what you felt. You've identified why you think you felt what you felt, because that shit didn't happen. Either that, or you actually have no idea. Like, maybe I'm operating with too much good faith here, and you just didn't spot any of the bullshit in the show. And so, you know, like, the transaction's complete, they saw the scene, they've gotten the feeling from experiencing what they thought the scene was, then they watch it again after we talk about it, and they're like, hmm... Okay, you're right. Yeah, there's lots of bullshit in here, and I'm not getting the same emotional experience I was before. And that is like a fucking annoying experience for a lot of these people. Like you just stole you... that from me. That's the meme. It's like you've stolen yes. my emotions. Yeah, yeah. You're destroying you art. You stole it. You stole it from yourself because you realized something. Because you grew. Like, yeah, you you, if you 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 identified something that changes how you feel about the original. Just because you feel something, I that is so weird. The idea that you felt it at that moment, and that is like the valid, uh, the valid thing forever. Like that's it. You just that that's the final say on on what it meant to you. Maybe, just maybe, the reason why you look back at the things that you used to do and the things that you used to feel, and it makes you cringe and you feel ashamed of it, is because you've grown as a person. And you're better now than you used to be. Mm -hmm. Which is totally possible. And indeed, you probably ought to be cringing when you look back in the past. If you're not cringing, it means you haven't changed enough, I don't think. Yeah, if you, um, my behavior when I was a child or when I was growing up or when I was a dumb teenager is just as acceptable as my behavior now, and I see nothing wrong with what I did, ugh, don't know how many people can say that and it's a good thing. Yeah. Sorry, I'm I'm just rereading. Like, why do so many critics focus on script elements that don't work for them when film? Well, is a do we want to go? Well, through yeah, wait, 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 yeah. We'll, we'll, yeah. We'll, we'll, shall we? Shall we go through? We will. Piece? We will. Uh, I guess if there's anything else before we do that, I was just gonna say that I just love this image that it came right after his video because he not only does he use the word bad, but he's talking about a project that many people worked on. He's just like, ah, oh, bad. Like, yeah. Okay. Like thousands of people. So, like, I guess it's a really great way to start, because, like, no matter what you actually pulled from his comment here, it's... he doesn't believe in it. <laughs> so, if you thought it was, like, insightful, or if he was actually going to pay attention to it, it's like, no. Uh, there is a, a note where he's like, I'm still, you know, not quite great at doing it yet, and it's like, oh, as if he doesn't fucking know that he's doing this every single time he says anything is bad. Uh, and, yeah, I guess mm -hmm. the rest of the commentary will come when we, uh, we'll just go through it piece well, by he piece. Was well, even if he's right or wrong, he's certainly confident enough to say that something is bad. 
I think well, so. I yeah. So this is, the, I guess, the funny part about words. Uh, they would basically say, like, whenever I say good or bad, I mean I liked it and I didn't like it. However, in their scripts, they will often describe things that they liked and didn't like, and then they will describe something as this one, this is best, this is good, this is great. And it's like, sounds like you're making a difference there. What is it? And then they go, oh, it's just that I like it a lot. Well, that's what we asked Twin Perfect. How do you differentiate between the things that you think are better than others? Because we, we had to get there because yeah. good and bad don't work because he can't face reality. So we have to baby step our way to how do you just differentiate two things that, where you think one is better? Why is one better than the other? And it's just a question you refuse to answer because they know they can't. That, that's the forbidden zone. If I go down this path, I'll have to admit that I actually do have a standard maybe deep down that I just have been... It's like the, it's like my id, uh, like standards are that that monster inside of me, that feral part of myself that I have that I've grown past and I'm more sophisticated than it. And I and I can't actually address it because then everything crumbles after that. It's too foundational. Yeah. So I have to ignore it. I have to compartmentalize that into some part of my psyche as best as I can and train myself to not think about it. Hence why but you need to go head on. Hence why I've always yeah. felt that whether or not you even fucking uh, remotely agree with how we assess stuff, at least we've stayed consistent on what the words mean. Yeah. And actually understand what we're saying when we say it to you, whether or not you, yeah. you know, like the way we describe them, what words or whatever, it's like it's barely relevant compared to you understand exactly what we're saying. If, um, uh, I guess an example would be, wait, what the fuck was I even going to say? I don't know. No, no. Carry on. That was weird. I just, I well, like, literally just had a mental reset. I was, oof, that's weird. I suppose we can uh, we can get into it. Uh, um, let me use the loo real quick and top off my drink before we get into it. I'm right. probably going to need some uh, <laughs> cold juice down my throat. Yeah, and I know that's hard to read everybody, but that again is because he shoved it into a really quick part of the video in a really tidy writing. And mm. I don't know any other reason that he's just like, yeah, I want to say this, but I don't really want it to be a big thing. You but better. It's gonna be a big thing, buddy. Well, I mean, we've I've got so much to say about all of it. It's so horribly written. Yeah, it's gonna be great. I I I guess. Uh, Sneaky. You are not. It doesn't. This 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 is not. Uh yeah. Let's just we, we'll go through it. I need to take it piece by piece, because when I was listening to it halfway through, I'm like, ah, this is pretty standard. But then, once the second half started, I was actually getting annoyed. Well, it's funny because, like, the the overall vibe you get from messages like this are a sense of, um, please reduce the toxicity, but they're always very toxic. They always shove stuff in yeah. there that's very, like, <sighs> like goblin little Little things to sneak in, like, yeah, get ya, I'm gonna get ya. Yeah, um, I'm particularly interested in the part where he says, can we stop acting like it's a piece of meat to be judged? When he's praising things, it's like, do you know what you're doing when you praise something? You're judging it. Like a piece of meat. And what it... Uh, yeah. <laughs> How you doing, chat? <laughs> We're at five and a half hours, we've still got two and a half videos to go. Christ. <laughs> Man. I know, especially it always happens. the opening as well, being like, oh, how could you even do this for 11 hours, you weirdo? It's like, oh, I know, I know. It takes a level of uh, endurance, I guess. I like the thoughts that, damn, this is some good steak. What the fuck is wrong with you from, apparently, this guy? It's just like, well, that's, that's the realization. What he means to write here is, you're allowed to praise stuff, don't criticize it. That's the true part of it, but you know Which that no one... Which is a really frustrating one. Yeah, nobody wants to actually say that, because that sucks. It's like, wait, what do you mean? That just means we have to be dishonest now. And in, inherent in a praise is an implication of a criticism, as in the opposite equaling the opposite result, right? I think we went over this with the whole, like, I, I think this is really good because it is consistent with this other thing. And you're like, so it would have been bad if it was inconsistent? And then you just have to be silent. You're like, I, 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 I wouldn't comment either way on that. Nope. All I do is pray. I guess stuff. I've always, I don't know, I've always found it really annoying. I because I remember having this con like the the idea that if if you if you have a perspective that's positive, it's just that's good. But if you have a perspective that's negative, you're opinionated. It, despite the fact that both of them are opinions, but like having positive views on something, 
That's just totally fine. And you know what? Negativity is called for sometimes. I want to tell you, sometimes sometimes there are merits to actually having things to say that aren't positive. I think so too. And I think that it can be tough to get the kind of criticism you need um, because a lot of friends might not yeah. want to deliver it because they feel bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's just, you know. it's, it's, you can't expect, you can't expect to improve at any enterprise, including a creative one, if you're unwilling to accept that you can potentially fuck it up. I think, I think this idea that simply because you had an idea and that you expressed it means that you, it is impossible for you to have made any error at all is not the path to improvement for any person who does uh, anything like this, whether it means writing or art or cinematography or photography or acting. The idea that there is no <sighs> such thing as like good or bad acting, good or bad okay. artwork. There's a reason why, what, if there was no, if there was no good or bad, why would you even need to learn how to do it? <laughs> How could you ever improve? What is the difference between Quentin Tarantino and just somebody who got their phone and whipped it out and recorded something? What distinguishes the two? Because experience means nothing. It by like, this Shawshank logic, Redemption because... in the room, they're the same. They're yeah, just, the same. They're, they're yeah, yeah, good. but nobody. They're... No, that's the thing. Nobody accepts that. Once you start actually comparing the best with the worst, well, well they'll do is like, do. Yeah. They'll do the oh, exactly. Come on. Once you bring up the room or Hitler, everyone's opinions are just oh, uh oh, oh, oh what, uh, mm, they'll do mm. the thing though. They'll go oh, come on, oh, come on now. Yeah, as if oh, come on is an argument. <laughs> there are so many people who don't understand analogies. It really pisses me off. Analogies are so useful for figuring out what it is you actually think. And everybody gets Absolutely. really evasive and defensive anytime there's, well, oh, well, that's absurd. It's like, that's the point. Like, no, it's, it's not. It's not principle. absurd at all. I mean, well, they're the same. What do you mean? That's not absurd. I was going to say, yeah. the example of Shawshank versus The Room isn't absurd at all. It's like, yeah, the two oh, films are two stories. So get to yeah, it. Tell just, me tell me. two emotional the stories about loss and a group uh, of people just, behind. And, 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 yeah. You know, a man and his friends and, you know, justice. And I just, it's about family. It's about family. Oh, and, boy. All righty then. Um, I'm I'm fine Ugh. with either of you looking to read this out if you wanna. Uh, I fuck me. I can <laughs> hold on. Let me. I need to lean closer. I don't believe in bad, but uh, if it didn't work for you, that's totally cool. I don't actually have a picture of it that I can read. Oh, sorry. I'll get oh, that. oh, yeah. So it there says I don't believe in bad. I don't believe in bad. If I if it didn't work for you, that's totally cool. But what if it did work for someone? All right, so we're off to a bad start, I would say, because now yes. we've we've locked bad in to mean not enjoyed by anybody, which is what Just Right thought which it was. Which is not what it means. Yeah. Um, so, like I said, The Room and Hitler. <laughs> Those are the only two examples that you'll probably ever need, really. You could always fall back to The Room and Hitler. Yeah. It's great. You should try it at home. What if Hitler... Right, you just you just plug him, plug him in, plug him in the room in. What if it what what if it did work for someone? Well, what about all the stuff Hitler did that worked for him? What then? Well, that's absurd, rags. That's ridiculous. Well, can you explain why though? Because well, uh, what if a different guy? You know. Well, I, 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 yeah. I know what they would say. It wouldn't escape them, but it would get them to the next part of the argument. They would say, well, Hitler's a person, not like a, not like a piece of art. Hmm? They would say Hitler's oh, a... Oh, well, well, this would be like, oh, what if the things that Hitler did worked for him? Like, what if that was all right with him? What if, what if he got Again, a immense was, emotional so, resonance from that? This is the thing, you've got to skip him down the, the yellow brick road, because they're just going to be like, that's actions he took that I condemn morally. This is artwork. There's no, no one's being harmed with artwork. Well, he's talking about the creation of films. That's those are actions taken. Uh, yeah. Uh, that you have to. I'm trying to think of how they would even get around this. I I basically just want to skip it's them all like the way down to like entering into Bizarro World, isn't it? <laughs> don't believe in bad. It's such a silly thing to say. But um, the something working for someone. I, yeah, I would just be like, so what if they've highlighted something? Let, let's go to the extreme, right? What if they highlight something that didn't actually happen in it? What do you do with that? Like, well, that would never happen. It's like, no, I'm saying it did in this hypothetical. Someone, someone said, like, I really loved it. But fucking, what did Jared say? He loved it when uh, Ray killed Han Solo or something. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, if I said a movie that the, the Force Awakens was bad because Ray killed Han Solo, uh, well, 
What are you gonna like? Or I said uh, it was good because of that. What I guess you, you'd have you... to tell them that didn't happen. And if they said hypothetically, if that happened, then you just treat it like a hypothetical. And why that? In, but if that's something that they believed, you. I guess you'd have to convince them that that didn't happen. Well, I, I assume we're in the within the capacity to rewatch or use references, right? And then we'd be like, so it didn't yeah. happen. Now what? And um, if this was only ever about like. We've done this plenty of times. Someone's like, okay, well, everything you brought up I think is valid, but I still like it. It's like, all right. Whatever. Okay, so I am correct. That's all I need. Thank you. Like, as long as we're, we're all on board with the same references, it's like, yeah, that's fine yeah. then. If you, um, if you agree that I'm correct with everything that I've said and the implications you would think that you're also agreeing with, which I don't think so if you're saying that, but um, I mean, okay. Yeah, bad and good. But uh, if you're going to like it no matter what, that you're basically saying, I like it no matter what. And what? And, the, and if that's the case, how? what an immense devaluation of the things, of you liking things, of you liking media. Hell yeah. Media. Uh, you'd think that they would be... Like, what does that mean? ...structurally upon things of some kind. Um, but maybe they can argue uh, it was it was about the actors. It stars my, like, my brother in it or something, so I just love it because I love seeing my brother act. You're like, okay, um... That's like a different thing that you're. It's not really a story you're appreciating there, is it? It's like nothing to do with it, actually. Um, and at the same time, I just I always get amused by how we we have, everyone seems to assume that we all have the exact same definition of good and bad when that's like one of the few words in the English language that have like a laundry list of possible definitions. Yeah. And are used in all contexts all the time for all kinds of different things. And yet he's like, so it can't be bad if someone else liked it, which so many people say all the time. Seven billion people, someone's gonna like it. And yeah, of course, as you said with Hitler, there's just easily we we could we could we just have to figure out how he's defining this word with a couple of questions. That's all that would be, yeah. and then we'd be able to contradict it because it's not going to be hard. Let's contradict um, the last video we watched. So much assertions, and this is this, and that's that, and these are these. Like boom, that falls apart. Mm -hmm. Do you wanna continue, Ray, or what is that? Uh, or like with the, with this particular thing. I don't know what if you want to say anything about it or not. Well, it's just, it... You can react to a piece of content however you want. It's a different conversation. It's just unrelated. Like, yeah, you can feel whatever way you want, obviously, but that's not what we're talking about here. We're talking about the craft itself. Mm-hmm. just feel like that was obvious, but I guess not. <laughs> <laughs> like, that there is a difference. Well, I feel like this Obvious is a bit of an EFAP 101 maybe. stuff. We come back to this every once in a while. Yeah. Back to the basics of some of these people. So. Moving right All right, along. Uh, next one. Uh, when, what if a different audience member watched this and had a profound response to it? Is it still bad? Yeah, potentially, because the profound yeah. response could just depend on your life experiences and stuff, which is fine, but it's a different conversation. You could and, literally and have hallucinated. Well, what's funny is this is him trying to thoroughly explain his position. I'm like, all right, so I need you to define bad now because I need before I you you need to do that so that I can answer your question. Um, if we were swap out bad for inconsistent, the storytelling. What if they had a profound response to it? Is it still inconsistent? It's like, yeah, categorically, the, the, whether or not they find it profound wouldn't change that. Okay, but what if we had a prime response of it? Do you still consider it like an unethical product or something? I'd be like, uh, I assume Someone... I came to that conclusion irrelevant of whether or not they found it profound. So yes. Um, and so apparently he made that. So. Yeah, but he would disown it now. But he'll keep it up because it's his most popular video. Um, He's such a hypocrite. So, <laughs> it's so yeah. hard to keep track of his fucking positions. Um, and again, like if if someone's if someone experienced something profound. Well, uh, I was gonna whatever my third one means. Yeah, go go ahead. Go so ahead. my third one was gonna be, is it? Uh, if bad is defined as nobody had a profound response to it, would it still be bad if someone had a profound response to it? It's like, well, then it wouldn't be bad because that's how you've defined that word. Which feels to me yeah. how he's done this. He's baked bad into meaning the thing that isn't possible and so stop saying it. And it's like, yeah, that's your problem, buddy. You've not really paid attention to what we even mean when we say bad. Yeah, then, then all we have to do is just change our word. We could literally make up a word for it on the spot if we need to um because we're we're getting yeah you know, this is just a term thing hmm. hey. anyway um 
why do so many critics only focus on script elements that don't work for them when film is a visual medium because the script is the story at like its most yes. fundamental level also all the visuals are the, the script is they that's what it, it's the vision what you, you that's you seeing the script is that's the right. visuals I tweeted about this the other day yeah. like for some reason these people think that when a character is like walking somewhere or pulling a lever shooting stuff it's like that's visuals that's not writing it's like of course it's visuals it is writing uh, sorry, of course that's visuals yeah. and writing. Visuals and writing are not these separate entities. It's not dichotomous. Like, the writing is everything that happens. That is the right. The writing is the story at its fundamental level. It's like this... Because, I mean, you always boil it back, right? Like, the just a person telling a story to somebody else is, like, fundamental writing, even though they haven't written it down. But then it's like, book. That's, like, the most fundamental... Yeah, that's why Any we call story... it that is because you write it all down. Yeah, because it's, 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 it's yeah, you it wrote sticks. it down. It's yeah. like anything could be turned into like a book or the actual words written down on a piece of paper. And then like anything that you add on to that is like, it's e expanding upon the fundamental idea that like whatever the story is, it is a bunch of words that are just on the page or like that somebody came up with and wrote down somewhere. Yeah, it's yeah, just a catch-all word for every, you know, sort of idea. And then, of course, the uh, good old visual storytelling. Um, a, I'm going to give a lesser example, and then a more like it, 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 we stray further or further away from like a concrete. So, if um, you have a story of a guy who's uh, struggling to deal with the fact that he's much older than he was, like we we, we were tooling around with the idea for like a superhero that would do that, right? That could be a cool superhero story. He's really really old, and there's loads of examples. Of other people have done it and stuff. I was just saying like you have that nowhere in the script. Is a scene that happens, but they came up with it on set and they decided to keep it in the edit where there's just a scene transition. He's getting up and it was supposed to be that he gets up and goes into the kitchen or whatever, but he gets up and he, he's he got a mirror and he just, the camera's zooming slowly out, panning out, and, and he's just staring at it. And then we cut to him in the kitchen. And someone's like, see, you're not really considering that because you only talk about the writing. And we're like, oh, that's part of the writing. I'd be talking about that. Yeah, that's yeah. something he did. That was an action he took. That was something we were shown. Yeah. And then... If they were able to finally concede on that, if we had, for example, I'm not referencing anything specific here, but if somebody's brain was falling apart, and at one <gasps> part in the actual movie itself, there's a character who is drinking tea, and they drop their mug, and it smashes across the floor, and they're tearing up as they try and collect all of the pieces, if someone said, you can't judge that, because that's more metaphorical, it's not writing, they'd be like, what are you talking about? <laughs> of course you can fucking how did, they, how that did the actress figure out that she was supposed to do that? If, this was a woman. if it was a man, how would you know? It's like, how, like, so how do they know to do these things? I mean, and and then, so so I'm already baffled by like they think so much is left out if you're only and they they this the weird the poisonous words like you only talk about plot. Can you stop using that? It makes it sound like we only talk about whether or not the correct amount of bullets were in a fucking gun. That's it's like it goes so far beyond just that. Yeah. Naturally. Oh, boy. Uh, composition, lighting, movement, rhythm, color, and a thousand more visual elements are used to give you a feeling um, to elicit an emotion. Yeah, but how... Yeah, but like... <laughs> that, 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 the writing is like the one inextricable element. Like, that's the one that you can't not have. You can have a scene that has like no, like that's pitch black, and if characters are talking, it still functions as a story. But like if it's just nothing at all, the writing is the one element that you can't do without. That's why books are a thing that can exist. It's just writing. It is just writing, and there is still a story. You remove yeah. the visuals, it becomes like a radio yeah, thing. You, don't you need remove visuals. the audio, it becomes a book. Yeah, you don't. You can need tell stories to blind people. Yep. Yep, you can tell stories to deaf people. And so, uh, when we start stripping it away, and he's like, well, you take these one by one, he's like, composition. I'm like, so be specific. And he's like, oh, well, so how they frame the camera in these hallways to make it look really narrow and the characters in the center to sort of imply like the world is coming in on them or like a claustrophobia. I'd be like, you can talk about that in writing. You wouldn't have to necessarily say that that's strictly composition and non writing. I don't oh, know why yeah, you said this. Again, it, it's metaphor, like, you representative. You can achieve each of the payoffs in different ways. Yeah, and and it's the same with like audio cues because I mean a lot of a lot of like what the because writing can achieve this as well through tapping into, for lack of a better word, the kinesthetic aspects of like the human experience because you got audible and visual, yeah. but like books tend to have to use words to 
get into to to like transmit the feeling that they want you to have into your yeah head. the information in has to get into your brain somehow yeah in a subconscious way so like you can write it in a way that makes people get goosebumps or makes people sort of like oh shit something's ramping up and makes their heart race and all of that is again it comes down to any story could be translated into a like a book and if you and if that's the case like it can be translated into words that is the one that's it like that's the that's the the core of it and that's not to undermine any of the other elements of like filmmaking or visual like in terms of music or uh like cinematographers or anything like that those are all important it's just the idea that like at the fundamental level there is the story that is written down somewhere even if it's just in someone's head it's still written down Yes, right. Think of writing in, in a not not like necessarily ink on pages. No, yeah, it's yeah more abstract. that's right. It's for lack of it's, a better term, writing. It's um, it's it's the ability that humans have to craft a concept or craft some sort of sequence. The the abstract thoughts that you have that create a sequence of events. So the, the one I'm super interested in is is lighting specifically, right? So. You have a character mm. at a bar, and they they sort of move forward to speak to a character, and they've got light on one side of their face, and the other side is shadow, and this is a person that can't quite be trusted. They lie, they backstab, and you're like, ah, I see. However, if you have something like that, and then High Top is like, oh man, I just, oh, that feels, it just looks so good. And you're like, what about it? Like, what, what, what are you sort of picking up from it that you really enjoy? And he goes, no, I just, I just like the way that it's lit. We're like, okay. So that's shallow as fuck <laughs> like that's fine yeah it's like okay yeah whoever did that did a yeah sure. don't uh don't mistake me right if you were like wow so it's just shallow to like a visual now i'd be like i mean kind of like there's plenty kind of stuff of, i like the way yeah. that it looks and i'll say that i just go yeah i just like the way that it looks um doesn't necessarily make well, me think of anything had a lot of really good reasons and and, 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 and i don't yeah. think that should be something we should be upset about or something like uh, uh a shot of a sunset could be just a shot of a set. It's like, yeah, it's pretty really gorgeous. You're like, yeah, all right. But in a particular movie, yeah. at a particular point or storyline, you'd be like, no, 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 this represents. And then you go on for a while about why it's so important and impactful. Um, and I, yeah, I would just argue, it's like, oh yeah, you know, that's that's a much more thorough reasoning, which is what people would do for the uh, the the binary sunset with the uh, Luke at TLJ. But the counters would be the story, you know. You'd be like, yes, this visual is. It's like it's like your emotions. Like maybe that thing is not earned. And I think it can happen that um, you feel a certain way about something, someone gives you a reason why that might be, and if that is the only one you have, you're just be like, yeah, you know what, this is the reason. And, and the reason I bring that up is that someone is like, oh, I love that binary sunset, and it turns out the whole, the whole reason is just it looks nice. It's like, I really like the look of it, I really like the composition of it. And someone else says, oh, it's because then they just label all this shit that happens in the story, and that person goes, that is the reason I like it, yeah. And then someone else goes, none of that made any sense, all that's incongruent, they, they omitted so many things and they made up some things. They'll just be like, eh, fuck you, I, I like the sunset, shut up. <laughs> and it's like, calm down, you can still like it, I didn't do anything to you yeah, liking you it. Yeah, like it. Yeah, we're not talking about whether or not you like it, though. No, like, but like, different. it just gets attached. The way that you like different things might be, like, weighed differently. Naturally. You know, like, the way that I... A... Mm. Yeah, it, go ahead. The, the, the way that I appreciate the... Let's say the story and the characters and the prestige... Not everything has to be on the same... Like, I, I could look... For, you go outside, oh, that's a pretty leaf. Mm -hmm. You know, you go outside, oh, it's a pretty leaf. Right, I don't like that in the same way that I I like or that I value a very tight script. Yeah, or well, something think, very uh, very meaningful. I, I think it's 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 kind of funny now that I think about it. It's almost ironically arrogant to assume that like the way that you personally respond to something is worth more than somebody trying to do it in a clinical way. Well, not clinical, but trying to do it in a way analytical that is, reasons yeah analytical i think is better because i'm thinking now like why is it that wally is my favorite pixar movie it's like well i actually think it's the best but i think wally has advantages that other films don't because i really like space so when i see him flying around in space it's a great sequence but like it's enhanced more for me because i personally just like space and that's not really worth anything on its own 
Like if I were just to say that, that doesn't really mean anything. Like it's more I like informative space. about you than the film. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, that that's kind of what I'm getting at. Is if if I made a video where I was just talking about that, I would need to do better than just saying I like space. So seeing space makes this good or makes it meaningful to me. In the same way that um, you look at that, like I like snow settings. I like those settings. So it wouldn't mean anything yeah, that if a story great. was was yeah. But if a story was set in like that area and it just appeals to me more, that doesn't mean anything. That shouldn't necessarily mean anything to anybody else. Why would I yes. assume that it would mean anything to anybody else just because I personally like it? And and that's different than if you said, I like this sequence in Wally because I like space and zero gravity and the that that's the, whatever it is you like about space that you could nail down if you could because you don't know why you like or dislike everything you like or dislike. Mm -hmm. um, but theoretically saying, I like this sequence in Wally because I just really like space stuff. That would be different than saying, I like this conversation that these two characters have because of, and you give a reason that's just incorrect. Or I like this plot element because remember last scene where he pulled that lever and that's that's that when that didn't happen or that was incorrect or it's just you're not remembering it. Explaining why you like two different things, not necessarily on the same level, especially if they're just objectively wrong. And I think I think the reason why I, I brought that up is because I read ahead to the next sentence and it's me thinking about how sometimes you it's it's that the person who made the work might not have been able to even comprehend that you would respond to something in such a way because it's just based on your personal experience and that's mm -hmm. great and that's like one of the really that's that's a really cool thing about storytelling and art in general is the idea that it can hit you in ways that doesn't necessarily hit other people because of your life experience or your values like that's great but you follow up to the next sentence where it's when we don't feel the intended feeling, we too often consider it bad. I think it's important to make a distinction, and this is something I've been thinking about because I think I want to talk about it maybe in a video. Like, suspension of disbelief is not, it's not like something that when you enter into a story, there is an understanding that it's like not real or that it's, well, yeah. that it's not a real thing that happened. But you enter into that story almost like there's an almost unspoken agreement between the person who made the story and the person entering into it of i am going to treat this as legitimate for lack of a better word like i am going to approach this with the understanding that that if that that it can affect me in a way that something that isn't real logically shouldn't because it's doing something well uh in terms of you know hitting all the beats and that and then it's you go into it and you give it kind of the benefit of the doubt is kind of what suspension of disbelief is in, in, in a certain sense. And there's only so many times that it can contradict what you understand to be the way that reality works, that it's like, oh, it's broken. It's done. Like I, it's collapsed. It's, it's I don't know over. About, I don't know about calling it reality. Um like I mean, like cause and effect. That's kind of what I mean. Like you're yeah, understanding in that, of yeah, the way in that, that sense. That, yeah. Um, I don't, I don't like mean reality in the sense of yeah, so I, I don't yeah, mean I things like you. um like that there are spaceships or magic because you can buy into that if that's all consistent. I mean, the idea that you can even understand what's happening by understanding that internally we can coherent. only yeah internally coherent in the way that it makes sense. A connects to B connects to C, and you can deal with some of those snaps, but there's only so many until it's like oh I just can't take this seriously anymore. Like it's over. It's broken. Yeah, it's it's utterly collapsed. It's now into bad. It failed at what it was meant to do. And I, yeah, it's what's key about that would be they tell us something is something, and they tell us something is also not something. Well, now I, I'm stuck. I can't. I can't have both. You have yeah. to tell me which one it is. Yeah, you can. You can only play along, which is essentially what it's, suspension yes. of disbelief yeah. is. Yeah, I'm going like to play that. along. Yeah. Right. We we're like agreeing that. that I'm going to play along with your, uh, with, with your fictional whatever it is or with your account because the story is an account of a series of events um so yeah it, eventually that breaks you know it, now where where that is is different for different people um i should hope that outright contradictions affect everyone i would hope that clearly it doesn't i wish that it sort of did in a way to, to bolster you um, quickly the reason why I would want people to value it is because the value they got in the first place was coherency, right? Like things building on each other. If they value that process, mm -hmm. then surely they devalue the process of it breaking. Surely. You have to. It's just, it's dichotomous, kind of.
and that's yeah because you don't you don't value everything the same and there's mm-hmm. reasons no. for that you might not know them and you're not ob- and you're not obligated to know them but it would probably be helpful if you did like there's a lot of things it in especially because we were talking about earlier you know a beautiful sunset or da 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 that's just that's just really pretty for a lot of people and i mm-hmm. i don't know why it is it just seems to be the case that it is and similar things seem to also be very appealing visually but that i couldn't tell you ton. why yeah i mean there's there is a reason in my brain why it works but i i don't know well, beauty oh, is complicated because remember any, anything that we because there is no such thing as beautiful like in in the universe like the universe just is like yeah when beauty you is a value we imbue on things yeah yeah and it kind of applies to like the way that we approach but story story stories are a lot more a bit complicated because it's store the the idea of a story is like a human concept like story is kind of what you impose on just a sequence of events. And yeah, a story requires under- an agent. Yeah, it's not, there's not a, yeah. they do, stories don't exist without minds. Yeah, exactly. And so, and so it's, and it's, and it applies the same way. And like, well, well, the creation the of them, we, not just to be clear, yeah, the, yeah. the creation of stories. Yeah, if we all yeah. died, books would still exist. Books yeah. would still exist, but their meaning ceases to exist without people. But it's just the yeah. whole idea that the way that we understand the universe to be is that it's cause and effect. Like, we don't operate the way that we do without cause and effect. The idea that this can cause that, that there is past, present, and future. And so a story needs that because if it doesn't, again, it's like Bob went to the shops. He didn't have legs. He, uh, Bob walked to the shop. He didn't have legs. He got the food, the end. It's like there is something there that just doesn't, that story need- doesn't function anymore. I have questions, yes. I, have, I, yeah. I require, yeah, I... <laughs> I have questions about your tale, yeah. As um, opposed to Bob went walked to the shops. He had legs. He bought some food. <laughs> it's like ah, you you can see that. Like you can see that story happening. I just like that. Just like um, needed to let you know he had legs. You're like I figured, but okay. <laughs> <laughs> what it there what is, is it was um, a short story uh, called Knock, um, and I think the it's like the shortest it's generally regarded as how do you how can you tell a, sh- a super short story which is the last man on earth sat alone in his room there was a knock on the door and that is that's that's like that's it's it's two sentences it's super short you don't have all the information you need clearly is it delusional is there something out there is you don't need it doesn't have to be complex and you don't have to have all the information and there, there's just there's so much you could do with it as well with just just even that as a premise we're we're, we're talking about we're having big things. i feel I like all of this would we're be lost on high top i think well, too, but you need this you need this. yeah this is like your base this is what we're all talking about here is like as well because i can picture someone being like oh my god get on with us like, like you don't understand this is all of the like foundational stuff before this is what we're all working with this is all like the gears behind all of the the statements we make in terms of this is the unspoken yeah uh underlying truths almost you know that you just have to have and to his mistake. and it's not complicated either it, it really isn't no. complicated you just have to Think about it. Think about it. Which you normally don't yeah. have to ever do. You never have to think about it because generally, for most people, stories are just presented to them and they're full packaging, and so you don't have to look at the ingredients label. But it helps to. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it helps of, to think it, yeah. about it. The mistake he's made as well, right? So he's got like, when we don't feel the intended feeling, we too often consider it bad. I think this is even almost an echo of the Wonder Woman eighty four stuff. So the the artist intended for it to be cute that they slept together as a thing they managed to come back, and that's going to inform how sad it is that they have to you know, split apart. The director incompetently forgot that that was not the his body that he was inhabiting. So if you can understand that, then understand that the feeling you should be having is like one of you know kind of like ah oh, yay sort of joy. You shouldn't be having horror. And so just because you felt horror does not then make it bad. And I would just be fascinated. I'd just be like, Hi Top, how far can we push this before you, even you would crack? Like, how mu- what can I do in a film while claiming that I want... This all relies on fucking third-party testimony in terms of what the yeah. story is, by the way. Which well, is all that, is... 
that's how we, I mean, that's, I mean, we don't have access to absolute truth, capital T, but, you know, justified true belief is a thing that we could hopefully agree upon as interlocutors in this conversation. But the other, and if you can't do that with someone, then just don't even fucking have a conversation yeah. with them. They just don't, don't waste your time. You ain't getting anywhere. But like, first of all, obviously death of the author, which he would absolutely subscribe to. There's no fucking, like, I, I can't believe we met. Yeah. Twin perfect. I stand by what I said to him when he first said it. I was like, you don't believe that. Nobody does. I'm sorry. You don't. <laughs> like, nobody would. Which is why he refused to go down any of those pathways. Yeah. He knew. Um, he was He was just smart enough to know that mm -mm, we cannot, mm. we can't go there. Because I know um, where this might lead. The other way he's it kind of fucked us up <laughs> is that he thinks that I'm like, oh man, Falcon Winter Soldier, I don't, oh, Wonder Woman 84. I don't like this because I didn't get the intended feeling and I'm like, oh, I wasn't even talking about my feelings. I was just talking about how incongruent it is with itself. That's it. Like, that's my intention. I try. Obviously, I involve my um, personal feelings here and there. Like, I do consider it morally reprehensible to rape somebody. I'm a bit weird like that. I know that a lot of people don't share that sentiment, but that's fine. You know, everyone's different. I just think that right. when focusing on inconsistencies and delivering them, would be like, yep, this story is just... Uh, failing to do the one fucking thing a story's supposed to do. And he's like, well, that's just how you feel. They're like... Well, no. Like, how it makes me feel emotionally, I haven't even told you about that yet. I might very much enjoy it. We bring this back up all the fucking time, but, like, there's so many movies that are just nonsense that I love. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's one of those, that's why, like, one of the, the most core foundational aspects of EFAP is your subjective enjoyment of something pretty much come from anywhere, regardless of whether it's good or not, as, as it applies to, you know, an objective well, standard. And you might think a hard bullet to bite on this one would be, um, well then, of course, Mauler, Rags, Fringy, you would advocate, you should be a gunning for cause and effect then, so we'll never have movies like a Batman and Robin, or, or, or a maybe Mortal Kombat, or Godzilla vs. Kong, where they're really just nonsense, stupid, crazy things can happen. And I would just be like, well, no, it's more so you can tell with each, uh, project you're making, right? Like, um, if you're making a Falcon and the Winter Soldier type, and, you, and you, you're not gunning for, like, absolute... You, you're trying to make a coherent A to B story. If you're trying to make us laugh through the lack of A to B coherent storytelling, we'll probably be able to detect that from the movie. We're going to be pretty fucking obvious, because it's going to be, like, a more than likely a comedy. Um, yeah. Also, this assumes we're going to get to a perfect world. Yeah, uh, well, the, the interesting thing is, if, if I was on set for, for, like, a comedy that was absurdist, and they were like, right, we can have it so that... You know, he he packed his uh, his hairdryer instead of his gun because he's an incompetent detective. And then we're going to have it so that he fires it and a bullet actually comes out and kills somebody. Uh, does that make sense? And I'd be like, well, no, but that sounds kind of funny. <laughs> like, so I don't know, I wouldn't be against putting it in. I'd have to see how it looks, I guess. But so I was like, wow, that betrays all the thing about storytelling, right? It's like, well, it's trying to commit humor. So if we're talking about something as serious as like race issues, like political will, geopolitical upheaval and... um. Like, moral advice and stuff, it's like, yes, you better be getting pretty fucking close to cause and effect at this point, otherwise, yeah, this is all just gonna fall apart, there's no, there's nothing it rests on. Um, but everyone's emotional reactions are gonna be different, even with the, the we've we talked about, like, the perfectly coherent film, and the entirely incoherent film. It doesn't mean everyone's gonna react to both of those according to that. It's just, we're talking about The same foundation. person can have contradictory viewpoints over time like they yep. can, like you can forget like what happened this would be useful for death of the author stuff what if someone makes something and they tell you what it's made of or what it's about a bunch of time goes by they forget what they meant by it and so they make another claim about what it's about and it's different this time it's not they weren't lying they just forgot and they're in they are now in like they've become they have Maybe this is, in an odd way, a sort of quasi-blessing. But they have become legitimately the audience, and they have forgotten what they, you know, sort of did. I mean, what then? I mean, wh which of their feelings was, you know, are they both true, even though they can't coexist? Or what? how, do, how does that get resolved? How, do, how does a, what about a hallucination? How, when someone feels something about a thing but they hallucinated a scene from the film, or they what misremember it. Just unreliable memory, Come yeah. To just disagree with you yourself. You're like, ah, you know what, I was wrong in the past. This is what I actually think now. 
Well, that's always yeah, the funny one because they'll make like a huge emotional video, and then a year later they're like, actually, it doesn't really work for me anymore. I'm just like, but but <laughs> so we. we so which take is the take? They're like they're both correct, but it's like but they use different reasoning. It's like the contradictive reasoning. They're like, yeah, well, deal with it, motherfucker. <laughs> like, okay. Well, as we're about to see in sentence number. Oh well, yeah. one more thing I, I want to say was somebody said yeah, like you ahead. still wouldn't want to discount the emotional aspect, as in like we've been over this before, but you know the chair in the room story. If anybody made it and said, hey, you three, can you judge the like cause and effect of it? And if we concluded it was absolutely sound, I would then be like. You do get no one's gonna like this, right? No one's gonna give a shit. It's a chair in a room. There might be one guy who writes a review about how it means like all these different things, but like you might want to have characters, you might want to have things happen. And okay. someone said, wait, 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 so you're saying I have to have things happen to have my story? It's like, no, uh, but I mean, <laughs> well actually I'm not even sure it, it would we, we would have stuck it into the weeds of exactly what it means to be a story, but you probably get what I mean. Something very quick and mundane. Um, we wouldn't recommend it, even though it would be sound, because that's not like the only component of trying to appeal to someone's emotions, because that's a completely different fucking topic. The classics of have a dog and then have it die, or have a, you know, like a, a family member perish in some horrible accident when they were younger, you know, just all the standard ways, we all, we all are very aware of how to manipulate audiences, or, if you properly justify it with writing, it wouldn't mean, I wouldn't call it manipulative. Um... I guess that's where like the hero's journey and stuff like that comes into it. Loads of writing advice for standard sort of story structures, which is also important if you want to make people like your story instead of just telling whatever you wanted to tell. But my god, you need it to fucking make sense. And I think what we see a lot of the times in we see it a lot of times with everything basically with the videos we cover on EFAP. For people, people constantly go into, you're looking too deep into the plot, you're looking too deep into the story, don't think about it, not everything has to make sense, not everything has to be da, 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 plot, 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 but constantly on our EFAP videos that we watch and respond to, people are, that, TLJ is a perfect example, TLJ is a fucking apex example, uh, whether it's the Luke arc, whether it's the space chase, whether it's any any element of the plot that doesn't make any sense defenders of that film would try and make sense of it they would try and make it work they would come even if it required them because this happens all the time they invent scenes that don't happen mm -hmm. or they uh, try and just create details that aren't there um they will try and make sense out of things because deep down they want things to make sense yeah. yeah. Even if it's wrong, <laughs> even if they have to make stuff up, it needs to make sense. Well, uh, they uh, even believe deep down that if it doesn't make sense, that's not good. Quick example would be, uh, he loves that Falcon had money troubles. If we had him here, I'd be like, what do you mean by that? Well, that, that he couldn't afford certain things, and it was giving him trouble based on having a lack of money. And then we could just keep poking until we find out the mechanics, and then the mechanics won't be lining up with how it works in the world, and then he'll have to admit, yeah, okay, it doesn't make a lot of sense, but I like that he has money troubles, and then we've exposed how shallow it is. It's literally just that there's money problems. <laughs> yes. It's just, just a poor... So, it just... Him be being poor. poor. Be poor. <laughs> yeah, you be poor. Which, to be honest, any of you out there that loved his takes on Spider-Man, because Spider-Man needs to be poor, I just want you to realize that's how shallow it is. Like, it has nothing to do with yeah. the story. Yeah. He just needs to be Abandon poor. Abandon it. Yeah. Give it up. Y'all need to You're get a grip, stop. man. Give it up. <laughs> get out of your better Give than up. that. Yeah. Um, the, the next sentence is, I used, to, I used to use bad a lot, and I'm totally guilty of still using it too much, but when it comes to art, someone's form of expression, a wonderful collaboration of people who put their souls into their work, can we stop acting like it's a place uh, of peace. a piece of meat to be judged? Well, I mean, you are going to judge it on some level, whether or not you think yeah. you are. I, I have a feeling, hypocritical... even with that being said, well, you're probably going to say that the Holocaust wasn't that great. Oh, well, I, again, I they're like, just going to want to reference actual art, level, though, like, um, not a... <laughs> They're going to be pissed you if you reference it. Trailer, when you watch a trailer and go, eh, you're judging it. Like, yeah, congratulations. Well, when you I, watch... I, this video. Yeah. It's a literal video where this is from. He's judging it. Yeah, you're judging it. Just favorably. But you don't understand that judge is a neutral word. Judgment is neutral. It is not positive or negative. Yep. Nor and, is uh, criticism. Uh, I suppose it's, it's interesting to think about, like, 
to be judged like a piece of meat, there's a bit of connotation there, like it's um, yeah. you're reducing it down from what it may have been. I just be like, is that only when we criticize it? Is that kind of what he's getting at there? Not that when we praise it, because when you praise it, it's no longer a piece of meat. It's like a it's it's a wonderful sculpted piece of meat I on guess. a pedestal. Yeah. Um, very That's odd commentary wrong. from him because uh, inherent in any praise is going to be an assumption of what would have been critical. Uh, an example, I guess, of this would be life drawing, right? If someone drew an incredible looking eye and nose and then their mouth was just a squiggly line and uh, <laughs> the teacher was like, okay, so the eye is incredible because not only does it match like the proportions and the shading, but like I can barely tell that it's not actually real in front of me. And they go, what about the mouth? And you go, oh. could use um, some work. Yeah, well, no, in his you world, you don't want to judge it like a piece of meat for it. You just go, yeah, I, I got nothing oh, to say about it. And then you yeah. go, wait, but you said that the eye was good because of how well it, like, reflects real life. So would that work for the mouth? And you're like, I, I wouldn't know. I wouldn't want to say. The high stop is that dude. He's that guy that Rick, uh, that Morty had to listen to his screen play. And, you know, he's like, do you have any thoughts? Anything? It's like, no, it, it was good. That's my note. Yep. All right, please yep. write more. <laughs> like, that's what you want. You just want him. And then as soon as he says, like, seems a little insincere, and he's like, oh, you know what? That three weeks ahead teaser thing, we probably don't need it. It's like, I, look, I opened up and you took a giant shit on it. You're taking <laughs> it out on me. You're a petty person. You're insecure. <laughs> Your grandson is a shitty person. Leave now. And it's so, like all of these things. when he says something like, it's really good that they made them more real by giving them more like real life person sort of uh, problems to deal with, I would then be like, oh, it would be bad if they had like fake problems to deal with. Is that what you're suggesting? You know, he he wouldn't be able to answer any of these questions because he doesn't want to go into the realm of bad. He's just like, no, 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 no. I, I just, no, they're real. They're real. Shut up. <laughs> I don't have to deal with talking about why things are bad, even though he will totally make a video about how Spider-Man 3 is terrible because Peter's not poor. Yeah, because, you know, it's it's a product, even though John Watts and all of his team put their heart into it and worked really hard. Well, yeah, we... we they all worked really we hard. just had the example care. of him shitting on, um... Uh... uh I guess he was shitting on Endgame? Oh. Yeah, a bit. And that was, like, a lot of... And shitting on Hulk in uh, yeah. several movies that's many 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 thousands of people's work well imagine all the work that went into animating him and yeah just yeah wow you know careful concept artists the animators the texture people all of those people the rendering careful the people high top set, set up all the tech. and you know and you know the people who talk this kind of game they will drop that shit like a sack of i'm trying to i i needed a maliform like a <laughs> sack of Potatoes. No, you can. Drop. Um, <laughs> they they will they will abandon that idea once you start bringing up politics. Oh well. yeah. Well, I was about oh. to say um mm. they'll abandon it with adaptation, mm. but they don't abandon it with specific continuity. Which is funny because the... adaptation is more bullshit. Exactly. Like, it's than, further than further me. away, and they they feel like it's more relevant compared to the actual like. You know, man walks, and then he just falls into a pile of sludge, and then he's walking again. You're like, well, that seems inconsistent. It's like, he was a pile of sludge in the comics, and he's a man in the adaptation. That's worse. You're like, that's worse? Like, what? Yeah, it's like, worse? What are you talking about, worse? <sighs> it's a um, hard world the, to keep the... track of this shit. <laughs> the next sentence is, I read too many comments. I see too many other artists on this platform that ridicule and mock those who artists does he always call them artists why are we mocking those who share what they are uh, their love well we're sharing our love we're passionately yeah expressing our yeah, love for criticism there yeah, so much cross -wise he here. specifically said he called other artists on this platform so talk about a such an efficient way to undermine like your entire bitch fest you're doing right here mm -hmm. we're artists thanks for ridiculing so, yeah, and this, mocking you, us. you can't touch us bitch well, you can't. You <laughs> actually can't. This is the great part is because, like, this is... It, art is such a... It's it's not, like, it's not... Ugh, the word's kind of been tainted, Broad. but, like, anything that is creative expression is art. So EFAP is... Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely it is. It, it is art. It is. Because it's a craft. Criticism and is a craft artists. in and of itself. Well, yeah, we're entertainers. Yes. We're uh, analysts. Or like writers. We... What do you mean criticism? Yeah. Did someone say that in chat? Hmm? Did someone? Oh, I was just saying that criticism. Oh, okay. Because I was about to say, I would have been very disappointed. No, I'm saying that. Cri <laughs> yeah, criticism is absolutely, absolutely, like, it is presenting, presenting, speaking, figuring out what you think, and explaining it in a way that people understand and enjoy. Being funny, being humorous, trying to be expedient. <laughs> all of this is like, it's, it's, 
it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, it's, but we regularly put more thought into the script and the writing than the writers of the thing did. It's just, yeah, it, there is there is effort. There is a lot of effort that goes into... And so he's presenting. not allowed... Well, you know, maybe that he's being consistent. He didn't name us, so he's not necessarily going sure. after us, all right? Not necessarily. We're, we're a protected but class. Anybody, we're artists. But this can't well, apply he to anybody, say, right? Yeah, well, he wouldn't... There, If, if you... you Asked him about it, he would never say that another YouTuber isn't an artist. He would never uh, say I, that he because he now can't. he can't get away with it. No. Yeah, he he he's he's in a he is in a a, a situation where it either way is bad. If he says that they are artists, then we're untouchable now. If he says we're not artists, he is declaring that thing a, a thing cannot be art, and it which is not. Which he would never do that. <laughs> yes, which he would yeah. never do either. He does have the so balls for he's that. fucked. Oh uh, yeah. Uh, not to yeah. mention um the the sentiment in isolation. Just think about this. Why are we mocking those who share their love? Um, feel like you don't believe you don't that. Don't actually believe that. <laughs> yeah. Once <laughs> you again. Don't, you don't believe. Um, what, well, I guess an easy one, again, we go to extremes to prove these points quickly. What if someone loves cuties? Are we not gonna mock them for that? Like, the, the, uh, maybe mock isn't even the right word, just being incredibly critical and probably involving some harsh uh, language, maybe, here and there, yeah. you know? Like I said, once politics comes out, they will abandon this point in a heartbeat. I like Trump. I like this political party. I like this policy. I like this amendment. I like this or the other thing. I like this. Da 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 da. da. They, they're not going to have this. Oh, everything's no. great and well, everything's fine. Attitude with that shit. They would argue though that to have those positions. Well, High Top literally tweeted out if you're a Trump supporter, you're racist, right? Or did Brown Table or both of them? I can't remember. Oh, they're they're both uh, fucking dumb. Like it could have been either. It could have been. Yeah, either. that could have yeah. been fucking both of them. Um. So I mean, it, but hey, that's a form of expression. That yeah, is, you well, know, stuff like look at expression. And... Absolutely, yeah. is yeah. You, yeah. Well, it's <laughs> all or nothing. We kind of thing. it's all or nothing. Yeah, we're kind of addressing how these things fundamentally are just not things he believes. But again, I almost give him some breathing room. Some like I don't know that he's learned this yet. Like these are things <laughs> that he thinks and feels. There's no but pressure he's... to learn any of it. Well, he's never gone to axioms. He's never thought about how these things spread into other subjects and topics. Like how could this? Fucking bite me in the ass when applied to other things. Instead, he'll like and, and, the most generic one is I think good should be legal and I think bad should be illegal. That's my position. And then everyone claps and you're like, man, that is just flawless. You are incredible. Yeah, it's it's do better. It's the do better speech. Hence why he thinks it's so world. profound. Does that not light up because completely? I think if you watch that speech and think it's profound, like that's that's it's, it's you are a simpleton. <laughs> Well, yes. yeah, it's, you are it's an just, absolute fucking simpleton. Thank you for telling me how little you understand about the way that the world works. Like that is very helpful for me. But it's just like it's important, guys. Like in general, to really interrogate the reason why you believe the things that you do. Like on everything, figure it out, whittle it down to its base. And of course, when it comes to like movie analysis, it's it's one thing. But like I would say, in general, you should just do this with any position that you have. You need to be able to like interrogate it from every perspective to figure out where your principles bend, where there are holes that you need to fill, or uh, whether or not you even need to change your perspective fundamentally and reconcile why you feel the way that you feel and whether or not that's even like valid. Because the reality is that like sticking to your principles sometimes means d denying the emotional feeling that you have in favor of something that you know is better reasoned. So next up, <laughs> yeah. Next next line is there is nothing that comes from spewing hate, which you don't. You definitely don't believe that. Which I and yeah I, hitting... yeah I don't. Well, agree and with that. and would you not agree as well? We've entered into when he uses the word spewing, it feels like when a narrator is very objective yeah. and then suddenly says these people are evil. You're like, wait a minute. <laughs> like, yeah, literally, spewing. all Trump supporters are racist. Is like, well, oh well. That's not helpful. This came across more fundamental, and now he's like spewing hate, and you're like. Wait a minute. 
Like, uh, right, yeah. You were describing it as hate too. Like, I just, oh, this suddenly got very. Uh, that's a uh, that's my form yeah. of expression you're talking about yeah, there. Yeah, yeah. As, as he says, there is nothing that comes from spewing hate and then hiding that hate behind quote unquote critique. I'm still learning this lesson. It's fun being a dick and roasting something. Uh, but there is always people behind the writing you read, the videos you watch, your art you consume. It, you, it's, yes, that's yeah, true. That's true. Think about it, high top. Think about it. Think about it. There are always people it's, behind the delivery of artistic works. Yes, such as there this. are always people behind the people who are spewing hate and hiding it behind criticism because it it's not spewed by like the air. It's not spewed by a tree. <laughs> Think about it, high top. It's it's just worth and no it's, and and no artist and no uh, fuck I, it's so small that I can't even tell. <laughs> I know, I know. There. And no artist has ever set out to make something that gets called bad by idiots like myself on YouTube. Now I like that because it feels like he's trying to cloak the insult directed to other people by saying no, it's like me. I'm so no, it's me. me. This is a self critique. Yeah, it's about myself. me. It's not yeah. about other people. Well, oh, no, no, dude, it's, no. it's um, I don't know if there's a word for it, but it's it's cloaking a um a a compliment to yourself in a criticism. So an example would be. Bring operates in a particular way every single day of his life. I meet him and go, I also have made that mistake. I don't anymore, but I used to. Yeah. You're like, hmm. Yeah, it's like a it's like a backhanded compliment in a way. Um Well, uh, uh I think just right said to a uh, uh, me and Wolf that um he used to look at art the way we do when he was younger. <laughs> it's like Oh yeah, thanks, then buddy. He fucking degraded into well, it, it, the the thing that amuses me about it isn't like oh that was just a bare face. It, it's like do you not even register that that was an insult? Are you that stupid? Like you just said something incredibly condescending, or do you think he's you got away with it? Past insult. I think he thinks he got away with it that we didn't even notice. <laughs> it's like Haha, that was quite witty of me if I say so myself. What is the final sentence here? If you somehow read all this, thank you. Thank you for watching Smiley Face. Oh, oh yeah. Cute. If you that, somehow nice. read this, it's like, but it, <laughs> why did it, you, you can do clearly it read way? it. It's just the effort why of just zooming in. Well, I, I don't, I find it more frustrating than that, because like, this was, you know, look at it, it's all floompy. It's like, why the hell did you make it so hard to read for, like, the average person? Like, the, the, if you just look at the, because, yeah. like, not everybody's going to even want to do it. You know what? Honestly, that's a little ableist to make it so small that nobody can read that. And I'm I'm kind of not even bullshitting. Like, it's a little bit fucked to make it so small. Yeah, do some your... people do, can't read it. Yeah, do they not deserve to hear this? And if you believe it, why would you make it so difficult to read? Why Why would you say if you actually manage to, you know, what? Why? Who's what supposed to see this message? What if I couldn't actually manage to read it? Do you not thank me if I was if I was literally <laughs> incapable of reading it because like, it was so small? That's the meme for this. Yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, that's the meme. <laughs> Good old community. Oh god, we are not going to get all four of these done. <laughs> hey, well, you know what? That was like a detour back to High Top's video because I all saw right. someone say there's no need to read this because he basically just reads it out going forward. So if he does, we'll be able to mostly skip over this. Um, oh, boy. let's have a look. Dude screaming about how bad this. Oh, you know what? I actually want to rewind that a bit as well. The bit before, I don't think we got to address this. We'll never. Let a black man Not that be kept in America. Yeah, and you're done. gonna have Hang a on. bunch of middle-aged dudes screaming oh, about how boy. bad this kind of writing is. So, what's wrong dudes? with middle-aged dudes? This is yeah, another thing they, they, middle -aged. they you know, fuck like, up growing all the time. Not a choice. Oh, I guess you could kill yourself when you I love them, the but... idea that if you get old, you're not allowed to like Star Wars or something anymore. <laughs> like, well, so, so yeah. this is something that... And if you were born white male? Oh, Jesus Christ. We had that when, the we, when we showed the tweets. There was, uh, it said something like, uh, there was, like, oh, a bunch of straight white boys. It's like, oof. So what you just did was racist uh -oh. and sexist. Well, and racist sexist. and sexist and uh, it's pretty bigoted. Yeah, and I mean, it's inaccurate, I mean, which is the fun part as well. Here, uh... Uh, what is what is the idea here? Like, oh, if you're middle aged, it's like, what, uh, you're not allowed to talk about art when you're middle. -aged. Like, what the fuck is no, wrong with you? you? You should be building a table like Gavin McKenzie. <laughs> <laughs> God, it's so annoying to listen to. It's like, you don't understand, you're just committed to the same bigotry that you're supposed to be against, you moron. It's okay when we do it. There are acceptable the targets. 
that, man. It ain't about that. It ain't about their opinions or mine. What the fuck do we matter? It's about this. Then why are you making what, this video? What no. do you mean, why the don't fuck do we this. matter? Don't make I think I matter. Then. Yeah. Fuck and, you. Why, well, yeah, why, the, you don't even know why you matter. Uh, this is the, how, how else do you respond to it? It was like, speak for yourself, pal. <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah. I think I'm alright. I think I'm alright as well. I feel like I think I, matters, sorry yeah. if I think I have some worth. Um, so, Just, yeah. having having a youth inspired by the shield, uh, this is one of them things that I honestly think will be in a checkbox. To be like, in your show, make sure you have a moment where, like, a child, preferably black considering the subject matter, uh, puts his hand, like, on the shield in some way and feels, like, inspired. Make sure you have that. Shocked it then... wasn't a little girl considering Marvel. Did they do the? They didn't do this in One Division, did they? they didn't, there was no real opportunity to have like a, you're inspired uh, by Wanda because she's a psychopath throughout. Yeah, but remember, we we mm. might have that in like Hawkeye or, or Miss Marvel. In fact, yeah. almost certainly in that almost show. Almost definitely. Yeah. Um, well, you know, I like guess um, Loki, maybe not. Uh, to me, I would just be like, uh, he's like, oh, see, this is about this, and like. This is a very standard sort of thing to have in. I I, I already think yeah, about like concept, Iron Man yeah. two. You have the uh, the kid looking at Iron Man with an Iron Man mask on, and he's like, you could argue that's totally inspirational sort of thing. Um, Cap's movies are filled with him. He's literally used as propaganda for uh, inspiration for men to go to war and be encouraged and stuff. I just I guess he would probably want to get out. It's like, well, no. Uh, remember when Black Panther came out? They were like, oh, black people finally have a hero. And it was like, what the fuck? Yeah, which is so <laughs> fucking bizarre. Like, I can't relate to this. I just can't. It's, I was never looking at Batman like, oh, well, he's white. He, he ain't like me. I can't be Batman. Like, there was ne uh And I mean, you even see it with Spider-Man, right? Isn't, like, one of the main appeals of Spider-Man is that anybody could be Spider-Man? Yep. Yeah, and also like yeah. Martin Luther King, Rosa Feels Parks, Alexandre Dumas, like eh, there's so many. <laughs> and the like, we tried. I've said before, like I'd say it again. Like, growing up with uh, with Buffy Ripley and Sarah Connor being some of my like all time favorite heroes. Like, but they're women though. Well, it's like, oh no. For me, I I'd go even further. My like some of my favorite characters when I was a kid was like Ratchet and Clank, a fucking space cat and a robot. <laughs> It doesn't matter because they're characters. Crash Bandicoot. Well, he's barely Wally. a character, but you know he's going on yeah, an man. adventure. Uh, Mario, Yoshi. Yoshi is like a fake, weird dinosaur thing. But like Yoshi, hit, his adventures hit me in the feels more than Falcon and Winter Soldier. Fuck Falcon oh, and Winter Soldier. Oh, I was watching Power Rangers. like, I don't care if the yellow ranger and the pink ranger are girls. They're kicking butt. Well, too. yeah, like, that's oh. right. Like the Power Rangers was super diverse always. I, I just, I, as a kid, I just never thought to even think about this sort of thing, you know? It's, I, I pine for those more innocent times before <laughs> these fucking people tainted everything. And also, it's so weird because, hold on, I need to, I need to figure that, like, Sam was Captain America for a while, wasn't he? Like, in the comics, it wasn't even a recent thing. Uh, as Captain America, oh, 2014, all right, so it was super recent, all right. Super pretty recent, that. yeah. Yeah, but yeah, I mean, everyone's but, bringing Falcon, up Milan, so like but it, Falcon's yeah. been around since 1969. Luke Cage was made in like the 70s. Black Panther, I'm pretty sure, was made around the same time as Spider Man. Like these characters have always existed. Just because you didn't know who they were, doesn't mean that they didn't well, exist. It's, it's yeah. crazy because Blade is kind of like the one that Blade. really helped push um, superhero movies forward. It, it, like it directly leads to X-Men it directly leads to the Raimi Spider-Man and it's just funny to me because it's like the first one the very foundational one is a black superhero and then you fast forward 30 years and they're like and finally one, a right? black Didn't superhero that time? <laughs> superheroes can be black and we're like yes what? <laughs> why, why, why? that was not a shock but alright <laughs> and also Spawn came out in 1997 what the ah uh, yeah all right <laughs> whatever <laughs> yeah. blade got marvel out of debt uh apparently i don't know if that's true but yeah oh, marvel was in super big debt in the late 90s um yeah that was the reason why they licensed so much of their stuff out to different like yep. to fox and sony and now they're they collecting them money. back because they finally yeah won. yeah Whereas DC's I don't wanna... always been part of like Warner Brothers for a long time, which makes it all the more baffling that it was Marvel with half of their biggest characters like not under their control built this universe. A lot of people are just. I mean, is like Spider-Man's right existence in like where who owns Spider-Man at this point is kind of. So, 
Spider-Man is like, Marvel owns Spider-Man, but Sony owns the rights to the Spider-Man films. Um, that's what they own. They own the right to Spider-Man films and like any associated characters. Honest, so Venom, Spider-Gwen, yeah. like... The most yeah. important element of Spider-Man right now is his ability to be in films. <laughs> it's like, God damn it! Yeah, basically. Well, that's the big thing is like money now making. I mean, money making. But Spider Man, that's it. But Sony ain't letting him go. No. They are gonna. They're keeping Spider Man. Sony, they need. They need Spider Man. Yep. They kind of do like, for if, their big budget. Dude, I have piece. to imagine um, that he's making them shit tons, and they don't. It's it's the MCU that's making them the money. It's Sony are in a good yeah, position I right now to bargain. Of, I bet a lot of people watched Venom and assumed it was part of the MCU. And, like, they don't even know that it's kind of not, maybe. Not an unreasonable assumption. No. Especially <laughs> nowadays. Especially where now. you're like, I... Uh. And honestly, I think part of the reason why Aquaman made so much money is because people, like, unironically thought it was a Marvel movie. Like, I'm, I'm kind of not... I legitimately wouldn't be surprised if a lot of people watched it and like, oh, it's Marvel, right? Like, comics? Superheroes? You know? By the way, um, this image, I feel like it, this is how far it goes to the high top. If I just had a, a story that was nonsense, sounds and chairs and explosions, blah, 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 then it cuts to this, and then it cuts back to explosions, nonsense, people running around, like teleporters and stuff, I'd just be like, it, it, is that meaningful? You'd probably be like, hmm, and yeah, I guess, kind of, hmm, maybe, hmm. I'd just I don't be like, know, whatever, po whatever point he wants to make here still stands if the content was also good. Like the idea of being inspired by it. If it was also good, you don't lose that. So this oh, argument yeah. is, is like yeah. moot. It's not even relevant. Um, well, yeah, because it's not just inspiration in and of itself. I mean, of course, Hitler Youth. Because we can always go back to the room in Hitler. It's like, so it's the, it's not just kids being inspired. That you know that that's the that's the thing here we're gunning for. It's what they're inspired by. And, and why. to take it to real life, uh, if a kid was really inspired by Blade. And I say kid, I don't know, 13 year old. I want to make it a little bit more like it's R rated. Uh, so if a kid was inspired by it, and then we watch it and we're like, oh wow, this is really bad, which it might be, by the way, I haven't seen Blade in ages, but I already know I'm going to enjoy very specific parts of it being his like catchphrases, the uh, the style, yeah. like all black and uh, using all of the, the weapons in such harsh ways, just destroying vampires. Like, yeah, I'm going to have fun with that, whether or not it's bad. And if someone said I was inspired by it, but I realize it's bad, I'd be like, you can still be inspired. Like, yeah, of course. It wouldn't take away from it at all. You could be inspired by something really horrible to do something really good. This comes in with, like, um, a kid who is abused by their parents might be an abusive parent or might be so far away from an abusive parent because of the experience that they're, like, you know, not at all and they, they work really hard to be a golden sort of parent. You could translate that to is a movie that's really horrible for its values and you watch it and you're like, wow, this is so fucking horrible that I'm I'm gonna do the opposite of these things. I was inspired by this horrible movie. Like, it could happen. This yeah. shit's all over the place. Blade Trinity EFAP movie is gonna be legendary. We'll we'll get there at some point. I'm sure of it. Let's press on. It's about a young kid seeing this. It's about a young kid seeing himself as someone who could be Captain America, and it's about earning that. It's they didn't earn it. So when I was a kid, it shouldn't oh, sorry, I did play as well. When I was a kid, I uh, I kind of related to like any sort of person who I liked, mm -hmm. regardless of what they looked like, regardless of even if they were even a human being. Like, well, like I mean, if finding gonna... Nemo is about fish. And, like, there's relatability in that, and fucking Monsters, Inc. You do wonder monsters. how far this should be pushed. It's like, so, we're saying now that skin color is very important to being able to, to like, be inspired and stuff. It's like, so what about, like, facial hair? Or what glasses? What about eye color? Yeah, what about, what about hair? What, what if, about height? You know, like, V from V for Vendetta? People find him, like, thoroughly inspiring. He's like, you don't even know what he looks like. Or at least you don't. Uh, most of the time, they, you do yeah. see him burnt at one point, but well, yeah, it's, it's just really interesting to me. That it's like, uh, thank God they finally have a, a someone to look to for this. And I was like, what are you talking? Why is it? And then he says they earn it. It's like they don't earn this. They don't earn this at all. Falcon's a horrible person throughout this season. Like, uh, there's only a few instances of him doing things that I would like celebrate. A lot of it is very just frustrating to watch. be Captain America and it's about earning that. It's not as simple and it shouldn't be as simple as being handed a shield. It should Yes, be... it should. It no, it should. <laughs> In an ideal world, it should. That's the point. Oh. oh. 
<laughs> You're making me angry. He's done it You're backwards, me... by the way. So it was like you earn the shield being provided to you is like the superfluous sort of surface level event. The important thing is you've earned the the role, your character. Like that's the important bit. And you know, Falcon at this point, I was more than happy to say that yeah, yeah, he's a really good person and that he could fulfill the role of Captain America. Sure. I wanted yeah. to be Bucky. I thought there was a more, way more interesting story there. But it's not like you can't make it work with Falcon. Um yeah, of course and being like can. passing the shield is this huge deal. It should be treated it's just like, well, hang the fuck on. Like what are you implying? The point was well, that he's whole... he's worthy to hold that shield as far as everyone's concerned because of his character. That's the important bit. Yeah, that the, the the idea is that what Steve did was like the ideal way that it should be. It's like you're a good man, Sam. Here you go. You you've earned this by virtue of who you are, not what you are, or more so that what you are shouldn't even be like it's not it's not it's not it's not an important aspect of you, the way that you look. Like that's not. Oh, I know, right? It, it feels shouldn't so backwards. be. Ideally, it shouldn't be. That's. I thought that was the whole point. I thought that's. Um. <laughs> oh, feels like we're going backwards. Feels like we're going backwards. And out discovering what it means to be Captain America. Every character. Uh, you just fucking invent what it means to be Captain America. It's like it means that you're the representative of a racist country, sort of thing. It's like that, that, that feels that feels weird. Symbolic of what it means to be America. It's like whoa. When. Do what are you talking about? Captain America, like, on the surface was a role provided by the government that gives you the rank, I think, of Captain. I wasn't actually sure. I'd have to rewatch the first movie. Um, but it's like a propaganda role. He's a, he's like, oh, there he is, Captain America, much like Uncle Sam. Like, oh, he's a, he's a character that's pro-war and tries to encourage the troops and stuff. It evolves into matching basically the values of Steve Rogers, who is one of the most quintessential good people ever, if you ignore the fuck-ups we have in the latest content. Um, and so anybody taking that role would probably have to emulate at least close to uh, his values and his, like, operation, if you will. And I've always was like, yeah, there's a lot of people that could earn that. Um, tying it to all this weird shit in this show that was never a part of its storyline in the MCU is the part where it's just nah. like, okay. Because he, he believes it to be true because he was told it. What if I just tell a story where I'm just like, no, the shield has nothing to do with America. It's in exclusively to do with like honesty, protection, and freedom, and doing the right thing. That's it. Yeah. That's all it's about. And I have like, I have Falcon uh, say in my story that he regrets uh, tying it to like a race thing, and that as Isaiah was entirely wrong, and that he's really glad that he's learned that. You know. When he was younger, he used to think it was all about race. I have that story. Can you imagine what everyone would say about it? Be like, what the fuck? And you wouldn't have High Top just agree with it because that's what it said. It's just so inconsistent. Yep. Character in the Falcon, the Winter Soldier, is compared to the idea of Captain America to Steve Rogers. John and Lamar are what the government wants Captain America to be. They have. Oh, good. What, a good person? <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Uh, great idea you got there, government. The with the program attitude and the physical aptitude to be a great symbol of change and a symbol of America. By the way, when he had great oh, and showed him ooh. getting attacked by Falcon and would just, please remember the context of that scene. Yeah, he said, hey guys, get attention. We need that shield back. Oh, this is what that's about, huh? And then, of course, the fact that Bucky was talking about earlier, let's take it from him. Yep. You just want to take it. You don't want to do this. Yeah, we do. It's like that. You should not want to do this. That's well, really bad. This is what I mean. It's so incompetent. You had Falcon say maybe he should have destroyed the shield, and you have Bucky saying we need to steal it from him. And then you show the scene where they try and take it from him after his best friend has been killed, and he, try he saved their lives. Like, who is the bad guy? Yeah. Pretty clear. If you look at the references... Isaiah Bradley is the sickening and terrifying truth of what the USA soon as the serum worked on Steve Rogers. It's taking someone those in power view as disposable and experimenting on them with hopes that they will be America's next super soldier. Steve never appears physically, but I would say America's desperate attempt to recreate him to live up to the legend is the true villain of the story. And our um, um.
the tr the true villain of the story is the terrorists who kill innocent people. <laughs> That's who I think the That's true the villains real are villain too. Of the story. Um, I'm so lost. He's like the true villain is wanting someone who lives up to Steve Rogers to take over the role of Captain America. He's like, well, no, that's a good thing. That's just a straight up good yeah. thing. I guess his logic is that it's an impossibility. Like that's what his claim is. It's impossible because that's not what America is. I think is what he's trying to say. But it's, that's just not true. There's so many people that can fill the role. But that's not part of the role. show. I would also say like, that fucking really. the show would combat that idea too. Yeah. Because Falcon takes over and he's earned it or whatever. Yeah, Falcon becomes Captain America anyway. True villain, my ass. Kali. Our heroes have to f fight America's Captain America. They have to. No, they have to they attack don't have to and fight steal him. They from chose him. To. Yeah. They chose to. They See stole I mean? his shield. He doesn't watch shit. He's just told what's happened. That's it. This, this lines up perfectly with Wonder Woman 84. He was told what happened, he didn't watch it. Yeah. He, he was... believes they had to to attack Walker. They had to. There is Even no though, argument he... here, by the way. If someone was like, well, you gotta take the shield off him, he's dangerous with it. It's like, he has a fucking gun. Like, what, why do you think the shield is the thing that makes him dangerous? You have wings, and he felt it was dangerous, so he took them off. <laughs> 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 yeah. <laughs> Oh, it's so funny. It's like, I wish to take your shield from you because I believe you to be dangerous. I will kill you to take it. You're like, wow, that sounds pretty dangerous. <laughs> like, I think I might have to deal yeah. with you. God damn. Fight what he wants them to be in order to become what they need to be. Ugh. Bucky has fought- That's like one of the most cliche things you can say in a video essay. Yeah. It's not about what yeah. they want, it's about what they need. It's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like the fundamental yeah, storytelling like, yeah, advice. Yeah, I see- you read a book on writing. I'm very proud of you. <laughs> Excellent job. For everyone else his entire life, he has been the world's killing machine. That metal arm no, is more than a tool. No, he was Hydra's killing machine. The Hydra, world's killing not machine? the world. Yeah, why would he even say that? <sighs> It's a physical representation of the violence and brutality that has defined the bulk of his life. And it's only after he beats America's soldier that he can let go of the Winter Soldier. Bullshit. Him beating what? him up oh, has like nothing to do with anything. He just wants the shield, then he drops it. He wants the shield because he hates this guy. He even like has Four. to- oh, He's so wrong. You're just inventing so shit. his logic is that- I I feel like or I feel like he's working really hard to justify his personal political perspective. Yeah. Like that's what he's doing. He's finding ways to twist everything to be interpreted as a statement on uh on like the dark side of America as a as a country. <laughs> he just pulled that out of his fucking ass. To remind everybody yeah. of the narrative, Bucky beats the shit out of him with Falcon. He picks up the shield, then drops it, and seems to abandon Falcon, but then he's in the next room. Falcon goes and talks to him, or wherever they are. And then he's like, you gonna go get Zemo? And he's like, yeah. Then he goes and gets Zemo, because that's just something that he could do on call, I guess. And then that scene happens, and then he comes back, and he's like, you know what? I'm sorry. I didn't realize what it meant to give you the shield. It's like, there is nothing to do with, like, defeating America's soldier. What are you talking about? That's not something yeah, Bucky ever not... even considers. I don't even know how much Walker even factors into Winter Soldier's arc. The only all. thing that he says is, uh, it's not your fault what happened to Walker, when it is, like, 100%, but, you know. Yeah. <laughs> like, that's the only line they throw in. Like, you've invented- And I like- <sighs> Someone in chat just said, yet they still say Captain America and the Winter Soldier. It's yep. like, yeah. They didn't trust you yeah. guys were smart enough to understand if they it said White said Wolf. White Wolf. It should have. We've talked about that, right? Like, they were going to, but they decided yeah, not have. to because people wouldn't understand <laughs> it. That <sighs> is the most definitive information of how smart they think you are, okay? Like, they, oh, they think they man, can fucking so play with you. Like, you're so stupid, you can't even remember. The, 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 he literally Sorry, he explicitly that. says White Wolf, and it's like, oh, well, you can't have him put that on the screen. That'd be too confusing. These poor five-year-olds can't even tell which colors are which. And the amount of work Hi Tom and other people do to improve the writing... When it's just not even there. <laughs> hey Rags, did you know that it's only nope. after Bucky defeats America's soldier that he comes to terms with his relationship to the Winter Soldier? What? Does that sound like something that happens in the show? Because I fucking don't recognize it at all. Wait, in this show? Yes. When Bucky <laughs> defeats... Captain America, he, he 
Im- he learns about his relationship. To well, you know being what? The... I need to go pee, so I'm going to roll it back so you can watch bits of what you missed there, and then uh, you guys can better. you guys can talk about it until I'm back. I won't be long. Okay. Let me. Uh, I'll I'll hit play. Higher life. He in the world's killing machine. That metal arm is more than a tool. It's a physical representation of the violence and brutality that has defined the bulk of his life. And it's only no, after he not. beats America's soldier that he can let go of the Winter Soldier. So we already have a lot of things uh, wrong there, which we yeah. talked about. Oof. Um, Oof. One of the first things was he's the world's killing machine. He's not. He was Hydra's killing machine, specifically. Not the world. He's known all over the world, or at least he should be. Yeah. yeah. Well, he doesn't advance the interests of other people in the world. It's Hydra's, yeah, it's Hydra's interests. Interest. And Hydra wants to take over the world. Yeah. And then, you know, talk about he has to beat America's soldiers to become, to not be the Winter Soldier anymore. It's like, you invented that. That, you met, that's your, that's your yeah, thing you're that just you came wrong. with. Well, do you think that was part of it? Like, do you think that in that scene, what was happening? Was that uh, that by beating Winter Soldier, uh, by beating uh, Captain America, he was like shedding his Winter Soldier identity? No, not at <laughs> yeah, all. I know, right? Like, what? Well, how would that even like make sense thematically or metaphorically? I, I don't even no know how idea. that was. Yeah, um, I got no clue. Yeah, well, I. I have a theory that he just invented it because this is the point he wanted to make. Like, this was his point. He wants to make this point, and it's clearly being warped by his political perspective. Uh, yeah, I... I got nothing. I have no... I Like, even <laughs> if I was trying to be him, I don't know... I don't yeah, know what know, he's right? trying to say if I was in his perspective. Even I, just giving it a moment to think, I just uh... <laughs> like it's really struggling. Like over over, this is such this is really quint. <sighs> High top is like fascinating, honestly. <laughs> like every time you just something new, a new way to argue a really dumb point. Hello. Hi. How do you do with it? All right, let's press on. Oh wait a sec! I, don't, I was wondering what did I miss? I didn't. I wasn't listening. Oh, we were just covering the same the same thing. Oh yeah, I was just like, feed. "You okay, Rags? Did you survive it? Are you right?" I made it. I I, I feel like I'm just desensitized <laughs> to it at this point. Well, <laughs> what I was gonna say is, um, and this is kind of just indicative of the problem with High Top. If I watched the show and went, "Oh man, I love your interpretation of the whole like he defeated." America's soldier, and that's what helps him separate from the Winter Soldier, I'd be like, well, what I thought happened, see, was that the Winter Soldier's more of, like, a specter, and it haunts him, and that's why he, like, you know, sees yeah. it in visions and stuff. But, and he's like, oh, yeah, yeah, and I go, you know, like a literal a ghost, he sees. If you watch some of the scenes, some of the looks he makes, I think he sees, like, the Winter Soldier, like a spooky ghost. So, he decided that the Winter Soldier should possess, um... Like, well, what happens is that Winter Soldier ghost, he can't possess Bucky anymore. That's what it was happening when you do those words. It's like a possession thing. So he possesses um, Walker, right? And then that, that's what happens in that scene. Walker goes nuts. He's insane. He just attacks them for no reason at all. And so he defeats him and kills the Winter Soldier Spectre spirit by defeating Walker's... Like, when you break an arm, I think it's in some kind of, like, ancient prophecy or, or, or book or, or religion or whatever, where um, if you break the arm of a person that's possessed, it kind of kills the ghost. Like the Spectre, and so you kind of killed the Winter Soldier when he broke his arm. You know, you, you know what I mean? I think Hytop would be like, okay, okay, I can kind of, yeah, I can kind of see where you're coming from, and I, it's really cool that you got that from that. And I would just be sitting there like, you fucking serious? <laughs> just making this shit up, like, what do you mean? The haunting of Winter Soldier. The haunting of Winter Soldier. I... And I just think that you can essentially just draw together bits and pieces of nonsense, and he would probably be like, yeah, yeah, beautiful, beautiful interpretation. Doesn't actually have to match anything. Why didn't you use the metal? Oh shit! Hang on. Let go of the Winter Soldier. Why didn't you use the metal arm? Well, I don't always think of it immediately. I'm right-handed. He can use that arm to save a people. Opportunity, but all right. Even. <laughs> 
just doesn't make sense anyway. Like, it doesn't even like mean anything. Like it's not. It's is it supposed to be a joke? I thought it was supposed to be a joke. High top is like, well, he put his arm on Steve once, his right hand. You're like, okay. Why would you wish? <laughs> <laughs> Well, he can take control. He can choose to let that metal arm that has dragged him down lift. It's never dragged him down. It's never dragged <laughs> him down. It's like quite the opposite. I'd holy say. fuck, man! Like that metal arm is insane. It's awesome. I would be thoroughly I would thankful. I want that metal arm. Yeah, yeah. it's it's, a, yeah, it's a that incredible. Like quite the asset. So, I know you want to be like he's going to use it to build himself back up or whatever the fuck you're about to say, but it never dragged him down. So this isn't going to work. Those around him up. Oh, the pauses. <laughs> it dragged him down, yeah, he's very... using it to hold those around him up. Nicely done, High Top, except doesn't apply. It's literally a tool. It was never something that brought him down or rose him yeah. up. In fact, it would have been pretty cool if people spotted him as the disgusting and horrible assassin from Hydra Winter Soldier by the arm, but that never happens because people don't like recognize him at all for no reason. And then, you know, of course, by the end of the show, people start to recognize him. No, he's he's the White Wolf. He's a hero. He's a part of the Avengers. He's That's not right. a soldier, but nah. We didn't have time for Bucky. Good. Just Steve would have wanted for his brother. Because oh, that's the thing, right? Steve abandoned him. Don't even go there. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so, I'm so cynical about this. It's like, you're ignoring everything, High Top. You're ignoring everything to make a fucking flowery speech. It's annoying as hell. America misses the point of Captain America. They miss the point of Steve Rogers. Sorry, who's they, if you were referring to America? Yeah, who is who's they? they? But include you. <laughs> Did you miss the point of Captain America? No, he didn't miss the point. He understands it clearly. Oh, okay. Steve's gift wasn't his physical strength. It wasn't anything that came from the serum. It was not his ability to be a perfect soldier, but was his ability to no matter what be a, a good man. Yeah, like Walker. Not like Falcon, though. Just want to make sure that we were clear on that. Yeah, know? fuck that guy. Yeah. Well, he's right. I agree with High Top. Walker earned the mantle, and Falcon stole it from him. Mm -hmm. And Walker's such a good man that he <laughs> allows that. Like, yeah, you, you, go, yeah. you go play with a little Captain America outfit. That's not what it means to be Captain America, though. Genuinely, you can totally... Inter I, I'd say that the, the text supports the interpretation that the villain, or one of the villainous characters, stole the outfit, stole the look, while the character that earned it is, like, allowing it to happen, because that's not what it means to be Captain America. That's right. That's, like, the, one of the most honest interpretations of what fucking happens if you pay attention to what everyone does. Be like Walker. <laughs> no matter how many times- I like that quite a bit in Cap 1. Oh yeah, I mean, Cap 1 is, is really sound. It's- it's- I- I feel like that's a- honestly, I think having rewatched that, I'd say it's like probably a 7. Like a solid 7. It's just good movie. Well, it's what the it's MCU used to do. It used to have a moral fiber and it used to be very character focused. That was its goal and it, yes. it sent it really far forward, but now- We've forgotten what a moral fiber is. <laughs> we're getting real yeah, tough on that is, one. We're long gone from that. Times he got knocked down. No matter how many times he was told he was wrong by the government, by his friends, no matter how many times he lost someone he loved, he always got back up. I know this all day. Yeah, uh, no, he, he didn't always... because he ran away. He abandoned Spucky. He went home. He hang out with Peggy. I swear to God, so if he, he plays the bit. clip where she says "stay down" and Falcon says "no." Oh, please don't. Uh, so it's, like, it's simultaneously, Walker did all the things that he just said, by the way. Yeah, he got up when the government and the world was telling him that he was wrong. This is what I mean. He, he, it is, with, yeah. he did the right thing. It is so wonderful because like, they, you can use all of their weapons as, as a video essayist to prove the point they would never want you to prove. They'd be like, no, 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 no. Walker is not the good guy. How dare you? He always did what he believed was right. He always remained a kind, good-hearted, and caring Music. hero. Who All always right. remained that good man. And so... Why Don't is show this clip. Happen? Don't yeah. show that clip. Don't, yeah. <laughs> also... Uh, hi top. The music now is so much louder than you've ever had any of your tracks. Like, it's a bit distracting, gonna say it. Just, hmm. just, just, just chill out there, okay? Because I know you want it to come in, and this is like the... 
I mean, if you look at the timeline, this is probably as big crescendo for the emotional part of the video, so that's why it's so loud. But yeah. I just it's just pulling me out. I go, it's pulling me out of your video, buddy. I don't want that to happen. So invest. It's pulling me what? out of the, the video Dang like it. when uh, Falcon pulled that guy out and threw him into the <laughs> rock and didn't care. That's how it's pulling me out of this video. Well, see, as he said earlier, it's about violence, and we need to stop the violence, okay? <laughs> Except the ones that are stubbed by the good guys. Except That's for fine. those guys, they all deserve to die. <laughs> <laughs> if I wasn't willing to stand up and keep fighting. Yeah, there oh, you go. he did show the clip. Sam Wilson has become the icon that Steve created through his heroism and through his selflessness. He stole the icon. Yeah, that's what he Walker. Meant. He stole the icon. Just want to make sure we're the, using the right words yeah. here. Falcon stole it. And Sam has evolved that icon for a modern age while honoring- Oh, God. It's the thing he said in the beginning of episode one, if you remember. He said we need a new yeah. hero to suit the modern age or whatever. Good God. Well, I mean, that what... was obviously what the show yeah. thought their point was. Good. Can you imagine thinking, like, oh, God, with everything Falcon does, it's like, that's what it means to be a modern hero? Be like, fuck that. I'm going back to the Stone Age to get as far away from this as possible. Its original America was always supposed to be the hope, the dream of what America can be and what a hero should be. Someone who questions the system while trying to change it through compassion. Someone who has empathy for those who are struggling, those compassion. who have been wrong. No, he says it's just empathy for those who are struggling and showed Kali. No. 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 She's a murderous, evil terrorist. I just, I want to Look, replace- Look, Red Skull was just struggling, all right? I was, he was about just to say- struggling to reconcile. I want to replace the visuals <laughs> with he's walking into the room and sees Red Skull with his little pistol. It's like, you, look, Red yeah. Skull's struggling, man. He just doesn't quite yeah, get it. Struggling. The he's music's depressed. in the background, yeah. <laughs> Nobody else is red. Nobody else understands what it's like being red and not having a nose. We just, we just need that scene where Red Skull's like, look, I know what's best for the world. I know what needs to happen to make the world the best way it can be, okay? My methods may be questionable. I might incinerate a few people, sure, but and look, ultimately Rumlo I'm just struggling. Was, it was the same with Rumlo. He was struggling with the fact that his face got destroyed by Cap. And he, was wanna, just, he was having a hard time. wanted to highlight, you guys really think Walker was more deserving of the shield than Sam? Y'all are in the wrong. I have news for you, my friend. <laughs> got some... <laughs> Falcon so, is a horrible like, it's fucking not person. Even fucking close. Not yeah, even Falcon's close. not a. Uh, mm. Unfortunately, he is no longer mm. a good person. This and that is this show's fault. Just pay attention to the show, and you'll have all the answers you need. It's not hard at all. Oof. And hey, I didn't write the show. I didn't fucking film it. Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. not my we, fault. I'm just, I'm just reporting on what the the event seemed to be. I'm just, uh, just the messenger, letting you know what happened. Mm hmm. Captain. America is doing the right thing. He's the idea of getting back up no matter how far you've fallen. Okay, you've yeah, said like all this Walker. already. You keep saying this. Like, <laughs> I know. Like, Walker did that. He's the idea that we can grow. The only power I have is that I believe we can do better. It's not a power. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's so weak. Fucking... I don't even... Is there anybody who believes, like, doesn't share this sentiment in the world? Like, oh, we could. I a, doubt that there are many people like, we should do worse. You know? <laughs> we can do worse. We yeah. should do worse. <laughs> and indeed, we should, yeah. I'm Let's trying to think some of some expectations. Like, what's a more generic fucking thing to have a superhero say in their final speech about what should happen next? It's like, do better. Jesus Christ. It's such. It's just. They, he was so proud when he wrote all that. And I'm like, but it's yeah. so just worthless. Mm hmm. <sighs> and Sam in America. The strength of Falcon and Winter Soldier, my favorite thing about Falcon and Winter Soldier is how it took the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, Sam and Bucky, two characters that were defined by Steve Rogers, and what? finally allowed no. them to define themselves. Oh, oof. That was Don't. your mistake. Yeah. That you yeah, allowed them um... to be defined by... Because I didn't define Falcon by the fact that he was, like... Um, I give I give room for Falcon, but certainly not Bucky. Um, not Winter Soldier, no. Bucky expresses so much like self doubt and concern. Like he's such a he is such a character. He's not dependent mm -hmm. on Steve. Steve is someone that changes him. 
or is influential yeah. on him, which is normal. Like, everyone's influential on each other. Listen, I could and gladly would watch six hours of Sam Wilson trying to fix his family's boat. And in a way, I did. That boat is in the a Wilson family. In a way, I did. You didn't. <laughs> no, you didn't. You, you didn't. Oh, you man. You didn't. Family legacy. Sam needs to fix it. Sam needs to make sure it can sail again. That shield is Steve's legacy. Bucky needs to make sure it lives on. Bucky needs to make sure it becomes the symbol of hope and perseverance again. And in the end, it was. It was when Walker dropped it so that, well, dropped his own one so that he could save that truck. Remember, F Sam couldn't have saved that truck if Walker hadn't saved that truck. It would have fallen before he got there. Yeah, I'm, I'm really noticing the lack of coverage on Walker in this video. It's kind of strange. Yeah, interesting. See, and that, it's funny because the previous video was just shitting all over Walker. So it's like, oh boy. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful we'll Getty fair How coverage. I miss it? It's just, ah, oh, it's just, they're both though. Ugh. Yeah. And when all. And when all is done, they both succeed in fixing, repairing, and maintaining the. <laughs> And that's not. Were well, you uh, proud of yourself for that? How you talk? Like, <laughs> one of them wants to fix a boat and their legacy. The other wants to fix the shield's legacy. And in the end, they fix. They fix it all. It's all fixed. Uh, fixing stuff. That's what this show's about. It's thematic. Beautiful. You gotta do better. You gotta fix stuff. Not because of their sh their guns, their wings, or their shields, but because of their will. No, literally all of those things allowed it's, the yeah. fucking shit to happen, dude. <laughs> yeah, they, they needed that. Uh, Falcon, if he didn't have that stuff, uh, mm -hmm. mm, he'd be you shit out of luck, man. Well, we already know he can do stuff whether or not he should be able to, so maybe that wouldn't have mattered. Maybe oh yeah, he, maybe. It would just, like, through the just power fly. of convenient editing and plot, sheer determination of plot, yes. it just happens, it just occurs. Fixing, repairing, and maintaining their legacies. And that's not because of their strength, their guns, their wings, or their shields, but because of their will and their willingness to get back up and still montage. be here. Because the strength he of doesn't, montage. He doesn't yeah, have any, um, like he doesn't have any visuals for the whole get back up thing, because he's, that's not really what they, this show's about. The whole, like, you know, like, no. like the visual, you know, like Captain Marvel does that? A lot. There's loads of visuals of her getting Yeah, up. it's weird, yeah. yeah. There's not really it's much in the dramatic. text that supports it. This is like the reverse. Well, actually, I don't really think the whole, you gotta get back up, that's not really a part of the show. He's just sort of put it on here because that's something Steve had in, uh, well, his, his storyline was always about, you always gotta get back up. It's just like, this isn't really in the show, dude. <laughs> this is why you have no visuals to show for it. You're just like, nah, it's them yeah. walking around, because, yeah, they don't really have any I'm trying to think of like hero shots where they do like a I'm down again. There's like one with Falcon and it's really awkwardly done. Because remember, uh, stay down. He goes, no. <laughs> it's like, oh man. It's so, it's so commanding, you know? Because of their dedication to Steve and now to each other. The Falcon and the Winter allowed these two, this odd couple of outsiders, to redefine what Captain odd America couple of outsiders. needs to be. What? And redefine what, what Captain America has to be. He has to be a terrorist sympathizer? Oh. I'm very confused. Like, what do you mean redef- why would you redefine what Captain America- Captain America's like fucking but Captain America boy. was great how he was. Yeah, I don't know. It's a guy gotta- Yeah, but the logic would be that it's out of touch. That's- I think but that's it's, what he's going It's out of for. touch because he's white? Well, this, think, the, this is the problem, like, his ideals of, like, doing the right thing, standing up for the right thing, uh, going against those who consider you wrong when you know you're, like, principled and stuff, those things don't really oh, change. Oh, does. Well, I was just gonna say that those things don't really change over a couple of years. <laughs> like, oh, I don't really think we should stand up for what's right anymore, guys. It's kind of outdated. It's like, Yeah, but, what? We, but we need to do better. <laughs> I, I, high top, everybody. Wow, that was awful. What's the last minute? <laughs> oh. Yeah, um, there, there you just go. This? All right. or, or does he talk oh, about Babel? Yeah. <laughs> I guess he's already done that yeah. part. All right, we're done with that one. Wow, still Yay! Going, yeah. <laughs> Video two defeated. Wow. Video two done. And, and it only took us... Seven hours. We're doing great. Seven and a half hours, yeah. All righty. Well... What's, uh, what's next? I'll let you guys... I would, I want to leave it up to 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 a vote. Who who would you rather hear from, Rags and Fringy, uh, Cosmonaut or Brown Table? Brown Table.
Oh, yeah, Brown Table. I don't want to watch a Cosmonaut fucking video. <laughs> like, hey, Brown Table, really if you ever don't... see this, take that as a compliment, man. Like, yeah, I'd, I'd much rather watch your shitty I'd video than Cosmonaut shitty video. Than, yeah. Easy. Like, that wasn't even, that was like, boom. <laughs> Definitely yeah. Brown Table. Dude, all of chat say Brown Table too. All right then. Yeah, Cosmonaut fucking sucks. Not Cosmo. <laughs> We already got Cosmonaut basically in the form of that other guy. Like, I don't want that again. Alright, so this is called Marvel Studios' Greatest Work? The Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Ooh, oh, A masterpiece. Man, Complete. Comprehensive. Hey, is wrong. Well, here we go. This video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Oh boy, it's that ass. Black Widow! <laughs> In 2020, I specifically right. remember thinking, wow, I am kind of exhausted kind by of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. Everything that isn't Avengers is terribly mediocre, now there's a Black Widow movie coming out, and it's it's Black Widow, so so I sleep. I kept saying the wow. MCU oh, wow. should have been considering that's wow. bizarre, considering right. that Black Let's Widow is one of the better characters. Okay, yeah, okay, wait. she's a really great character played by an insanely talented actress. Talented so, actress, so yeah. Brown Table, myself, and... I th let's just create a mystery person. I don't need to give him a name. Uh, sitting in a room, and and someone says, "Not looking forward to Black Widow," and we all agree, and we all smile, like, "Yeah." Turns out we all agreed for different reasons. I thought so <laughs> because the writing's so bad right now. I'm very worried that Black Widow's movie yeah. is just going to be terrible. I think they will ruin the. Uh, they they will ruin. I think they'll Black ruin Widow. it retroactively. Yeah, Brown, I think they might. Brown Table is agreeing because he finds her boring. Apparently. Third guy is like, well, I know she dies, so it's pointless. Why do these arguments come up? <laughs> it hurts the brain. First of all, <laughs> when you rewatch a movie and you know who lives and dies, that would be the same shit if you're going to use that logic. It doesn't work. Stop trying to make it work. Uh, however, the, like, the idea that you don't know that her story could go somewhere interesting, that's simply a challenge for a writer, correct? Surely you could imagine yeah. a version where you go, wow, they told a story that's actually really, really interesting as to a character. So for the argument, I sleep because she's boring, I should be like, damn, I thought she was pretty good uh, in the MCU yeah. overall. She's one of the, the least destroyed characters, so. And that's how we rank him now, one of the least destroyed. <laughs> um, this shot should be taught in all cinema school. Fuck, 18 minutes. I don't classes. know if I can make it through all this, I'm going to be honest. Well, uh, just let me know when you've got, let's say, 20 minutes left in your tank. Let's because soldier forth. Like, like you've been. Have ended yeah. with game. And to be fair, that would have been a perfect finale. But now a no, year would, later, no, 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 out, no, it's no, 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 It would have been a been perfect finale. There's, nope. There's two aspects to that. On one hand, oh man, it would have spared us all of this bullshit. <laughs> but on the <laughs> other, <laughs> oh god, what a been, terrible ending, though. Wouldn't have been perfect, but it would have been. Yeah, it, it would have spared us one division. Yeah, it's kind of awkward. It's Falcon and Winter Soldier. But it was already destroyed. Like, the reality is that that movie kind of destroys a lot, as you will find out whenever my video is done. <gasps> Damn, I think he's going to be laying some truth bombs. It, it ain't even close. <laughs> Later, WandaVision comes out, and it's ridiculously good. The problem is that it no, doesn't stick the landing, no, it's not. but I rather appreciated what the show was wow. going for. The MCU oh. is evolving, it's trying new things, most likely because oh. it's become so- I, d I honestly think it's more generic than Why ever. Why did I say this? I, I yeah. honestly think it's more generic than ever, it's taking less risks than ever, it's doing all of the shit yeah. that we really- we don't want it to do, because we actually like risky stuff. We prefer it when you and, go a little uh, bit more crazy and raw or whatever. Not this. Super non-committal. They just bring people back. You know, you know, no one's safe. Mm -hmm. They'll, they will bring them. No one's ever really normally gone. when we say, no one when we, normally when we say no one's safe, it means they might die. But in the MCU, when we see no one's safe, it means they might live. They might come back. <laughs> Nobody's ever really gone. Again. So fucking true. It's that that's like morphed completely. People are like, yeah, it is cool that no one's safe. You're like, that's not, that's not, no. Uh, that's, uh, mm -hmm. I find most likely that the, the, the lie commonly agreed on is that the MCU was only now taking risks when the MCU as a concept was a risk. Yep. Never been done before. I think we went over it before, yeah, but that Avengers was a, was a risk. New thing. Avengers was a huge risk. There was an interview where Scarlett Johansson was saying it was only like six months into filming that we actually started believing in it, or at least she did, like that it could work.
it was a bit nuts nonsense hugely yeah, expensive yeah. and it's like hopefully it pays the fuck off and now we can never escape it there will be mcu forever and it it's wouldn't be so bad away. if they had people writing it who gave a shit but oh well because it's become so insanely popular that they can honestly do anything they want now. And while Wanda- And yeah, look at what they're doing. I was gonna say, yeah. what, what a great <laughs> fucking point, Brown Table. What a great point for how they could have, uh, so you're talking about all the TV shows have like fucking action scenes mandated. What about, and guys, I know this is gonna shock you, okay? If I'm chatting, I need you to just grab your chairs. What about an MCU show that doesn't actually have more than like one action scene in it? Whole season. Yeah. What? I, 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 just but but how? But, uh, okay, I, I, I should explain myself. Jesus. No one gets punched and or shot I, and or I, kicked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's there like, are no explosions. It's about a hero trying to acclimate to post blip world with no actual baddies to fight. He's just trying to get his life together, and maybe he's not an Avenger. He's just someone who fought along with them. He, just trying to make things work out. I, I, yeah, I, I, that, and you know what someone would say? Man, who's gonna care about that? Who's gonna watch that? That's not even really superhero-y, and I'd be like, yeah, it's pretty risky, isn't it? Oh my goodness. Yeah. We could do a character study. It could be intense. It could be all about his family, building the light. It could be all about the world building, trying to address all the things that happened. It could even be good. <gasps> it won't be, though. Perish nope. the thought. Perish the thought. Division tries new things visually and film-wise compared to the rest of the MCU, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier makes it its mission to tackle new controversial themes and stories, <laughs> and at a perfect time, too, with Marvel having massive success and with a world- No, Batwoman beat it to the punch. Marvel, yeah. <laughs> Batwoman uh, was <laughs> massive that's true. success. Batwoman was the pioneer, how dare you. You got we're, more Batwoman on the way, guys, don't worry. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, we miss it too. We gotta get her back to it, yeah. Yeah, um, some real quality content. I just hate the idea that fucking food. Falcon the Winter Soldier is taking Batwoman's thunder. That is unacceptable. Stealing, yeah. World ready to tap themes like these. Now here's the main thing. I'm here to talk about the Falcon and the Winter Soldier and the story of the show. And the story is very clearly political and talks about racism and how the United States treats its veterans and refugees, etc. And if you think that's cringe, well, you can just leave, I guess, because no, I'm not no, going to deny- it's, it's cringe because of how they did it. Yeah. It's basically refugees are good and America's racist and bad. I mean, it was like, there's like a weird implication that borders are bad. If we don't yeah, have borders, there, there are no refugees, Like, how right? they treat Carly is... It's weird. Mm -hmm. No borders means no refugees, because everywhere is one place. Well, there would still be... Everywhere there would, is one place. Surely there would still... <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, wouldn't you have no, refugees just be poor in, like, people. within a country? They would just be moving around. Like, they wouldn't... They'd just be homeless? They'd be just... Because like, uh, isn't implicit guess, in a right. refugee to move from one con like a bordered place to another bordered I, place? I, um, maybe I thought, yeah, that might be. I'm assuming the only reason I'm saying this is because maybe that actually isn't the definition. Maybe it just has to do with a displaced person. Yeah, and maybe. like you could still be displaced even if you're not. Yeah, I if get you what you mean. No like place, it's, it's one world, one people. But if one place is your place, home, one world, right? one people. Well, everywhere is your home. Mm. Uh, yeah, but I mean, like your literal house doesn't exist. <laughs> Houses are capitalist oppression. We should evolve yeah. beyond houses. We should return to <laughs> a monkey. I'm on board. Let's do it. Get the bananas. I the show its own message. I'm here to talk about it. I think the show tackles these issues incredibly well, and Ugh, in general, man. comic books themselves have been politically charged with- I have never questioned that they've been politically charged. That is it. You know what they do a lot is they go, these people don't even realize that in Cap's first issue he punches Hitler. Is that not political? It's like- I don't think anybody. Like, you're right. Did yeah. anybody ever disagree with that? Or I yeah, <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it's just it, it gets a little awkward because you're just like, do you think that's what people? Are, do you have a kid to try and figure out what the argument well, this actually is... is? The what? I'm asking him. Does he have a kid to find out what the argument actually is? So no. if someone's like, Jesus Christ, this, this is, is heavy-handed. They go, uh, there's been politics in this before. You're like. Well, that's, I was about to say, that's their defense. Whenever you criticize the shitty way that they go about explaining or presenting political messages, that's their safety valve defense, as they say, oh, it, it's always been political. As if that's a, that, as if that <laughs> is in any way relevant to 
me saying uh, the way that you wrote this and your politics is really dumb and doesn't make sense and it's really inconsistent and it doesn't even have a good message. They'll yeah. just say, but it's always been political. So it's, I mean, it does, it's, I don't yeah. know. At least in my case, rarely has the criticism ever been that there was a political statement made in something. It usually has yeah. to do with the... With the yeah, just don't have a the, shitty the, one. Well, I mean, I don't even think I can necessarily if it's one I disagree with, just as long as it's not presented to me in a way that pisses me off. Like, in a way that's frustrating or uh, dumb in terms of uh, communication, or, you know, like unrealistic, I guess, would be... Mm. Well, for example, word exactly. trying to spread resources logistically and then being told you're not doing good enough, do better. Like, wow. Yeah, like, it's like, that's, even if I agree with that position, it's like, you've really not done a good job of actually exploring this topic. Yeah, the, you don't, what, your solution is what? Like, what am I supposed to do other than better? Like, but what does that actually mean? What do, what do, what do I do? What does that translate into in terms mm. of actual uh, things? Oh, this is a good example, because it's not really political, but messaging. Um, TLJ is like, it's from failure that we can learn significantly or whatever, and it's just like, but you presented that horribly. Everybody's like, the people who are doing the right things are learning to not do the right things, and vice versa. <laughs> like, I don't care that that's yeah. your message at all. Like, that's not really my point. <laughs> it's just like the horrible way you engaged it. Lots of social since their inception. There it is. Speaking of comics, funnily enough, yeah, this yeah. speech from OG Steve Rogers is the central theme of this entire show. No. It doesn't matter what the press says. No! 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 Is he doing, uh... Is he doing Caps voice? No! <laughs> sort of like a pterodactyl. <laughs> no! Oh, no! No, 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 no. Doesn't matter what the politicians or the mob say. You're such Doesn't a matter shitty if the whole voice actor. Stop. Wrong He's... Oh. Right. <laughs> this nation was founded on one principle above all else the requirement that we stand up for what we believe. Why do you not look at people when no you talk to them? Wait, 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 wait. Can we, I, uh, sorry, Tetris, you are going to have to wait. Can we please replay this from the beginning and listen to it through? Because I'm pretty sure I, I just had something I don't like. Very well. <laughs> Is it the art, the voice acting? Oh, uh, well, uh, it's, it's, uh, let's see. Your show. Let me pay super duper attention. It doesn't matter what the press says. It doesn't matter what the politicians or the mob say. It doesn't matter if the whole country decides that something wrong is something right. This nation was founded on one principle, above all else, the requirement that we stand up for what we believe. No matter the- But those people are standing up for what they yeah, believe is right. You said it believe. doesn't matter if the whole country believes that that's- that... Also, isn't that like anti-democratic? <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny the, the whole country thinks that what's wrong is right. It's like, oh, so the whole country is standing up for what they believe in, which you said is the most important thing. I like inherent contradictions in like these speeches. It's really funny. Well, did um, he write this or is this something from like the comics or like a, something like that? I can believe it's taken from something. Um, but oh, like, man, obviously, uh, you could argue that it is a principle that would necessarily mean those should do the same thing. Like, Cap could say, yes, they should stand up for what they believe in too, but that doesn't mean I won't, they'll stop, you know, because like, it, it's applicable. If you believe it's right, then fight for it. Give me, like, a rule. Give me a thing. Give me a, like, a, an actual principle, not, not a platitude, you know? Give me I something mean, like a... Like, I think I'm vaguely on board better. with the idea that you should, you should fight for whatever you believe is right, and then it's like, well, won't everyone do that? And it's like, I guess we all should. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I don't think everyone should. Well, you wouldn't. No, I think that <laughs> I think that as a general rule, it's a good thing to be consistent in your principles. But obviously, you you know, you disagree with like what somebody else's principles are. I think that's fine. Yeah, like I I would picture you would, but obviously, like say for example, uh, well, we'll just use the Hitler example. You're like, oh, I don't want him fighting for what he thinks is right. It's like, well. But you would want people to behave in line with what they believe is correct and, you know, uh, altruistic in a sense, or just the thing that should happen. It would be like... Well, I'm, I mean... I... If I was gonna... Um, focus less on what you believe and more in 
focus on like what actually is good. Uh, because you know, because because first off, you don't choose what you believe, so you're gonna have to sort of go into exploring why do you believe the things that you do? How do you change what people believe? How do you get people to believe things that are you know good that create good outcomes and a better world? What is a better world, and how do we get there? Um, it's sort of feel good, but and 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 I think it's good in a way that it feels good to hear that because we almost like accept on the face of it that most people believe in good things and are good people, which is why you say that quote, you know, you hear that quote and it seems positive. So. I'm sure. So. But like, you know, if everyone told us everything we do is wrong, we'd just be like, okay, that doesn't change my mind. I still think what I'm doing is right. So I feel it's supported. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's about, yeah, it's, it's that supporting aspect. Like the thing that you believe is good. Can you explain why you think that's good? Mm -hmm. Why does it well, make a better that's, world? That's the idea, right? Is like generally, it's a good thing to do what you believe is right, rather than doing stuff that you believe is wrong, but because other people are saying that otherwise, you know what I mean? I was just super chat saying, more saying that that doesn't sound democratic. The U.S. was never meant to be democratic. Why but... do people always say that shit? Like it's really frustrating. Like, oh, it's not a democracy; it's a constitutional republic or whatever. It's like, what the? F what's you know what we, what I we're think... talking about? Well, I, I think you know. Generally, when people refer to the U.S. as a democracy, they they don't. Re it's not like a they mean the concept democracy. of voting, basically. Yeah, yeah. That people have about to say. everyone. Gets That's all to they be, mean. Uh, not that it's yeah. pure democracy. And yeah. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> no matter the odds or the consequences. So in the mob, in the so like, and even that bit there. No matter the odds or the consequences, like no, no, no. I feel oh, yeah, like the okay. consequences can really be important. Because I'm, I'm not like a pure consequentialist or anything, but if you're trying to create a better world for as many people as possible and find the balance, you know, between order and freedom and that sort of deal that, you know, most people hopefully are, I, I feel like the consequences will in a large way help determine what you're trying to get and how you get there. Also... Is he talking to Spider Man because that's what Hyped Up wants, or is he talking to Spider Man because this is. Because, he wanted to draw. Yeah. He wanted to draw Spider Man. Well, so if this is from one of the movies, or if this is from maybe a TV show, I don't think. If it was from a game, he probably wouldn't need to do this, but I was just thinking, like, he wouldn't be able to play the scene in full, so instead he can read the dialogue and then create his own visuals, right? Uh, anyone in chat, do you know where this is from? Because I'm starting to think this is, must be from. Is something. it from a comic? I think it's from a comic book, right? Maybe. That was my assumption that it was from a comic book. Is it from the Civil War comic? That would make some sense, right? I... No, because... Wait, is it? Oh, okay. Well, okay, it is from the comic. Okay. Yeah, that's what people are saying. I mean, he could have just shown the panels. Oh, you know what? It's fine. I'm fine with it. No, he's, he's... 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 This is his art. So he's was that some serious fun. Ewax building in his ear there? It's like, oh, no. Oh my goodness. Odds are the consequences. So when the mob and the press and the whole world tell you to move, your job is to plant yourself like a tree. <laughs> he turned around. We didn't see. He's, he's facing him now. <laughs> he has a massive gap between the nose and the mouth. He looks so bad. His, yeah, his, his eyes, pain. I think, have got too much of a gap as well. Yeah. Uh, it's, uh, it looks so bad. And his voice acting is horror. It's so well, cringe. He's doing the, I can um, believe that he's making an anime. I kind of like the... Uh, the it's the it's the voice from like the Mortal Kombat protagonist. It's that voice. The generic action hero bad voice. You need to yeah. stand yeah. there. You need to plant yourself like a tree. Gotta do it. Yeah. Hide the real truth and tell the whole world no. <laughs> Move. Close up of the eyes, slightly more detail. Now, before we get started, this video is sponsored by Storyblocks. Uh, what do you, what <laughs> Story do you mean before we get started? <laughs> oh, <laughs> that was super distracting. It's Story. like this big speech is supposed to be represent what it means to be Captain <laughs> Could you imagine having the, oh. like, you know, what this the similar speech in Civil War when uh, uh, Sharon Carter delivers it at the funeral? She, she says, "Plant yourself like a tree and tell the world you move." And the, like the music sort of crescendo, she goes. Storyblocks is an app for blah, blah, blah. like, oh, Jesus Christ, I want to fuck? thank Johnson & Johnson's Coffin Emporium for providing the coffin <laughs> for today's funeral. Let's give a big hand to Mr. Johnson. Yay. Fantastic. This is an affordable online subscription service that makes finding HD video content and images easy. Mm. 10 Yoga Breathing Techniques. 
feel like I feel, I feel like if you want to tailor your ad to your audience, you know, so <laughs> an ad for stock footage, like what the hell? Um, I suppose that's useful for video they editors. Will, yeah, they'll just give you the video it's to play, but. Well, um, you guys have seen this throughout EFAB, right? They, they have like, you know, like if they go, oh, sometimes you're scrolling on the internet and then it'll have a visual of some guy in his house that's like HD on his phone looking through yeah. things. And it's just like, oh, it's stock footage. And they probably get it from places like Storyblocks. I guess so, yeah. But it does make some sense to advertise this. Though I, the, the 10 yoga breathing technique, that's probably not, <laughs> that's probably not yeah. the one, you know. Well, yeah. it's because they, his his um, requirement is that, do they pay me? Okay, then I'll, I'll, mm -hmm. I'll chill your, your stuff. He doesn't use storyblocks, probably. I can't believe he does, honestly. Well, maybe maybe he, he would. He uses um, a lot of stock the footage. For video with description plans to give you. Uh, maybe. We, we will see it. Uh, we'll be able to tell if he's got stock stuff. Maybe. Because we know the show very well, and we know Marvel very well. We will know Brown Table. So if you want your stories to life, Storyblocks is the place to go. I use Storyblocks all the time. I use Storyblocks as stock footage in this video and most of my videos. With the unlimited there all access go. plan, you get there unlimited downloads of HD stock footage and image. <gasps> Happy young Ooh. joyful girls in bikini dancing. Hell Young people, yes. feelings and emotions, portraits of dot dot dot, group dancing of five happy Harry friends dude. having fun dancing. Harry dancing Harry happy dude. young joyful girls in bikini dancing and having- No, they what look too that? well for brown table. What is Just that Crowd of fans dancing on green screen. True <laughs> 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 effects templates, overlays, and more. So go get some high quality, royalty free images right now by going to storyblocks.com slash brown table or go to the link in the description. Mm -hmm. Seriously, they're great, and if you make videos, they make your videos look so much more professional, it's crazy. So one more time, go to storyblocks.com slash brown table. Guys, we're already three minutes in, we're doing great. Excellent stuff. Wow, yeah, yeah we're cooking simple. along, yeah. yeah. Or go he to the link about in the description. Using stock footage. Yeah, I, uh, Ben, that's <laughs> interesting. Yeah, it's, I don't, I don't yeah. know if I'd brag about using stock footage. Well, it's his ad. He's got a part of the he thing, right? To. It's yeah. like, hh, hey, I use it, so that's how you know it's good. You're like, right. Oh, yeah. To get some high-quality, royalty-free images. Thank you so much, Storyblocks, for sponsoring this video. Check them out. Supporting them supports the channel. And let's get on with the video. Yay. I think The Falcon and the Winter Soldier is one of the best things the MCU has put out. Out of all their productions, I feel like this is the most and important story-wise. Really I remember <laughs> saying, wow, WandaVision is definitely one of the best things the MCU has made, and no. honestly, it's better that's than like half of what the MCU- No, no it isn't. No. No. And that's an accomplishment to be worse than the-, the top Yes, it is, you're right. Because like, once you get to the 50% mark, you're at like four. <laughs> that's Dude. you know once you get halfway down the road the the line what's the set design here look at the look at that it's like the blocks like what is that this is the uh this, this is, is the headquarters of the sword remember this is where vision yeah. was no i'm not this asking where, where it is um... i'm asking why is there weird oh, blocks like that know. what is that yeah who that's built the, that why that's did the main do that frame the main frame, oh, the <laughs> main frame yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, those are uh, well, logic dampeners. That's a so, processing unit for the internal core uh, vibranium modulation by, uh, uh, <laughs> rods. My brain is funny, and it was like, oh, obviously they're like, <laughs> obviously they're like drawers, and you would get on a ladder to access the drawers. <laughs> 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 and then my brain was like, can't be drawers, because look how silly the shapes are. I was like, no, there's yeah, lots of reasons a, this is a drawers brain. <laughs> like, government <laughs> facility, you know how it is. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's just these Tax fair dollars at work. But yeah, okay. You know, all right. was produced. But Falcon and the Winter Soldier makes WandaVision look ridiculously mid. And by the way, as I say this, I'm not counting Marvel Netflix. That's entirely different and different. The Brown Table, huge realization coming for you, buddy. I think that you think that anything is mid once you get the new thing. You're just like, well, that thing's old now, so meh. I don't want to play with you anymore. Literally that. Daredevil is better than the entire Marvel Cinematic Universe. Okay, anyway, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier Except is... Except for Daredevil, I guess. It's all about people who have differing well, agendas. Well, he's saying the Netflix shows don't count in, in, his, uh, in his view, which is weird. <sighs> well, nah, I kind of get it, but... Yeah, yeah, I mean... yeah, I get it. They're different. They're out there. They're not part of a... They're... Like, well, different... I mean, obviously, yeah. I want Daredevil to come back, but I don't really care about the rest of them. Daredevil, I want him back in. <laughs> I think the, everyone in the feels MCU. that way. Get him in there. Yeah. Do you really want him in the MCU? Any 
yeah, you got a you got a point. It might be better if we just and, <laughs> and like... you, you know, there's probably people out there like, oh come on, yes, we want it. It was like, no, seriously though, what if they bring him in and they assassinate and shit on him and then that's it? You will end up saying, like, God, I wish they never brought him in. So it's like really think about yeah. it. Mm. That's true. That's true. Anyway, the Falcon and sold... Spider-Man run around and do stuff. That's yeah. all. <laughs> Soldier is all about people who have differing agendas all going against each other. Every single character believes they're doing the right So, uh, um... <laughs> scene! Uh, Harry, you know, he's, he's not wrong, she believes when she incinerates innocent people that she's doing... Yeah, well, also, not... it's like, it's all about people with different agenda, agendas going against each other. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. A, a lot of things are that. Yeah, I think he's I right. He is on point. Yeah. Right thing, and the story occurs when these agendas clash. It can be as simple as oh, Bucky it's freaking like Sam should have. Stories work. The what conflict? Well, you know conflict. what, Fringy? He's still right. So get wrecked. <laughs> but did you just say something so obvious? Look, the more he does this, the more it becomes a Mark Brown video. So <laughs> it's fine with me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm on board. Come on, Brown Table, feed me the truths agendas clash. It can be as simple as Bucky thinking just... Sam shouldn't have given up the shield, and something more complicated like how Sam and Bucky don't think John Walker deserves the shield. And man, yeah, it is wrong. rich as shit. The yeah. show has some of the best character work in the entire MCU. No, it we're, we're it's it's so funny to hear this after we've watched it and we're just tense and nervous, sweating, hoping they won't assassinate this character too. Um it's the best. What do you mean? What do you mean oh, by is best? Is he implying that there is best and worst, and that some work yeah, better than others? Uh oh. Mm. Maybe he'll qualify it. That doesn't you. That so doesn't before sound ideologies, right. let's just talk about something I just adore about the show, and that's the it. fact that these characters feel like people. They aren't. Oh, you did the that... same thing as Hydesop. <laughs> They're people. They're real people. Well, they probably not like this picture of a robot that I get from Bibblebee. That I got from com. story blocks. Like, I don't want to be com. don't want to be cruel here, but I feel like after they watch the show and they send a message saying like that show is fucking great. Oh yeah, well hey, do you want to talk about it for quickly? And they jump into a call and like, oh man, what I loved about it so much was how real everything. Oh, it was so like the characters are so real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fact they have money troubles yeah, yeah. finally. Oh, it was such a realistic character thing problem to have, especially in this world now that the post blip. Of course there'd be money problems. Yeah, there'd be money. Oh, it's so real. Yeah, it was really real. <sighs> So what else All did right, you like? I'll see you in like two months. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go make my video about how real they are. Good talk, guys. Simulate human emotions. The Falcon and the Winter Soldier succeeds in making most of its characters feel like people who live lives, have no. desires, and are. I mean, I can believe that they have the. Well, did y'all just have y'all never watched any of the MCU stuff before? Like, I feel like this show came out and it erased everybody's yeah. memory. So, do the MCU heroes live lives and have desires prior to Falcon and Winter Soldier? I, I love the idea that someone goes, not really. <laughs> not really. No, they didn't live lives. They did not have desires. Just like Tony Stark, he's a like billionaire playboy, goes to like parties, invents shit that gets him shit tons of money to be able to sell it, and then eventually, like, I'm not even going into the, you know, the change, right? Like, his desire is to just keep going, live life to the fullest, he loves it. He's like, okay, Thor? It's like, well, he was um, just going to different realms and beating the shit out of people, like, uh, with his armies to protect the, you know, the general realms, and he felt pretty damn awesome about it. I think Thor 2 opens with him doing that in one of the realms, it's like recovering from the damage that was done by um, something, the Bifrost being destroyed? I can't remember. Point is, yeah, he's he's going around doing those things too. He lives in Asgard, and his values are protecting that world, but the, also that he's got pride issues, you know, kind of stuff. Steve mm. is like, I mean, he's living a rough life in 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 Brooklyn as he watches his friends and family like go off to fight a war that he can't join because he can't uh, achieve it. So he tries to find his different ways in. I would just be like, where? What are you talking about? Like we've had this for a long time. I don't. Know. Eh. No, we haven't. <laughs> All right. They're just doing their best day to day. It is so refreshing. I don't think you can call what happens in this show their day to day. Their um, best. I oh, get. Yeah, nice. Best. I get that you 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 doing the boat thing. It's like sure, but like there's only one episode of the boat thing. The rest of it is crazy shit. How it, come you don't care when Spider Man's helping build the Death Star? Well, he gets there too late, but still. Yeah, it breaks. They probably have he to rebuild it. He fixes that boat every day. Every day. That is his life, is fixing this boat. 
Yeah, and being you. bitched at by his bitch sister. <laughs> not being around when he was saving the world or was he not was... existent. And also turned to dust, yeah. To see what Sam is like outside of superheroing, what Bucky's life is as well. The show really develops these side protagonists that have- No, it came across as though it did. It, it wanted yeah. you to believe it did. But sure. But not yeah, had enough screen like show time. Are easily fooled. And how they bring their own personal struggles into the action is what makes for a great superhero storytelling. Is that right? Why do you put text on the screen all the time? I was gonna say, we didn't get much of that with the other two. Well, you do get it with High Top a bit, but like, Brown Table's obsessed. Great superhero yeah, storytelling. Yeah, with this specific font. You know what's funny about this? If you said to us, what does it mean to have great superhero storytelling, I feel like our answers are either going to be incredibly simple, like make it make sense, or really complex, like we have to go into depth about like a lot of different things you might have to do for, to achieve the genre of superhero, but simultaneously, mm. like, I just feel like you would say something like, you know, make sure you have characters that feel real. Like, yeah, yeah, all right. Yeah. Wow, that's okay. kind of like a prerequisite for storytelling. I feel but, like you know. that too. It's <laughs> just like, hmm, all right. It helps if the audience believes it. <laughs> Thanks, Mark. We have Sam, someone who's been resurrected thanks to Tony Stark, and he's struggling to make ends meet, even though he's uh, a literal thanks super. To Bruce. It feels Bruce yeah. resurrected Bruce these guys. Brought brought him Tony. Back. Yeah, yeah. I, I think unless he's trying to argue that it was Tony that got rid of the obby that would have killed everybody. So, but yeah, like that doesn't right, make whatever. sense, does it? I think he just but, mixed them up. Yeah, but if the army died, then. Wouldn't it also- it also resurrected half of Thanos' army too, right? It would've, yeah. Um, it would've, yeah. That was a mistake. Well, who's to say? <laughs> Let those Why didn't you just say- why did- why- why didn't you just wish that they stayed dusted, all the- the enemy oh. army people? That would've made things uh, he, easier. He couldn't have known, he could- like... Why- why a lot of <laughs> things, Rags? Why a lot, yeah. a lot of things? <laughs> Hero. He's given up the shield as he believes not only does he not deserve it, but he isn't ready for the ramifications if he does accept it. Worse- Well, I mean, ignore what he said in Endgame. Fuck that. I was about to say, but, Brown okay. Table's correct. It's just that it doesn't match what we saw in Endgame, unfortunately, but yeah. Yeah, but hey, what what is continuity? What is world building? What is consistency? Fuck it. We want to sure do this in our show, so to hell with all that. Maybe he was lying. His sister- to sell his family boat, something he doesn't want to happen. There's this scene in a bank that is just so great because it's, just it's nice so to great. see a superpowered being have to struggle with things regular Money. people face. He's not a superpowered it's, being. It's literally so the, he's not superpowered being. He gets so again, uh, the what, government oh. loans him gadgets. He pulls up Daredevil, who is more comparable to Spider-Man in, ter in terms of the whole secret identity thing. Then, but as soon as Daredevil becomes part of the Avengers, that's it. That's it. Money yeah. problems go away. And in fact, with Danny Rand and Iron Fist, his money problems go away too, because he's super rich. Um, he's doing the high top meme. Look, they yeah. have money troubles. This is real. It's like, guys, this please. Is, yeah. I know you're better than this. Come on. Like, there's gotta be more also, to it. Like, sometimes he... Daredevil doesn't have money problems, when, like when there was that brief arc where he's working for as a public, uh, a public prosecutor, or a public defender, I think he was. Fuck, I can't remember what it was. No, he was a public prosecutor. He didn't have money problems then. That's comics accurate, so you'd love that. I just, I would like them to really expand what they mean by what it means to like have personal problems and be real characters beyond fucking being poor. Like, please, there's so much more to the human experience than that. Come on, you can do it. It humanizes the character and makes us empathize. Of course, Spider-Man You should be able to empathize with people who are rich. Uh, no. No. They're not even people, really. Not really, no. Ah, right, yeah. yeah. What was that- what was that thing that Cosmo said about Wu Smith? Like, that he doesn't empathize with him because he's rich? Oh, that had to do fuck, with uh, getting I... cheated on? Was that to do with him getting- with the- with that- that entanglement thing? <laughs> what was I that might... related to? Was um... it when he was cheated on, right? Yeah, ah. that's- yeah, yeah, that was why I was saying entanglement. The cheating thing. <laughs> That's Don't worry, Fringy. I've got it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Here we go. In, in, chat, yeah, in, case, gonna... in case you've forgotten this wonderful take from Cosmodot. But money doesn't equal happiness. Yes, it does, you goofy ass nigger. Yeah, I mean, simple as that. Yeah, if you're just, if you got money, you're just happy. 
Because Cosmonaut's a fucking moron. It's unbelievable. Will Smith was in five movies last year. Don't feel too bad for him. Like, what the fuck? If you're... <sighs> you're in five movies. How come you're not happy? Don't you know that money equals happiness? Since when was... You know, one of the oldest axioms in all of the like, humanity is that <laughs> money doesn't buy happiness. A hell of a lot more complicated than that. It's just like, oh, well, shut up. You're like, oh, okay. You know, this tweet's doubly funny when you remember that, oh, yeah, Cosmonaut's a one percenter. Oh, for sure. Wow. Yeah, he definitely is. Like, he's he rich as dude, fuck, you he's not. He's not just, like, the, he, like, he tweets about, like, so, for example, the Snyder Cut, he was like, can't wait for the Snyder Cut to pay for my vacation or something like that. Um, and I remember Snyder fans were really upset. They were like, this is bullshit. He's just gonna shit all over the movie and get money for it. And then it turned out he liked it, and the Snyder fans were like, yay, Cosmonaut, woohoo. So anyway, so Spider-Man anyway. 2, he has money problems. This is a real character. How that works. <laughs> Makes us empathize. Bucky, on the other hand, is in therapy, so hey, good for him. And he's trying to write a- Hey, uh, you might say All right. Uh, having someone suffer with PTSD would be quite a way to like empathize in terms of just the struggle they're going through. What if you add that they're a millionaire? Does that suddenly make it meaningless, I wonder? I don't know, maybe. I, I mean, know, they, maybe, yeah. here's the thing, Falcon- <laughs> It's almost, I, maybe they deliberately, the way, it, it, clearly it worked to this idea that we give Falcon money troubles, even though it doesn't fucking make sense, because loser idiots like Brown Table and, oh. was it, the other ones will just be like, oh, okay, so he's not rich, so I can empathize? It's really odd, but I, I was actually directing that at more at Cosmonaut because of the whole, the tweet, not, I wasn't saying that Brown Table was saying the only way you can suffer is by being poor. Sure, he doesn't think that. I would fucking he thinks hope rich he people think can just give money to a movie theater he's never been to, and that'll be just <laughs> that was something he said. Yes, that is, something yeah. he said is makes me makes me appreciate how my parents tried to instill in me like the importance of the value of money and the value of hard work and things of that nature. Because I hear the brown table saying stuff like that now, like man, I could have been that. Oh, phew, fucking dodged a bullet there, didn't I? And his PTSD doesn't matter because he's rich. True. Men's due to his soldier past. Thing is, he's going about this the wrong way. The whole Nakajima subplot is absolute gold, dude. And see, absolute gold. <laughs> it, it it's barely constant. It's a subplot. It's episode one, and then the last like half of yeah. Six. Then they remember it at the very yeah. very end. It can yeah. barely breathe. Like, can we please be honest about it? It's an idea. It's barely an execution. Come on, bro. Table. It was like nothing. Being a hero, trying to find love is just such a nice feeling. I think it's because <laughs> what? trying to find love is such an is that one another stock image? Oh, that gotta be. I, man smile. Man smiles. smile at camera. Well, I like to think he's looking at a VTuber. He's like trying to find love is a wonderful. Most of the time, experience. the hero falls in love with the obvious female lead, and seeing something a lot more casual. Also, that's a fake as shit smile. Come on, it's not real. That was just, fake as shit. All the stock stuff comes across as just a little bit, like, uncanny. Yeah, yeah. And seeing something a lot more casual is very much appreciated, at least by me. Thing is, Bucky's guilt, his past that he can't escape, still traps him. It shows flaws in our heroes, our heroes aren't perfect, and then we meet John Dude, Walker. That, but that's not like, imper like, that wasn't, none of that was his fault, though. I so saying characters fault. have flaws, it's not really, that's not... And why is he saying it like say we, that. we haven't got this before? Yeah. Like he's a flawed character or something because something was done to him that he didn't choose to do and it haunts him. It's, uh, if you want to define like a flaw even as damage done to you that isn't I mean, your in fault. That sense, yeah, yeah. That's... yeah who exhibits similar flaws. He's just a person, but now has to embody similar the symbol flaws. of an entire nation. How is that Captain similar America. in any way? I'm not sure how, how is that anything approaching similar? I, I, I don't know how he's connected Winter Soldier's or Bucky's issues to Walker's issues. They're very <laughs> entirely dissimilar I, people. I've got no clue. Yeah, that's a weird one. Of an entire Bizarre. nation. Captain America is more than Iron Man, than Hulk, than friggin' Iron Patriot because he symbolized the best of what America can be since. Mm. So, 
we're going from everything we saw in all of the movies, do you think Cap or Iron Man is the more morally upstanding human being? Um, well, unfortunately for um, Cap, um, he abandoned his friends. Meanwhile, Tony a... died for them. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, um, th that's the thing. Mm. Like, there was a time when they were both just great. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that, that point is, is in the gone. past. Yeah, that time yeah. is... It is not with us. We have moved on from such times. Hmm. It's World War II. Captain America is an icon. John Walker has been built by the US government to become that icon and to meet those no, expectations. He, no. no, he wasn't built to become that icon. What well, you think that you think they were like grooming him to replace Captain America? Like when was that established? Oh, I see what you he mean. Went three... So you're saying he wasn't like fucking grown a lab from start to finish to eventually take this role. It was that he's the guy they were, they like probably went through a couple of candidates and were like this one seems to be the most applicable or most worthy. Yeah. Um Yeah, when they realized that when they decided they wanted another one, they went through a list of candidates. Yeah. They didn't pick him years and years and years ago and groomed him and trained him specifically to become Captain America whenever Steve died or gave up or... He's probably you know, referencing his speech where he said, you made me or whatever to the government, right? Oh, but that was his military stuff. Yeah, that was him as a soldier. Not quite the same that thing. That wasn't him as Captain America. But then I'd say that's he's using built into... very loosely to be this is the person they're having be the new Captain America. It's like, I mean, yeah, but built is a bit of a... Yeah. But Captain America is a soldier. Well, yeah, uh, this, this is the complication of the series, right? And a lot of these sort of analyses where they're trying to be like, okay, so... It's, it doesn't belong to the government, okay? It's it's more of a metaphorical like label that represents your qualities as a character. In which case, again, Falcon loses, Walker wins. But if we only said it was something the government dole out, then yeah, I guess we're gonna have to wait until. Well, I'm I'm assuming you guys would say the same, but it looks to be that Falcon's just gonna have that role from the government. Probably. Yeah, seems that way. I guess. I fine. guess he gets to. <clears throat> I guess. Not yeah. that for himself. <laughs> He's stolen it, like I said. <laughs> Man, I wish I, I like had they... a Wakandan vibranium fucking suit. I might have decided to try and save the day. What has it really got to do with Falcon's character? That's like the issue I have with this. It, yeah, it doesn't have anything to do with Falcon's character. The, I guess we never even got to talk about that. Like, crafting a payoff that is essentially... Like, like he has to make some big sacrifice to prove that he is truly Captain America. And they tried, I guess, to do it with the whole pushing up the armored truck thing, the problem is that it should have killed him, so it's kind of awkward to look at. You're just like, how is he... Oh, I guess that's just something he can do now. How okay. is this even possible that he can do this? But he'd probably have to do it by... He very publicly does something that uh, he thought was going to kill him to save the day, but he survives it. That sort of thing. Um, and I just that's think that the... the way to make it work, yeah. The person who did that, IMO, is John Walker. He, he sacrificed his shield to grab the thing more than a bunch of super soldiers tr started to try and kill him while he's trying to save people. It's like, he doesn't know what's gonna happen next. And then he gets thrown, like, isn't it like a fucking 50 foot drop or some shit? Uh, the, uh, into the construction area? I don't know. Uh, quite, a, is, quite a long way. Enough. Yeah. It's a lot. Because everything's, so, everything's so broken anyway, I didn't even think about criticizing like the payoff that is Falcon's sort of moment of being Cap, which is pulling up that armored truck. Yeah, which doesn't make any sense whatsoever. And is and... well, it reminds me a little bit of um, the whole the Snyder Cut thing. It's just like, well, why wouldn't he have done that? Why would that make him different from the next person who just wants to save people's lives? And not to yeah, diminish that, if all of the just... Avengers were there. Yeah, what makes him more Captain America than anyone else, I guess, would be uh, what I was getting at with that. And I just don't think, in terms of storytelling, they really achieved that. Because he's black. Oh, okay. And we need to have a black Captain America. We we went over this with the Isaiah stuff. Well, they should give Isaiah the suit. He's... No, because he's... <laughs> he's too old. Um, I, yeah, I don't... Wait, wait. Uh... Put Isaiah in an Ant-Man suit. Uh, De-age him, because we can do that now. And then give him the suit, make him Captain America. Here it be great. I solved racism. It's pretty much possible. Let's not forget also that there never was supposed to be another Captain America. Steve chose Sam to be a successor, but Sam ultimately takes the per- 
would Hawkeye be a better Captain America? Um, well, this just gets a what does it mean to be Captain America? Or when should someone be Captain America? And if it's the characteristics, it's definitely not Falcon. Could yeah, be, Falcon's could be Hawkeye. Fucking shit. Falcon's like been destroyed by this show as a character. Hawkeye's got some weird stuff going on with um the stuff he did was the it in Hong Kong? Stuff. Yeah, yeah, like they they didn't they just fucking did that. They never they addressed it. They just dropped. <laughs> well, it maybe we'll get it in comics. his show, I guess. I doubt it. <laughs> the personal choice to decline and hand the shield to a museum dedicated to Steve and his accomplishments. That's how the legacy of the shield was supposed to end, only for a new Captain America to be brought forth despite what Sam and Steve wanted. And then there's well, of course. So I don't Why see what Stan. I don't see what Sam's opinion has in any it way to do with it. It doesn't matter anymore and if you don't. Not it. even really Steve's. Um, so it's it's I because Steve's strange absence from this show creates a lot of kind of mm -hmm. like strange issues with what would he say, what would he do, what was his intention? Does Steve even have the right to give that shield to someone else? Doesn't that belong to the government? Um. It's stuff, kind of stuff like that. Uh, it's certainly easier to not have him here. I don't know if it was a thing with Chris Evans or not, but they never even talk about it. Uh, well, it would be like even... if I like, I don't know. I bought a new, uh, well, just the next generation of like fucking Game Boy or whatever, and I gave you my old one, and you started playing games I don't like on it, and I'm just like, I don't want you to do that. And you're like, you've given it away. <laughs> it's a bit late. I don't know. It feels weird with because Steve's given it away. But Falcon's given it away. So now who controls what happens with this? Like, the government? Because he gave it to them? Like, it's like, yeah, but he didn't want that to happen. With a specific... It's like, oh, well. What? It's always yeah, come across like, as really strange to, to me. That. Yeah, it's like, you probably should have thought of that? I don't know. Did you think that it was just going to sit there forever? It's vibranium. It's also, yeah, as they've pointed out, a symbol of like a, a heroic sort of uh, icon that they're probably going. Like, it, it all made sense to me, the whole Walker thing. It's like, yeah, they probably would do that. And then they probably would give yeah. him a shield. I'm not surprised at all about it. When I first saw the thing on the show about our new Captain America, I'm like, yeah, that. Makes the show sense. was like, oh my God. I can't no. believe they have another Captain America. Like it's like people think 007 is not a person, you know, it's a title, it's a designation. There's well, more than one 007. It would also be super interesting if uh, Falcon was like, yeah, man, he's describing the events of this. And he's like, so after I gave it to the Smithsonian, I found out that and he goes, whoa, 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 you gave the shield away. And Falcon's like, yeah. Um. He gave it to the government. <laughs> and Steve's like, you gave it to the after everything. We... I gave that to you. <laughs> I believed in you. This was like I, I was for you to you use. You betrayed yeah. my trust. <laughs> I, this was for you to use. You were going to be the new captain. You know. Oh uh, my god! I want to see that scene yeah, so much. He shouted him for one. ages for not only giving it up but giving it to the government. Which wow! Is like you a didn't even that... give it to Bucky. Wow! Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then right at, toward the end of the rad, where he's finally dying it down, Falcon's like, "I'm black, you know." And Steve's just like, "What the fuck does that have to do with anything?" And he's like, "Why? Well, just mean that you didn't really consider that when." Yeah, I know. I don't know. <laughs> I, no, I guess he should have said, it, yeah, he was like, um, I'm black, and you need to do better. And yeah, and Steve, before he leaves, is just like, I've learned a lot today. And Falcon's like, oh. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> Next season's just called Captain America the Winter Soldier, but it's starring Cap, not Falcon. Because <laughs> he takes the shield back, he's like, clearly you need more time to think about what you've been doing. Yes. So totally. He's the weakest link in the entire series, but that doesn't mean her story is any less poignant. A commentary on how. Surely. What how does that make sense? He's the weakest uh, link, but it's not uh, a lack of poignancy. It's like, that's. Alright, I guess you call a difference between those two things. Evoking a keen sense of sadness or regret. I am sad that it was here, and <laughs> I regret having seen it. Uh, I see what you did there. That was a good nice. job. Thanks. The United States, or so the world, treats its refugees and immigrants. Carly wants to return the world to how it was before. So, this is a very damning kind of look at refugees. Like, if that's your goal, is to evoke sympathy for refugees, right? Mm -hmm. um, showing a bunch of psycho terrorists burning people alive to get what they want for refugees, oh, not a good look. Really not a good... Well, 
Hence, not a good way to deliver that kind of message. Hence, some people saying this the show is critical of people believe it. It's just like, no, it's just incompetent. <laughs> it's like, I'm pretty sure it's just incompetent. I guess, like, yeah. Much yeah. like Wonder Woman 84 is very incompetent. Before the. When people were helping each other during crisis. For five years, people have been welcomed into countries that have kept them out using barbed wire. So, I don't believe you. Bullshit, yeah. Like it. I don't fucking believe you. There is no fucking way that countries in the midst of these incredible strifes economically and socially will just say, come on in. Come on in. Everybody do it. Everybody. I mean, it's weird. Right? I thought they were refugees. Plenty Why can't they go back to where they fucking came from if all of this room just opened up and all these people are gone and like what? Why, why should we why should we take in these refugees from somewhere else when we've all got problems now that we have to deal with? Why why should they come here instead of going back to where they are because of the blip? Why would the blip make that? Why would that happen? Well, the, the reason why there are refugees now is because people came back and they don't have a home, right? That's why I find it confusing. Like, surely the refugees are the ones who would be pro-borders because it means that they can go back to their country or like that they... Or would it be people who were displaced because now people are back in well, their the homes, thing. like, they need the to get show, back? The show brings that up as an issue, but never says anything else about it. It's like... Yeah. Yeah, that's an issue. We've not gonna, we're not gonna say how we've been dealing with it, except that it's a problem, and it was dealt with, kind of, but not really, maybe. It's like, I was kind of a Falcon's like, it was kind of a good thing that half the people fucking disappeared, I guess. It would be, we're so nice to each other. And like, yeah, that's you Captain America had, right there. She has a point. That's what he, yeah. He that's was, our right. guy. He has a point. And then, boom. Just like that, it goes right back to the way it He used kicked to be. it. Oh, yeah. You know, it, might be, it might be real hot, you know? <laughs> <laughs> to them, at least Carly's doing something. And so, <laughs> the Flag Smashers want. That is oh, so fucking. Oh, oh, them. They're really bad. It's so dangerous to, them, at least to say that. Murdering people with fire. Oh god, it's so bad. That's that's probably Jeez. the. I don't know if it is the worst. It's one of the worst moments for destroying Falcon's character. Yep. Jesus. Want to return to a world without metaphorical flags, as in no countries, no borders, and while their intentions can definitely be. Just say meta metaphorical because it doesn't make sense to smash a flag. Metaphorical. Yeah. <laughs> Sympathized with the show shows no, them, especially no, Carly, I don't empathize growing with that. in no, fuck no, fuck, no, fuck you, <laughs> fuck that, no fuck borders, no, no, fuck that. I don't empathize with that goal. That is, I, I'm gonna downright say it. That's an evil goal. I think nobody empathizes with the goal of no borders. That's insane. We've been over yeah, this I, in the other I, stream. Everything falls apart when you have no borders. Yeah. That is a foul goal. I don't think there's any solid principle behind it. I think it's ridiculous. You're a crazy bad person if that's actually so, something that you want. So my thing is, is um, I I definitely like the whole I'm a citizen of the world kind of thing, but like logistically, not really. Like logistically, it's really difficult to govern if you have to govern like ten billion people all at the same time. Yeah, we split down for a reason. Literally down to well, our rooms, in our houses, in our streets, in our towns, in our city, you know, like and so on. Well, yeah, I mean, so, even in cities, you have different count. I don't know if you're in America, but in Australia, you got like. Yeah, I mean, of course you would. You have different councils for, like, different yeah. cities and, and we stuff have, like that. Yeah, yeah, different counties, and they have uh, different counties, different towns. I mean, you have the town halls, and you have the, the, the local elections exactly. for the mayors and the treasurer mm -hmm. and all that stuff. Then you have the state stuff, and then do 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 do, do, do all the way up to the you know, federal stuff. Um, you know, I this reminds you, we have the whole meme of this reminds me of Karl Marx. This reminds me of Donald Trump. America first doesn't mean America alone. It's a good quote. I like it. It's this confusion that I, I countries should take their take care of themselves primarily. I think that on an individual level too. But that doesn't mean you don't help people. That doesn't mean that you're an isolationist. Uh, I remember those. It's, I don't. It's just this naive. Under, it's, why can't we all just? I, it's it's like the extreme version of that. It's this weird. We should. <sighs> It's the whole do better thing in a different application. Why can't we all just get along without board? Why can't I just go wherever I want, essentially? Well, this is the thing. If someone wanted to argue, it's like, well, the show is saying she's wrong for no borders. But, you know, we need to sort out this problem. As Falcon says, there is a problem. It's like, yeah, but you didn't offer any solutions at all. You just said there was a problem. And the GRC are trying to deal with it. They are trying. You're blowing them up.
<laughs> you fucking morons. Increasingly violent and radical and not in the epic way. Ah! And Zemo is out here increasing the tension Darn. of it all. He believes no, but that makes Sam look really bad. Carly is so evil, like cartoonishly so, in fact. Well, remember, she does this stupid, like, grid when she's gonna try and kill Winter Soldier. It's like, what the hell? <laughs> I don't know what they were thinking like with well. that. Yeah. Also, yes, uh, that is Community. He's been watching it recently, yeah. I think. That's probably what it is. Uh, all right. And Zemo is out here increasing the tension of it all. He believes that Carly is a supremacist. He believes she that is. the she super is. soldier serum. He, uh, how would you define her as a supremacist, just for me? I mean, oh, sorry. In... I wait. Hold on. Is she? <sighs> Damn. In the no, case actually, that she is, no, nah. So, in the case that she is undoubtedly, pr... she thinks that her she's so important, and her people that she's fighting for are so important. That they are, they it justifies her using all of this violence and terrorism in order to do it. This puts them in a position above everybody else. Um, I think my clarification would be not not supremacist, just good old fashioned terrorist. That's that's what she is. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah, she's definitely a terrorist. Absolutely. Yeah. Undoubtedly. Well, if terrorist has any meaning, she fits it. <laughs> At least oh, from what yeah. I understand. If you can't maybe. have, yeah, if she's not a terrorist, I don't know if that word has. Yeah, that word just might be anymore. Well, yeah. What's funny is I've seen uh, there was someone like me a thread from like the Marvel like main sub discussing the uh, the scene where it says like oh she uh, don't don't use labels like terrorist or whatever and how like how that's really dumb dialogue and the thread was all about like wow so many people missed the point what he's saying is when you label people you don't address the issues they have it's like what. I mean, this whole season was dealing with whatever the fuck she was trying to do. She's still a terrorist. That doesn't change anything. It's like she's the label is to denote the horrors that she's actually incurring on people. Like, there's a reason that label is there. Fucking the idea that as long as you have a point, I am sure we keep coming back to it. I'm sure, Red Skull had something of a point mixed in with his horrors as well. A lot of people do. Like, yeah, but it's, there's very often some level of truth or some meaningful message that's deep down buried within. Even like, yeah, even if they're fucking absolutely crazy, you might be like, well, see the point that's being made. But the systems have created a mental health issue or some shit like that. To be like, okay, but she's a terrorist and what she's doing is incredibly wrong. She has to be stopped. It's like, yes, but she has a point. They'll be like, can you not? <laughs> can you can you stop the? You know what? At least she's doing something. You're like, oh, Sam, please. <laughs> like, you're really making this difficult to deal with as a problem. You know what? Let's not capture them. Let's uh, let's talk to them. I just uh, oh man, it's some weird shit. Serum will corrupt. Flag smashers will place themselves above others, unable to realize that that isn't assured. And Steve Rogers, for example, isn't like that at all. But that's the thing, isn't it? Steve Rogers is one of a kind. No, he's not. Right. No. He's not. I'm sorry, would, Steve Rogers actually... is a... Well, I mean, it's like... And the an idea is a good... Oh, fuck me. Um, <laughs> yeah. Because I was like, he's a good person, but... Oh, fuck. The, yeah, that's the thing. Like... He, uh... If we consider him up to Infinity War, that's alright, right? But yeah. That, mm, he that was Steve a... Rogers... Uh, well, so this is the problem, actually. I kind of don't like this yeah. uh, whole Steve Rogers is what it is. It's like, you know, a lot of the Avengers were, like, really, really good people. Yeah. And a lot of them didn't blow up a Triskillion on top of a bunch yeah. of Yeah. And, yeah. and they, not necessarily all of them had, like, innate, you know, like body powers rather than they had to have things that boost them up, maybe technology or whatever. Because I was just thinking about, um... You know, like Bruce Banner, for example, it's just like, yeah, you're not as good as Steve. I'd be like, that's not. Why, why are you saying that? I don't that? think that's fair. No. Yeah, like, what, what are you doing? Like, Bruce, what's wrong with Bruce? Like Tony, Tony was too selfish, or he was too ridden with like worry, and he made choices that weren't good for the the country or the world or whatever. I just be like, wow. And yeah, I think um, doing a do, going a little far with hero worship here. Steve was uh, not only not perfect, but um. Some people that I would go, I mean, fucking Peter Parker's better than Steve. <laughs> like, I think so. I would say so. Yeah. I'd say that, um, I mean, well, I guess now it, I'd say that John, uh, uh, fuck, uh, my brain. Walker is, yeah, he's. 
Well, he didn't drop three helicarriers on innocent civilians. That's true. He Though he hasn't yeah. had the opportunity to. <laughs> yes, maybe sure. he would. Who knows? Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Would he? Maybe would he drop three helicopters on a crowded city? Try. Dude, it'd be so funny knows, if yeah. he neutralizes them, and then, like, Fury is like, are we going to crash these into each other? And he goes, no, that would be very unwise. We need these as tools to no, defend the planet. No, can't we just land these safely? Uh, can't we just never... land them and uh, just drop them in the river or something? And Fury, can I, if can we I, were can to we destroy them... Can we fly these into the ocean and drop them in? Yeah, it's like, if we were to destroy them, it wouldn't be here. That would be crazy. <laughs> that would be insane with all of these people beneath us. What with, you know, gravity. What does it feel? Like it's someone else's. There's all this Why did that sound weird? I don't know it why. It did. Yeah, the music felt like it overpowered in the the imbalanced audio. Like hmm. it was like it's someone else's. There's all this shit about the flag smashers and the power broker, and it's all pretty messy, and it prevents the series from being the best it can be. But when the series, what do you mean by the best? You no, know, th that would be what the writing, mean? and the, that'd just kind of be everything. Yeah, what do you mean by best it can be? There is no such thing as best it can be. It's yeah, oh yeah, that's right, because it's all be good. Ever. Because there is no good and bad. Because mm. all art is just beautiful, magical puppies and rainbows, and none of it's worse than anything else. What is in that? What are those? What are those cups? Are those like wine glasses and shot glasses? They're like, but they're like golden goblets. <laughs> are those in a shelf? Like, are those decorative? Or are those meant to be used? I can't answer those questions because I can only speculate. That's weird that they wouldn't be like clear, so you could see that, like, the color of the you know beverage and. That's. Oh, I'm sorry. Someone she's in chat not drinking out of one. Said. What people beneath them? They're over water. They drop into water. The only building there is the shield slash hydro build. My good man. There's it, people screaming. <laughs> there's, there's, and also, as we saw when, when Romlo got crushed, remember how there were four dudes that were just nearby who were dead? What if they were alive, which Steve had no reason to believe they wouldn't be? And I, just you, you need to need to revise your statement when you say he only dropped it on a building with shield people in yeah. it. Yeah. Please revise that statement. Like, Never say he, that again. He only dropped it on a building. Yeah. Never say that. That's again. like Excel. You know, yeah. It does so with so much force because it knows what it wants to say with at least one of its stories. Captain America, the hero, Steve Rogers, is a great man with incredible ideals, willing to go against his country in order to do what's right. But Captain. Not a good visual for that. He is fighting the Nazis. <laughs> yeah. America is more than or Hydra Nazis, whatever. Steve Rogers. It's a symbol that has many different meanings to many different. But he's been the only Captain America that there is, mm -hmm. so he's kind of really tied in a deep way to the title Captain America. And as far as we know, it's not even really a title until this. Um, like we know it now, but um, I don't know. It feels like you can argue trying it's... to separate Steve Rogers from Captain America is going to be pretty difficult before this. Yeah, um, but if you're going to bring in someone else as a result of trying to pass over the mantle or whatever, surely you'd be like, does he embody all of the things that Steve did rather than what Captain America is? But then at the same time, like my instant assumption is, oh yeah, to be Captain America, you'd have to be, and then names a bunch of things that Steve was in his prime. <laughs> Not necessarily. Because if it Steve turned out to be a shitty Captain America, then, like, Captain America would be bad. Yeah, it probably would have died out but... as a label. Yeah. ...different people. Damn, Bucky, have only ever really seen Captain America as Steve. Meanwhile, people Everyone like Zemo and Isaiah like see Steve. the shield and think of the problems in the world. Those stars and stripes don't mean but nothing But that's dumb, to me. yeah. So the show says that they're wrong, and we know that they're wrong. Yeah, pretty much. Um... So fucking hell, stars and stripes. I am Patriot was covered in stars and stripes, you fuck. Desire to become a superhuman cannot be separated from supremacist ideals. Anyone with that serum is inherently on that path. That's also the kind of thing Walker now has to That has, has nothing to, deal to do with, with America, though. That has to do with super yeah. soldiers as a fundamental principle. Yeah, he doesn't, he doesn't that's care like where human from. nature he's talking about. Yeah. Like his, or at least his Not view America. on human nature. Yeah. You've invented that. Oh, do you know who back. I am? No. Oh, don't show that scene. <laughs> yes, I do, and I don't. That's care. the thing. the The people who watch the show 
like he looks like he's cross-eyed. I like but... how he, he put the spit afterwards. The reason why to he did that was because he spat on him. Well, no, it's to help with copyright, probably. Oh, do you think that's why? Uh, well, oh, well, maybe. Who knows? With I him. guess I don't know. Uh, yeah. I don't know. Uh, but people see this, and like, oh, this this is like the first Shafrilis, I think. He's he attributes more weight to Walker's character from this scene instead of bailing out of jail, yeah. saving lives, yep. you know, the the constant humility, the the self doubt, and his conversation with Lamar and his wife, like that. But because people. Because people are really easily gullible. And unfortunately, a lot of really gullible people who don't think or can't think deeply are people making videos about media. So that's just not helpful at all. Well, there's nothing mm -hmm. we can do, Ranks. Freedom of speech. <laughs> if only... <laughs> only there was some kind of law. If only there was no if such only... thing. It's kind of brilliant how the show makes Walker very obviously not Captain America. His attitude, his behavior, you ultimately all say this, But you're all the wrong. It's just not thought about that much. It's just, Lee did the evil thing, okay? This is definitely People evil. People don't think about things. They just don't. They don't. They have no critical thought. Nating in him, someone with authoritative power, murdering someone who, while in the wrong, can't not defend murder. himself and is begging for- Can't defend themselves, they totally can. He's, They're fucking super he's a super soldier. Carly can, like, the shield, so this is the problem with the shield, is that they just decide in individual scenes whether or not it's a weapon or not. Like, that's why he can throw something at Carly, like, 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 they can block it, or like a chair, right? <laughs> like, you could, you could just kick a chair at it and it just stops it and- and, and like there's no reason the super soldier couldn't just catch it with his hands that guy on the ground is a super soldier he's not just a normal person well it's, it's been over by a couple of people that uh there's so much he can do in the position that he's in um just doesn't and maybe it's because he got scared could be a lot of reasons but walker's obviously <laughs> going for the execution and he's successful um but this guy is still absolutely a threat Oh, yeah, absolutely. He is the weapon. For his life. John Walker doesn't have what it takes to be Captain America. Yes, he is. He is. John he is. Walker's fucking incredible. He's such a, such a good person. We need more John Walkers. If you think that John Walker is a bad person, you failed. <laughs> Just want to go through all the reference of Brad Table. I want to ask you about all the different things John Walker did, and I want to see how he rationalizes it as, like, evil or non-Captain America -y? Yeah. Fascinating. Should have been clear as this bit of dialogue popped up. You ever jump on top of a grenade? Yeah, actually I have, four times. It's a thing I do with my helmet. It's a reinforced helmet. It's a long story. And even though John How Walker... How does that make him a bad person? What? what? That makes him a good person. He's jumping on grenades and you're like, yeah, it's a bad person. Is he trying to imply that he's like showing off? He was he literally asked. asked. He was, he was yeah, asked. he wouldn't have said that if he wasn't asked. Also, and the, a it, lot of people who get Medal of Honors get it by jumping on grenades and saving all the people so, around them. So, the so that shouldn't is, be a surprise even. Well, but the, the fucking thing about that scene is it says more about Bucky. Bucky is saying, like, you, person who saved my life, haven't jumped on a grenade, so what does that say? It's like, Bucky, that is not what determines whether or not someone is good, you fucking weirdo. Yeah, this scene, like, I don't even think that... I can't blame someone for not jumping on a grenade in that that doesn't mean you're a bad person because you don't like that's like that's an insane thing to do that is a yeah that is a there's a reason we give people medals of honor for doing that because that is not typical behavior but um I will just... but yeah this scene is basically it it says more about how Bucky and Sam are just shit yeah than it does to say about how Walker is good even though it does say that Walker is good it's amazing to me that um like, that might have actually been the intention from the showmakers, too, for all I know. They were like, yeah, we're gonna have him say, oh, yeah, I jumped on, like, four of them. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm even better. And then they have him have that dialogue, they have him say it that way, after what Bucky said. And I'm just like, so all you've done is make Bucky look like an asshole. <laughs> like, that's all yeah, you've Bucky's done. Yeah, Bucky's an asshole, and Captain America only brings it up when... I keep calling him Captain America, because he just is. Um, but uh, Walker only brings it up when he's asked about it. And yeah. This and is... we even had the interview earlier in the episode where he was deliberately downplaying all of his accomplishments. So Yeah, he's he's great. I was just trying to think of it like um 
maybe guns or cars or whatever, but if, if Rags, you were talking extensively about, like, the inadequacies of a particular car or gun, then someone goes, do you, have you even shot one of those? And you go, yes, I have, actually, many times at the local range or whatever. And they go, wow, that says everything I need to know about you. Yeah, look you're at like, you bragging what? about this and, ooh, acting like you're a big man. And... And... I don't know, don't ask, that's like, just... Don't, don't ask me questions if don't you don't want me to answer them. Yeah. <laughs> Good God. Amazing. Yeah, actually, I yeah, have four times. It's a thing I do with my helmet. It's a reinforced helmet. It's a long story. And even though John Walker isn't the greatest guy, he's genuinely doing his best, which is what makes his character so compelling. You know what? At least he did said that. So at least, at yeah, least I was about that, to say, yeah. like, yeah, this is this is nice to see. Okay, what did High Thanks Top for even, just, uh, what did High Top even uh, say about Walker? Something. Did he even come up in High Top's video? I can't remember anymore. I don't know that he did. I all he talked High about was how he was very America's little soldier. about Walker at all. That was all we got. He's America's soldier. <laughs> Insane. Like how do you cause Walker's like one of the best it's the best thing about the show. Mm -hmm. He is, yes. Walker is the best thing about the show. Walker is a fucking Chad. But there's a difference between his approach to things, which is pretty much violence first, compared to Sam's no. approach, which is how can, how can you have his approach be violence first and show a scene where he's literally letting Sam try and talk things out with the terrorist? Hey, hey Rags, that's one. How about, uh, can you think of a time where somebody tries to take his head off and he offers to have a talk with them? Oh, yeah, yeah. Hmm. I always forget about that stupid scene because hmm. nobody talks about it. Feel like... See, this is just a classic example. Like, Brad Table has said something. There's information he's had to omit for it to be true. That's... Sir, remind, remind me. I, I'm drawing, drawing a blank. The uh, Wakandans, when they try to kill the him. Oh, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. And, and he's they like, are, yeah, they're, they're the talk. bunch of fucking barbarians is what they are. Mm. <laughs> Spear incoming, yep. To understand me and attempt to neutralize the situation without anyone getting hurt, Sam has this caring, great. nurturing side to him. We see this in Captain America the Winter Soldier when he's helping people process their PTSD, their traumas. He has this caring side to him about I terrorists, get... but not about his fellow soldiers. <laughs> like, what the Jesus fuck? Jesus fucking Christ. Oh, I wish they had maintained this part of his personality. I really did. Mm. You'd think he, more than anybody, would understand the dangers of an enemy combatant that's, like, radicalized and trying to blow you up. You'd, you'd think he'd have some insight into, like, how to deal with situations like that instead of, you know what? We need to talk to him. Every time. Gotta talk to him. Yeah, in all of those missions where he went out to war and killed people, like, I assume that's what he did. What about them? Did he not try and talk them, talk to them, all those terrorists, and say, oh, you know, maybe... How come he didn't know, talk to the guy he pulled out of the plane thing. and then threw into a rock? Well, that guy was evil. Yeah, was like, I don't know. Yeah, ah, right, yeah, he was a bad guy. He, there was no saving him. <laughs> Gone too far. <laughs> and in yeah. Falcon and the Soldier, we see him trying to understand Carly's issues to better resolve the conflict. No, the bullet will resolve this <laughs> Carly conflict. Carly in general is a fine... He put conflict on the screen. Uh, and Conflict. he put it in a different font as well. Oh, change it up. Ooh. Flight. Mr. Creative. Carly in general is a fine, albeit underdeveloped character. No, she isn't. Fuck She's Carly. She's not fine. Um, I don't even know what to say about her as a character. She's a psychopath. Like, uh... She's, yeah, she's a fucking psychopath, and even her own soldiers are like, Jesus fucking Christ. I don't know, like, if someone's like, well, what are you, is she consistent? I'd be like, I, I guess? Her plan and her goals are ridiculous, and they make no sense, and they're bizarre yeah, and weird. The only way I could argue she's she's consistent is that she's so immature that she thinks what she's doing will achieve what she wants. Like, she's that stupid. That's yeah. all I got. She kills people, but only people that were involved with the mistreatment of other human oh, beings. No. no! Fuck you! Oh. Fuck you! How? No. Wow, those guys who were just told to just guard- We got these supplies, can you just guard these supplies and make sure no one takes them? Because we're going to use these for, you know, stuff. And they're like, yeah, sure, we'll just make sure, like, we're just going to sit around make sure no oh. one takes them, I guess. And those people get blown up for it. Like, wow. The, hey, well, wow. look, they were kind of involved, all right? <laughs> so anyone working for Fucking the GRC hell. in like an office or a janitor, <laughs> can she just murder them? Why does every video essay always reveal some strange morality? <laughs> like it's these people it's are a, weird. They're they're bizarre like with their morality. Brown table, no. <laughs> Why did you say that? What are you doing? Why? God 
Damn it. So close. We're this close to great. Uh, fucking hell. She kills so, people, but only people that were involved with the mistreatment yeah, of other human beings. Hey, uh, so was Lamar involved in the mistreatment of people? What the hell? Well, Lamar was trying to stop her, so oh, that makes him, mistreatment. you know... And her motivations are noble. She's just going about it. No, they're not. What do you mean that noble? She wants to kill me. They're noble. This, this uh. like vague sense of everybody should get equal stuff now to blow up people. <laughs> like what? What do you want? To stop! Stop saying this! Stop it! Like you stop. can't. Like it is not noble to tell countries you can't be a nation anymore, and to tell a people that you can't like organize yourselves anymore. You can't do that. And you can't have your own groups. Like, that is a horrific thing to tell people. To just erase the identities of all of these cultures and these political institutions. That, that, is, a, that is a horrific thing to do. It's terrible. It's like, it's soft genocide. I feel like the damage caused by removing borders would be incalculable. <laughs> like... It would be catastrophic. Imagine, like, like I said, uh, we came up with that thing in the last stream. It was like, put her in control, and then she's like, right, finally, I can do right by the world. And after a whole bunch of, you know, paperwork and figuring out what we have, where we can go, she ends up just doing what the GRC are doing because it's like the most reasonable way of logistically like passing out the resources or something. She's just like, oh, I guess I just didn't get it. I didn't get what they were doing. You're like, yeah, probably not. You were like an insane person blowing people up. Bring back Lamar. His adventures. Well, she's just going about it in the completely wrong way. Her journey, going from wanting to save people to eventually killing people and being Wanting's okay with becoming a martyr because people. there will always be people who will believe. Well, that, that but that's ISIS. She's is that what happens? Is she a martyr by the end of this? Please no. How is she a martyr? Um, she's not a martyr. She's a dead terrorist. She got what she fucking deserved. What happens? Too late, we, unfortunately. Well, but, yeah. Remember, yeah. Sharon Cart is the one that finally ends her because Falcon yeah. can't do it because he's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> he almost dies because he's not willing to kill her. When did she want to save people? It's like I guess that was supposed to be, like, but that's her. Um, who did she? I don't know when just she was people. To save people. Well, right? remember, people were dying of disease. TM, like, and she would, they wouldn't have if they were helped by the GRC because GRC is too busy helping people who just came back, which, by the way, in the initial six months seems like a very reasonable thing to do. But the GRC yeah. is, that's what they're for. That's well, like getting upset at a school for the deaf or not, so like, giving thing. school to blind people. When I first watched this show, what I thought was happening was the governments were now still in place, uh, albeit different from what they would have been, obviously, but the GRC is this program or group or a council that was created specifically for those who came back. I thought that's what that was. But it kind of seems like the GRC is just the government. It's just like that is what the government is now, the GRC. That's what it's called. Also. And it's very confusing, but again, they don't really do much for world building, so I don't even know that they have any clue how it would work. They, they, they don't know. Even the flag's cause is pretty wild and pretty great. The only problem what? with Carly. It's Wait, pretty what? wild Sorry? and pretty great. Um, uh, no uh, borders, one people. What, what did he say? It's pretty. I need to play all that. Only people that were involved with the mistreatment of other human beings. And her motivations are noble, she's just going about it in the completely wrong way. Her journey, going from wanting to save people to eventually killing people and being okay with becoming a martyr because there will always be people who will believe in the Flag Smasher's cause, is pretty wild oh, and pretty great. Okay. I, I guess he just means it in terms well, of storytelling. She like, wasn't really a character at all. You said yeah, that it was fine. Now you're saying it's great. You guys. I don't. I just, uh, but like, uh, the, you just said this stuff. You shouldn't have to write your like your brain's memory. You should be like, oh yeah, that's right. I just said this other thing. Also, just proof watching it, right? Like, it would come up. Nah. The only problem with Carly is that her goals are too broad. The show makes it clear why mm -hmm. she's doing what she does, but it doesn't make her end game Not really. super clear. And without a clear end game, the audience will always one world, one people. That's what her her mode. That's what her, uh, her motto motive. is. Yeah, that, that's I, I, our that's our whole motto. Sometimes. He feels one that's world, too broad. 
No, I mean, I mean, the name of our organization is the Flag Smashers. What I mean, do you think obviously is referring to the destruction of countries. Yeah, uh, well, like there should be no countries. Pretty much, yeah. Uh, it should just be one country, if you will, the world. Like <laughs> one, yeah. Uh, and if you said like, because I love really... the idea of being ruled by some bureaucrat in fucking Belgium or something like that. That sounds great. I don't even know that that would happen, right? It would just be. It would just well, be yeah, anarchy. it'd be anarchy, and people would form countries immediately once more. Exactly, but, yeah. that's the really stupid part. Probably, if if every country agreed, it's like that's it, borders are done, we're dismantling. It's all everyone go nuts. It would just be like, okay, so us lot, we're gonna yeah, team up and make not. a little place called EFAP. Uh, you guys can join EFAP if you want to, but there are rules, and we have have democratically elected leaders or something. You know, and then someone else is like, no, the world is anarchy. It's like I don't fucking agree to that. Fuck off. We have property rights here. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm can... moving to the people. I'm moving to the Republic of Texas as soon as I can. I gotta try to get in before they, you know, start putting that wall up to save themselves. I mean, it's insane. It's so nonsense and insane. Uh, and so if he said it's too broad, it's like I, I think what you mean is it's impossible. Like, the, her goal is yeah. so absurd and stupid. I think it is impossible. It's just so incompatible with human nature and just groups. I imagine that it's impossible until we reach a point where we're so resource abundant and technologically advanced that it's almost incomprehensible anymore. Oh my God. I don't like, think for it as would long ever as, For as long as people have specific needs, there'll need to be governments. And for as long as there are a certain number of people and a certain scarcity of resources... They'll always I, be, you know. I think it'll persist be... after that. Uh no. Nah, I think like if we're talking about so far in the future that there's like a supercomputer that just governs everything and like has all the resources you could ever want. Like, why would there ever be countries anymore at that well, point? Cultures. Because we have different cultures. Yeah. Um. The and different still... values and different histories, I, but shared if... traditions. Mm, nah, I don't think so. I still, f I feel like there you, you reach some would... point of it. Why would why would that well, necessarily mean that you wouldn't have that you wouldn't have countries still like country in the sense of these are the borders of the country this area is governed by these people why wouldn't you just have like areas where people just congregate well, I don't know so but, have, but because there's limited amount of space I would also argue that like countries if the borders don't in any way represent a difference in like uh, experience of living like everywhere is the same it would still be useful like oh Wales is there England is there um, Oh sure but I guess it wouldn't be like countries as they exist right now is what I'm saying like it would be different at that point Yeah I mean it would be well, yeah if, different if, if resources were infinite uh there's going to be a shit ton that changes but I do think it would like how? But why I guess, would countries it, dissolve? Are you suggesting like case? how long would it take before the world is so like diverse with everybody everywhere at all times and all cultures are melting into each other and stuff that it would start to get arbitrary to even say like I'm from um, X place? So I guess it's the uh, it's the question of because you like even now in terms of you know the countries that exist right now used to be hold on I need to stop Tetris now this is <laughs> the countries that uh, used to exist. A lot of like the general trend seems to be that more and more countries get bigger and like the specific countries, the number of countries decreases. That seems to be the general trend. Like what Germany is now used to be a lot of different smaller states and what uh, in, the United Kingdom is now used to be a bunch of different smaller states. And like what, you know, America was, was a bunch of separate colonies that then formed together. So there's like subdivisions, but the broader system, like it gets bigger and uh, absorbs more and more. That just seems to be like the general trend. And I could easily imagine seeing that like continue as a trend, the more that, um, the more that you sort of move towards uh, resource abundance. I'm not so, sure like, I would still. Would take to like remove the mexican and canadian borders so that it just becomes one huge america and like how do you even oh well yeah but but i mean i guess i guess the example yeah. right is like the eu is a place where there are countries in it but you can move freely between those between That's, those states. i didn't think you meant that i i assumed you oh, meant oh yeah um yeah. okay just well then able to move i, I guess to clarify country. like i imagine the idea of that that the that there would still be a recognition of this area is here this area is here and and like this is what the people generally are like, but that people will be able to move more free. Like that the the division won't be as significant as it as it you know was before. That's kind um, of the general gist of what I figured. 
I guess I, I, I can easily see the world going that way. I wouldn't have enough information to say that I think that'll definitely happen, but I would like to like the ease of travel well, to be better. Well, I think, <laughs> think about it this way. Imagine like if we become a multi-planetary species. Imagine that we have like 10 planets. What what exactly does the Actually, government Actually, we have more like countries that? now than cuz we well, had it, Well, well, it depends, right? Cuz like you look at Australia, that's one country, but like all of the different groups that existed here as indigenous tribes, there were like a thousand. And I don't think that it would Is that be a accurate. Country each? Well, if you've got a group that have their own separate culture and language and uh, and and uh, government systems that they had, surely that's all that matters. And their own territory, surely that's what constitutes a country, right? In fact, I'm pretty sure that's like all of the categories that are recognized for what a country is. That's kind of what I'm saying is like, if you go further and further back, it was just incredibly small groups. Like, uh, really well, small groups. And the then the is, more though, that they congregate, the bigger that they get. That's why I mentioned, like, America, Canada, Mexico. I don't see, like, the next jump. I, oh, the, yeah, The yeah, jump sure. for America has been, you know, it almost makes a lot of sense. If there was, like, one small state near or right next to America that has all of America's laws and just doesn't really conform, I'd be like, I could see that one joining eventually, maybe, yeah, sure. But I don't know that Canada would ever just be like, well, we're joining yeah, America. Yeah, yeah I, I guess... I guess on a, on a more broad, uh, like a, like I said, if imagine if you had like a multi-planetary species. Imagine humanity had fifty planets. Does like this is Canada? What if like like if you had Canada in the United States and then you started having it in different countries? It's like so who governs? Like if Canada has a territory, I don't know, on like Mars or something, and then eventually they're like, we want to be our own. Um, would it would it be more likely that you would eventually just see like massive planetary governments form, or like yeah, not necessarily the erasure of the countries themselves, but more so that there would be some big authority oh. that oversees all of the. Um, well, one, one thing I, mean? I, say I would, would be that as soon I as would... we get to other planets, we will be there'll have to be Earth rules that don't apply necessarily to other planetary rules. Like that would have to happen. It would. Yeah, you know. I think they would probably be similar. Yeah. Uh, because of a shared history I, yeah, and where I guess they came that's... from and stuff. Well, yeah, because I can imagine... And they'd be like UN rules, like like global rules on uh, just like human rights and things like that, like global I, guidelines. I guess that's what I'm getting at, though, is what would the significance be in terms of like how, how much more important would it become for these planetary bodies in terms of the authority that they have if they need to think about interplanetary stuff? If you know what well, I, mean. I figure that by the time we have interplanetary travel, it would be comparable to like old world, new world crossing the ocean. Yeah, maybe. Um, like as in, as in, they would eventually become. Well, I guess I would see that that like it, they would become autonomous eventually. In the same eventually, way that yeah. When they start off, autonomous. they'd be too small and they wouldn't be independent. But I feel like we would be progressive enough. Like kind of like how we are today, where like through the forties and the seventies, all the European country countries started relinquishing colonies and the things of that nature. Um, but the countries that are let's put it this way, the countries that are capable of space travel will be the ones who are socially progressive enough to understand that they will not be able to hold sovereignty over what was essentially gonna start out as an outpost that will become a colony that yeah. will vote to be independent that like that's i think that's just going to be inevitable when people settle there but it's still going to be worth doing imagine. because the countries that settle there first or settle areas first their influence and in being the mother country in a traditional yeah. and cultural sense will be extremely valuable well, yeah, like it's the our idea relationship that, like, with britain britain wasn't detrimented in the long term by the united states existing as a country like in the short term, maybe, but long term, there are benefits from uh, there were there were still the benefits of actually going to that yeah, place. Yeah, Britain is and definitely creating this, this mother state. country. Yeah, I guess it's just a question of because we talked about it before how like naturally you have like subdivisions because you don't necessarily you can't most people I don't think expect that somebody who lives like thousands of kilometers away knows how to govern your area, and that's why you break it. Down yeah, that's and, the like, thing. Work up from there. I guess my yeah. question is, I don't know how, what those subdivisions would look like if you were looking really, really far into the future, and there was a a, a massive like, and especially if um if you imagine that there was a supercomputer that intimately understood everybody's needs, um, like at that point, well, I think at that point the supercomputer is my concern, not the. I was about to say, I oh, feel sure, concerned about the supercomputer. <laughs> 
but I guess what I'm saying is like, imagine that it just was accepted as a as a thing. Like the supercomputer knows all. Basically, the Deus Ex Invisible War thing, where like basically the computer becomes God. You know, the quote of if God doesn't oh, exist, people would want to make him. We didn't have to have the supercomputer idea. We could have just had we we develop technology like creating lab food or whatever that comes from a recyclable source. Literally like converting fucking nuclear uh, waste into an edible food source or something crazy. Mm -hmm. And it just it just means that there's nobody needs to be starving on Earth anymore because we have like a bazillion times the amount. Yeah, of... we'll master atomic energy eventually and a glass of water will power a fucking city for a year. Or something, something like, like that, that, yeah. And, and so then it yeah. just becomes a matter of logistics once again, which by the way... The show is just trying. I just I feel bad for the GRC. They're trying. They are trying. Um, to get mani this maniacal foreigner. You've been saying a lot of things that are frustrating because, like, I'm not saying whether or not I think this is good or bad. I'm just speculating on whether or not I think this might happen. Like, calm the fuck down. Talking about oh, this is an Orwellian nightmare. Have you heard of it? It's like it's a thought. It's just <laughs> something that's being raised to explore a concept. Like, calm down, getting freaked out about exploring, like, an idea. Yeah, if... We can't... We, we got distracted from well, the brown it's, table thing. It's, it's relevant. We're still on, to on point, because this is what... We're trying to address what Carly wants, and the, the key detail that we have, I think, that's required to ever even question the idea of borders going down is infinite resources. Because once you have that, then you can build anything anywhere and everyone can have everything. Uh, the borders are now representative, not of, um... The, the, the state of the, the 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 countries and how they're supported from the, their own taxpayers versus the uh, uh, all the work that's done there all these kind of complicated things instead if everybody's got infinite money and food and water it's like so now it's really just about like um what it means to be in these places and so you know other pieces of functionality there's going to be a lot left to to be concerned with but the, the thing I'm trying to get at here is that we're all sort of sort of jumping to infinite resources as required before borders are going to be disappearing in any way shape or form and that's the one thing we absolutely do not have right now in this universe uh, oh um, there's, there's no way not in the world that we exist in sorry, not even for like the next thousand I, I was actually true about ours but i was more so referring to the blip unblip world imagine the right, resource yeah. struggle right now it's going to be insane well yeah that's the thing is like hey and again we talked about it before in the last stream but like imagine if you are if you live in a country would you be cool about having your home shifted into another country like, mm -hmm. would you be cool if uh, if you lived in this country and then uh, the border's like, all right, now you're a citizen of X country now. It's like, but I liked my old country. Yeah, but my Wait. old country was my people, my family, my history, That's my, my, home. my culture. Yeah. yeah, like, yeah, my I have, you know, patriotism is pretty great. Well, <laughs> and I now, yeah, I, I don't live here. I don't know these people. I don't know their ways, their culture, their world. Well, this is the thing. If, if someone was like, uh, whale, you know what, let's make it like a thing for both. Wales and England can be joined together, they will now be called Wingland. And it'd be like, I think both sides of Wingland. this were like, I don't Land think. Land of Wings. And it wouldn't, uh, avoiding the, the stupid name, it's more so about, it's just like, well, no, I think both the English and the Welsh like that they are the English and the Welsh. We don't, it's like, it's like no, um, even if resource increased by like 1%, like, so there's just this, a little bit small, but there's an increase, there's a, I think most people probably still vote no. If you're like, I don't want to lose all of the shit that comes yeah. with being that, so. It's not actually about just, like, it, it's like the Brexit thing. It's not necessarily about, well, if you give this up, you might have a little bit less money and a little bit less this and that and the other thing, but there's a principle to autonomy that is very important, clearly, to a lot of people. Um, like how much, can you put a price on, you know, self-governance? Can you put a price on, you know, all that sort of stuff? And for a lot of people, no. Um, very complex. It's more complicated. Welsh yeah. is gibberish. Racism. Welsh is, <laughs> <laughs> Welsh is gibberish. But yeah, it, essentially, if you want the idea of a one world, one people, I use the term soft genocide. Don't take that in a way, but it's like the, the erase, it would require the erasure of peoples and cultures. I think, because I think it would that's all called, become would one thing. That is called a... It if it's one people. Yeah, if it's one oh, people. Right, yeah, 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 right. Well, okay, yeah, wait, yeah, yeah. so yeah. two things. I'm pretty sure it's called cultural genocide, right? Uh, it's an actual, like... I could believe it. Yeah. Um, and to a degree, it will happen, and it has happened, and it's something that just happens as time goes on. Different smaller cultures getting squeezed out, and there's not much to be done. Well, not much that can be done to save them. At the same time, if it was one willed... Um, then surely there would have been 
a bunch of culture deaths. They would have to have been. And I, yeah, I don't see how an entire planet can have one culture. Um, like how how are how do you share the culture with the people who are, like, let alone on the other side of the planet, but on the other side of the continent you're on. I suppose with how the geography is different and how biology is different between groups. It would dilute, how, how do you maintain that? It would dilute the meaning of the word. It would be like, what do we share? It's like, well, we, you know, we're humans. We breathe. We drink water. We enjoy conversation, storytelling, right? It's like, that's kind of cultural. You just feel like, mm hmm. <laughs> um, but maybe at that point we're so advanced that we could literally, like, move from those other sides of the earth, like, instantly. Got portal technology or some shit. I don't know. Yeah, like quantum tunneling. All kinds of things, maybe. You know, and being in uh, one of the poles is no different, really, than being in the other, because you can take it one step and you're already like, oh, hey, Bill, how you doing? And he's like, oh, I'm great in my, in my anti-freeze suit. That means I can be in the poles. I'm not sure why else he'd be there. Like, he's just, like, it's a cool place to be. It's very um, cool. Yes, and yeah, it's a, it's a super hypothetical, it's just funny because this is the thing, we're trying to generate a scenario in the future where maybe borders get weaker or blurrier, we're still having trouble justifying it, and she wants to do it there and then, which is insane. Yeah, I'm, I'm fine with the idea that one day borders will be less necessary, but I never I want them like to go inevitable. away. But yeah, I imagine that it's just that there would always be subdivision of uh of of like political and and you know societal. Yeah, I norms. think groups of people will be different enough to want to distinguish themselves from one from one another. And even if we're talking about like a Star Trek, like there's no like food and all that stuff is just infinite. You can just generate it; it's never an issue. You still have stuff to worry about, like space and property rights and things. Of well, that yeah, because I, I think that uh, and I also think that people demand like. In, in order to address the needs of, of individuals, there is a demand to have subdivisions of, uh, of, of like, the political offices, like, from federal to states to, to like, cities to councils. Yeah, I... In order... Because, like, how... If you live in... I guess that's why I like the supercomputer idea, because what if you had a supercomputer that had a bunch of different smaller supercomputers that are in each town? And you could Gosh. be like, supercomputer, there's holes in the road... And then the supercomputer, which is connected to the big, big supercomputer, goes, all right, I'll fix that road for you, buddy. Like, I'm not sure what that world looks like. Or it'd be like today, where if you want a pothole fix, you have to draw a dick on it or write the N-word so that the city <laughs> actually starts doing something about it. That's what happened in the, there's a street I live by, and there was a pretty nasty pothole for a while, and someone drew a big fucking cock on it. And then I got patched up pretty quick. So. Sweet. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, Brown Table, take it away. They feel slightly uh, yeah. unengaged with the conflict because they're not super sure what people are fighting for. It makes for really weird scenes where Carly and the Flag Smashers just talk. I'm trying to listen to you and read your words at the same time. I was about to say, I got my brain is like it's it's difficult for me to multitask. Like it is literally impossible to make a scene more boring than these. I, I read that and then went back to listening to him because the thing with subtitles in movies is the words match what people are saying. So. Yes, there's not an incongruency. <laughs> yeah, your brain is trouble. very easily able to accept what's happening, yeah. Scenes where Carly and the Flag Smashers just talk about their beliefs and how the world is screwing them over and how they're going to stop it, but like, how? <laughs> Seriously, how? The world isn't Thank screwing you over. You're, there's a difference between... So, like, not every unfortunate circumstance has, like, villains behind it orchestrating it who are at fault for it. Sometimes like, it's, it's bad luck. Yeah, it's like, I'm, of course, I'm very skeptical of, you know, governments and things like, things like that. Sure, as we all should be. Uh, but there is an aspect of they're doing their best sometime. And some, like, when there's a natural oh, disaster... That. Maybe sometimes it's just really fucking tough to do and they're doing what they can and see, it, it's just not going to be perfectly resolved. At least if they had left it at that, you could speculate that they're not doing the best they can, but they literally talk to them directly and they're like, we have these issues to solve, Mr. Falcon. Well, how would you do it? And he's like, mm. <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> just I'd do better. Insane. Because like, even Brown Table just said, like, there's no... I, I'm almost proud, for him, proud of him for saying this. He was like, they don't have a plan. It's like... Thank you. You noticed something in there that was in there that was a criticism of that good job. Carly and the Flag Smashers just talk about their beliefs and how the world is screwing them over and how they're gonna stop it, but like, how? <laughs> Seriously, how? 
Thankfully, by plans are set in motion by the final people. episode. By the show's end, the most mid thing about the show is the Flag Smashers. There's this overall tone to the show that I don't think I've felt in the MCU since maybe Winter Soldier. Before that, oh, it'd have to be Iron Man. Plot? And I think it's because oh, the show, oh, along with those two movies, want to portray reality in a more serious, honest way. Tony. Um, so, uh, so the reality, so, okay, so if you get that from Winter Soldier, Winter Soldier's plot's like fucking nuts. It's insane. It doesn't make any sense I, whatsoever. There is a computer that has a Nazi scientist on it. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what is it about Winter Soldier he's actually referencing? It, it, maybe it's like, it feels a lot, um, the, I want to go, the grounded is the word that comes to mind, like, uh... It's easier to believe than like space portals and sure, yeah. interstellar armies. That doesn't mean it can't be any less nonsense and stupid. That's kind of what grounded. I, I don't know if you would maybe agree with that. Maybe you'd be like, it's not about comporting to reality. It's about being. Really Did helpful. you just use the word honest about like like it's trying to be more raw? Maybe like the world's really like that. But the winter, but Falcon Winter Soldier is not at all honest about it. It's just it's insane. It's like <laughs> cartoon <laughs> versions of reality. Like, Falcon is poor and can't get a loan. Also, he's an Avenger. Grittier. Like, he doesn't get a paycheck or something? I don't know. I feel like an Avenger would be all right. But this is the interesting part, right? So we say that doesn't comport to the reality we've been presented prior, and we give all the references, and then he's like, it comports to reality because there are people who are poor. Like, it, the interesting way that we can conclude these things. I just, I just, if we had a chance to chat with him, I feel like we'd get different answers asking different questions reality in a more serious, honest way. Tony Stark? Yeah, he was an arms dealer who propagated wars. Captain America? Worked in a corrupt institution of the government, S.H.I.E.L.D., and the only way to defeat Hydra was to completely destroy S.H.I.E.L.D. For but that was a mistake. Well, yeah. That was not, that was <laughs> yeah, not that the only way. That was absolutely not the only way. No. Gotta Good destroy God. S.H.I.E.L.D. It's like, it's like, I don't know, I feel like it, if we use this analogy with like a human being and a tapeworm, like, well, the only way to get rid of the tapeworm, cock shotgun, you know, is I feel like there are other ways to do it. I feel like this was one of the worst ways to do it. For it to be rebuilt by the right people. And now the Falcon. <laughs> so the that reference. That doesn't address the problem because. Wait, the reference. Was he's yeah. just showed is to Cap's surprise, a helicarrier saves the day. Because Cap would have downed this one too if he could have back in Winter Soldier. Yeah. <laughs> I feel like and this also, doesn't capture the, the gravity, that's all. It doesn't even address the problem. S.H.I.E.L.D. was founded by good people. Yes. But they died off. So the same problem could happen again. Absolutely, yeah. With the Task Force or the GRC or any institution, which is yeah. obviously a part of what uh, Steve learns, but it seems to... It's all very confusing listening to it get summed up this way of the government, S.H.I.E.L.D., and the only way to defeat Hydra was to completely destroy S.H.I.E.L.D., for it to be rebuilt by the right people. And now, the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Isaiah Bradley is one of the most important characters in the entire series, despite no, showing not. up in a handful of scenes. He's not at all. Someone who was tested on by the it's government to ensure the continuation of the Super Soldier Serum to create the next Steve Rogers. His story is so tragically told, I cried, man. I <laughs> wow, that says so much about you and how fucking cheap your emotions are and how easy it is to manipulate your little child brain. It's it's It does come across uh, like all of the people who are praising the show are praising elements that are just dropped in really willy-nilly. Like, this is this, be sad. You're like, yeah, that's sad, okay, I'm gonna cry now. Isaiah has lost faith in his country and in the symbol of Captain America. Because all he sees when he sees the because shield is the pain it caused him. And the okay, gotcha. That doesn't even... You know what's interesting, just to think about that, he's like, oh, he sees the pain it caused him in the shield. It's like, so why would that be changed by watching Falcon with it? Especially when Steve Rogers was, by all accounts of the people in the show, like the greatest human being ever. Do you get what I mean? He's like, ugh, oh, that shield, I hate that shield. And then it's like, now that's being held by Falcon, that's kind of chill. It's like... What, yeah. what was wrong with Steve? Fuck that Steve guy. He was a whitey. It's very fucking strange to me. I don't really get Isaiah, but I don't think he's to be gotten because he's an, a retcon. Yeah, he was alive for the show to preach a message about America bad, so... It's in history that were erased for it. A couple of the boys get captured on a mission. 
Ah, uh, it's, it's, it's like the same. He did this too. It's like, yeah, yeah, we got it. Those are my men. My brothers, not evidence. So I bust out of the facility one night. It's so fucking easy to manipulate these simpletons. Like, let's just make it up. Let's just re retroactively invent this character, and he'll just be, like, compressed because he's black, and it'll be super sad, and everyone will clap at us because we did the thing. That worked. It, clearly it worked. These people, you can play these people like a fiddle. And I brought them he boys back. played us like a damn fiddle. He, he yeah. brought them boys back just like Cap did. See, yeah, we already see? knew that, though. Why are you playing the dramatic footage? That was obviously what they were going for. Yeah. But it doesn't function because this is just made up. Like, they just added this on later on. Yeah, ah. next show we could just make up an Asian with the same story. Or a Martian. And then what, are you going to cry again too? Yeah, and, they, and then and the they next episode they'll cool. make up a trans person and then they'll tell the same fucking sob story and then you'll cry too. And we just go on through every group ever. Pretty much. Um... It's getting a little embarrassing, right? Because it's just like, can you guys just make stories? Why do you have to keep, like... Because there's clearly a clone of Captain America. That's, like, the whole idea. And people are actually pulling that out as, like, oh, my God, can you see the connection? Like, yeah? yeah? Yeah, that was on purpose. That was the how, whole thing. Yeah, I don't see how you don't see it. That That's all it was. Well, yeah, that's it. That, that, what else is there? That, that's all it is. He's literally stapled on as Captain America, but black and depressed. It's like, oh. Okay. And by the way, if they had had this idea from the get-go, it probably could have been pretty cool. Um, like that a, could have been really cool if they built it from the start. Been, yeah. There's just these hints. There, there's a, another person, and we get like little images of it, and some people are maybe aware of it. I don't know how it works exactly, but you'd want to fully integrate it, and then it's only revealed now. So I still think it's ridiculous that he would have been kept a full secret, and that Winter Soldier would have not mentioned it to anybody during... Wait, why wouldn't... I feel like this would just be in the Hydra files, wouldn't it? Because he would yeah, know about it. Know. He would, well, Winter Soldier was attacked by him. He'd be like, this is fucking Super Soldier from America. Oh, yeah. He's definitely not I Steve. Think we, I think we mentioned that. And so it would go into... Well, it's not just that he knows. It would be that he would have told Hydra. Hydra would have stored that info. Like, why wouldn't they? Why would that cover it up? And then it got leaked. And would people be like, wait, what? You know what's funny? That's an avenue for them to prove that he was a real dude. But it, sadly, it's also an avenue that people would know about it. So it doesn't... <laughs> the tightrope they so will. can't work, yeah. yeah. <laughs> they simultaneously want to prove that he's absolutely real, but they also want it to be that you can't prove that he's real. <laughs> it's like, hmm. I feel like we're, we're stuck here. And what did I get for saving their lives? It's an important moment for Sam because it's the question of, should I be Captain America? The bigger question being... No, that because the whole should I be Captain America, should you should be looking inwards to yourself as an individual. Mm -hmm. Not like, should I be Captain America because I'm black? It's like, what a ridiculous fucking thing. Yeah. Like, as if it was ever... It's so nuts. It should be, should I be Captain America because of my personal values and my convictions and my willingness to do what's right? But, oh no, I'm not the right color on the outside. Should I be Captain America? Well, that's why they gave him the white outfit. The count of the blackness. That outfit's so goofy. <laughs> <laughs> and should I even try to become the symbol Steve represented? A symbol that represents America's greatest values. When a part of America won't accept me as the face of that symbol. I mean, a part of America will never do anything. So I was gonna just say. fucking cry about it forever, till the end of time. There would have been. cry about it forever. It would have been all kinds of Americans being like, wait, Walker, who's this guy? And you look at his history and you go, he votes for Republican or d Democrat. It wouldn't matter. The, like half the country would be like, yeah, I don't want that way, guy. <laughs> I don't want that guy being Captain America. Yeah, the, the, the idea that anybody would be fully accepted, that's not going to happen. Forget Carly, forget Zemo, forget Sharon. One of the things the Falcon and the Winter Soldier is all about at the end of the day, like it or not, is representation. You know, it's interesting. Um, right, well, it, go, it shows me and... that uh, no matter what gender or race you are, you could be a shittily written character. <laughs> you who's could be a horrible yeah, person, I, even if you're yeah, black. Yeah, lots of representation. Okay.
Interesting. I'm rather young, you know, just a few years I ago, tell. I was a dumb teen who thought that- See? Ha there it is. We do the thing where we're a like- A few years ago, I was dumb. Now I'm not. Now I am not. <laughs> yeah, he's like, okay. Having to see yourself in superheroes was- That's not how that works. Someone- b If I see fucking Palpatine, I don't go, ah, a white piss. <laughs> there he is. I see myself. <laughs> You're like, no. I'm so- yeah. I'm so sorry you have this horrific view of the world where you have to see someone with the right proper skin tone <sighs> so that they're human enough for you to identify with. Who cares if Peter Parker doesn't look like me? Spider-Man still rules. Superman's yeah. this white dude, but who cares? It's yeah. all about the character and their relatability. Wait, is he, is he setting this up to say that he was wrong? Yeah, yeah he was wrong. Uh, That's is what he's he? Doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, I was about to say, like, but, I agree but with this. But he's doing the unironic good thing. He is, yeah. No. We're, I'm sorry, guys. We're going. We're going somewhere else. This is not actually his point. I don't think. Oh, oh no. The one thing we like Brilliant. agree with, and he's oh. like, no, I was dumb to believe that. It's all about your fucking race. I'm not a racist, oh, by the way, no, but it's all about no. your fucking race. Please don't do it, Brown Table. <sighs> Your struggles and all that shit you hear time and time again, and then I saw Spider Verse. And for the first time, the I saw message. a Latino superhero on screen, yeah, a biracial was... Spider-Man. And the moment Miles' mom spoke Spanish and Miles spoke Spanish back, I knew that I had been wrong for years. What? Oh my oh fucking my god. god. I Dude. heard someone speaking Spanish and that destroyed my egalitarian principle. Wow. What, what a piece of shit. What the hell? This is not how it's- you well, not- no, stop The Spider-Verse wasn't about race, and it wasn't about any so, of that. If, like, it was about characters and individuals. This is crazy, man. If, um... This is insane! If there was, like, He's a new Spider-Man in Britain, and in his home scene, his mom, like, speaks a bit of Welsh to him, or they have the <laughs> accents, I- I would just be like, ah, oh, that's neat. If someone goes, well, you associate <laughs> yeah. with a board now, you, this is more of a relatable character. I'm like, no! Like, what? What? Because they're Welsh, I now associate, like, that they're a more like me. Oh, God, that feels so strange. It's yeah, like, all, all I can pull from this is that it's kind of a neat novelty that's, like, kind of icing on the, on the yeah. backstory, but it's not, it's not, like, integral, to, integral, integral <laughs> to his character. God wow. damn it, man. This is the whole I'm backwards so, thing we talked like, about before. It's like an, it's like an animal, right? So... So you have animals out in the wild and they can only like identify and they, like they'll only see their own kind as you know like their own, right? It's this super simplistic, poorly evolved, more animalistic and feral kind of mindset that I liked to have thunk that we've moved past and we've progressed past that and we're sophisticated and we're more understanding and egalitarian as human beings that we could see past that. But it's such a fucking regression. And it, it's, it's got to be some kind of a, a defect, a mental defect that you, you have a trouble identifying with things that don't look the right way according to you or that don't look like you. Uh, it's a fa is it a failure of imagination? Is it a failure of your ability to grasp things conceptually? Is is it a failure of empathy? Um, I guess it's just that's the thing is like generally I always thought that the whole strength of storytelling is the idea that through uh, getting you to empathize with a fictional character that it becomes more understandable about somebody's plight or somebody's struggles or journeys and that the general thing that binds it is empathy in the human experience which seems to be just universal for everybody kind of no matter where you're from or what your past is not brown um, table he's he is he's grown well, yeah because that's what's happening anymore he's, he's grown to where things that are supposed to be irrelevant are actually very relevant um which is very bad <laughs> i don't like that i have uh i've added this for um for Gadalb now as a quote. <laughs> <laughs> I mean that's basically yeah, swap a few words. Yeah, there you go. Alright, well maybe he's got more arguments on top of this. Yeah, let's see. Do I Peter Parker over Miles Morales? Hell yeah. I love Peter Parker. He's the OG. He's Bay, you know? How? But Miles has more in common with me than Peter ever will. And why? why? Because you can we... speak a little Spanish. Why? That's so not how it works. You could like it go. It has to be beyond whether or not they speak the same language, or whether like it can't be that superficial. And why would you? 
I just, I just don't like where it all leads. It takes us to very, very negative places when you're like, you know what, a character means more to me if they share my skin. It's like, oh, no. Well, you know, that. when Man. if you were, if you're white and you do this with whites, you are demonized. Well, yeah. I if guess you're brown we're... and you do it in this with other brown people, that's good. That's representation. Good for you. So I, guess, I guess what I'm trying to, because I'm going to steal, man. Like when we were watching Mortal Kombat, I was really happy when Kano was around. And I wonder how much of that was because he's Australian. Or because like, he was I carrying wonder... the whole fucking film. Yeah, that but I liked it. him a lot well, too. Well, no, I, I know he was. Yeah, yeah. But what I'm saying is like, I wonder how much in my head I'm like, ah, Australian. <laughs> you know, like when I watch it. And I guess I'm, but I guess the, I guess it's the whole thing of, I don't think I've ever been detracted from because somebody was not from Australia or didn't look like me or didn't speak like me. Like it's never been detrimental to my ability well, to mean, enjoy it. And that's kind of where I'm, I'm gunning for is like, we should be discouraging that, uh, despite the fact that it'll probably happen because it's just superficial connections. We're like, oh, neat. We should probably be like, well, yeah. And and again, to, to bolster what Rags just said, if I told you, any of you guys, wouldn't this sound really weird if I went, yeah, you know, Into the Spider-Verse, it was really cool, and I do like Miles, but like, I don't know, man, like, I, I just, I kind of empathize with Peter more because he's white. <laughs> I can you imagine? Yeah, I just feel that. like, yeah. Like, I, I realize that actually skin color does, make, yeah, just sw swap it and say, I, when I was a dumb teen, I used to think everyone was really cool and a hero I based on their character. Was equal. <laughs> yeah, the but same. now I saw Peter Parker and I just I identified with his whiteness, and now I I realize I use I was wrong, and now race really is that important. Yeah, and I feel like and everyone, I guess everyone will be like, "What the fuck?" Like, just well, say he was it. speaking. S oh, I'm sorry. It, it's the, the, my point was just that I would be upset if you guys didn't find that shocking that I had said it. <laughs> I'd be like, hey, yeah, come on, call me out. Yeah. Oh, dude. Uh, it's unreal. Oh, well. That's where we're at, I suppose. That's... And now, seeing Pedro Pascal, a Latino in The Mandalorian. Why would you... Okay, Why so... would you go to... Oh my so if God. if a Welsh actor had played the character of Mando the exact same way, I'd have been like, "Fuck's sake!" <laughs> <laughs> I would. You should feel insulted. Yes, it should be the opposite experience. You'd be like, "Why couldn't it have been a good fucking character for a Welsh person to play or Latino?" It's, it's doubly you... weird because he's like in armor ninety nine percent of the time. He's got there's no there's not even there's not even an Earth in Star Wars. I don't get it. Well, he's he oh, actually made it worse shit. because now we're talking about somebody with no fucking character, and he's like, "This is awesome just because he looks like me." Damn it, dude! When you get this all wrong. The whole shtick with Mando is the same as with Master Chief. Faceless dude, he could be anyone. It doesn't really matter. Like, what, does this apply to villains? Is? How does he? How does he view villains then? I have no fucking clue. I wonder if it, like, if you see a, a Welsh villain, I am supposed to be like, yay, <laughs> more Welsh villains because that's more represent. I have no idea. I just Welsh, never... some Welsh supremacist. He's going to restore the new world <laughs> order. Everyone, mandatory American. Welsh language. <laughs> mandatory Welsh. Everybody, every time they, <laughs> they salute him, they need to say the name of that town with the 20 syllables. <laughs> <laughs> He would generate in a pretty it's like, good comedy. It's like, remember the Alamo, but remember that place? Yeah, like, the characters get bored of them waiting for it to end, so they just walk off, and you can just hear it getting quieter in the background as they finish it off. You, you can make a lot of good jokes out of this, actually. I like it. The character that I identify most with in Into the Spider-Verse is fucking Spider-Pig, because I'm in, like, a cartoon world when I watch these videos. It's, it, well, it's funny you say that, because, like, uh... He's a pig, and he's a cartoon, and it's just like, he can be one of the most easy ones to empathize with just because of the attitude and the character, right? Because that's mm -hmm. what it's supposed to be about. That's the critical part. Who you are, not what you are. He couldn't have what chosen a are, worse example. It's a fucking yeah. bucket of a character, there is nothing in there, and it's he's just like... He's a plank. But he looks the the way I like him to look, you're like, ah. Oh. Oh, oh man, that's, it's, it sounds really it bad. Sounds I mean, so it, bad. It yeah, sounds, yeah. It sounds like oh, it sounds so bad. <laughs> yeah. He looks the right way, and I'm like, oh, that, but that's he what they're saying, though. Yeah, when you boil it down, because <sighs> Mando is nothing as a character. He is a plank with a well, helmet again, on. Imagine I we like use the Lou, I'll be right back. Imagine he was played by a fucking white guy, and we at the end of our analysis were like, at least he was white. <laughs> 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 oh. Yeah, that is, 
God. A big yikes. It's all yikes. And seeing like the she trailer, this Asian dude kicking ass, and Mark Grayson, another Asian character, uh, being sorry. the main hero, hero oh, of man. this anime. It feels weird when people say this. Like, there have been Asian ca What the- Have you not watched any, like, Jackie- Ugh. There are more now, though, and that's good. I feel like there's probably a similar- I- Man, I, I guess I can't relate because, like, I never, when I was, a, I don't know, I watched a lot of movies from the 80s and 90s, and that seemed to be the era where, like, we actually had all, everybody teaming up and working together and being buds. Yeah, you know I mean? You know, like, the era of Lethal Weapon, uh, Die Hard, Beverly Hills Cop, uh, Wait, Rush did you record this from Amazon? Um, maybe no, because Prime that's a trailer. That, that oh, is okay. a uh, so he must have, but because I think, and, like, and also, again, happening? this is very this is very much the same problem that happens when you're unfortunately, I think it applies to everybody in the uh, in the Anglo sphere, but especially in America, this idea it's like, oh, there's America, and then like all of the content that's not from America just evaporates because. Let me tell you, there are a lot of Chinese TV shows and movies, and there are a lot of Chinese actors in those projects. Similarly, there's a lot of Indian actors and Indian films and TV shows. Like, the content is out there where th these people exist, but, like, you don't look at it. You don't watch it. Yeah. <sighs> animated series Invincible, I'm just so happy that I get to see characters that reflect my roots on the big screen. And it's important for black kids to be able to see a story about a man that looks like them deciding to become the I, symbol of I, America. The story I, isn't condemned- Why does it matter that it looks like? What <laughs> the- Oh, oh my god, backwards, it's not- God, very, this very is bad. The, the important <laughs> part was the- it, your skin color will not stop you from doing whatever you want to do. Don't let people, like, ever convince you that that's the case. And now it's Don't like, let well... Don't Roundtable convince you that you need- that up until this film, if you were- if you weren't white, <laughs> that you couldn't be Captain America. It's, it's- you could argue that Iron Man 3 did more because Iron Man 3 didn't make a huge deal out of a black guy being America's superhero. It was just like, you know what? That could just happen because it could just happen. Yep. Oh. Deming Steve Rogers, by the way, Sam idolizes Steve. It's the symbol Steve wears that certain people have issues with, and they all have legitimate reasons for hating it, seeing the symbol as false hope. Sam in the end decides to wear it and give people hope again, and to become Captain America. God, it's so simple, isn't it? <laughs> and he gave people, yeah, I know, it's like well, Then he gave them hope again. Be like, okay. America, he has to train, and to do so, they do a montage scene. And oh my God, I've been missing montage scenes. So Dude, it was a pa it was a joke in like the early two thousands. So, to be critical of the montage scene would just be it made no sense. And then on like a subjective level, holy fuck, was it goofy. <laughs> Always fade out in a montage. So, he needs That's to learn to be able to throw the shield that he could already throw perfectly. He needs to be able to run. Run. It's not <laughs> like he's ever needed to be athletic and really fit for his job as Falcon. Yeah, it's like, uh, confused now. I'm like, back. He's talking about how awesome the montage was. Oh, the montage is a fucking joke. So is Brown Table. Um, I was while I was in the bathroom taking a shit. I was thinking about Brown Table, and so. <laughs> I was I was thinking, all right, he's he does interstellar space marine commence go sushi happy happy or whatever it's fucking called his shitty anime. Is is he gonna have representation in that? Because um, I don't remember seeing a brown person. Well, I'll tell you what, man. If there's no white the people, trailers. I certainly won't be happy. I'll be like, you know what? Yeah. And if there's no long people, oh, I'm writing a letter, I'm writing a really oh, long boy. letter, really long, straight to the top. That'll be long people. So much. You. One of the greatest things about the finale is that while cool and fight heavy, the climax is the death of a teenager and Sam arguing um, with those in positions of power to give more wait, is power. Is she a teen? She's um, way older than that. She's like mid twenties, late twenties, have... mid late twenties. I think Sam calls her a teenager, but I always assume she was an adult. 
Like, God, there's no way she's a teenager. She's not a teenager. I know she's 19. Oh, oh really? So, so the she's an adult, or though, the character? Really, that's the, the character, part. apparently. Um, so she's an adult. Yeah, so okay. she's an adult. So well, definitely, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, Nineteen is like the. It's like well, I guess you're a teenager. Yeah, I guess. Yeah, Wonder Woman <laughs> brutally killed plenty of sixteen-year-olds. So mm -hmm. I don't. I don't yeah, that's true. Um, so yeah, I guess he's referring to her as a teenager instead of terrorist because you know it sounds it doesn't like labels. Well, again, know. it undermines the fact that she burnt three people to death. Yeah, you um, know Hydra's kind of a label. They had a point. Oh, you guys went silent about that. What the fuck? Hydra had a point. No, silent, silent, silent agreement. Yeah, oh, okay. silence right, is good. consent. For a second there, I yeah. thought you guys like had some issue with Hydra or something. It's like, well, yeah, nope, sure, but... Right. It's the, and maybe, I really identified with Hydra. Maybe their methods, you know, are a little unusual. However... I say they didn't go far enough. <laughs> ...or to the people to stop treating refugees, human beings, like sheep, and to give the common... They like don't sheep. do that. They're they trying don't. To, they're desperately trying no. to figure out how best to deal with this horrible situation. Yeah, and and her group isn't getting as much as she thinks they should get. Even though, not not gonna lie, they look like they're doing all right. Uh, we went Especially this for stream. refugees Some with people. no homes. I'm like, yeah, like imagine, like think of how things are in Africa. Well, um, food, uh, water, shelter, right? But they don't. That that person died, right, from whatever illness. So it's like, oh, you don't have the kind of health care that could solve any problem. I guess <laughs> it's like, well, that is unfortunate. But you guys are definitely on the up and up. You're like you're on a good scale area. You're you're high on the rungs. You shouldn't really. And it's like no, we need to blow people up. You're like oh, don't no, don't do that. Because uh, there's so when you blow people up, uh, you hurt them. We need to you know, sit Carly down. Yeah, and, and then people it. hate you, and then they'll hate us. Well, it's just you know that, and they'll woman... think that we're insane and crazy, and they won't want to give us food and stuff that they could oh, give that to non-murderous yeah. people. Well, you're also you're stealing the the six month supply, which could have been for fucking anything, and now you're just gonna eat. I picture they do the thing like that happens in like uh, survival movies where like a fat character eats everything or something. Like they just eat all of it. It's like oh, but that that's not oh no, you child. You don't understand what it means to ration. There's so much to it, and uh, yeah, the, the sheep. That's how they were treating them, was as sheep. Like, you don't even fucking know what the GRC were doing. They asked the most basic question to Falcon, and he was like stunned. Person, people like you and me, more of a say in political decisions. No! That's what? Not, that's not no, he just tells them to do better! He, it's almost worse than Wait, that. What, because did, what did he just say, Brown Table? He I said it gives, didn't hear that fully. He said it gives like normal people like us a chance to like affect politics. You do have a chance. It's called voting and getting yeah, out there you can vote. and getting involved in politics. Yeah, not, it, not guess mention... what? The, this, the more local that you vote in, the more weight your vote has. But yeah, actually. But it's so stupid because like Falcon highlights like, so people from Group A and then group B. B's having some trouble. It's like, well, A's having trouble. And he's like, well, do better. Okay, well, we'll get right on that, because that's what we've been doing this whole fucking time, you moron. You just interrupted it to tell us we need to do it. It's like, thanks, good job. You had nothing to- what a fucking, like, horrible thing to imply as well. We need to add to the political discourse. How? Do better. Thank do you, better. citizen. Thank you so also, much. Also, Roundtable needs to vote on this. I just, what even, like, I, again, I just feel more and more bad Ugh. for the GRC. Like, I'm sorry, GRC, these people are stupid. <laughs> you need to speak to someone else. Speak to Zemo, he might have some good ideas. Yeah, Zemo, pro unironically, probably has some really good pragmatic ideas. Like, the, the you know, how do we deal with people who, are, like, reapparate in houses that no longer belong to them? And he, like, immediately, in a couple of sentences, explains, like, a really good way to try and mediate that. And they're just like, whoa. He's like, wow. Yeah, the Falcon's like, see, that's what I meant, do better. Whether you Virtually like the scene isn't. or not is up to you, but that is what the scene is trying to say. The moment felt like the writers genuinely were half making the speech fit the scene, and half making the speech reflect what's going on in the world today. But... <laughs> oh no! Oh no! Oh no! no. Oh, no. 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 This no. is a surprise! I don't know what he's gonna no. say. I'm yeah. so confused! I, I'm, I'm, ooh, wow. Here we are. Ladies and gentlemen, Wonder Woman 84. So <laughs> um, so on what he just said, 
I, li I like the idea that he's like the writers are fighting with two sort of ideas at once in this speech. It's like all they managed to get us was just dribble. It was just like I don't know. It just do better, guys. Yeah, and it looks do stuff. Remember that the visual you use looked like a whole bunch of adults with like big felt pens on a big white piece of paper all at once. It's just like that is how I picture they designed this fucking script. <laughs> We're just like my idea. No, my idea. Smiley face. No, mine. It's like the Wonder Woman 1984 ending speech, but it wasn't full of platitudes this time. What? Yes, it was! It what? was the ultimate platitude! He's like literally just do better. Uh, that is the quintessential that's the ultimate example. Platitude. Do yep. better. Do be it's empty. There's nothing in it. <laughs> Why would you say this? You fool. Like, what do like, had more to say? Your room is better and more helpful. One hundred eighty-four is retarded, but it, it had a point to make, which was <laughs> don't wish for thi like reality, the truth. That's the good stuff. Don't yeah. try and wish it away. Which, considering the narrative, is wow. But that's more than saying do it's better. More. Yeah. Come on. I can't do anything with do better. If I tell that to ten people, I'll get ten different results. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you think Hitler had as an idea for do better? <laughs> it's like do better. I'll do better. Yes, more concentration camps, uh, more Nazi stuff, more armbands. He puts on a piece of paper. More Nazi stuff. Go. The Nazis more like, Nazi stuff. It. Yes, more posters. More shoes. More shama camps for the little ones. It's a legitimate call for those in power to do something. A legitimate call. And it's call? a wake up call. To, yeah, for to do the something. They're already yeah, it's just doing like, do stuff. something. The fucking point uh, is so baffling sometimes because a lot of like normie people will just be like, you know, those in, those in like Washington, they don't do anything. They just <laughs> sit at their desk. They do nothing. Enough of that. Well, stop it's, voting for them. It's time for the Winter Soldiers show to tell people in Washington to do more. Like, what are you talking about? Look, all right, George Collins quote: "You got selfish, ignorant like citizens. You get selfish, ignorant leaders. All right, starts with you." Yep. So when they ask, have these people heard else. of Don Beveridge? No, they have not heard of Don Beveridge. Don you know Beveridge what? would give them all kinds of different plans and and strategies. Genuinely, I could learn something from. I've learned something from Don Beveridge. For I've sure, never, yeah. you, you aren't going to learn anything from fucking Captain Falcon. Imagine the show for the first half sets up that the government aren't doing enough, the government are shit, and they need to reallocate whatever resources they need to do better. Blah blah. blah. And then in the latter half. There's basically like a message about how if you're so invested in things being better, actually vote for shit. And then they actually do like the at the mid level and then at the like smallest levels, they actually like make a message about how you need to act more. You need to actually be interested in politics if you're so invested. Well, that was Pericles' quote, right? If you don't take an interest in politics, it will take. Oh, just because you don't take an interest in it doesn't mean it won't take an interest in you. It's like, yeah, it's kind of it's relevant. It's just worth <laughs> being engaged. We live in a world where they actually have the message be do better, and that's like the worst idea I could come up with for a show that's about politics in any way, shape, or form. Like well, because it's so stupidest fucking lame message we could come dumb. up with. Well, yeah, you, you might be like, well, wouldn't it be worse if you advocated for like everyone to die or something? I'd be like, okay, so within reason, if I was to give good advice politically, the lowest form of it I could imagine is do better. It's it's a meme answer. Yeah. Well, yeah, it doesn't help me. It's, it's like, already oh. a meme for us. It's do better. People have been in chat have been memeing that shit since the show came out. I have a feeling it's going to keep around for a little while. To yeah, do better. It's do thing. better. People don't purposefully do a shit job, <laughs> like for the most part. And if they did, what would do better change? They'd be like, no, I'm not... I don't care what you think. <laughs> nah, I want to do badly. That's I wanna my do prerogative. Wrongness. I want to do worse. Fuck the world. Average person realize that their lives are being affected by these types of people in positions uh, of power. Well, pe the average people, people are learning that the government affects that? them? Wow. Oh um, yeah, the average person is like, government, they didn't what's know that? that? It's a, <laughs> the government it's doesn't affect, affect me. It affects us all. I, I do appreciate that message, because obviously before I was just like, who controls stuff? And you guys told me it was yeah. Santa. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's the government. The show portraying a heightened reality, and I think that's what's so heightened cool about reality? it. And again, you can dislike how the show's messages are delivered, that's totally fine. I personally that's appreciate the, most important the lack part. of so How is that not that is the, the most part? important part? How, yeah, that's, that's it, that's the show, is how a message is delivered. It, it's the, yeah, that's, what a, that's what a story is. It's an account of a series of events. <laughs> 
It makes me if wonder. It wasn't that. Oh. It makes me wonder if I had like a movie where it was just horrible, horrible violence to everyone ever, just chopping people into bits constantly, maniacal laughing, and then at the end I have a character shoot the guy who did it and go, violence is bad. Yeah. Well, you know the message. <laughs> funnily enough, by the way, violence is bad. Is the what was the, who was the person who agreed with that? Was it High Top? What was it Shafrilis? I can't remember. I'm sure all three um, of these people would have I said yes. Think, violence I don't know. Is bad. They're both dumb. Uh, um, I think it's Shafrilis. And so, I'm not sure though. Uh, they might be like, you have to ignore the message's delivery. You need to focus, or like, it doesn't matter. If you just, you know, I, I think the the message was clear. Violence is bad. Subtlety and the directness of the message, and I think that's what makes it more effective. It pulls no punches, and it feels like a Captain America speech to me. Um, no, it I, doesn't. It's fucking so awful. I can agree that it didn't pull any punches in the message that it delivered, which was just a gobbled, childish mess. Like, I, this is like, yes, yep. you did really hold Not back on your writing. Yeah. You really revealed how stupid you are with with your writing. I, I'll give you that. I will say, my only problem yeah. is that Sam's like, nah, Carly isn't a terrorist, and it's like. I get what they're trying to do. They're trying to comment on come how- Come on, Brown Table, come through for me, you're please. You're so close. Come on, you can like, do it. Your video shit, I even if you nail you. this, but like, come on, you could do it. You can take the crown even from your, the other even two Even your videos. naive child brain can, can understand this. this. You can do it. How you shouldn't immediately label groups of people and just brush them off, but she kind of broke into a government building and kidnapped people and was willing to kill them and also and did blew kill up them yeah yes i'm, yes. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna say it base brown table wow in this one moment you, you were able to do it you were able to recognize what a murderer is and a congratulations terrorist. i oh patting you on the head right now good job. yeah i hope you didn't just read that somewhere and then realized it i hope that you got that on your first viewing i'm hoping he, he took things that happened and he correctly and categorized noticed them. them. Congratulations, you have become the you king of video essays. You have to come and, <laughs> you, yeah. You <laughs> noticed the doodle. thing. Oh my god, I'm so thoroughly impressed with you, Brown Table. You did it. Wow. I'm, I'm sure you, you lost a few subscribers, but it was worth it. <laughs> like, you, you, you pulled through It was that. worth it to identify a murderer. Up a building, injuring 11 people and killing three? I don't know. It felt like such a weird thing to say, and it would have been so easily avoided if they just made Carly not kill people. But hey, maybe I'm wrong. I honestly agree with him. I don't know why they did this when they wanted us to like feel for this team. I was like, yeah. I was lost on them the second feels they like, fucking incinerated people. Feels like they had two writers who were just like fighting each other, Star Wars style. It's like two conflicting ideas that they were going for. <laughs> You know, the fact that he could see it means that there's hope for the others one day. <laughs> like, maybe. There's hope. You just, you know, Brown Table can be the seed that plants in the others, and maybe one day they will understand, yeah, Carly wasn't a good person. You go, you're right, I can see it now. Wrong, and I have no idea what I'm talking about. I'm on YouTube after all. Oh, he said maybe I'm wrong. Damn. Uh, on YouTube after all? I mean, if you guys want to devalue your work because of you just happen to be on because YouTube, Because it's you YouTube, go ahead, despite the but, fact that it's a 15-year-old platform that you, is, like, the biggest platform for videos in the world. You just talked about how all the people in, like, power need to do more. Clearly, like, they're not doing what they should be. And then simultaneously is like, well, I'm just on YouTube, so what would I know? Implying that, like, you'd need a qualification or some kind of standing to prove that you should be able to talk about any of this. You the, don't need I thought, to... I thought the people that he was just talking about that would be qualified to talk about this are wrong. You know, like, it, it, it feels... Yeah. You don't need to be qualified to have a perspective on, like, the way that you think the world ought to be to a certain extent. Yeah, you just hope that it's more than do better. Yeah, basically. Like, that you could have some ideas. In my opinion, the series can be a little messy and the finale is a little bit sloppy, but... Why did he show Zemo when he said a little bit messy? Mm, he because hasn't talked he about Zemo much here. I guess... Oh, you never know what you're gonna get, you know? Fucking, okay, wasn't High Top that said, like, Zemo was irrelevant? Or was that Brown Table? Fuck, my brain's getting melted. I think it was I Brown think Table was... who said he was irrelevant. You sure? I thought it was High Top. Uh, that was High Top. Oh, sorry, High Top. Yeah, High Top. I mixed yeah, them up. Yeah, they do blend together, though. The they really do blend <laughs> together. <laughs> Well, it's all a blend. This is the experience of watching fucking movie reviews online for so long. I was like, I can't. This was me, like in 2016, I guess. I was just like, why do every video essay suck? It's like it's all done the same way. They don't pay any attention to the movies. Blah. Ultimately, everything wow. pulled together, and the emotional climaxes of everyone's arcs makes it such a great watch. No. There were cheesy scenes that felt Raimi-esque, which made me feel excited to watch a superhero on screen again. 
If you didn't realize, this is what's on the thumbnail of the video. It is a masterpiece, James. Complete. Comprehensive. And yeah, I put that in for the meme. I don't really think the show is a masterpiece. Oh, yeah, you possibly. Oh, so, so you yeah, us you, you misled lie? us. You misled people. <laughs> All right. Oh, <laughs> Thanks okay. Thanks for admitting that. Lying just, is kind of memes, right? It's, just, it's so funny to me. It's like, I said it was complete and comprehensive. It's not. <laughs> like, All right, then. Away, like, John Walker is now a U.S. agent, and his journey was really weird. His redemption was way too quick, in my opinion, and I oh! feel like... And <laughs> you all say this. Oh. Like the one oh. thing they got right, okay? <laughs> let them have it, Brown <sighs> Tail. Let them have it. It... It's funny to me because, um, if someone said, like, I oh, should have killed Kali, uh, instead of saving the people, I'd be like, what, what is your reasoning? And if it doesn't simply include he was desperate to avenge Lamar for, for all the stuff to do with his family and all that, if they instead said, well, because he's evil, I'd be like, oh my god. Ugh. So out of this conversation. Oh yeah, from that scene where he's uh, evil. All huh? evil. Yeah. By the way his character was progressing, he wouldn't have saved the bus full of people. What? But what? What do you mean? He's only shown doing the right thing. He's oh always sa he's saved the protagonists. Why is everyone so weird on Walker? What I don't get it. Why? It what? What show are people watching? Pay attention to the references. It. I swear to God, it'll help you understand the events. Of the fucking. Thing. It's like you know, with the way Walker was built, I assumed he would have just gone to kill. Ka we were all like, he should save them, and if he doesn't, oh God, please, he should save them. And then he did. We were like, oh, thank God. It was never evil. <laughs> Stop saying it. But that's just me. Thing is, this show is one of the few MCU productions that has truly impacted me. One that made me feel, made me think, made me cry. I've always been critical of the MCU. Well. What are you gonna do? You for robbing creators of their distinct voice, but it does seem like they're getting much better at it. And with how Phase 4 is Maybe they should keep doing it. Maybe they should rob everyone's fucking voices yeah. so we don't end up with crazy psychopath superheroes. Please. God, you're making a great argument for the studio But that's his vision! The thing I think is, like, by the end of this year, goddamn, it'll be clear. <laughs> like, <laughs> Dude, the the idea as well, if someone like in this call was just like, Oh, so cool, WandaVision and Falcon and the Winter Soldier, they're both clearly examples of no studio interference. I'd be like, you're insane. You're absolutely insane. Like, you can tell how much was bad data in them. You can tell how, like, formulaic loads of it is. You're insane. ...is going and how Loki is looking, I don't know how to feel about Disney anymore. Captain America 4 has been announced, Sam Wilson is Ugh. now Captain America, and that's dope. I'm excited no, for the... No, not. Well, he's a fucking You're excited for the future? Wow, how can you I, be excited? I mean, we're on different trajectories. Because he doesn't give a shit about actual quality, because he's bad at his job, because he's a naive idiot. We are on different trajectories. We are. Yeah. I have never had the, this. Is the all-time low currently for Marvel? <laughs> this is the low. Not even Phase Two got me this low. No, I. I wouldn't even say it's comparable. It's fucking. It, it's night and day. Like my worries back then. Like the the most of it was like it wasn't an assassination of Tony and Iron Man three. It was just like how the film treats him. I guess there's there's a combo yeah. up and there's really really shit writing, but. Like, this is different. It's like if Iron Man 3 had him just slaughtering children and he was like, well, you know what? They were a part of the government or something. <laughs> like, I, I gotta fight the government. Just some weird storyline where they try to justify something horrible happening. It's so... such a different beast at this point. Because, like... Nice for Falcon and the yeah. Winter Soldier and WandaVision was shocking, like, in terms of... I never would have expected this. Oh, bad. Yeah. And wow. Black Widow will be coming out soon and we'll see about that. And then the other movies that are coming out. I got the only thing that would make this better is if Sam was Latino. Well, uh, <laughs> I was about to say, well, that's the thing in response to what Freaky said, not in response to <laughs> if he was Latino. Yeah. Um, Spider-Man and Guardians are... Uh, and the, maybe the... Doctor, uh, Doctor Strange is awkward because I like Doctor Strange, but it's all the magic stuff. It's so. broken from the get-go. It's really hard to do Doctor Strange. Um, but, you know, we'll yeah. give it a shot, of course. But yeah, uh, those, those would be the selection where we go in like, brace yourselves. Which is really mm -hmm. bad, by the way, because that means the rest of them we've already basically oh, like gone. Well, they're they're done. <laughs> Thor, like yeah, Love cool. and Thunder. Yeah. All of them, in a sense, they're all a big gamble. But there's like different odds. I would just say from well, yeah, I mean the odds for Ant Man and the Wasp: Quantum Mania are not exactly Good high. God. I wonder if we'll just it'll be another it'll be like the complete trilogy of movies we can't really remember that much. 
They're just yeah. sort of there. The Eternals. Who cares about the Eternals? Uh, they've been around all the time. They were always there. Hopefully it's the good. Three turtles. You guys going to do an EFAP coverage of all the MCU? I just want your take on Iron Man 3 and Winter Soldiers. <laughs> well, give give us some time. Yeah. Uh, we still got to finish Eventually. the DCEU arc. And I say, when I say finish, I mean push it a little bit further forward, probably before we would jump into yeah. the MCU. Because that's not going to be over anytime soon. Same with the MCU, actually. But, um, you know. Once again, like my Eternals video. Wait, sorry, hold on. The Eternals might get cancelled. Are you serious? That The really? film's been shot. It's No. No, 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 there's no way. I think you said before that you think Phase 4 will get cancelled. Dude, this makes so much money. Like, the MCU is, like, set forever. At, at least for, like, the next 10 years, I would I mean, imagine. Yeah, and these shows have been thoroughly successful, right? These shows are... Yeah, this... I'm pretty sure this show, like, is the most successful show, like, basically... It's more successful than Mando, and I remember Mando being, like, incredibly successful. Marvel on a huge decline? Qualitatively, maybe, but, like, financially... No, no, yeah, they're, they're on, no way. People don't give a shit about dude, quality. It's, it's peak in People terms of popularity. They're on top of the world. They can, this is like, part of the frustration. They can do whatever they want, and they choose to make the sludge. Not fair. Eh, you're, well, you're wrong. Eternals isn't cancelled. Like, I remember reading an article that said the film was basically done. That film was shot over a year ago. Like, all these films are definitely coming out. They aren't cancelling anything. Why would they? It's all going to make them money. They're never going to lose money, at least not for, like, the next five or so years, I wouldn't imagine. Like, I don't think they can fail anymore. I think I mean, Ant-Man kind of proved that they can't fail. Yeah, and, and and if they've shot it, I seriously doubt they wouldn't bring it out. That'd be weird, oh, yeah. right? No yeah. way. Yeah, that, that dude, would be like, bizarre. imagine investing, like, $100 million into the film already and just being like, ah, nah, you know, for no reason, let's not release it. And I hope Marvel keeps going forward. With this type of storytelling. No. <laughs> oh. No. Uh, you didn't know. This is why it's going to end oh, really badly. Oh, you can buy it. It's still Rage of Command shirts. Yay. <laughs> I don't know about you guys. I am not a fan of, um, like, a column image. Uh, you know, you know like, I, I just, I prefer a flat sort of rectangle if you're going to have something like that. I'm not actually a huge fan of just um, harsh corners uh, when you have artwork on a t-shirt as well. I don't like corners on artwork. I think the artwork should be against a transparent, generally. Yeah, I've always like, felt they look cooler. Sort of... Yeah. Um, well, I don't feel well, that was it. You, you, that was really not good at all, but that was, what were we That expecting? was really bad, yeah. Look, I got some it's bad really news for bad. everybody. I don't think we're going to be able to do Cosmonauts video. I'm sorry. Nope. <laughs> no nope. way. No, no way. I'm, we're at, I'm too beat. We're at nine hours been going and 30 for... minutes. Oh, jeez. Oh, my God. And you're like, <laughs> oh, there's only three of us. It'll be better. <laughs> like, in terms of getting feel... through it all quickly. Well, these that's the thing. We always... To be fair, we our goal was four. We did three. That's pretty good. That ain't yeah. too bad for an yeah. yeah. I would be satisfied if we got through two. And, and yeah. Uh, chat, yeah, three and four is pretty good. You bastards. The Like, three hours is definitely more than enough for an EFAP, and we've done triple, all right? Triple. Yeah. Yeah. How as hell do it? Mm. No, give me more suffering. It's been nine and a half. I just you scroll can suffer back. on your own. You don't need us for that. You can suffer in silence. Roundtable has a whole YouTube own. channel that you suffer can subject silence. yourself to. Cause it all time. <laughs> Let the hate flow through you. Do it well. The only thing I feel bad about is that I don't know that we're going to be able to bust the energy to do any super chats, which means we might have to do um, an EFAP of super chats. Uh, that might have to just be the solution at this point because the too many is stacking up and it's really impossible right now to find times where both me and Rags are free uh, to do the streams because we've got so many other things going on. Um, of course, making like the Saturdays free, but that might be a, 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 the way I position it because I do not want even more to uh, be missed. It's getting unacceptable. Though I managed to... You know what? Uh, the other thing about that Gartic phone game, it is perfect for being able to get through Super Chats as well. Because mm -hmm. in the times between, you can just uh, roll them out and, and talk while everybody's having a nice little drawing session. It's really good. That's right. So hopefully more of that, you know, and maybe we'll do a bit of catching up in them as well. Who knows? Um, but yeah, I'm assuming you guys are kind of uh, kind of, kind of yeah. low on the energons. How you doing right yeah. now? Yeah, I'm getting pretty um, yeah it, hungry too. So righty. Um, of course the the super chats will be saved. I'm gonna. Put us on unlisted for a sec so they can stop, right? I don't I don't because I it's fucking frustrating. I can't catch up with them, but we will. It'll happen. I swear to Jesus. 
and the other denominations of different religions. All of them. I pray to them all. That's like maximum power, right? This gonna happen? Maximum. Gonna yeah, I guess so, right? Yes. Um. So yes. Uh, since we're at the end, suppose it is time. Efab chat. I've lied to you. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> what? Uh, at the beginning of this, I said there's three of us because it would make more sense to be able to get through multiple videos. That's not the reason at all. I'm just gonna wait for them to react because they have no idea what's happening. You'll be so uh, confused. Oh, what? What do you mean? What do you mean? I mean, <gasps> what are you referring to? The fuck sir? sound was E-gad, that? Uh, <laughs> Is that a like, breathing? Like, yeah, I was. <gasps> it was like a, <gasps> you know, like a, like a. I was just gasping for Why air. Why did you lie to me? Quick, I'm frontal... just. I'm swamped and dr I'm drowning in bad takes. Well, yeah, so, uh, I think, I'm honestly kind of impressed we got through the three so thoroughly, but uh, I it, too. it's We're definitely great. proven that the commentary on Falcon the Winter Soldier is incredibly lacking. Like, holy shit, I don't know how many people out there who have reviewed it that are basically, like, unrecognizable compared to the three that we just saw. Oh yeah, that's probably a worthwhile question. Which one do you think was the worst out of the three, guys? Uh, of the videos? Uh... Probably, uh... I really didn't like that first one. <laughs> yeah, the first one, or maybe Brown Table, because of his weird fucking racist attitude. Uh, I might yeah, forgive it, that for the fact that he was willing to call her a terrorist. I really think that gives him a plus. Uh, yeah, hmm. <laughs> yeah, That's I where guess, we're at. yeah, the first one is probably the worst, I guess. I think the first one's probably, probably the worst. Probably because of its, its laziness, both yeah. in mm. terms of its script yeah. the and its visuals. The other tried a lot harder. Well, a lot harder. They tried, yeah, they did. They tried they, harder. Well, they did. They did try a lot harder. They had some relevant visuals, and he, he like, high top, he turned on his blue light, and he shook the camera at himself. That was, like, that took some level of effort. But that first guy was just a lazy loser. Like everything was blurry and out of focus, and his points were shitty, and he just clearly didn't yeah, you know care. What? And a third of his video was an ad. Uh, High Top and Brown Table's production value is way better than Shafrilis's one. Way better, yeah. And um, as much as you know, like all the stupid shit the High Top was doing with his face, like at least it took effort to do that. Yeah, at least he's going for. <laughs> let's see, High Top is he is yeah. attempting to have like a style. His video was an attempt at style. Yeah, he he was turning his head around. That was really hard. Yeah, I guess we. Okay, right, there you go. We we've concluded that. That was a really important thing that I needed to make sure we got done. You know, I knew people really wanted to know which one of those we thought was the worst. Uh, Cosmo was probably the worst out of the four, for all I know. <laughs> Who knows what he argued? Maybe. Maybe we spared him and ourselves. Yes, that only means the next time we have a choice of selection, it's probably going to be him now because he's been he's further <laughs> down. You know. Um. So yes, back on topic. I lied to you all. Reveal your truth, <gasps> why did you lie? So, oh um, it wasn't about, like, having less people to make sure that we could get through more videos, even though I think that was probably true. Like, I imagine if we had another four people here that we wouldn't have gotten through three videos. I don't think no that way. was happening. So, that was, like, a bonus. But the true reason, the absolute truth... Uh, someone's already guessed it in chat, by the way. I think it's pretty clear what I'm leading toward. I'm only delaying it now to make it more a anticipation and stress, you know? Like, I, I want someone to be like, wait, is this the last episode of EFAP? Like, well, guys, you know, it had to be sometime, you know, in regard to the thing I'm revealing. It had to be sometime. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I, I suppose there's no other way to say it. Um, EFAP has three hosts once again. Oh my goodness, who's the third? Uh, to be revealed. <gasps> oh, tune in next week. <laughs> <laughs> I oh man for our reveal of right who now. is this the is third <laughs> who is the third EFAP host. It's uh well, you could call it a proof of concept, but I think it was already pretty clear that it was always gonna work. This was ten hours of just listening to us three talk about shit. Yeah. I think it it went pretty well. Hopefully you guys had entertaining uh, flim flams about yeah. it all. But yeah, <laughs> so it's like it's metal. <laughs> <laughs> Yay! We wish he could be here in. today, but uh, um, Metal wasn't Latino enough, unfortunately, to be a host. Mm -hmm. Such a shame. He didn't speak any. I uh, almost said Latin there for a second. Uh, he didn't speak any Spanish, because that's what Latinos speak is Latin, as we all know. <laughs> could you imagine? That would be fucking crazy. <laughs> uh, 
What does that mean going forward? It means that Fringy will be in every mainline episode, pretty much. Um, mm -hmm. There's probably going to be exceptions here and there. Like, there could be, theoretically, with uh, rags if, if some catastrophe were to happen. Could be an um, emu war that breaks out. Yes. Who knows? I would could like... be a spider invasion, or... I would like to promise that he would be in all minis, movies, and gaming, but that would be ridiculous, because of course, uh, not I don't think Rags manages to make it to all the gaming ones, he can where he, he does where he can. Uh, and there's loads of movies recorded that haven't been edited yet that Fringy's not actually in. That so. I'm not in, yeah. Not to mention there's an arc currently happening that Fringy's not in, and it's literally seven people already, so it's, it's already stuffed. Uh, it also means... That yeah, he'll he'll just be in as much of EFAP as basically could be going forward. I'm pretty sure he's been in the last like however many episodes. Is it like six now or something? Several, I'm pretty sure. He's been in a like whole a bunch lot. of them. Oh my god, the diversity higher. So true. <laughs> hey, alright. Look, I, we needed I someone did green. the work, alright? Like John Walker. <laughs> yeah. We needed someone green. We have Oh, are to you red or black? Quarter. Wait, to fill the hmm? Mon, are you red or black? Color? What's your... Oh. Well, I guess, you know, you could say that Fringy's like kind of a green and blue, you're kind of an orange and black to a degree, and I'm red and black, right? right? Yeah, like a, 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 an orange-brown, orange, yeah, yeah, yeah like yeah. a beige-ish. I've got the beige... beige I feel like I've got so yeah. much red and black that I couldn't choose between them. Yeah, I think you're... It, that, that's yeah. why I had to ask, I just didn't know. Yeah, didn't you, wouldn't know. Want to, you wouldn't want to assume, that would be very rude. Then we got the green brown, like a tree. It's like a tree. Yeah, I think it's kind of like a tree. Yeah. Honestly, it's the like colors of our avatars really do complement each other. Actually. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty good. Not like it's not like a crying Pepe or something. That would be fucking terrible. I can imagine. Awful. That would be. Could you, was, could you was, imagine? Yeah, a crying all the time. Terrifying. Um, yeah. But yeah. Obviously, you won't be able to be in everything. Mr. F Mr. Fringy, and I think we're still going to stick with the only people I'll, I will promise will be there for Super Chat readings would be myself and Rags. It's going to be really hard to ensure. I don't think we'll ever catch up if we have to do whenever the three of us are free. That that's yeah, that's probably really reduces probably the windows. It, well, guys, it's worthwhile for viewers to consider. This is like the three major time zones that there are that each person <laughs> yeah. did. Like it's kind of insane. <laughs> It is one what world, is one people. Yeah, there we go. Fuck borders. Oh, uh, yeah, true. Um, EFAP, the real world piece. <laughs> yeah, we got... It's like like the doggo, the frogo, and the longo. Doggo, the longo, frogo, yeah. and... Best I could do. Oh, you're Welsh, so you're the wago? <laughs> Ew, that's probably a slur. <laughs> that's probably, yeah. <laughs> it might be. The Welsh it's slur, the wago. the world. Um... Yeah, I, I, I just, uh, it'll mean, like, the, this just this would be the core for EFAP going forward, but it kind of already mostly kind of was in the last X amount of time. And it's not that we could have just gone on forever not making it official, but, like, why not, I guess? And the only thing to change would just be artwork, which I'll get sorted over time. It's not going to be an instant thing, so i got to get all yeah. little flim-flams sorted out, but yeah. Well, no, what's actually happening is I've got a whip, and I'm digitally doing Bro. it to, like, put me in the front of the center, all right? So mean. He's got a whip. <laughs> but yeah, uh, for anybody who's concerned about anything, nothing's really changing because Fringy's already here for most yeah. of it. So <laughs> you'll be, be, you'll be just more, fine. Yeah, more of someone, but other than that, I think it's going to be pretty much the same. I was gonna We're going to have to embrace Australian values. Mm -hmm. I was, I was going to say, you can't even like say it would be an era change because just like, I mean, he was here in the. What was the first one for you? Was it Fab 3 or 5? 3, I think. It was the Rhino Milk one. I think yeah. that was 3. Yeah. Yeah. Uh wait, wow. no, it's five. It was five. You're right. Yeah. So he's been here for a while. Oh, damn. <laughs> like it's, it's been around for a while. Uh yeah, that's oh, that that's... was like over two years ago. Jeez. That's about it. And it I've seen plenty of discussions about like how like why not sort of stuff. And uh I believe Fringy was voted the best guest for uh the previous year. So you know that that's just that's the people having their will done, what can I say? It's it's like it's a const EFAP is a democ sorry constitutional republic. You yes. got me there. So you brought this upon yourselves. Anyone who complains, that's you right. Pieces of shit. <laughs> um, now, in terms of what's planned going forward, I think we might try and find a slot to record a meme fap, and that would go up on Saturday. Otherwise, we oh. really might have to do an EFAP that is just us reading the super chats we've got left over. 
and it we would got probably a bunch. Yeah. It, it, it wouldn't be finished in ten hours. We would probably just have to. I'll probably play through like the all three of my favorite dolphin games. <laughs> that'll be the and that'll be the episode. It's just because uh, we're really um, we're in a tough spot for because this is the thing. There's been so much to talk about. And it's not even, we have this problem where we're like, we're talking about the content and then we cover people's coverage. And so it's like two weeks worth. But they're yeah, also, look at the thing. size of these episodes. Because we usually hit these markers when we're actually covering all of the Super Chats as well. It's, it's a little bit yeah. insane. Yeah, so, it's been but ballooning Videos on YouTube have been so bad lately. Yeah. Ugh, so man, much to say. People have so just been so shitty and wrong. And you might have thought, well, you guys have got like a whole month before Loki starts up, right? So that's plenty of time. It's like, we got Resident Evil 8. That's coming right out. It's only a, even a few days now, right? It's like, like a few days away, yeah. So you're going to see me stream that, Metal stream that, presumably Fringy might stream it, I don't know. Uh, yeah. maybe. Now that, now that Titanfall 2, now that I've heard that it's like actually got players on, that might be my thing for the next couple of weeks. Um, and then... Yeah, metal. So uh, Rags, I, I would assume, is going to play it too. Good old Resi Eight. And then... yeah, I'm curious to see if it's any good. So we'll and, see. Yeah, and so it, we're not going to do the EFAP the day after it comes out. That's not enough time for like any reasonable person to have completed it or thought on it. So it'll be the week after, and we'll try and have some guests, and that'll be the Resident Evil Eight EFAP. Between that and that, there'll be some EFAP movies, EFAP gaming, EFAP minis. I think there's a Batwoman on its way. Um. And, uh, and I'm working on videos, as I believe are you two. Comedy. Mm, yeah. Yes. There's, there's the yeah end game video and other stuff too. The free comic is getting there. We're getting soon. So plenty of things along the way, and I'm sure that the MCU, the DC EU, and other releases will keep us more than busy. We still got to do Godzilla. Mortal Kombat is on its way as well. Oh boy, so many things. You still need to watch the, the Batwoman episodes. It's all very nuts. Um, but yeah, thank you all for hanging out with us. That was a pretty long one, you know? Yeah. So many terrible videos to watch. Uh, but, you th know, thank you all... very much for the for the donations as well. We really, I've got them all in a big Word file. Every single time there's more, I add them all in. It's going to be a big old list that we read right through at some point with Simpsons hit and run in the background, more than likely. Well, we will get her done. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, you guys want to say anything before we head out? Ah, oh, no, I think that about covers it. I think that sort of uh, wraps it all up in a neat little bow. Springy, what do you have to say about yeah. being an EFAP person now? Now, not before. Um, <laughs> no. I, I'm not really sure what, I, what I'm supposed to say, I always, actually, because I, I, I just... I want Rags to say this, but it's too like it would be a, it would be weird for him to have said it. But I didn't want to be the one to say because it it's like it's like I'm like oh you're a new host, and then Rags should be like Molly, you should realize what it means to give EFAP host to a black man. <laughs> what the uh, horror is yeah, that's right, that's right. <laughs> I'm like you know sure. you're like I'll do the best I can. Then the next episode of EFAP is like Molly didn't know what he was doing. Fucking doesn't know what it means. Will will the EFAP crew accept Fringy? Will the EFAP People, who knows? It's funny because someone's like, "Oh, say something base." See, that's the problem. There's an, there's almost an expectation that I've got something really clever and witty to say here, but like, I don't know what I'm meant to say. It's it's neat. I'm uh, it's 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 gonna be cool. Hopefully, I uh, I guess it's it's yeah, it's because it's interesting because obviously the the dynamic for uh for a long time has just been Mauler and 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 rags, so. And of course, then before that, with Wolf as well. So this is kind of like different. Mm -hmm. But I'm hopefully, hopefully, all you fellers are uh, gonna be on board, uh, because, well, yeah, I, I'm not even sure. <laughs> like, I'm like, not like the sure emoji, the emojis yeah. that got like the happy frog, the happy dog, and then a skull for me. <laughs> <It's> like, <Yeah. laughs> Say the N word. Uh, it's probably not the. I, I mean, I guess it depends Unless on what Unless they mean the no to. word. Mm -hmm. If you mean no. Now you have can't but, be racist. But this isn't a no day. This is a yes day. Yo. It's, it's kind of hard. Yo. To, yeah. yeah. Yo. Pirate's life for me. But yes, welcome, Fringy, to the EFAP family that you were already kind of mostly yeah. in anyway. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> yay. <laughs> Um, hope you guys enjoyed the episode. Like I said, it was just, it was, you had the three of us for ten hours. Uh, hopefully you had some fun there. Uh, more EFAP is on the way. 
everything will all be lined up and taken care of. We had a good goodness. Just that uh, I think it's time for us to have food slash sleep slash walk around. And sleep, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm beat. Alrighty. Good night, all. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you next time. Night. Bye -bye. Good night. <laughs>